stay alive at the moment. Rescue on Sam to get a fear on the play. Rosita gets interrupted. Fire breath channel by Zidu. And that's going to close it. Hammer with Justice lands. And that's going to be game one to Luminosity. The drug will succumb to the temptation. And unleash the aspects darkest nightmares. Oh. Huge damage coming in, double kill. That's it, good night. <laughs> A lot of devastation right now. Full blind onto Asgrath. See if I could easily go down. Can they purge the blessing of protection? They do manage to. There's the kidney shot. Are they going to be able to take him down at the same time, though? Waz gets oh. the charm. He's down to 1% health. Can he survive? No, not this time, Waz. But Drake, I don't think he survives the next crowd control on Brain. He's trying to run away. He's just dying. Jelly Beans is absolutely blasting. And he's got the Sentinel out. He's shooting through the fence line right now. His entire team can shoot through pillars. Insane usage of that spell right there. And they managed to close it out. Bastion onto Wallace, he's got no evasion. He's caught in this blister that's cutting him down here. Here's the double stun. They need to keep the masses off. Can they take Drake down and scatter from the dead? It has been four long and intense weeks of the AWC season two, and now it's all coming to a head today for the fourth and final championship Sunday before we head into the grand finals as well as the gauntlet. And by the end of the day, we will find out who makes it to both of those. Hello, everyone. My name is Aya. I'm super excited to get started today. We're here with Zico, Venruki, and Azale will be joined with Subatiz just a little bit later. But I mean, these regions have both been so exciting to see, so exciting to see develop over the first four cups. Azale, what have been your thoughts leading up to this point? Uh, I mean, it's been kind of a crazy season. It feels like it's gone by really fast, but I think it's pretty incredible that we've now had every healer spec come through. We've had uh, every DPS spec except two. I believe only Outlaw and Unholy DK are, are the missing ones. So like, there's actually been a, a pretty tremendous amount of variety throughout the season, which has been really, really fun. Um, and, you know, getting to see Holy Pally come in yesterday and actually like winning series with F tier was really interesting. Not something that I expected us that, to have happen at all. So, um, you know, we're now coming down to it. People trying to qualify into the gauntlet, people trying to secure their top three here today. It's going to be really exciting to see who can actually make it because the, the power of the compositions could change massively, right? Like if F tier could make it into the gauntlet, um, they could potentially do some real damage after uh, Pally's gets a buffs. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a, a bit of a different game the next time we see some of these players play in the, you know, about a month's time. But here's just a bit of an overlook of what we've been seeing, how we kind of got to this point, $400,000 in prizing. And of course, these teams are trying to make it to the top three of their respective regions to get into the grand final. Some of it is pretty solidified, some of it not so much. We will keep everyone kind of updated as we go along here but here is the european standings right now and definitely one thing is for sure then is that echo is not getting knocked out from that first place yeah so echo admiral esports the agents they're pretty much secured at this point i mean they are secured so not really that much can change the big thing in europe is going to be of course playing for momentum and uh, obviously a little bit of prize money and uh, just you know like I said, playing for that momentum going into the finals, you want to be the team that comes out ahead. And I feel like for some of these teams that are left in the tournament, like Nice Beam, Agents, uh, Admirals Esports, they want to beat Echo. Like they need to start picking up wins against Echo. Otherwise, it just seems like Echo is just going to win the entire thing and no one's really going to be able to beat them. So this is kind of their last chance in a tournament format to kind of rise up in a series uh, and try to get it done. Of course, we're going to have a tiebreaker as well between the Fiends and Caster meta after the European finals. So that'll be an interesting one to see who does uh, make it that last spot uh, for the gauntlet. Absolutely. I'm curious also if Echo can continue on this winning streak, winning the, the first three cups. So we will find out soon enough. We are going to be uh, starting off the day here with Nice Beam versus the Agents, then into the upper bracket series Echo versus Admirals Esports. And then just as a reminder, we do have a European tie that we're going to be watching at the end of the day, or sorry, at the end of the European matches. So about midway through the day, the Fiends versus Caster Meta. But Zico, I mean, talk to me about these first, you know, this first match we've got coming up here, Agents versus Nice Beam. 
Uh, well, I think in Europe, you know, we've kind of mentioned it a little bit. It is kind of battle for momentum right now. We have our top four secured. Um, but, you know, if you are a nice beam, this is your opportunity here to start doing some real damage. You know, they barely snuck by throughout the bracket. They've had, you know, a nice performance here throughout the lower rounds. And if they can take down the agents, that, that's one of those big teams uh, that has been, uh, you know, a very solid roster for such a long time uh, here in Europe. So for Nice Beam, this is an opportunity for them to prove themselves. And likewise for the agents, they are a team that usually is number two. I would say Admiral Esports has been more about number three, number four, uh, you know, with my way there as well uh, in the mix uh, in terms of like classic European standings. So the agents have actually kind of dropped down one tier, I would say. They're you know, kind of solidified as that third spot. And we've talked a lot about Echo being the best, but we haven't really talked that much about Admiral Esports and the fact that they have slowly but surely kind of uh, climbed up the <laughs> rankings. I mean, you can see on the prediction as well, everybody. Well, <laughs> we're all unique individuals. <laughs> I mean, we're free this, thinkers this is, here. <laughs> I mean, when you see something, you know, like, uh, yeah, when you every see this, single week. yeah, this pattern repeat itself every single week, it's kind of hard to go against it. <laughs> There's been no <laughs> yeah. signs that it's going to be any different, really. I mean, it, it, it's interesting, right? Because uh, as you say, it's like Echo is clearly the number one. We've talked about that a lot. But to me, it's been like Echo is on a tier of their own. And then Admirals Esports kind of feels like they're on a tier of their own, too, right? Because, yeah, yeah they yeah. keep losing to Echo, but they are slamming everyone else. And it always is like Echo beats them in the upper bracket and no one can take down Admirals Esports. So I do think that's going to be, you know, the big goal for all these European teams is trying to knock down these top two teams, trying to see what can we actually get done against them? Because everyone's goal at the end of the day is to win it all, right? You know, the, that's where the biggest prize money is going to be at the grand finals. And you're going to have to get through Admirals Esports and Echo, right? Uh, they're gonna have a lot of time to to think about how to do that and you know the meta is going to change somewhat but still i think it would be a really big confidence booster to be able to take some games or potentially a series off one of those teams here today yeah i definitely agree you know especially uh kind of ending the season that way would be a great way to round it off and then you've got that like bit of a break as we've got tgp and mbi coming up and, and you know kind of just reconvene and then come back even stronger especially after those meta changes so we are going to be starting off this first match very shortly here it's agents versus nice beam and then you know we can take a look at where they are also in the standings we saw that just a little bit earlier but um like we've been saying there's not really much that these two teams can do kind of just playing for momentum for momentum and seeding zico but i imagine that's also very important to these players just where they end up in the gauntlet yeah no absolutely uh, you know, and we're going to see that a little bit at the end there of the, the European show, see actually who gets that final gauntlet spot. But uh, between these two teams, uh, we know agents, they're going to be third. We know Nice Beam, they have secured their final boss standing here in the gauntlet. So uh, for these teams, it really will be can the agents beat Nice Beam and then potentially beat Admiral Esports and show that, okay, this is the agents, you know, they came to play and they can actually, uh, you know, be one of those top dogs in Europe once again. Or uh, is this maybe Nice Beam's turn to really upset this whole bracket and kind of do what F tier has done in North America, where it's just kind of a newer roster coming through uh, out of nowhere and just, uh, you know, really showing dominance? Uh, or is it going to be more of the same with Echo and the agents? Uh, sorry, Echo and Admiral Esports uh, just being the top dogs here. Uh, that's uh, what we're going to find out here uh, very shortly in Europe. But first, we are going to see the blind pick coming through from the agents and Nice Beam. And we are tagging in Mercy, z on the Shadow Priest, and Azgrath on the Shaman versus that Munkin Demon Hunter from Nice Beam. Yeah, let's see how this one does go. Trend going to be getting very aggressive here onto z in the early stages, throwing out a stun, getting out some pressure initially. Azgrath seems to easily be able to heal through it as z is pushing in and wants to close the distance on that Shadow Priest, find these fears, and does manage to onto Numbers. I think it was actually a reversal of magic there by Trend, so just putting that fear uh, back onto Zipai, getting Numbers out of crowd control and allowing him to just heal him up and stabilize this opener. Yeah, and uh, Zipai actually getting a lot of damage done here onto Corky Mercy as well. And finally, a fake cast coming through here for Corky. He should be able to land that Cyclone. No, he gets knocked there by Asgrath, but uh, Trend is there to back up Corky for a little bit there with a Chaos Nova. And uh, they do find the Cyclones here onto Mercy. Now Mercy, once again, going to be sitting through a half clone before he can start doing damage here onto Corky. And uh, that's going to be the name of the game here. You're going to have the Demon Hunter pummeling the Shadow Priest. You're going to have the Moonkin tanking out the Warrior and uh, the occasional swaps here going on to Mercy right now. But Trent needs to be careful. He's getting swapped to as well, taking a lot of damage here. But he does manage to stay alive there throughout that Storm Bolt into a Lightning Lasso. But 
Doesn't really take that much damage from that. Now, once again, going to be heading over to Zipai. Zipai looking for a fear. Look at Trend, though, with excellent positioning there, actually trying to avoid that fear, and he does manage to avoid it. But Corky could be in a little bit of trouble here as Namli sits through that. He is playing Undead Monk, though, and he does will of the Forsaken. Uh, on that warrior fear so nicely done there by Nobles, but that's one of his two breakers that they've gotten through now on the side of the agents yeah, nicely done corky right now gets interrupted in bear form just trying to tank it out for the time being avoid as much damage as possible any cyclones here on a mercy mercy making a little bit of a swap here on a numbless really testing him on that mistweaver monk but numbless has been doing a phenomenal job so far corky getting aggressive with the offensive solar beam there on the z just interrupting him and trying to get the damage rolling but corky once again on the back foot taking a lot of pressure lightning lasso coming in here from asgarath but huge heals from numbless are going to completely stabilize corky uh during that moment and uh it seems like they should be able to recover corky once again on the run and bear trends coming over trying to get the pressure rolling on number c trying to take advantage of the fact that maybe he's overextended himself uh, to get the damage on number c and uh force him to just get off corky a little bit so defending the moonkin a little bit in this position yeah, and uh, they have been doing those swaps here, and right now Tren getting a lot of burst there onto Zipai and Mercy, but Asgard finally manages to get him picked up there with that healing tide totem, and mana between these two healers definitely seems to be in favor of the agents right now. Numbers might have to look for a drink at some point, but right now sitting through a full fear, that's going to be the bark skin of Corky. He's got Incarnation popped right now. Corky wants to be aggressive, but right now taking a lot of damage from Mercy instead. It's going to be the Trinket Life Cocoon coming out for Numbers, but can they get any pressure? You don't really want to be the one uh, using your bark skin Trinket and Life Cocoon when you're the one getting aggressive with Incarnation. This is a big swing of momentum coming in uh, in favor of the agents. They're swapping to Mercy right now, taking a decent amount of damage, but he will get Cycloned, and uh, he is looking for the fear. It looked like Mercy actually might have missed his fear right there, but they do find the fear from Tren onto Askarath. Mercy right now trying to just uh, be a little bit defensive, actually catches a disarm, and uh, looks like Numbers actually will be playing that grapple weapon, so definitely going to be good for him in the matchup, especially later on when dampening uh, starts to ramp up and they are, are kind of tearing apart uh, Corky with this pressure on the side of the agents. I really feel like Corky and Numbers are struggling in terms of defense, in terms of mana, and it looks like agents are the ones pushing the pace right now. Yeah, definitely. They're moving in and they are ahead on mana at this point. So the Shadow for Shaman, if they can remain this aggressive and just force Numbers to heal this much. It could be dangerous, but they also just have a lot of pressure. They could just take down Corky. Big shockwave coming in here from Mercy, and the longer he has uptime, the more he's going to reduce healing on that Fury Warrior. It can be absolutely devastating to heal through that kind of healing reduction uh, that he's able to put out. Corky, once again, just on the run, looking for Cyclones, and just playing such a defensive game. They do have pressure, but I feel like Corky, for the most part, he's just trying to live and allow Tren to get Whoa. a lot of damage out, and Zipai is forced into dispersion. Tren just really putting on a show here on this Demon Hunter. He's been such a playmaker, just getting out the pressure. You said he's one of the highest damage dealing Demon Hunters in Europe, potentially the highest. Going for a big hunt. Can he take down Zeke by? No, it doesn't look like it just yet. It's going to be the Healing Tide Totem and Ascendance. Asgard doing what he can to keep him alive, but this pressure is just unrelenting coming in from Tren, and Zeke could easily fall. Whoa. This is the incarnation. Spirit Link gets forced, and the agents are looking very unstable. Yeah, and this is all at the back of a solar beam that Corky landed onto Asgard into a Paralyzed, and they're doing it again. There's a Paralyzed once again onto Asgard Tren, dealing the damage, and Tren is so annoying on that Demon Hunter. Faye casted the Hunt to force out the Dispersion, and then actually used it after the Dispersion, and now Zipa could be in trouble here. Does he have any defense it. left? It doesn't look like it, and it will be Nice Beam coming through on the Moonkin Demon Hunter, taking game number one against the Agent. This team is not stopping just yet. I, I mean, I, I mentioned it. Tren just like Illidan himself on this Demon Hunter, <laughs> just such a menace. He's able to put out so much pressure, and if he can't be punished, I mean, the amount of damage a Demon Hunter can do is through the roof, and it just pairs so nicely with a Moonkin, one of the most traditional Demon Hunter and uh, Balanced Druid compositions, them working together, and I feel like Nice Beam has uh, been utilizing it very well. So Corky, his job in this match is basically just live, drag Mercy away, try to get control of him, and the longer he can live, the more time Tren has to just get crazy aggressive. This is where you're seeing all the cooldowns get overlapped, the Desperate Prayer, the Spirit Link, we had Dispersion, we had Life Swap, and now at this point there's really nothing left. Numbless moves forward, gets a Paralyze onto Asgrath, he's falling even further behind, now caught into a full Cyclone, and uh, it's just at this point where Asgrath really can't do much to actually heal through oh. it. He tries to Trinket, but it's just not enough. Yeah, Mercy actually made a nice play there at the end. Uh, he intervened the bash right there at the end, uh, but it just wasn't enough. 
A uh, really good read there from Mercy, even though it didn't pay off. And I think a big reason for that is, of course, uh, because they overlap that Spirit Link totem uh, with that Void Shift. And uh, a lot of that pressure just kind of came out of nowhere. And this is something that Trend does that is extremely annoying. A lot of Demon Hunters do it, but Trend is super good at this. And that is fake casting the hunt. Anytime he has kill pressure, he'll just fake cast the hunt a couple of times. And it will make you use your Ice Block. It will make you use your Dispersion. Because... If he does cast a hunt and you don't block it, you just die. So you kind of have to use it. And then he saves that big hit for after uh, that cooldown has been used. So uh, that's what that. he did. In, yeah, it's it's annoying. <laughs> uh, he, yeah. he did that here. And that's what got them so much pressure after the dispersion. Because he, he got Z-Bot to 20%. And then he, he casted a hunt. He dispersed. And then he just saved it. And then they got, you know, Spirit Link, Swap, and you know, all these extra uh, cooldowns afterwards. I feel like people still have like PTSD from Shadowlands Hunt because Hunt right now isn't as <laughs> scary. Like, it's not as kind of one shotty as it used to be from Shadowlands. But you just you just hear that noise and you just know something's gonna happen. <laughs> so you get afraid. Um, it looks like the agents will be mixing up their composition. They're gonna be going with Mercy on the Demonology Warlock and of course Zipai on that Elemental Shaman. So this has been one of their main. I would say this is actually the agents' main composition that we've seen them really find success with. Um, I think on this large map it can work out nicely, but I will say, traditionally, Demon Hunter Moonkin is very good into caster. So I think as long as Nice Beam can remain aggressive in the match, allow Trend to stay on target, um, and bounce around a lot, because that's the nice thing about the Demon Hunter, right? You have a lot of mobility, you have frequent stuns with Chaos Nova as well as your Fell Eruption, and if Corky can be in there landing, you know, Solar Beams and Cyclones, I, I really feel like Trend can be enabled in this matchup, and that's when they're going to get far ahead. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, a couple of moments where Trend is going to be exposed. He's going to have to pull back. But uh, in general, if they can enable him, allow him to get that uptime, allow him to stay on target, allow him to use, uh, you know, things like Blur just to stay in the fight. Uh, that's going to be key for Nice Beam. It's going to actually allow them to get a lot of pressure. Uh, but on the side of the agents, they have long longevity. Anytime Trend does pull back, that's when Asgrath's going to be able to sit down, get drinks. That's when they're going to be able to kind of start that wizard triangle formation. But... I do feel like if Nice Beam can make it to dampening uh, and kind of have a big incarnation in dampening and, and you know have these big hitting cooldowns that they that they do on their side, that's when things can become really unstable because on the side of the agents, you're relying on a lot of hybrid healing, you're relying on a lot of self healing from Mercy, and all of a sudden in deep dampening, those aren't going to be as effective. And then at the same time, you're going to have metamorphosis, you're going to have incarnation, those really massive cooldowns with you know a long duration. Uh, that can just kind of kill you through your cooldowns at that point if you are the agent. So I feel like we're going to dampening, and if Nice Beam can make it there without falling too far behind, that's when we can see like a big swing of momentum, kind of similar to what we saw uh, in that last game, where all of a sudden the, the pressure you just can't recover from it because it's so much. Yeah, I mean we'll see what Nice Beam can do. Uh, we definitely want to see them have that momentum because if Trenton overextends and he's getting blasted here by the Demonology Warlock. Um, it's going to be difficult. And I think that's it's going to be a lot on Mercy to actually set up those kills, right? It's going to be Trend moving in. That's when you're going to get the Axe Toss uh, into the Coil. And at the same time, maybe you can get some crowd control onto the Mistweaver Monk. So we'll see what Numbless is going to be able to do, how he's going to position this one, how aggressive Nice Beam really can be. Trend and Corky going to be moving forward at the early stages of the match. Dots coming out here from Corky, just trying to prime everyone for damage. Early interrupt onto Mercy, trying to just slow down the pressure. But Trend is immediately cycloned. Well done there by Asgrath, and that's going to slow down Nice Beam's opener. Yeah, and they did use their uh, Solar Beam right there in that exchange. But uh, when you are playing against the Resto Druid, you can't really root Solar Beam them anyway, so you may as well just use it as an interrupt uh, onto Zipai, onto Mercy. You can use it uh, on the Demonic Tyrant, which I believe was the case right there. Uh, and that'll give you some extra control in the match. Asgraf is playing that Cyclone, going for some clones here. He manages to find one to Corky. Corky actually trinketing out here, getting very aggressive with the Incarnation, looking to swap to Asgraf, actually, but Trend is sitting through a Cyclone. Corky's sitting through a Fear. Really nice job here by Mercy and Asgraf. Namlu is actually chasing him right now, looking for some damage potentially there on that Mistweaver, but Asgraf just going to use that Gateway and already sitting down there potentially for a drink. Corky going to use that Innervate onto Numbliz, and that's going to allow Numbliz to power through here, use some expensive heals, because mana is definitely going to be the name of the game here between these healers to try to stay on top of Ascraft as much as possible. 
to uh, deny him those drinks. And that's going to be very key. If Asgarth can sneak away and get those drinks, He's going to have a massive advantage for his team. And they do find a, the Chaos Nova there onto Asgraf with the Solar Beam overlap. They're looking for the Cyclone. They do manage to find it there onto Asgraf, but no pressure onto z or Mercy. Uh, good control coming out here from Mercy, finding those fears onto Tran, being as annoying as possible. And uh, it is going to deny that setup, but Asgraf is burning through his mana right now. Yeah, definitely. Stun now on the Numbers. Corky's just getting one shot. I mean, this is scary. They're all behind the pillar, though. Or he should be able to recover big storm, and that is not what you want if you are the enemy team. You do not want to group up against a Demonology Warlock. He's going to get a lot of cleave damage with his Fell Guard and uh, be able to put out a lot of pressure. So you have to be very careful when you're taking these defensive positionings. Orky moves in. Bash Cyclone here onto Asgrath, and it's going to be Mercy in trouble. Fell Eruption lands. Do they have the damage? Nice backup there by z by Healing Surge is going to land. So anytime we're seeing crowd control we'll go out onto Asgrath, Zipa is playing very defensively, making sure he's interrupting at the right moment, grounding at the right moment, and now can get really aggressive. As you can see, he's casting the Lava Burst consistently here onto Trend, dropping him down to about 50% health, but Asgrath lands the Cyclone just to slow down Trend, make it even more difficult for Numbers to try to recover uh, mana for you know the long game so far. It's looking like Asgrath is a little bit ahead, and I think on this map, as the Druid, uh, he should be able to sneak away for drinks at moments. So I, I don't know who to really give the late game advantage to here. Yeah, we're going to have to see here the hunt being casted out here by Tren, but not really doing anything right now. And uh, Mercy is going to be ducking away, getting that uh, big iron bark from Asgrath. And that means that Tren is going to swap over to z but he gets caught up in a coil. Big damage coming out here from the Lava Burst, but Numbliss is there to deflect it with the Life Cocoon. Nice timing on that one. Tren was definitely in a lot of trouble there. Still having uh, another 10 seconds uh, away on his blur cooldown. And he does have the darkness, does have his trinket. So a lot of pressure coming in onto Mercy here out of nowhere. Dropping quite low right there from Corky. Tran also making his way over and getting some decent pressure onto Mercy. Corky though is taking a lot of fire in the back line from z -Pi. And is rolling over, trying to get heals onto Tran. And Tran gets Psycho on low. Meanwhile, Corky is also getting blasted here. Could be danger time, but uh, Solar Beam actually connects there onto z -Pi. Corky trying to sustain his team a little bit, but Tran caught up in the Lightning Lasso. Could be in trouble, but they do manage to escape that situation. Tran pulling back here over onto Mercy and manages to get top tier Corky with a very defensive posture and Numbliz as well. They finally get a Cyclone onto Asgarath and uh, the, life, the life cocoon is still going to be available in about 20 seconds or so. No revival uh, or restoral for Numbliz. So he's not going to have any like big, powerful healing cooldowns for a little while here. And his teammates are just going to have to need to stay alive on their own. Corky has no bark skin. Numbly is actually sitting through a hex right there, but he gets de uh, decursed, but he gets Cyclone at the same time. So Numbly is uh, having some uh, tough time here, staying out of crowd control against the agents. But z -Pi all of a sudden taking a decent amount of damage from Trent. Trent also feeling the heat. He has no blur right now. He's not feeling too confident to stay in. He can't really self-sustain too much there. He does proc a demon and does manage to stay alive with that. They stopped the drink there from Askarath, but Corky once again getting Cyclone. Numbly's getting stunned. The hunt being casted out onto z -Pi. Big pressure. No astral shift for z -Pi here. He's looking for the Hex. He's looking for damage. They get the coil onto Trent. Fear onto Numbly's. Lightning last connects. Big damage here potentially onto Trent, and that will be another life cocoon coming back here. But look at Askarath, meanwhile, sitting down for a drink. He's going to be coming back here with a decent amount of mana, and uh, as long as they can continue to get those drinks when they have pressure, they are going to be in a good spot here uh, on, on the side of the agents. Yeah, definitely. Trend just bouncing around, going after Zipai, going after Mercy, and forcing Asgrath to heal multiple targets is exactly what you want to do. I love the fact that Corky is also just blasting Asgrath, so going after him with that incarnation, hitting all three targets, and that's going to force As or Asgrath to use the Tranquility. Mostly it's just like a cooldown reset, more than likely, trying to get that efficient healing out. Zipai will go down to about 50% health, but they're making a setup here onto Trend. Shadow Fury coming in. This is huge damage. Trend has to be very careful. See what he can do, but it seems like he should be able to stabilize. Numbliz gets the heals, and dampening is getting higher and higher. The game is becoming more and more unstable, and I really am curious to see who pulls out ahead in that regard. Corky might just go down, though. 5% health. It's a bit of unexpected damage. There was a nice fear by Mercy that led to that event. And Umla's obviously in crowd control. Can heal up Corky, but now able to recover, pushing forward. into the damage rolling here on a Mercy. But Trent is just having a really difficult time for a Demon Hunter to landing. You can see these static field totems are quite annoying. He's getting axe tossed. He's getting feared. He's getting frost shock root. I mean, he hasn't hit anyone in the last 30 seconds of this game. 
Yeah, and uh, they are slowly but surely uh, kind of losing the pressure here. Look at Namli getting swapped through. Tren as well, taking a lot of damage. Oh, my goodness. Kind of, once again, huge damage coming in. Namli is there to deflect it with the life cocoon. But Namli running out of mana, running out of cooldowns. Dampening is ramping up. This is not where you want to be if you are nice beam. The good news is for them that they have Incarnation coming up in about 18 seconds here. Korg is going to need to get a lot of pressure with that because this game is definitely... Uh, getting out of control here. The agents are starting to run away with this one, looking really good on their Warlock Ellie comp. And uh, Zipa here taking some damage. Trent finally getting some uptime, but once again gets caught up in a Frost Truck route here. Finally gets a full channeled I-Beam. Gets a lot of pressure oh here, my but goodness. it's going to be a fear. It's going to be a Lightning Lasso. Once again, Trent trying to make it over there. But now this has no cooldowns here to save him. Still a couple of seconds away on that Revival. Trent realizing the danger he's in. The swapping to Namlis. Namlis here using that Revival. As soon as it comes off cooldown, they root Solar Beam, the Demonic Tyrant. But the Demonic Tyrant is going to be able to cast a couple of times. And here comes Corky with the Incarnation. Here comes the pressure. They need a big hit right now otherwise they are gonna probably lose this game can they get any big cooldowns here Quir quirky pushing in trying to find something they find a cyclone to ask they paralyze him on his trinket can they find any more follow-up here numbers has the leg sweep but feeling afraid to push in the hunt gets casted out but he gets cyclone and he gets uh, uh, interrupted actually on the hunt he still has it out of that cyclone potentially Tran could get some big pressure with that hunt, with that dot from the hunt as well. Metamorphosis is active. They got the eye beam active. They got the damage that they need. Here comes the hunt. They, oh my goodness, no! They cyclone the hunt of Tran. He's not going to be happy about that one. And now all of a sudden, look at Numbly's mana. He is so far behind compared to Ascraft. I think the agents got this one in the bag. Tran is just watching the game unfold before his eyes. He's just CC'd the whole game. It's unbelievable. Numbly is now getting swapped to. The pressure from the agents is high. Numbless has the life cocoon. Is he going to make the trade? He kind of wants to hold on to it. At this point in dampening, it is such an important ability, but he has to trade it out. And that was a big win for the agents. I don't know if that second life cocoon or another life cocoon really will, will come up at this point. Tren is just... I honestly am impressed with the amount of control the agents have had on Tren as a demon hunter. I mean, you have a lot of Numbless. mobility, but it was just making it so difficult. Numbless trying to go for a drink here, trying to, trying to shut that down, but Zipai realizing the situation pushes forward but maybe he's overextended himself going for a lasso here onto Tren, and they actually take him down it's a huge amount of pressure here for zipai ice fury being cast out he's loading up his damage and Tren needs to be very careful because numbers doesn't have much mana to really work with he's getting set up on here darkness drops down is it going to be enough it's a very dicey defensive ability that darkness but Tren still oh. has to figure out a way to get pressure numbers has zero mana left there's nothing left for him i feel like it's almost impossible that he's going to be able to sustain this for much longer. Yeah, and uh, that was a really nice uh, static totem onto Tren out of that darkness. But Numbless tried to sit down for a drink there. He's slowly recovering a little bit of mana here. I think he actually was drinking there, but now forced to stop. And is it going to be enough here? Tren in so much trouble getting stunned there by the Earth Elemental of Zipa. He procs the demon here at the perfect time there, manages to kill it off. And he will be able to self sustain a little bit with that leech. Here comes the hunt for Tren. They need to find something. Zipa immediately pops the Astral Shift, but he fake casted it. He still has it available. There's that life cocoon coming uh, back off cooldown and immediately being used here they still have a little oh bit of pressure goodness. left they have incarnation for quirky right now active quirky can get a couple of big hits here he's got a star surge loaded up they could take down zipa he's got nothing but it's gonna be quirky here potentially falling quirky catching a couple of hits from nominees they need to make their hit right now quirky gets the cycle onto mercy mercy trinkets out quirky looking for the damage here finally coming out with the star surge trend is there as well getting big pressure but he's just getting rooted he's just getting kited mercy once again oh. with the fears on to numbless cork in so much trouble trend is so much trouble and z Pi potentially will close it out here the earth trucks are coming in trend super low but i think he actually gets healed once again from numbless how is he doing this he's got no mana left it's 53 percent dampening corky left back in open field there's the shadow fury here comes the damage the lava burst no are coming in corky staying alive somehow spamming out the regrowth he's got the bark skin ticking trend now leaving the pillar <laughs> and gets a blast that the agents tie it up after a long fought battle here on Imperial Domain. The most important part of this match was the agents. They put on a masterclass on how to fully a demon hunter or just completely eliminate him from the game. Uh, the amount of crowd control that Tren received in this match is astronomical. Like, he, <laughs> he, 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 I'm telling you, he's frost shock rooted, and now he's coiled, and now he's feared. And now he's hexed. And when he gets on target, uh, you know, he was just in a lasso. But anytime he can get any kind of pressure, he is just being controlled the entire game. 
It's just so brutal. He gets feared again there. I, I wish we had like a, a way to track the CC received in this game for Trend because that was the story of the game. The agents, they just did such a good job rooting, stunning, coiling, fearing, knocking, trying to weigh that he could never get momentum in the match. And Corky's just can't really back him up either. You have these moments where even when Trent can get a little bit of damage, he's just eating full lightning lassos. No one can really say here it is. You see the coil and the lightning lasso. Here comes the Dreadstalkers and Trent just overextends himself. But that is such a frustrating thing to deal with as a melee player. You, yeah, I, I, I honestly can't believe how coordinated Zeke Mercy and Asgrath were at just shutting down Trent. Yeah, it's really rough as well on the on this map, but uh, really tough for Trent being the melee, navigating through that, only having that one dispel really uh, to work with on his side and uh, Zipai and Mercy, they're going to know what to do. And hey, that's the hard part, right? If you go after Mercy, well, you're leaving Zipai open. He's going to be hexing. He's going to be rooting. He's going to be using static field. He's going to be getting tons of pressure as well. And Mercy is going to be super tanky and just be really annoying. And if you leave Mercy open, it's almost worse because all of a sudden you're going to be dealing with the fears and with the coils and with the shadow furies and just all the control that the demo warlock brings and uh, the constant threat of tyrants as well. So uh, there's really not a great target for him to go after. And anytime you have to go back because the pressure is just too much from Trang getting kited and Corky, you know, kind of playing 2v1 almost against these wizards. That's when Asgraf is going to sit down. He's going to drink. He's going to make sure that they have that late game advantage. And as long as Asgraf can get those drinks, Numbless is not really going to be able to do too much uh, in the mana department. Now, I do want to give Numbless uh, a lot of credit because Numbless did a fantastic job. I mean, they were alive to like 55% or so dampening. I feel like he was healing with no mana whatsoever. He was, you know, doing uh, an incredibly good job with being efficient. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's such an important thing. It's just, that's a really difficult map. And I feel like in general, the agents, especially having a Resto Druid on your team on these big maps, like you pretty much are always going to win the late game if you can get away. Like if you're forcing the enemy team defensive and you can get into that late game position, it just so happens that it's like this thing that happens where when you are nice beam and you pull away because you're under pressure, all that happens is the short cooldowns and short... Um, crowd controls for the agents come off cooldown, right? Like you have the axe toss that's coming off cooldown. You have the death coil and mortal coil that's coming off cooldown. Lightning last is coming off cooldown. Static field totem is coming off cooldown. So when you do decide to get off the pillar and make a push, you're met with 20 CCs and then you have to go back to the pillar again, you know? So it's just like this yeah. constant battle of like, okay, well, if we sit back, uh, they're getting their cooldowns back and they're drinking. So we really have to go for it. Oh no, we went for it and now we're dead. So we have to go back to the pillar and it's just, that happens over and over and over. And Agents are just so good at pulling it off. On this map, things are a little bit different. We got hook point, nice small map. This is going to be way better. I mean, <laughs> if you're trend on that Demon Hunter, uh, that must have been the most miserable game of WoW he's ever played. I'm, I'm not going to lie. The agents <laughs> really set that up nicely. But on this map, I think it's going to go uh, a lot better here. Yeah, definitely a tough situation to be in. But uh, on this map, I feel like a big thing uh, is that I want to see Nice Beam go after Asgarath more. I want to see them actually try to catch Asgarath. Now, that's a lot harder to do on a Pyrrhon domain, but on this map, I feel like they, they have a really excellent opportunity. You could see in the start of last game, Namlis was kind of chasing him down a little bit. That's what I want to see. I want to see, uh, you know, uh, a Paralyze or uh, an Imprisonment from uh, Tran, and then try to just swap to Asgarath, because even if you don't kill him, you're going to be taxing his mana super hard going after Mercy, going after Zipai, and going after Asgarath. He's going to have to uh, use his healing over time on three people. And in general, Resto Druids, they struggle when you go after them and their teammates at the same time. I feel like that's when the pressure can become immense. So I would love to see some swaps over onto him. But we do have game number three here live. Agents looking to take away this one. This is the swing match going after Mercy on the side of Nice Beam. And so far getting good pressure onto Mercy. He's going to get uh, a Dwarf racial right there. And they're going to swap to z -Pi And uh, getting some good pressure onto z -Pi as well. That's going to be an Iron Bark onto z -Pi. Now they're swapping back to Mercy. Doing a good job here. Swapping between the hots. Look at Corky pushing in there. Asgraf actually, I think, immune the bash with that Tranquility Bubble. Really nicely done. But look at z -Pi. Meanwhile, blasting off here. Getting a lot of pressure. And uh, Nomad is getting hexed, getting feared. 
is now he's playing way of the crane or like what's going on here he's doing a lot of damage actually onto mercy randomly but finally uh, do manage to force him back and zipai could be in a lot of trouble here huge nature swift is coming through but zipai still down to 50 percent hp zipai how's he gonna stay alive he frost shock roots trend i need to get that control onto the demon hunter there it is they dispel the frost shock but he gets feared and now he's gonna be stuck in a cyclone here zipai uh, actually still kind of low they stun up trend they get a cyclone onto asgraf corky doing a good job here now they could reconnect onto zipa he realized the danger he's in he's gonna cast out a healing surge onto himself while asgraf sitting through that crowd control and so far in this opener nice beam having a lot more pressure yeah, definitely looking really solid here. Zipai right now moving forward, getting the damage rolling, trying to just protect Mercy, but they're on the back foot. How of Terror going to be used there by Mercy. Nicely done on the small map, getting a lot of value with that How of Terror. And Trent is just getting destroyed, forced to trade out his Trinket. That was such a nice setup. That was a bit of a surprise trap card there by Mercy. Not playing the Coil anymore, but just going for those big How of Terrors on this map is definitely effective. Yeah, and Tren right now making his way over back to Mercy once again, but Mercy is just being super annoying and running around the pillar, line of sighting, but Namlis actually uh, closes the gap there with a leg sweep, so they do get Mercy's trinket with that leg sweep. Asgraf's mana not looking too good. Corky applying those Moonfires onto Tre uh, onto Asgraf in the back line, making sure that he has a damage over time effect so he can't get those stealth drinks without at least dispelling himself, and that's going to allow them to get some more crowd controls in the start. Namlis actually... Uh, just poking Asgraf, putting him in combat, trying to be as annoying as possible. Trent did get a life cocoon there in the midst of things. Corky popping the incarnation now, looking for some big hits of damage. There's the paralyzed on the Asgraf. Here comes the CC Chen. They have the damage, but look at that denial coming out from Mercy. Really nicely timing uh, on that Axe Toss. Beautiful lightning last coming out from Zipai onto Trent, and they're shutting down this offense beautifully so far. Corky getting feared now by that Howl of Terror, finally getting dispelled. They're going after Asgraf. This is what we want to see here. Big damage onto Asgraf, but he's there to deflect with the bark skin, but already down to half mana already down his bark skin not a bad uh, you know situation to be in if you are nice beam just tab targeting to Asgraf getting a decent amount of defense out of the way there's the nature swiftness as well now being burnt and Asgraf has no tranquility so if they can catch him he could be in trouble they're going after him Asgraf taking a lot of damage here can they connect though Corky making his way over there Trent getting bashed Corky getting cyclone but it's on DR there's the feller option now onto Asgraf but it doesn't look like they're actually going to go on him with that and instead going to crack control him Trent could be in trouble Trinket's out there actually uh, an interrupt on the line Lasso nicely done there by Porky. Trent uh, actually doesn't have trigger for another 15 seconds. Mercy in a lot of trouble here. Asgraf powering through right now with the healing with that uh, innervate. And he gets Cyclone on his Innovate by Corky. So Corky really been doing a lot of work so far for his team here. And they got the mana lead on the side of Nice Beam. If they can keep Asgard from drinking, this constant swapping around is going to be really good for them. But Corky is cloned on low health and could be in trouble. No! Now he's sitting through a Hex. What are they going to do right now? Finally, they do dispel the Hex and Corky is able to recover. That was a crazy moment. You had crowd control on Corky and Numbliz, but Tren was just on Mercy and almost just soloed him. He went down to 10% health and portaled away. So really close call and you can tell i mean when trend can actually play his character and he can stay on target the amount of damage that he can put out on that demon hunter is insane so let's see if they can continue this success asgrath is very far behind on mana right now looks like he wants to sneak away and go for a drink numbliz is on patrol though and shuts that down right away and that's gonna be numbliz's job in this game more than likely somebody has to make sure they have tabs on asgrath at all times because if they can do that it will secure that late game mana lead advantage. Trend is just doing so much damage here on MRC. They get the unending Whoa. resolve, and this could just be the game. But I, I think it should be enough with Dark Pack, with the Iron Bark. That's enough damage reduction that I think MRC should uh, be able to live this situation. Now, a setup here on the Trend. He's got no trinket. Bit of a scary moment. Is going to glimpse, get the life cocoon, and now back on target. But I, I feel like Mercy is very scared at this point. Asgraf sitting down, sitting down for a drink right there. Did get about 40% of his mana, but Mercy going to be very scared. Zipai also might have to use Astral Shift right now. Did he use it too late here? They're trying to kill him through it, but Asgraf not in any crowd control right now. They get the beam there onto Mercy and onto Asgraf. Corky just crowd controlling him for just a second while his team has pressure. Corky looking for the Cyclone, but Asgraf manages to find it first. Corky trinketing out, but Asgraf actually shadow melting and going for a drink there in his face. Going for the bash there as well onto Corky. Really owning Corky right now with this crowd control, but look at the pressure here onto Mercy. Meanwhile, Corky getting static field them back they do find the cyclone onto Askarov. they do have the damage here onto corky uh, or onto mercy rather getting him down to 50 percent hp but Askarov with the nature swiftness denies it now i'm just sitting through a fear lightning lash coming out onto trend 
Zipai doing what he can here. He gets his hex onto Namdis, gets instantly dispelled by Corky. Trend dropping low, Mercy dropping even lower. Full bash on the Ascraft. They're going for the kill here. Namdis pushing in. Can they find the paralyze? Can they find the leg sweep? He's looking for it. Doesn't have the leg sweep just yet. Namdis just looking for the touch of death potentially onto Mercy. Mercy gonna use that gateway and go back, calling in the Dreadstalkers, looking to summon some big damage here in a moment. But I don't know if he's gonna have a moment. Full Howl of Terror coming out there onto everybody, but it does get dispelled. Trend looking for the damage. Nice ring of peace there to interrupt and Corky taking a little bit of fire in the back line gets a cyclone onto Ascraft, big damage onto Mercy, Hex gets dispelled by Corky, and Zipai getting a good amount of counter pressure here, being left open, Mercy now looking for the Demonic Tyrant, gets paralyzed on it, beautifully done there by Numbless, into a Spear Hand Strike, into a Cyclone, so they deny the Tyrant for now, Tren making his way back onto target out of the Cyclone, Ascraft looking for the drink, and Corky's there to deny it, he has the Innervate, he pops it, Ascraft's gonna have some good healing right now, but after that, his mana is not looking good, he needs to find a drink, his team needs pressure right now, Double leg sweep coming out for Nomalist. They're going after Asgard. Uh, who are they going after, actually? After Zipai, it looks like Mercy getting pre iron barred. So they're just going to swap to Zipai. But he has Astro Shift once again. Life Cocoon trades there for Tran. And once again, they're going to be making their way back to Mercy. He's doing a great job just kiting back and forth, running around this pillar here, showing how it's done on that Warlock. But now, finally, they are reconnecting. If they can stop Asgard's drink right now and get the pressure onto Mercy, I think Nice Beam has got this one then. Yeah, it's looking really good for them. Dampening is stacking up, and Mercy can no longer get away. He's got the unending resolve. Forced to trade that out right away. Doesn't want to be taking too much damage here. Ashgath is really struggling. His mana is not looking good. Trend is on target. Mercy portals away, but Trend is all over him once again. Popping the Immolation Aura and trying to get crazy. The damage is rolling, and all three members of the agents could potentially be in trouble here. Zipai is rotting down as well. Forky doing such a good job on that balance druid, but... Ultimately, Mercy is able to escape. Asgath once again in bear form, looking like he wants to go for a drink, but I don't think if he can afford to. I mean, Zipai might just die. He goes for the burrow and allows Asgath to drink just for a moment. He recovers 10% of his mana, but is it too little, too late? Can Tren close it out and take down Zipai? It's so close. The lightning lasso shuts down the oh. kill for just a moment. Asgath's in a cyclone. Zipai gates away, just trying to do what he can to escape, but Tren is in pursuit, and it eventually... Comes to a conclusion. Nice being able to win here on hook point on the small map. And you can just tell what a big difference uh, Trend being enabled in this match. <laughs> Not having to, you know, run through the gauntlet of crowds of full of roots and knocks uh, on that large map. But yeah, just a really nice performance. And eventually uh, they're able to keep track of Asgrath enough that he's not able to really ever recover his mana, which is just really important to do on that Druid. Yeah, that was really nice by Nice Beam. You know, Corky and Amelis, they kept tabs on Asgraf the entire match, making sure that he can never drink. And even there at the end, a lot of teams might get baited to ch uh, chasing Asgraf and trying to actually stop the drink. But instead, they know we have good pressure here right now. Let's just try to kill Zipai. And Zipai did a phenomenal job here. It's right here at the end. Uh, Asgraf actually sits down for a drink. And look at Zipai. He pops the burrow, trying to buy Asgraf some time while he's drinking because he's completely tapped. Like, this is the only thing they can do. He comes back with just a little bit of mana instant fell eruption and they continue the pressure they continue to chase to get the cyclone onto asgraf zipai with a beautiful lightning lasso beautiful gateway here as well but it's just nothing he can do at this point his healer is just stuck in an endless cc chain nice paralyzed there by nomalis good control from the cyclones by corky and tren i mean you said it when uh, he doesn't sit through an endless sea of crowd controls he does a lot of damage as you can see here 18 million on the scoreboard the top damage dealer in the match yeah, it's just a very different uh, game when he can stay on target um, and you're not able to drink. So this this might be one of those games that just comes down to like then a grand win, right? Like if we're just going to be going big map, small map, big map, small map, um, it is going to be nice beam that ends up coming ahead. So the agents, they're going to have to win a, a swing map. So they're going to have to win this pick and then as well on the small map uh, or nice beam could just close it out if they can figure out a way to enable uh, trend a little bit more in the match but we'll see where they're deciding to go and what the agents decide to do but i'm thinking mm, maldraxxus coliseum yeah i'm thinking a nice <laughs> little maldraxxus coliseum i'm thinking we're locking in the uh druid elemental shaman warlock once again oh it's Holveron. okay that would have been my second choice well well, it was a good guess. It was a good guess. I, I like that you went with a little bit spicier pick. I feel like Tolvir would have been like the more standard guess. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it would have paid I, off. I actually like better. Maldraxxus more personally. Yeah. Personally. How come? Uh, I like the theme of the map a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Got a lot of space as well. It's very similar, right? It's a very similar oh. layout to Tolveron Arena, but I just like thematically, I think it looks a little bit better. 
I gotta go with uh, with with Tolvir. You know, I'm from Egypt, so it is what it is. You know, this is my home turf, so that's fair. <laughs> uh, Tolvir, you know, uh, I think it's based on Uldum, right? So that's uh, Double that's where we hang out. <laughs> Elmas wants Druid, to well, Elmas wants to get in stealth and drink too. <laughs> <laughs> no, Double Druid, you know. This is a big sandbox, so if you're gonna be playing the cats, this is this is where you need to do it. Oh man! All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, two kitty cats in this game. The agents locking in the rest of Druid once again, and surprise, surprise, agents they're playing the same composition. They want the small, they want the large map. They want to be able to play, you know, the uh, warlock elemental shaman Druid. I, I don't know how I feel about nice beam selection. I don't, I don't know if I like it more. Because you're not going to... I feel like there's so many times in the match where Nice Beam kind of relies on the emergency healing that a Mistweaver provides, where it's like, we are really in trouble. Oh, Cocoon, we're fine. I feel like Resedrid doesn't have that same level of like, oh no, everything's going wrong. We're in big, big trouble. And we take a look at Nice Beam and the compositions that they have been playing. So obviously the composition that they favor the most is the Moonkin Warlock with the Mistweaver Monk. So it is interesting that we're not seeing any kind of mirror match between them on yeah. the large maps. Like Nice Beam could theoretically try to, at worst, go into a mirror match, um, but they're not opting to do that. Instead, they're going to be locking in Trent on that Demon Hunter. Yeah, well, they could play uh, Boomkin Demo, uh, which has done really well for you know. Oh yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like a mirror almost, uh, <laughs> Wizard Mirror at least. Um, yeah. But yeah, they they could have they could have they could have locked that in, and I I was thinking about that, you know, on. Um, on these larger maps, right? Uh, that could be something, but Trem, he's just gonna be playing on the on the big maps. He doesn't care, you know. And that's one of the things, you know. Generally, when we talk about melees on Tolvir and how annoying it is, demon hunters are, you know, a little bit of an exception to that because they have a lot of self-sustain if they can just stay on target, and they have a lot of mobility to actually stay on target. The one thing that really is not in their favor is the fact that roots are super powerful against demon hunters. Uh, just rooting them and, and getting those micro CCs is really annoying. And you can see Tran already sitting through that earthen grab totem. Uh, actually, that's a Corky's uh, mass root there, already using that solar beam, uh, trying to shut down some of that initial pressure. And now he's already getting swapped to here on the rest of Druid. Let's see if they can burn his mana. Already doing a lot of work here. He doesn't want to use his uh, bark skin. He's being greedy here. Now getting uh, hexed here. Corky does manage to dispel it, but ducks into bear form. And you can see the pressure already looking very unstable. But now finally, they're going to be able to get back on target here. Tran doing what he can, trying to get some pressure. Has to use the blur, though. And already, I would say the agent's getting a pretty explosive opener, forcing out some of those kind of micro-defensive cooldowns. Corky dropping low, no box king, no uh, re revival there on Corky as well. He could just go down here does finally catch the iron bark and this is one of those moments that you were talking about where the, that emergency healing just isn't there uh, for a rest of it compared to a mist weaver ascraft already sitting down for a drink uh, only a minute into the game he's going to come back with full mana now look at numbers he's already burned through his trinket he's burned through iron bark so now these swaps coming in from the agents are going to be completely lethal like if numbers falls behind on healing it could just be lights out keep in mind numbers also can no longer play undead so fears are going to be absolutely ruthless i feel like if you're a warlock and you're fighting double druid demon hunter you just get to have a field day with your fear spam it's going to be very effective in this match big setup here on the corky corky could just get dropped running out of line of sight he's getting blasted by the observer he's trying to take it down and eventually does but look at trend just having such a difficult time staying on target zipai is doing a phenomenal job on that elemental shaman but there it is the static field totem is going to get utilized again we're seeing constant frost shock roots onto trend this, uh, watch Trend in this match and see what happens to him as he overextends here and tries to get anything rolling. There is decent pressure here for the nice for the time being, though. Nice Beam really getting aggressive here with a big setup here onto Trend, but he's caught into the coil, into the hex, and now Zipa and Mercy can get the damage rolling here onto Kirk, uh, Corky. It's a lot of damage, though, and this is going to, of course, be that uh, really offensive cooldown from Corky trying to get aggressive here with the Incarnation, trying to get the damage rolling, but the agents have kind of completely shrugged it off, and they are not afraid in this matchup. Namely is sitting down for a drink here, the first one in the match, and Deepai does stop it there. He's keeping tabs here on the Druid, and it's going to be very important to do right now. Asgraf's mana slightly ahead, but he already did get a drink. Koriki still getting aggressive here with the Incarnation, getting a couple of Star Surges out. Still has a lot of Astro Shift here, uh, Astro Power, 
to uh, get aggressive with and he's going to be lobbing out the star surges ashcraft looking for the drink they're swapping to ashcraft with the chaos snow but corky actually looking for a cyclone here he gets bashed by ashcraft nice gateway from ashcraft trend now uh, looking like he's uh, enjoying himself here on tolvir getting uh, rooted getting coiled getting uh, lightning lassoed feared ashcraft sitting down for a drink gets stopped i don't think he was actually uh, he was able to get a little bit of mana there and uh, even just getting a little bit of mana is going to be uh, really nice for the agents. And they also have pressure here onto Corky. Numbers wants to sit down for a drink himself, but uh, so far struggling to keep his team afloat, trying, but unsuccessfully right now. And Zipa is doing a great job keeping up those flame shocks onto Numbers. But anytime he sits down for a drink, he's going to have to dispel himself and then try to stealth drink. Numbers is sitting down for a drink right now. They do have pressure. Look at Zipa making his way over. Does shut it down, but Numbers was able to get a little bit of drinking. And uh, that's the key. That's the nice thing about the rest of Druids. They can stealth and drop the aggro of those pets and actually sit down for those drinks. Corky could be in trouble, though. Numbers is in a coil. Numbers is in a fear. Corky sitting through a lightning lasso. Ashcraft sitting for a drink. Tren actually hoping the metamorphosis just to stop the drink gets bashed on it. Can they find any follow-up? Does it, ah, it does get the cyclone, actually. Well, Ashcraft pre-bearforms the uh, Chaos Nova here as well. Ashcraft playing a phenomenal game here, as usual, on that Restoration Druid. There's the Frost Shock Roots coming out onto Tran. Trying to solo Ashcraft right now. They have good pressure by Quirky and Numbers as well towards Zipai. And uh, this uh, solo mission of Tran is actually paying off a little bit, despite how well Ashcraft plays it. Now popping his Innervate. Looking to get some big heals here onto Zipai. And then potentially look for another drink. Numbers also looking for a drink, but Zipai is there. I believe he stopped him with an earthquake right there around the corner and manages to stop him for now. Corky taking a lot of damage, getting aggressive though with the incarnation to swap into Ashcraft. He's got no bark skin. Ashcraft could actually be in trouble. There's Corky with the drive by bash and they get the, uh, the darkness, but that's very unreliable. He's taking a lot of damage through it. Ashcraft dropping super low, but gets the nature swiftness. Corky uh, manages to get some cyclones there onto Zipai Trend, finally recovering as well from the Nature Swift, actually from uh, just regular heals that are coming out from Numbless, poking a Demon right there as well, and looking to get aggressive here onto Mercy. It's so far, uh, the Druids are both tied on mana, but uh, the pressure at times is massive, and Trent is down his darkness as a result. Yep, Trent needs to be very careful. He's caught into a Lightning Lasso, and there is no Trinket available. Luckily, Numbless is there to back him up and get the heals rolling, and at, at the very least, the heal over time effects of the Resto Druid allow Trend to kind of overextend more in the match, which is nice. You know, he can use all that Demon Hunter mobility to chase across the map, and as long as he has some heals on him, uh, likely will not die, um, as long as they don't have a, you know an overwhelming amount of damage. Orky moving into the midfield now, getting blasted just a little bit, looking for Cyclones, controlling up Zipai, but... Unfortunately, that was Tren's target, so not going to be able to actually get any damage rolling. Now a bash here onto Tren as he moves forward, trying to get a swap on Asgrath, and that's one of the problems, right? If Tren's going to overextend, he is very susceptible to just being caught in the Cyclones, being caught in the Roots, and now they can swap to him. Doesn't really have many heal over time effects, and look at that Tyrant just absolutely blasting Tren. Looks like he will be able to shrug it off and survive and continue this chase onto Asgrath, and... Isn't looking too bad for Nice Beam. Mana's not looking bad. Look at Numbless already sitting down for a drink. And keep in mind, Nice Beam is just one. What? I completely uh, missed that. Yeah, okay. I was like, yeah, this isn't looking too bad for Nice Beam. They're one away from closing it out. And then the game ended. They all left. I was like, wait, I did you see that? Because I totally missed that. Thank God for replays. Uh, that was interesting. I was looking up uh, their talents uh, on the AWC companion and yeah. Don't blink. Uh, I, I, Don't blink or you're going to miss it. So let, let's see what happens here. Okay. Like I said, thank goodness for a replay so we could actually see exactly how that played out. <laughs> I, I just feel like it was really nice. I was trying to explain it. It's like, it's really nice that Numbless can actually threaten drinks in the match and it just becomes a nuisance for him as well. But you see Asgrath, he has Trinket, he has Iron Bark, Corky's forced to run away. And this is where I was talking about Tren, you know, being exposed to Cyclones and he's going to get controlled if he overextends. Oh no, they're swapping to Tren. How, like, where is the opening? Like, how did someone die? Someone had to just get one shot. Like, this is crazy. All right, so let's see it. Asgrath, he's got Trinket, he's got Iron Bark. He Trinkets, he Iron Barks. He gets bashed on his Trinket and just gets sent. Yeah, okay. Hunt. Uh, okay. Nice. He actually Trinketed and Iron Barked and just died through it, so... I, I didn't really foresee that happening, but like you, like I said, you can't blink in matchups like this. To be honest, I was trying to compare um, Numbliz and Ashcraft to see if there was any difference between their builds, but uh, bad timing to do that, I guess. <laughs> Trend just decided to pop off. 
You said the hunt doesn't one shot that much. I, it looked I don't think that was the hunt. Me, I, the hunt. The hunt came in at like ten percent health. Let's be. Let's be completely. The, the hunt was the execute, but Cork, I think Corky was. Uh, I mean, look at him. He's got full. Uh, he's got full power right now, going for the the big star surges, and uh, he gets the cyclone onto Zipai. So there's no hybrid healing. They get the stun out of form. Trinkets instantly, but he doesn't have bark skin. I think that's the big thing. He has iron bark, but it's like a late iron bark. And then the hunt is the execute, but. Yeah, I would say um, the Star Search definitely did most of the work there. Uh, regardless, nice beam eliminating the agents. That is uh, that's something. I mean, <laughs> this team, they, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say about these guys. They, they came from being a team that might not even make it to the gauntlet into becoming the final boss of the gauntlet into becoming, uh, you know, a team that's currently top three here. Yeah, no, I mean, that is an incredible feat. You know, we were talking so much before we headed into, headed into that series about momentum and how it's going to be really important for some of these teams. And I think that's going to be really good for them heading into the gauntlet for a nice beam because that is just an incredible feat right there, being able to take out a team like the Agents in that third place currently. And, and now they're going to be moving forward here in the lower bracket. They're going to be playing the winner of this, excuse me, the loser of this next up series, Echo or Admirals Esports. And you can bet that that is going to be uh, a lot of momentum and a big confidence booster for them as well, Ben. Yeah, I mean, there really is no doubt about it. We'll have to see if they can get it done. I feel like even if you just look at like Nice Beam, for example, them taking down the agents, that's that's massive for their confidence and honestly, their success moving forward. The Demon Hunter Moonkin is looking good. And then, of course, talking about Echo and Admirals Esports. So far, Admirals Esports has had a really difficult time against Echo, but this could be the week, right? Never say never. I mean, if Echo slips up a little bit, maybe Admiral Esports has figured something out. Maybe there's a you know a better composition for them to run. Uh, I could definitely see this team taking down Echo. They're just such a solid player of rosters, and I feel like such a roster, such a solid roster of players. And I feel like they also just have such a plethora of compositions that they can run, and their work ethic is really high. So, really, can never count out Admiral's Esports. Yeah, definitely not. And you know, we've already had one upset today. So who knows for this next up series echo, the reigning champions in the European region, they've won the first three cups. Are they going to make it happen here in the fourth and final cup? Admirals Esports though, I mean, Ven already said it. This is an incredibly hardworking team. They've put in the work. They've had an, a, a successful team them uh, season themselves. So we're going to see very shortly here if they can ta uh, perhaps tackle the champions of Echo. We're going to find out after this break. Echo versus Admiral's Esports coming up next.
Hey everybody, welcome back. We are in the European region here for Championship Sunday. We're about to find out which team from EU goes to the fourth and final grand finals and which team is going to be dropped down to the lower bracket to try and battle it back out from there. It's Echo versus Admirals Esports. We have seen this match so many times before. Statistically, we know how it goes. Echo, kind of the reigning champion in EU, very hard to topple, but Admirals Esports, a very strong team themselves Zico what is it going to take for Admirals Esports to get a win here uh, well I guess we're going to find that out but so far it's been Admiral Esports best shot to play those uh, wizard matchups against Echo but Echo has just been better at it I feel like and I think Echo they're going to run the demon uh, the demo warlock and uh, the Boonkin until they get forced out of it so admiral esports i don't know what they have planned for that matchup but that's probably what they're going to be running into and they are going to be bringing in those wizards next on the rest of Druid. so this is something that we've seen from the agents into echo and in the past it hasn't worked so let's see what actually has changed here because well, i feel like this is a, a matchup that we have seen in the past and they have lost with i think next played evoker a lot of the time and they would just kill him and swap to him uh, and he wasn't yeah. able to like basically outplay Meh in the Evoker mirror. So him switching to Druid and not trying to go toe to toe, I think is probably a wise decision. At least on like a big map or maybe even a neutral one like Nagrand. You just see him playing at the pillar, keeping his heal over time effects, avoiding crowd control, avoiding damage. They're starting to push closer to him though. They get a double Shadow Fury. It's going to be an oppressing roar potentially. They coil next and they're just immediately going after him. Yeah, and we're going to see right now, uh, next actually using that Tranquility Shield, already using his Trinket, already using his Bark Skin, already down all of his defense, but he did immune the deep breath of Meh, Meh sitting through a full Howl of Terror right now, Swapsy taking a little bit of damage, was also taking a decent amount of damage with that Lightning Lasso from Jamie, next manages to recover his team here, and manages to recover himself with a couple of regrowths, and that's one thing, you know, that Echo has been so dominant at. They're so good at setting up these healer kills, get pressure onto the casters, and swap to the healers, and Waz already looking for the damage onto next. Anytime he pokes his head out, he's just getting those dots, he's getting that uh, kind of preemptive uh, little uh, damage going, and already Chan stopping the drink there with the Shadow Fury. Waz looking for the follow-up Cyclone. He actually knocks him out in the open field, but not able to find the Cyclone. There's a coil onto next, but they don't have any follow-up, really. They have some damage, but they're maybe trying to get that Bark's going to do Cyclone next, finally. Waz looking for the damage here onto uh, Swapsy. Animal also taking a decent amount of damage from Jamie. Recyclone follows up onto next, but no more damage. There's an axe toss actually onto next. Swapsy taking a lot of damage into a bash here. This damage and this CC chain is just endless. How did they even make that into a setup on the side of Echo? That was absolutely beautiful. They had no DR from that Shadow Fury that they used to stop the drink, but they just managed to stall and stall and actually get that stun DR back and really create something out of nothing. Yeah, I really like the way Echo is playing, playing aggressive against a Druid, running them down, swapping to them. This is the, the main way you're going to be able to beat a Restoration Druid. And they forced Hellstone from Swapsy and Nex, and they're probably only going to get one of those in this game. Nex is in bear form on the stun, hanging it out into the coil. He's very durable. He doesn't even have to bar skin, so nice pre bear form. Bashes Waz. Waz trinkets it into a lightning lasso. They're punishing the trinket. Trying to force him to use Bark Skin, but it doesn't even look like he's going to have to. He gets into Eclipse. He's ready to dump some Star Surges here. He's full Astral Power. He's switching over to Swapsy. Star Surges are incoming. Is he going to go down? He's getting very low right now. Next is patiently holding on to Iron Bark, just recovering him. With heal over time effects for the time being. Observer down for Swapsy. They're trying to kill that Observer off between Waz and Chanimal. They've managed to finish it. Now they're pushing across the map again, trying to get on top of Nex, but Nex is already sitting for a drink, so instead they just ship the Incarnation to force Nex to come off the pillar and stop his drink. And unfortunately, they actually overlapped cooldowns here. They used on ending Resolve and Iron Bark, and Nex didn't get a drink. So this is like now the worst case scenario. They're starting to get overrun. They're forcing them back to the pillar. Chanimal offensively gates in, looking for a Shadow Fury, finds that onto Nex. I think he's oppressing Roared. If they have any more crowd control, it could be dead. Swapsy's on the other side of the map. Next is trying to get to him. He oh. gets cloned. He drinks out of the clone, but he might just die anyway. Echo's pressure is so immense. Meg getting into the mix here with the deep breath, adding some damage, then recovering his team. Somehow, some way, next keeps Swapsy alive amongst that, but you, momentum is in favor of Echo. Unless next manages to get a drink, which he's trying to do right now. Waz moves over. Typhoon's him out of line of sight, bashes Whoa. him out of it. Beautiful setup from Waz. Excellent engagement, and Swapsy is almost will just fall and explode. And Echo just know exactly what to do. They're not going to wait around for the rest of Druid. They're not going to let him sit in the back and drink. They're going to get into the fight, and they're going to end it early.
they're playing so incredibly aggressive on echo and i mean this is what we see in uh, these wizard nerfs they're just going after the healers forcing our cooldowns constantly by doing that and then they're just flipping a switch getting that cc chain going on the healer taking down somebody else and it's just beautiful to watch here we can see uh, i think this was one of those sequences that really started everything here so channel gates in gets an oppression roar oppression roar shadow fury swaps the teleports to the other side of the map here with his gateway next gets a cyclone he trinkets out and then Swapsy manages to recover here with next cooldowns. He, he gets the trinket, he gets the big healing effects, you know, with the iron bark and everything. And then next thing's okay, we're chilling. I'm gonna sit down for a drink. And he sits down for a drink. They get a cyclone onto Jamie. They start pressuring Swapsy. Waz is just all over him here. And then he typhoons him out in midfield. Then he gets a, a bash. And meanwhile, while that's going on, Meh is doing tons of damage. Chanimal is doing tons of damage. Waz is adding in a little bit of extra damage as well. And all of a sudden, Echo is able to just close it out instantly. And next actually used his nature swiftness uh, as he got, um, as Swapsy got cyclone right there. So uh, he has his nature swiftness up right there. Actually, I don't know. Does he actually manage to get it off? So I think he gets it off there with his trinket but uh yeah he does uh but still you know they, they managed to force next trinket because of that uh, low cyclone onto swapsy as well at the start of that replay so was really doing a great job here on the moonkin getting these cyclones time and time again meh once again adding in the damage you can see the tip the scales fire breath right there onto swapsy at the end securing the kill for them getting the disintegrates and channel of course with the axe uh with the fell blade storm getting a lot of work done as well these three they just work so well together everybody's playing their role perfectly and they're always all of on the same page you never really see them uh, kind of mess up their offense like uh, was cycloning channels burst or, or things like that it's always everybody's perfectly in sync it's what's what i'm finding most insane about this is you could sit here and be like well demonology boomkin is just the best comp in the game and this is the only reason they're succeeding or something but nobody else is playing it if it was that easy like and they just win everything no matter what the component the composition is obviously very strong and definitely one of the best compositions but nobody can match their level of play even despite that um it just seems like they can't even come close like echo or making that look like a skirmish just running through not even getting pressured <laughs> at all just just like get out of the way man just let me get to the finals like <laughs> they're not even getting glanced at this moment uh admirals esports they're gonna go with the druid again bring it to robodrome try and get a big map and get a little bit more space for next uh which makes sense if they do believe in this composition and that they can make it work on big maps but they're gonna need an answer on small ones because i i just don't see this working on small maps yeah uh i just feel like admiral esports they're they're trying more of the same you know and like to their credit they're an amazing team they they're beating everyone except echo right and consistently doing so as well like they really have solidified themselves as the second best in the, in the region but i feel like they're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again you know they're trying these different wizard setups they're trying the the warlock alley different versions of that they're trying you know uh, these uh, these kind of more of the same comps and i feel like the thing that i really have liked about admiral esports in the past and i feel like something that's really unique to them is the fact that they have blizzo on their roster is the fact that when swapsy plays the moonkin i think he is just one of the best moonkins so i i, I want to see Sw get swapsy out of the warlock get him on the moonkin get blizzo in there on the warrior and try to make something happen on the small maps with that because i feel like that is a comp that is very unique to them that nobody else can really replicate and work on finding a way to uh, to beat echo with that because these wizard mirrors we already seen the agents do this you know mercy zipai those guys are absolutely insane at warlock ellie as well we just saw them play um earlier and i, I feel like admiral esports are just trying the same thing here uh, that the agents have already tried like the, they've already kind of we've kind of already seen what happens in this matchup and it doesn't look like it's gotten any better like sure there might be some mid-game adaptations to it but it feels like echo are just getting better and better in this matchup even it doesn't even seem that it's getting you know going in their way uh, oh so we'll see next already down his whole spell book as i say that <laughs> He's already <laughs> used everything. Jamie gets cloned low. He's not getting any pressure out. Met isn't a fear at the moment. Can they get any pressure out with a fear? It doesn't look like it. His entire team at full health during that time. Next is trying to reposition, get away from Waz. He doesn't want to get cycloned low. He doesn't want to get bashed. But Chanimal is just already aggressive, pushing towards their pillar. Waz is moving in. Swapsy is cloned and left behind. Met is hovering to one side. Chanimal's on the other. The axe toss next. They're setting him up. Fire breath connects, purging all of the hots. Next is on the run, trying to retreat and just hide in a corner and hope that his team can make something happen. And 
Echo are just the boogeyman beneath the bed, just waiting. <laughs> like, this is just, uh, this looks like a nightmare for them. It's so terrifying. A double shadow fear on Jamie and Swapsy into a clone, into a solar beam. Um, Swapsy's cast is completely shutting them down, and they're right on top of next. Like a channel, he's a melee warlock, just running up next to next and just going for the coil, <laughs> sending the demon bolts. Like, this is just bad manner almost. Like, there's, there's no threat to them at all. They're just running them over. Yeah, this is not looking too good for next. Still, the fire breath connects, disintegrates, coming out from Meh, and he is ducking for cover right now around the corner. Finally manages to stealth drink here, actually. Channel is looking to stop it, but Swaps is doing a great job there, uh, making sure that he doesn't get it. But I think Channel might have stopped it with his uh, fell blade storm there. Uh, Channel really good pet control in that situation. Amy getting blasted, runs back to the pillar. Swapsy now left alone in midfield. Could get swapped to, or they could just try to set up onto next. It looks like Meh wants to get over there, make sure he doesn't drink. Goes for the sleepwalk onto Jamie, and Channel gets dispelled out of that fear. Waz actually, uh, what is he doing over there at the gate? Uh, it looks like Waz just DC there. Oh, yeah, Waz. Well, that's a win God, condition. That is a win condition. And you know, if you are Admiral Esports, you always go on the DC player. He can't defend himself. Don't go after his teammates. Go, go, go. Pop everything on Waz. He doesn't have bark skin. He finally makes it back. But uh, he is in bear form, spamming out the, the frenzied region. Can he get some crowd control on the Matt Emerald Communion being forced out there? And they do find, they do get the bark skin, the renewal. They did get the Emerald Communion. Waz still getting blasted right now. Taking a lot of damage right there. There's the deep breath coming through. And they get the bash onto Swapsy Channel, trying to defend the situation here. And uh, they do manage to recover from that, but it did cost Meh a lot of his cooldowns. And next, potentially has an opportunity to sit down and drink. Never mind, he does not dead, have an opportunity to sit, to sit down and drink. That's going to be the Iron Bark coming through, and Swapsy does manage to get topped. Oh, man. Okay, he's in the fight again. Waz is back. Nature's Vigil's up. He's got Incarn, though. Oh, God. How is Swapsy going to survive this? He's disrespecting no one any resolve. He ports back upstairs, but he's far away from Next. He's got to survive the attack. He might even get knocked off the edge. Next has to come in the middle of the map to heal him. Jamie's on one side of the map. Next is on the other. Swapsy's on the other. They're just all over the place right now. They've got Next exposed in the middle of the map. They can blast him. He jumps up to Swapsy. Channel ports on top of them. Looking for a Shadow Fury. Gets Axe tossed on it. Next is repositioning. Trying to get to a more favorable position. At least his mana isn't completely run out at this point. He's going to try and make some sort of miracle happen here against them. But Meh is just an evoker that never runs out of mana. It's just impossible to run him out of mana. And if you're trying to win with Ellie, Shaman, Warlock, you're not going to against Meh. Like, how do you oom him? He just never ooms. That's the main win condition for this composition, <laughs> which is why I don't see this possibly working for them. Swapsy's beamed and stunned in, in place here, just taking a beating once again down below half. Channels is going for the Demonic Tyrant. He gets stunned on it. They're delaying it, finally pressuring him back. Can they force it on any resolve here? They fear him on his cast. They're just denying that Tyrant as long as possible. But Met is pushing forward. They're trying to get on top of Next. Living Flames out. Met is doing damage in their face. It's so BM. And now he's getting stunned up there. He's going to use the Obsidian Scales preemptively, knowing that he would get stunned and reduce a lot of damage in that exchange. Channel is just chasing Swapsy around, just waiting to finish him. Observer is down. They knock him far away. Next is trying to pick him up. Manages to get a big kill with that Nature Swiftness and Iron Bark. Swapsy ports to the top side, but there's an Observer that he's got a line of sight. Waz knocks him into the Observer and then clones him low, denying the heal over time effects. They switch a Shadow Fury over onto Jamie. They're trying to just keep Next from drinking. And re now they rescue Channel up to Swapsy. Swapsy's all by himself on this top ramp. He's going to jump back down and get Next to his Resto Druid. But if Next doesn't get a drink, they're not winning this game. He has to get a drink, maybe even multiple drinks. Yeah, you said it, and it's because of mass efficiency on that evoker. He just, I don't know, he's just like an energizer bunny. He just doesn't run out of steam here. And uh, Matt is going to be able to get a, a nice, decent amount of mana. Next, actually did sit down there uh, for a big drink and was able to recover a decent amount of his mana there as well. So uh, Matt not looking too good there in the mana department compared to Next. But uh, like you said, it's going to take multiple drinks potentially here for Next to actually be able to walk away with a win here. They Ooh, the have here on the channel. The Hex. Huge Hex coming out there. They do finally manage to get a dispel on it. But it did cost Channel all of his cooldowns there. Really nicely done there by Jamie Sneak that in and uh, all of a sudden Admiral Esports showing some signs of life here Cycle coming out onto Jamie net looking not too hot here on mana he does have the Emerald Communion to recover some of it but Waz playing very aggressive here trying to shut down next from drinking and anytime he has to pull back here that's when a situation like that can occur where next can drink Animal getting axed oh, off Waz popping the incarnation looking to get He's aggressive dead. Now, Waz 
dropping super low there. Activates the bark skin, looking to get aggressive, but Chanimal is the one taking the brunt of that exchange. Lightning Lash coming through. No Big on Chanimal. He's got no unending resolve, and he does port to safety there. Emerald Community comes out, but is that going to be enough? They need to get more heals here. Net lifting him back to the pillar. Spirit Room finally connects, and Chanimal will be able to stabilize. Next hitting now for a drink right now. Can they stop the drink? Demonic Tyrant coming out. They're trying to shut it down with damage, but Next is going to get full mana here in that exchange. Chanimal looking for the Shadow Fury. Finds it. Can they find the Sleepwalk follow-up? They do manage to get it. And now, can they do something with the CC chain? Because Next has surely full mana right there. And we can see he does. And right now, Admiral Esports looking very, very good in this matchup. This is the best that they've looked so far in the series. If they blow this lead, they're hu hugely ahead on mana. They got vital cooldowns from Channel. They've shown that they can create pressure and dampening. They've got Demonic Tyrant available. There's a big opportunity right now for Admirals Esports to take game number two possibly tie this series up. Met is struggling at the moment. There's so much damage incoming. Waz is trying to turn it around with the Fury of Elune on Jamie, but he's got Ancestral Guidance. He's going to be healing that triple Thunderstorm, knocking all three players' important casts right there by Jamie. Jamie's been a key playmaker in this game, that Hex on Meh, these knockbacks, the pressure. He's got to keep his lead on damage. He's single-handedly carrying the game right now for Admirals Esports. He has to keep this lead if they're going to be able to pull this off. Tampani is getting higher and higher, and Incarn is coming up very soon. 30 seconds Observer in the sky they snipe it out channel spamming out fears but he's getting low can jamie do it can he carry the pressure channel forced to port back and away waz is trying to get back to the pillar with the stampeding roar as well but he gets caught in a lightning lasso he's pinned down no bark skin man is rooted out of line of sight that root mvp oh. jamie admirals esports take it one to one Beautiful work there by Jamie. Actually manages to snipe that root there and manages to continuously force some big, big cooldowns. And this time around, they were able to find those drinks. Next was able to sneak away a couple of times. And uh, that's a big difference uh, compared to what we saw in game number one. Admiral Esports uh, definitely showing up here uh, on the Robodrome. And you can see exactly what happened here. Uh, this was, I think, the close call on Chan where... He, uh, this was the close call on Chan where he basically had to use everything prior to this. And uh, now this is where Waz was getting aggressive. And look at Chan here, how low he dropped. Uh, Emerald Communion coming through, but he's out of line. He teleports back into line, catches a big heal with that. And then finally, the Spirit Bloom did connect there. And Chanimal got uh, topped up. But at that point, they go after Waz. He goes for the Solar Beam onto Swapsy. Feeling a little bit confident here, trying to get some pressure going, trying to get some Cyclones onto Jamie. Demonic Tyrant gets shut down, Matt getting aggressive with the Disintegrates. They stop next from drinking with that Moonfire. They knock Swapsy out in the open and uh, Fire Breath connects. They're getting a very aggressive, but then the Demonic Tyrant comes out for Swapsy. They get the Fear onto Matt. And uh, at this point, they force Chanimal and Meh away. And then they swap to Waz. He pre bear forms, pre frenzied regions. And look at that root right there. That is so annoying for Meh. He actually kills off the root totem, but he can't dispel himself. He doesn't have anything. And look at Jamie also positioning to, to do a knock right there. That was beautiful uh, with that lightning lasso, preemptively running between Waz and Meh. And then going for, you know, a big strike there to make sure that just buying, you know, one or two extra seconds of meh not actually being able to use any heal. So, Jamie, definitely a key player in this match. Carrying the damage, getting the CC, getting the roots, getting the hexes, getting it done. And he's going to need to do that uh, in, you know, a lot of these games because uh, I feel like he's been, he's been a very shining player uh, in that last one. But uh, can you repeat it is the question. Yeah, especially on the small maps. I almost wonder if Next shouldn't play a Druid um, as a blind lock just because I think the small maps are going to be so difficult for him. Like, if he didn't get the drink, they would have lost on mana so much earlier. So we are going to hook point the smallest map in the pool, and now Admirals Esports need to make that debate. Do they have a different comp maybe they could use? Maybe some sort of Shadow Priest comp on a small map um, available to their side? I, I wonder how well maybe Shadow Priest Warrior on a small map could do in this type of matchup. Um, as they played that in the past. Uh, maybe even their Boomkin Warrior on a small map might not be the worst, um, but having the Resto Druid, I think, is going to be more of a liability um, than anything here. So I, I do think Next should change that role. Yeah, we'll see what they do here. Uh, we have to remember as well, Echo, they've been playing a lot of Moonkin Druid uh, with uh, Warlock, but they also have uh, a guy named Raikou sitting on the bench. So they could tag him in. I don't think they will in this matchup. I feel like Echo locking in hook point, though, uh, is probably just to deny Next from those drinks and to try to force him on that Evoker. Next, not going to fall for it. He's going to stay on the rest of Druid. And Echo probably just going to lock in the same thing here. I also do wonder with Waz DCing during that game, usually when you DC, you lose all your frames. 
so I wonder if he actually had frames when he was playing. I, I feel like it makes a big difference, uh, you know, in terms of tracking DRs and things like that. So uh, I'm not sure if he had them or not, but uh, it could definitely be a factor there as well uh, for Echo's side. We'll see what they decide to do here. But Admiral Esports manages to, to pick one up here uh, in, on that last game. And now they have a swing match. They can win here. And I start having that swing advantage as well. And that will be the first time, I think, in the entire season where Echo actually loses. I don't think they've lost to anyone yet. Not in a series. I think the and, uh, has taken two yeah. games off of them in the finals one time with a Demon Hunter Ellie. But they have not lost yeah. a series yet in any of the cups. Only a game or two. And that, like max two, <laughs> uh, even, <laughs> even in a grand finals. So uh, Echo here now, I, I can't imagine them changing anything. I play Boomkin, Demo Lock, uh, Evoke here on the small map, given that Admiral's Esports has given the same comp. And they're likely going to play just as aggressive as they did in game one. And that's when it becomes really difficult because the rest of Druid just needs help and support. And then Jamie can't be focusing on doing damage. And if Jamie isn't doing as much damage as he did in that last game, they're not going to win. He has to do at least 30% more damage than every player in the game, or Admirals Esports can't win. I don't think it's possible. He, he has to. He has to basically be the carry for the team, shut down the Cyclones, do 30% more damage than every other player in the match. Also, setting up the kills, like knocking people out of line was pretty sick. Um, maybe on a small map, he can be utilized more in that regard. Um, does Roots on the Evoker super effective to prevent a lot of their healing? And man, maybe it wasn't expecting that either. seems like these root, these root strategies are becoming more and more prevalent as an answer for Evoker healers. Um, so just keeping him pinned and, and maybe they even go after Meh. I honestly wonder what happens if this is a small map and they're running down next, if they can kill Meh at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an option for, for Admiral Esports. They do have the lockdown with Swapsy on the Warlock and they do have the damage with Jamie on the Ellie. And they have the tools it just uh, comes down to how will they use them and how clean will those setups actually look because they need to have some kind of crowd control on the waz and channel or they will just shut it down uh, and uh as a little fun factoid since we were talking about the echoes uh, kind of domination so far this season they are 5-0 against admiral esports in series and 100 uh, sorry 100 <laughs> 17 to 4 uh, game record uh in total games so admiral esports now uh that record is 18 and 5 uh you know with the, this year's being one to one but still uh this is the best statistically that admiral esports has looked so far so let's see if they can actually turn the series around and actually grab a win and hand them a defeat because that would be a massive thing to do right before the finals get some doubts in echo's head get uh, get them thinking you know uh, get that um, you know momentum heading into the finals uh, as both of these teams are qualified, but we'll see if they can get it done here on hook point. It's going to be a tough job, especially for next year, staying out of harm's way, staying out of crowd control. We'll see if he can get it done right now. Waz going to be taking some damage in the opener, and uh, he's going to be getting a beam actually onto Swapsy, looking for those uh, big incarnation hits. Yeah, you know, Jamie Gust of winning around the map, pre-burrowing, anticipating some damage, repositioning so he can line his like clones, keeping his flame shocks up, pumping out the lava burst. Damage is looking good so far, only in the first 30 seconds of the game. Their pressure is huge right now onto Chanimal with that fear onto Meh. Maybe your Admiral's Esports are powering up and getting into their own now after that game two victory. Uh, but this is a matchup that is typically going to take some time. So they have to maintain this level of play for, you know, upwards 7, 10 minutes, uh, which is where you start to get out min-max usually by Echo in terms of efficiency. It's going to be a bit of a marathon. Here comes the incarnation. Massive damage. Oh, oh my. He's dead, dude. He's just dead. Like, call an ambulance. Like, I, that, that, was, that was more brutal than uh, it needed to be. I don't know if we can air that. <laughs> Uh, are we like we, we, is that against TOS what just uh, yeah I, I think we're, we're, we can just uh, yeah we can just pretend that didn't happen uh, that was that was insane I I mean, right gonna, when I say this game can't log. end early right when I'm like this game usually takes 10 minutes to <laughs> yeah I want to get out min max well I guess I got out min I guess I got out min max pretty early here this time around but we're going to need to get a kill log on that for sure. I need to see exactly how much those star surges was. And let's see what happens here. So let's just walk through the replay. Next, actually, Iron Barked a little bit too late there. He Iron Barked himself at the end. So it's a Demonic Tyrant firing on Channel. It's a deep breath. And 
I don't even know if Waz actually got to do damage there with his incarnation. Let's let's just see it again. It was, Orbital Fung. Strike hit him for probably like 80k, a Star Surge for like 80k, and Meh hit him with a Deep Breath for probably 100k, and then a Tyrant hit him for. If I had to guess what the Death Log is, that's my guess. Hopefully, we. I wonder if we yeah. can pull up details. I want to see if my guess is correct. There's probably a Tyrant for 60k, a Star Surge for like 70k, Orbital Strike for 70k, and Deep Breath for like 90k, all at the same time, right here. Yeah. 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 I think actually there's two star surges. Yeah, I think it was it was probably two. Orbital strike, boom, boom, right? Right, three, yeah. two, orbital strike, boom, boom. We're not going to, oh, we're a little bit behind now uh, on the replay, but he, he got the, the the combo. Everything went off, and Swapsy was interrupted, so he couldn't use defensives. So it was like perfect storm situation where he couldn't use his wall. He did, They just broke Dark Pact, and boom, boom. Yeah. Is there just one boom, boom? Nah. It's just one boom, yeah. one star surge. I think didn't he cast one with the orbital strike at start, and then one at the end. I think he got the did he get the kill him? No, channel got the kill him though. So yeah, maybe the maybe the second one didn't go off. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, look look at this graph for fun here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Admiral's esports actually had a bigger spike at one point, which is crazy to think. Look how much bigger it actually is for Admiral's esports. Yeah. They actually set the bar at three hundred fifty k, and Echo only had three hundred k, and they exploded. So, oh, oh that's my. healing done. Uh, healing done is echo. So Matt, Matt did 350k HPS in that spike, and then next couldn't keep up. It seems. Yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. And damage done, they did, they did a 350k spike. Matt just deflected it instantly, and uh, at the end there, 300k damage done there. Uh, it, that that's the thing, right? As a team. That's what that's what that's what you want to do. You want to have everybody committing, you know, all of their big hitters at the same time, and and that's really what uh, what great teams can do. And we are going to the Nokudon Proving Grounds now. What do you do if you're Admiral Esports? Uh, I feel like uh, we're probably going to see the same comp, right? You're just going to walk that off. I don't know how I like this map. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm just like. This, how often does this map get picked? This is probably one of the first times, maybe the second time that this map actually gets picked. I'm really trying to trying to think about this on like a. I don't even feel like I see this map that often in actual ranked threes. It's like only solo shuffle. Like, how is this gonna play for wizards? Like, how do you drink on this map as a druid? It's 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 like deceptively large. Like it's long, but it's not wide. So, <laughs> like you can't really. You're gonna go all the way back to the starting area to try and drink. Are they just playing a completely different comp? Are they doing something really weird? So oh. was I right about my prediction? So deep breath. Let's see here. Deep breath, 30, 40 k plus the other tick, which is twenty five k. So like seventy k. Where's the tyrant bolt? Oh, there it is. Tyrant bolt, sixty six k. Star surge, eighty k. I was pretty close. Yeah. Where's the pretty orbital pretty strike? The orbital strike. I don't even see it. Yeah. This I mean, like, look, this it. is in this. The, the kill log is actually kind of inaccurate because uh, there's things that there's so many uh, entries, you know, there's so many like little things like the, the pets there as well. Uh, but yeah, that the demonic tyrant hit really hard. And <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> star surge hit hard. Everything hit hard. The deep breath hit pretty hard, too. You can see two ticks, I think, from the deep breath. And yeah. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of you know little pet damage swings as well, uh, adding in there. So a lot of damage coming in. Uh, that was in uh, that was a 0.4 second uh, death log that we saw right there. Point and, four. Um, yeah, that was that Are was we speed that was running. O, that was 0.4 <laughs> death log. So Does the MDI uh, have faster bo boss death logs. Than <laughs> <that>? <laughs> I think we got the MDI beat on that one, actually. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's match it's push point. week for Echo. It's push, it's push week, week for Echo. For Echo. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my> right now, <laughs> they're just owning in the MDI. They're owning in the Race to World first, and it's push week in the AWC apparently as well. The Echo is just on fire. <laughs> oh my God, Admirals Esports! Like when they lose, it looks so bad, but then when they win, it looks so hard. <laughs> This is going to be such yeah. a fight for them to be able to pull this off. Uh, they're going to Nakudon, which is really different. Nobody usually goes to this map 
um, in tournament play. So maybe they're just hoping for some unfamiliarity possibly from Echo uh, and try and use this location that not many teams actually select to try and get an advantage here. It's a really narrow map with these pillars off to the side, the wall in the center, and then the two ramps on each end. So usually as a wizard cleave, you're going to run around the outside of the map doing laps um, using the ramp and using the side pillars to line of sight while you're navigating around the outskirts of the map. Um, but drinking on this map, I don't think it's going to be super easy. Uh, it's pretty easy to cross the distance because, um, again, it's limited in one direction. It's a very rectangular map, not a square. So I don't know how well this is going to work for them, but they're going to need to make it work. Jamie's going to need to keep up the damage. They're going to be ready for the hits here when Waz goes for that coordinated uh, incarnation and deep breath. Like, Echo are just so synergized. Um, so it's you, you just you don't even get time to react with how synergized they are. All of their characters are just in sync at any time. You're just hit by all three of them at the same moment. And with that synergy, they're just ending their these matches so fast. Yeah, and let's see if they can uh, break another record. That last game was a, a minute and 15, I think. And uh, we're already summoning the Demonic Tyrant here for Swapsy. Waz actually taking a decent amount of damage, but I think Swapsy actually got interrupted there on his Demonic Tyrant, already going after his pet. And... They're utilizing the map very interestingly here. So they're just uh, kind of dragging Echo back and just kiting them back next, playing on max range here. And one thing that's nice about this map is that it's just a big circle. Well, we're going to have to table that thought for a second here. Swapsy actually is taking a lot of damage there next already, down most of his cooldowns, using the Tranquility, using the Iron Bark here, keeping Swapsy alive. But Swapsy didn't have to use his Unending Resolve, which is that big cooldown. Animal getting aggressive, war, uh, Waz trinketing, and next actually sitting down for a drink right now. Lightning Lash is going to come through. Swapsy, though, teleporting back. Eye of Killrog, Hell Funnel on his pet there. And that's something that uh, these demo warlocks are doing. They use Eye of Killrog and then cancel it to instantly call their pet back next to them. Uh, so that's why they're using that. Swapsy in a, in a mortal coil right now. Waz trying to look for the cyclone here, trying to find it, but gets line of sighted. And uh, Jamie, and next. I think, we, I think I realized why they use this map. They're just using it as like a big Dalaran, basically. They're just running in a big circle, and that's going to allow Next to always be at max range. So I actually kind of like this map pick. Well, Channel's got his port at that center wall so that he can play offensive and still port back behind line of sight. So the, you know this new territory seems like Channel is pretty familiar with. Swaps is going to get interrupted on a Shadow Fury there. They're pushing forward while charging in and getting aggressive. They stun Swapsy. This could be the big hit. Jamie shuts it down with a Lightning Lasso and wind shears the Tyrant. Again, good MVP defense from Jamie here to block that assault. Meg loading up that Dream Breath on the channel, trying to keep him aggressive. Fire Breath gets lined here by Swapsy as he's cold back behind the pillar. They're not going to be able to connect it. They're trying to keep Waz up at the same time as making this push, but next is maintained his mana very well in this position. Swapsy pulling back with his team towards this ramp side. Meg getting a triple Dream Breath, ripping off all those Flame Shocks right when Jamie procs in Ascendance. That's going to just destroy his damage at that moment in time. It's really unfortunate. Now he's into a full Cyclone. Those Flame Shocks not going to be going up anytime soon, and as long as they can keep staggering those and really limit Jamie's damage as much as possible. That's what's going to make it impossible for Admirals Esports to win. Yeah, and we'll see if they can continue to do that. Uh, Channel right now actually being pushed back, and immediately when that happens, you can see Next sitting in the back line looking for those drinks, but they're pushing all over him, and they are going to be getting a bash into a full cycle onto Waz. Nice lightning last one to Channel. And uh, so far, actually, I really like what Admiral Esports are doing here. They've hold on to all of their major defensives. Next mana is looking good. Emerald Community being forced out from Meh. Meh trinketing here. And it's really hard for them to actually stay on top of Next and continue to chase here the way Admiral Esports are playing this map. And so far, it's working out for them. But one mistake is all it takes. We've seen the death logs from Ek. We've seen the burst that they're capable of doing. <laughs> right now, they're looking for the Cyclone on the next. They could set up on the next out of this one. I think they might actually. Waz looking for the re-follow up here, potentially. Whoa. Next, uh, a nice leap there back. Nah, missing his deep breath as a result. Nice uh, leap there by next. And he dodges that dangerous situation there for a second. All right, Meg getting a huge heal here, recovering the team. Although their offense is botched, they still have a Tyrant in their back pocket. They still have an Incarn in their back pocket. So as soon as they're stabilized, they're going to look to send those as soon as possible. Channel getting in line of sight, jumping on top of Swapsy. Swapsy kiting away off to the top of the ramp. 
And portaling back out of line of sight to avoid Waz. Waz is chasing next. Swapsy's running in the opposite direction, letting the heal over time effects do their work. Waz trinkets under the stun. Solar Evo and Swapsy, big incarnation. It's uh -oh. match point. And Swapsy, you can't afford any more mistakes. Is he going to go down? Is next ready? They cyclone him low. They switch their damage to Jamie, but Jamie's already at the pillar. He should be able to line of sight. Swapsy survives this initial stage of the attack with Fury of a Loon. We're into phase two right now of Echo's Enrage. Is Swapsy going to survive on any resolve? He's dying through it. Next is powering up with Iron Bar. Tranquility, every cooldown to keep Swapsy alive on that assault. Now they're bashing Waz, punishing that trinket earlier. And then they're going to cyclone him off the bash, prevent him from getting any momentum moving forward. Next, repositioning. His mana is at least still in a good spot, but every time that incarnation is up for Waz, if they combo it together, it's so deadly. Yeah, they definitely got a lot there so far. Next has his trinket still, but really no emergency buttons right now for a couple of seconds. going to have that nature swiftness coming up soon. But uh, aside from that, it's not looking too good in terms of defense on the side of Admiral Esports. But next setting up for a drink right now behind the pillar. Who has making his way over there, looking for the cyclone here onto Jamie, but not able to find it there. I think the grounding totem was there to deny it. And Chanimal being left behind here, getting rooted in the back line. Eh, Trying to keep up here with his team. And next, I think, has managed to escape. Canimal is just pushed back. Meh and Waz are both... Uh, all of them are just pushed back on the side of Echo. And next, should be able to recover a decent amount of mana here. But I think Shanimal is actually stopping him with his pets right now. So, Shanimal is one thing that he's been doing really well. Is using that... Uh, axe blade storm that fell blade storm to actually shut down drinks and kind of moving his pet to watch the healer even when they're stealth drinking and stopping it with that so uh, channel definitely uh, just a, a king of warlocks when it comes to just about anything and um, we're gonna see things like that can definitely pay off if the game uh, gets a little bit longer but uh, it also could just end at any moment considering that swaps he still doesn't have his unending resolve Waz is going to have his incarnation here in just a couple of seconds, and he's going to be loading up that next big hit. If they can find that opening onto Swapsy, that could be a moment for him to actually capitalize and maybe even outright end the game or force out all of Next's cooldowns again. They're making the push here on the side of Echo. Oh, Channel is getting low right here. Can they finish it? A coil comes through on a Swapsy, denies the damage. Meg gets a Dream Breath time dilation. And he should begin recovering in a moment, but Jamie's doing quite a lot of damage here. He needs to keep maintaining this lead if his team is going to have a chance. They've got Demonic Tyrant coming up in a moment. He knocks Channel behind the pillar, isolating him. He relays the gateway to get back to his team and get offensive. And he's coming in with the Dreadstalkers. Massive damage onto Swaps. He tries to turn it around with a Tyrant. They Shadow Fury. Here comes the Deep Breath. Oh. The Incarn is up. Big pressure incoming. Can they survive? It's match point. Emerald Communion blocks the kill onto Echo. They do Axe Toss him afterwards, but it's Swapsy that still needs to recover. There's no Iron Bark left for him in a moment here sin words about to run out channel is actually still on the back foot these demons doing quite a bit even though he's out of line of sight of jamie Matt trying to recover him they're going to banish the fell guard remove some of the pressure was gets cracked by a massive earth shock lava burst there jamie stuns him and wraps around the corner really putting the pressure on to was this is honestly the best they've looked here for the admiral's esports if they can keep this up in moving into the future they just survived the incarnation now it's their turn to start dishing out some damage echo might regret making a push right now Oh, they get the Mortal Coil into the Axos here. Channel on one side, Wise on the other, but he gets left behind there. Jamie doing some good control. Tranquility comes out for next here, keeping Swapsy nice and top to stay out of unending resolve. And they're going to have Iron Bar coming up in a couple of seconds. Uh, Swapsy now calling in the Dreadstalkers here, looking for the damage. He gets the Shadow Fury. It's the Dreadstalkers in here. He's going to become a potent threat in the match. Axe Bladestorm, Fell Bladestorm coming out there once again. And Swapsy is going to be forced to kite back here with the Demonic Circle next again. Uh, kiting here with his teammate. But they've left Jamie behind next. Forced to stay back here, trying to heal Jamie. Jamie is getting close line there. There's a Demonic Tyrant firing onto Jamie here in the back line. But... Jamie trades out the Astral Shift early on, and now Channel is going to be teleporting away aggressively. They stop next from drinking, but Waz might have just pushed in too deep here, taking a lot of damage. They do get Jamie's Astral Shift, so he could become a target in the match. Still taking a lot of damage from Channel, summoning all of his uh, imps right now, getting super aggressive. Next, looking for the drink. He has Iron Bark as well to fall back on, so he could potentially get down, go for a couple of sips, and then use that Iron Bark to recover. Uh, his teammates during that time, but oh, right incarn. now the Echo that needs to recover. Oh. Big pressure on the Echo, but they have Incarnation active for Waz. Who are they going to send it on? Swapsy takes a big hit of damage, and Waz looking to try to close it out here at 44% dampening. 
Gets knocked away with the Unleashed Shield. Channels is trying to keep his pet alive here with his health funnel, but it's going to get Solar Beam and denied. Meh, rescuing Channel, pulling him back into the fight next to Waz here, who still has the tail end of that incarnation, but he's just dying. He's actually just outright dead. Massive pressure on Waz as he wraps around the ramp side and tries to heal himself back up. Jamie's not going to push too far forward. Met is getting aggressive. Channel is getting aggressive. I think it was the oppressing roar. They've set up the fire breath. They're spamming out living flames. They're keeping them on the back foot. Observer is pinning them. They're trying to get away from the engagement. Met is chasing them down, but he is flying into an Ellie and a Warlock at low health, getting knocked around into a lightning lasso. He pre-Obsidian scales the stun, but perhaps he dies through it. The opening is quite high. Renewing blazes up. He gets a spirit bloom. He is slowly but surely beginning to recover. They know that Next is out of mana. They need to stay aggressive and push through the pain if they want to win this. If he gets a drink, it's going to surely be game over for them. Next is in the back line, trying to sneak away off to the left side. They need to chase them down. They're pressuring Swapsy. Maybe they just go for the kill. They say, all right, you can get mana. We'll just win the game instead. Swapsy ports back to his druid. Great positioning on this map. Port back to his druid and get him into a spot where he could set up a drink potentially into the future. Waz needs to stay alive for 40 more seconds. I think that incarn is what is going to win the game. Next is drinking in the starting room. Waz is trying to chase him down, but he has to overextend. He typhoons him out from the drink. He got a tiny bit of mana, but Swapsy had to use any resolve in an exchange. Channel is getting low. Anybody could take this. It's dangerous for both sides at this point. Swapsy is interrupted at very low health, trying to line aside Channel at the ramp here and avoid him. Next is repositioning, running long side of the map to try and get to the opposite starting room to get a drink. Swapsy is following him. Jamie is following him. Channel ports on top of them to get aggressive. Fury of Loon is down. That's going to cleave a lot of pressure. Waz going to get a ton of star surges here. He's got Incarn and Seven. They want to stay aggressive, but if Waz overextends, he's got no Barkskin and Trinket. They could stun him and potentially kill him when he tries to make one of these pushes in the next couple of seconds, but Swapsy is falling so far behind. Next is to use Tranquility, trying to get as many hots as possible to keep him alive, but Waz is getting pressured. There's the stun I was talking about. No Barkskin. Can Jamie carry the day again here in game number four? They block out the lasso, and Waz gets back to full health. Tyrant is out for Swapsy. Waz needs to line of sight and respect this Tyrant. As soon as they've survived it, they can just send the Incarnation and close out this game. Take it 3-1. to one. They're so close to a kill, but Matt yeah. is getting pressured, and Admiral's Esports snipe him. Waz is going for the kill in exchange with Incarnation, but Jamie already has Astral Shift ready to block the kill on himself. Swapsy is recovered, and Waz and Channel, they're going to have to tap out. Admiral's Esports have done it, done what very few teams have been able to do, <laughs> taking it to a Game 5. Uh, we are going to a game five here. Admiral Esports definitely playing the map well. I really, really like this map pick. This is something that we don't see very often, but I have a feeling it's going to become more and more common as uh, teams are getting used to this new map that got added in Dragonflight. And I, I feel like next being able to drink and being able to play at such a nice range really, really enabled Admiral Esports in the match. And uh, I got to give Meh, you know, we, we give him a lot of credit these days, but like, let's be honest. How many dragons will actually be able to keep up their mana to 50, 55% dampening without drinking. Like, Matt is doing so much healing. Look at his healing done right now. You can see it. he's almost at 40 mil healing, 63k HPS throughout the entire fight. And somehow, he is not going oom. I, I don't understand how he does that, but Matt, super efficient, doing a lot of damage, doing a lot of healing, keeping his team in the fight. And uh, to, towards the end of the match right here, I do believe he pushes in, gets the sleepwalk, gets the fire breath, uh, looking to get aggressive, needs to close it out, but he just gets swapped to Jamie, getting very aggressive in that situation and manages to close it out. The renewing blaze, not going to be enough there for Matt to keep him alive when dampening is at 59%. Um, and uh, Admiral Esports here, uh, they're definitely showing a lot of signs of life here. And uh, if they didn't really lose that game on hook point, kind of the way they did, they might have honestly been able to win this whole series right now. But they still have another shot to do it. We're going to uh, game number five. It's going to be Echo's map pick, so probably somewhere small. Uh, but Admiral Esports, if they can stick with the strategy of kind of just dragging it out and staying alive, getting those drinks, uh, they could definitely win. Going to be hard to do, though, on Ruins of Lordaeron at game number five, Sid. <laughs> Staying out of line of sight on Runes of Lordaeron is a fairy tale. It's a fantasy. You're delusional if you think you can. So this is a tough map for Admiral's Esports to escape the Tyrant damage, escape the Incarn damage, escape Mez damage added into all of that. There's basically nowhere to hide. So either they match their damage and run them down, almost like a kind of like a Kamehameha battle between both the teams, whoever can <laughs> power up higher than the other one. Like, this, I don't think there's much running away uh, on Ruins of Lordaeron and trying to find your moment and trying to extend the game. So they're going to need a huge power up here. Uh, Admirals Esports, they're taking their time. Um, I, I don't feel like they're going to change comp. 
Um, but maybe, maybe they make an adjustment on Runes Lordron. Maybe they got some secret tech. They've got a lot of different classes on their roster that maybe something we're not even considering could be an option for them, given that this is now the map that they know they're going to be getting. Uh, but they also need to consider other options from Echo if they make that change. They probably just want to talk strat, um, how they're going to maybe kite on the map uh, to enable Next to be able to drink. Yeah, that's the thing. Since they're locking it in on the blind, I think this is uh, probably their best option. They are going to go with the Elemental Warlock Druid once again. And Druid for Next has been looking good so far in the matchup, but uh, we'll see what Echo decides to do because Echo doesn't have to play that Munkin uh, demo. If they, if they have a better option, they could tag uh, Raikou in. They could go with something else, but they are going to go for the Wizard Battle, game number five. And Admiral Esports actually have a real opportunity right now to hand Echo their first lost series of the entire season here. <laughs> will Echo go undefeated this entire season or will Admiral Esports actually to be uh, be able to uh, you know be the first team that qualifies to the final and make them bleed? We're going to have to wait and see here. Ruins of Lordaeron is going to be the map. Double wizard comps locked in and... Um, We'll see what they can do here. It's going to be tough for Next to get those drinks. It's going to be tough for Swapsy to stay alive. There was a lot of close calls last game uh, on to Swapsy, and I feel like Chanamon actually has been one of the few Warlocks who actually gets value out of his Tyrant. I feel like Admiral Esports don't really have a great way of shutting down Demonic Tyrants, and uh, best for them has just been to line of sight it and kind of pull back, root it, and just try to line of sight it, but they don't really have like a hard CC the way a lot of other comps do. So um, we'll see what they what they can do here against that tyrant. All right, let's see if they can do it. Can Jamie carry the day here? He's got to do so much work on the Ellie Shaman to be able to outdo this matchup. He's going to be doing 30% or more damage than everybody in the game, basically, to be able to win this while still staying alive. And Echo's coordinated assaults, their synergy is typically unmatched. Honestly, it seemed like there maybe were some holes in their pushes, like that one deep breath that they tried to go after on next, and it got a little bit sloppy in that moment. Um, and if, But if they're not sloppy, man, they are going to be clean. It's going to be difficult. They're going to be a machine to be able to defeat. And look at this map. They're just on top of the tombstone, basically almost nowhere to go. Jamie's trying to get out of Tyrant. He ports back in the line of sight, but gets coiled immediately by Channel out in the middle. Channel is taking quite a bit of pressure, though. Jamie is able to line of sight at the center. Next is line of sighting off to the side. They, they get, get him in a bash, though. And they're going to clone him. Looks like they maybe wanted to attack him, but then decided to clone him instead. Incarnation activated. They're going on Jamie. They're mixing it up, going after a different target in the early stages, then cycloning him low on his defenses. And that cyclone does look like they're going to try and swap it over as it ends onto Jamie. He should be recovering. Next jumps away. So next is going to play either next to that cart in the puddles, and then when they get on top of him, he's going to kite to the other side of the map where the tombstones are. He's going to be running long lines between those two locations. And the longer that he can spend away from Waz, the more likely his team is going to be winning. So right now, he's right next to him. He's going to bash him and try and escape the clone with Stampede, line of sight at the cart. And then look, he's going to go right to the opposite side of the map, away from Waz. And his goal is just stay as far away from Waz for as long as possible without his team dying. If he can achieve that, their team is going to be able to, to pull off a win. But if Waz ever gets on top of him for too long, like right now, if Chanimal gets there as well he's gonna be in a lot of trouble so he jumps back to the middle immediately goes to the other side of the map from Waz and Waz is gonna have to figure out how he can get to next without dying really really nice uh, kind of strategy here uh, utilizing those carts and trying to kite back and forth and that really is the name of the game so far next doing a really really good job with his positioning but uh, if he stays far uh, if he stays back too much and all of a sudden swaps he might get deleted uh, Jamie with a nice shutdown there on that cycle and that was really important because they had a lot of pressure there on the Swapsy, but Jamie manages to land the wind shear. Next now going to be crossing the map once again, using that leap, and he's actually getting swapped through here. Channel trying to go for a bit of a solo play. They do force out the bark skin early on, and now they're going to go after Swapsy. Dark Pack coming through here for uh, Swapsy, and he's still getting cut through it right now. So much damage coming out. It's going to be the Iron Bark coming out here for next, and Swapsy should be able to recover with that. And now if Waz manages to get on top of him, next probably going to be crossing the map here. Meh. Doing a good job so far, healing himself with the Renewing Blaze, healing his team with Spirit Bloom. Demonic Tyrant is out here against Swapsy. They shut down the uh, swap here from Wads. He's trying to look for crowd control onto next. Can they find anything onto Swapsy? He's line of sight in the Tyrant right now. Oh, he's beamed! Tyrant is in his line of sight. He's beamed in line of sight of that Tyrant, taking a lot of damage there, but Swapsy manages to duck for cover here, and next manages to escape crowd control, but he had to use his medallion in that exchange. 
All right, it's Runes Lordaeron. It's game five. It's match point. It would be a fitting final resting place as it is a cemetery. And Waz is looking to bury Swapsy right now. Massive pressure, only seconds away from his unending resolve. He stays alive. Now Channel on the back foot. Can Admirals Esports do it? Be the first team to take a series from Echo. They have come the closest of any team so far. But on Roots Order, it's going to be so difficult. Next is already down to half mana. Waz is chasing him down. He gets a full bash. Is he going to go for a clone? He's doing damage instead. He gets Shadow Fury. He's not able to get the clone just yet. Next could Shadow Meld that. Decides not to Shadow Meld it. Janimal is falling a bit behind from Jamie and Swapsy, but Met is recovering him now. He's got the Nullifying Shroud. He's immune to crowd control. Met is getting aggressive. They're chasing down next. He needs to get out of there. He has to get away from them, but he gets cloned in his escape path. Swapsy gets swapped to. He's trying to get, run to the opposite side of the map as well, but they rescue Waz on top of them, utilizing that preservation evoker utility, and Swapsy gets cloned low. Now they're pressuring next. He's coiled off the pillar Whoa. on match point. He's out in the map, middle of the map. He's about to get blasted. He pre-iron barks, anticipating the swap to himself, but now there's no iron bark for Swapsy. They could switch to him. He's on the opposite side of the map in the middle. He's trying to max range them and avoid the fire breath. And it looks like he's managed to for now, but Incarnation is up in 50 seconds. Swapsy's got a timer. They actually catch him in the middle of the map, forcing them to use Emerald Communion. His most important defensive cooldown is a really good catch from Admirals Esports, but momentum is still in their favor. Next is getting very low. He's going to pop part of the wild, get a little bit of extra stamina, some frenzied regens. He pre-bears the stun. He's frenzy regening in the back. Can Admirals Esports actually do it for the first time ever? I don't think anybody would predict Echo to lose at all so far in this season. It's a final cup. It's your last chance to prove that you can take them down before the European finals. They're so close to it here. Next is kiting like a madman, just avoiding the fight time and time again. And they're swapping to meh, and every swap is getting more and more deadly. Look at him oh. struggling to heal through the damage, dispelling off the dots, hellstoning, trying to recover. Next is actually drinking. This is a miracle moment. Waz is trying to deny it. Meh is deep breathing over. They typhoon the drink, but how much mana did Next actually get? He's caught in a bash at the moment out of form. He got a tiny bit, not as much as he would have liked to in this position, but now he's caught in a coil. Channel's trying to connect some damage onto him, but Waz gets intercepted. Lightning Lasso, Channel stops the Lasso, and they're going to be saving those Axe Tosses, I think, for Lasso specifically. It's been constantly shutting down their win conditions. If Swaps, he gets Solar Beamed on cast. He can't use his defensives for a moment. Looks like he's been, he's all right at the moment. Next is doing a phenomenal job to keep his man up this high, but here's the Incarnation, Fire Breath, massive combo. He overgrows the Fire Breath. He gets all of his hots back on a Swapsy. Swapsy's gonna unending resolve on top of it. Next is line of sighting Waz. Waz is getting pressured. He gets knocked away. Med jumps over in the nick of time with time dilation to stabilize Waz. But is he actually that stable? He's dying through time dilation, a remarkable amount of damage onto Waz. His health is actually still going down, even with that defensive. Swapsy next to next. Channel's chasing them down. They've got next pinned here. All three of them on top of him this is a dangerous situation while incarn is up next iron bark swapsy he's trying to run away trying to get some distance swapsy gates relays that gate but immediately they rescue Waz on top they fire breath they cyclone him low they can't reload the hot swapsy has to trinket that clone so that next can get some hots but the pressure is in favor of echo at this point if they can grab hold of this momentum and close out the game that's gonna be it yeah, yeah and next having to use his tranquility there as well his mana's not looking great jamie getting a uh, cyclone right there nice typhoon they're coming out by waz and waz now looking for the cyclones here can they shut it down doesn't look like it swaps the cyclone low where is next he's sitting down for a drink waz typhoons it looking for the bash he's behind the pillar he should be able to get the cycle he does manage to land it swaps in huge trouble next trick it's out tries to block the kill but he doesn't have any big heals to work with he goes for the nature swiftness but outside of that he really doesn't have much to work with nice lightning lasso there onto waz and i gotta say jamie's been doing a phenomenal job here every single time they try to push over they manage to deny it with that lightning lasso and with those wind shears and uh, swapsy actually getting denied right now summoning his tyrant channel doing what he can channel had to use his unending resolve the game is getting extreme extremely unstable next sitting now for a drink how much mana has he actually managed to get channel teleporting away very he's aggressively. In trouble. next coming back with half mana channel in a lot of trouble right now emerald communion uh, 10 seconds away here for Matt trying to keep his team in the fight meanwhile the big fire breath being channeled out here for Matt Look Looking for the damage, looking for the counter pressure. Can he find it next right now? And once again, with the iron bark available, Waz is in trouble, getting blasted right no now. Way. The meatballs oh. are coming in. Huge damage from Jamie and Meh manages to block the kill once again. Meh's mana not looking good whatsoever. Next, actually sitting up for another in drink here, and I think he's going to be able to get it. Incarn is available for Waz. He's going to pull the trigger. He gets bashed on the Incarn. No trinket. Can they find a cyclone out of that? Next doesn't uh, isn't able to go for it. He gets caught into a full cyclone. Big damage here on who on Swapsy. No unending resolve five seconds away it's rooted to the kill she's a couple of more seconds before he has that cooldown fire breath connect big damage onto swapsy and he will fall in game number one echo will advance to the grand finals but admiral esports made them work for it
Oh man, these final moments of the game. It was so tragic. Swapsy's just kiting around, trying to avoid as much as he can while Next is crowd controlled, but nobody has a way out. They were actually in a position that was going to be winnable if they could survive a little bit longer. They had the mana advantage, they had the damage advantage. Everything was going in their favor, but Echo just knew how to set up and close the game before it got to that point. So this is insane right now from their side and you'll see that in those final moments and it's that game of just chasing next down and echo we're able to full, get full advantage of it and this rescue from meh it was just like an mvp rescue like channel on the warlock not too mobile it's like it's all right bro i got you get it get on my shoulders and just piggyback rides channel into swapsy <laughs> to get the kill so they incarn they push forward and then they get a clone onto next they coil them and i think they clone them out of the coil so swapsy ports away and Mez like all right you need a ride channel here, <laughs> Met taxi services here, bringing him into line of sight, fire breasts all the hots off, bashes him out of the clone. And he was one second away from any resolve. Yeah. If, if that setup was like three seconds later, he doesn't die there. And they're in such a good position. That That is so unfortunate when you die like that. One second away for Swapsy's uh, on any resolve. And I mean, you called it out, mass taxi service there, coming through right there. Definitely doing some work, landing them to kill, getting the fire breath, getting it done. And uh, Channel, you know, he, he looks like a madman when he's pushing in there and he's getting aggressive, chasing down next when he's so low on HP. But that's exactly what he has to do. He knows he has to play like this. He knows he has to get aggressive. And uh, when they finally do get that cyclone, that's when things start to unravel. There's that rescue. There's the fire breath. And they do get the damage. Look at that on the result. One second uh, when he does go down. So... Really clean work here by Echo. They're going to be our first finalists. But now we are going to get to see Nice Beam go up against Admiral Esports. They did take down the agents out of the tournament. Now, can they do it against uh, Admiral Esports? Or will we see a rematch here? Admiral Esports kind of powering up a little bit in their uh, showdown against Echo. Yeah, definitely. Admiral Z Sports, that's a bit of a devastating loss considering just how close they were. You can see it here in the bracket where they are being sent down to face off against Nice Beam. And they coincidentally came, just came out of that match against the agents, beating them three to one. So if you take anything just from like the momentum, Nice Beam could could maybe beat them here in Admiral's Esports in this lower finals because uh, you know Admiral's Esports is on fire right now, wanting to get a rematch, but Nice Beam Super Tease is in their way. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, Nice Beam just beat the agents, and the agents are basically playing Admiral's Esports comp. So I, I don't know if Admiral's Esports will actually be able to use that Lock Shaman. They're probably going to utilize Blizzo. I think in this matchup before, they used Fury Warrior. Um, Moonkin to beat Demon Hunter in the past. So Nice Beam need to be ready for that. But Nice Beam is a different team as well. They've got Trend now on the roster. That roster swap has been really good for them. Like just look at their run through the bracket, beating International Feeding, My Way, the Agents, and Nice Beam are the dark horse in the lower bracket. They they already lost to Echo earlier on though. So it's, I was thinking like, have they fought them? Is there maybe a chance? And then I look at the round one and I actually already lost to them. So none of these teams have actually been able to beat Echo. Both of them want that rematch. They both want that second chance to be the first team to beat them. Yeah, most definitely. I cannot wait for this lower finals. We are finally going to see what our grand finals for EU looks like in the fourth and final cup after this very next series. We are going to head to a break before we do get to see that Admiral's Esports versus Nice Beam coming up in just a moment.
Welcome back. We are in the lower finals for EU Cup number four, and we are seeing Admiral Z Sports face off against Nice Beam. Nice Beam came off from that victory against the Agents. That is a top three team. That is a very, very strong team. Admiral Z Sports, on the other hand, just kind of had a devastating loss against Echo. So, Azale, I feel like the big question here is, is Nice Beam going to be able to take down another Titan? Yeah, I mean, that, that is definitely the question I think on everyone's mind. You know, I'm, I'm also really curious for Admiral Seasports. Are they going to play the same comp that we just saw them play against Echo? Because they got incredibly close to taking down Echo. They went all five games, but we just saw a nice beam beat that exact comp, right? So are they going to mix it up or are they going to be feeling like, hey, we can actually just play it better um, and, and, and run the same composition that we ran into Echo? Yeah, a lot of questions up in the air. I mean, a match like this, that blind pick is absolutely crucial. We can take a look at some of the comps uh, from both sides here. Admirals Esports, about 48% win rate. I mean, the, you know, the stats don't really do it justice. This team has been pretty strong, pretty consistent super tees, uh throughout these first four cups. When did they play Unholy DK? Nine and three. Yeah, I thought that was that. the one that we, that was the only uh, spec that we were missing, that and, uh, and Outlaw. So I, I feel like maybe. Maybe, I think that's probably Frost. I think it's probably Frost in the past or something like that, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly when the stats are from. And I would also say, at least during these last four weeks, it feels like all their losses are, are legit only to Echo, right? And they just lose to Echo a lot. Um, so that that's about it. It was like, um, I think at this point, you know, coming, coming into today, they had what, 17 losses against Echo uh, already, I believe it was, because during this like series of cups, so I think, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I assume that the win rate is in series and then the team compositions is in individual games because the numbers don't really add up. But I know that they were 17 and four coming into the series today and then they went two, three against them. So they would be, you know, six and six and 20 versus Echo. Right. So that's going to hurt your record quite a bit, but they're kind of beating everyone else. Yeah, it might skew some of those stats a little bit. Oh, look, now we got a live uh, hot fix of the, the Frost DK. So, yeah, you guys were right in that. So, uh, yeah, that's Admiral's Esports. So, you know, it's kind of like the only thing that's stopping them from, from being like uh, just ha having an even better season, being in that top place is Echo. That has been their their strongest component opponent for so, so long. And then we've got, you know, Nice Beam on the other hand. They haven't had quite as successful of a season, but this weekend for sure have been ramping up. They came into this weekend in fifth tied with my way in the standings and they, you know it, they do statistically actually have a better win right here but you know we just haven't seen them quite as much oh. and uh i am curious you know how they're gonna be doing here azale in this uh or who made that noise super tease in, the, uh, in yeah, this next round win rate tie because they that haven't fought echo four weeks in a row that's why, they're, <laughs> exactly, that's why their exactly. win rate is high it's right? like <laughs> if you have to fight echo twice a week and you lose oh three twice a week your win rate's yeah. just gone at that point so nice being look Pretty nice here, um, given that fact. Um, I, I just wonder if Admirals Esports have a good answer for this com composition. I feel like Corky and Tren on the Balancer and the Demon Hunter have been pulling off some surprising amounts of damage. Numbless has been a really good addition, especially like watching him on his Mistweaver Monk, um, using the Ring of Peace to knock enemies on their escape, keeping them in line of sight of their team um, to be able to keep their pressure up. And then they also have Eritross if they need to. They could run that Moonkin Demo that just beat Admirals Esports um, if they wanted to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah, interesting. Those, yeah, definitely. And those statistics statistics don't even have today's games. You know, they that we kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, they just had a trend. So um, we will see what they're going to be doing here in game number one, the Grand Arena best of five winner of this one, moving up to the grand finals loser, going to be finishing the weekend in third place. Yeah, we'll have to find out if Nice Beam can upset admirals esports and bring kind of a new challenger here to the finals because it's felt like every single week it's echo versus admirals in the grand finals in europe you know can nice beam change it up here on the grand arena it's gonna be the blind pick i'm assuming nice beam gonna be coming out with the moonkin dh that they used earlier today but admirals esports obviously is a really flexible super uh do you expect them to change anything up okay well we already have our answer so it is gonna be uh, it is going to be the Moonkin and the DH kind of as expected from Nice Beam, but Admirals Esports are not going to be running that same Wizard Cleave. Uh, they're actually bringing out a Warrior here. Yeah, I think this is what they've used against Demon Hunters in the past too. 
um, is Blizzo on the Fury Warrior. It's just more durable, provides more longevity and pressure onto the balance through it. And he likes to play Death Wish in this matchup, so I'm going to have to pay attention to the talent uh, tree updates onto that because if he is playing Death Wish, and you normally have to ignore the Warrior, right? There's a Boomkin. You need to be on the Boomkin, stunning him, cloning him, trying to get him into bear form and forcing him defensive, which means the Warrior can get away with playing Death Wish. And that amplifies your damage by 50% when you get it fully stacked. And uh, I would think that he is playing it. They swap back to Blizzo for a moment. does get disarmed, but now here comes Incarnation from Swapsy. Big pressure on a Corky. He's not able to really get a lot going here. Blizzo is just continuing to take him out. They need to worry about that clone. Blizzo line of sights the clone, but he, he spell reflects it after that. So just navigating through the Cyclones. In a Moonkin matchup, it's just all about who can stop more clones. It's such a key ability right here. Blizzo going into a clone. He's going to be out for six seconds. Then he's going to get that high winds onto him as soon as he comes out of it as well to reduce his damage. He's going to lose his Slaughterhouse stack. So really important to pay attention to like kicks landed in this type of matchup yeah we'll see how much they're gonna be able to cc blizzo how much they can actually peel him off as swapsy is gonna get pummeled there by trend and trend just trying to keep that damage rolling and so far it's looking really good for nice beam there's been so much more pressure coming out from them you can see that paralyze over on the next they have any cc to follow it up not just yet but they will force out the iron bark here and blizzo and swapsy were getting fairly low but now it's Corky having go a bit defensive, does have to use the Bark Skin himself. Both melee DPS getting bashed at the same time by the Moonkins. Uh, so both having that exact same idea. Corky, though, looked like he got his clone reflected on him by Blizzo. So nicely done there by Blizzo. His number's going to push into the middle of the map, but that's going to mean he's going to be vulnerable to those Cyclones. And Swapsy's going to be able to land a clone onto Numbless. Trend now in some pressure here. Is going to get stunned up, though, and Trend should be okay as Numbless is going to not be getting CC'd up again after that. Blizzo now in a CC. He's going to trigger it out of that and just stick onto the back of Corky here trying to just hammer onto this Moonkin. Both melee DPS seem to really want to just disrupt these Moonkin as, as much as humanly possible here trying to shut down those clones trying to shut down that CC as you were saying Supa uh, is going to be kind of the key to this game. Oh Corky falling behind here. Numbless trying to pick him up with the soothing mists. Corky gets cloned. He's going to actually trinket out of that clone, and Blizzo's playing an honor talent called Rebound. I think is a new addition to this patch, uh, where your Spell Reflect gets two charges. It has a 10 second longer cooldown, but it Spell Reflects two spells. So maybe Corky didn't expect that, so he cloned himself earlier. He got rid of one charge and then did see he's running two charges of it. Um, but he is just going to kite now away from him and avoid the engagement for as long as possible. And next into a Paralyzed, Swapsy isolated in a stun. Beautiful setup right now from Nice Beam. Uh, but next does connect the Nature Swiftness. Next goes is going to get Swapsy back to full health. Numbless Typhooned away for a moment here. Here's to see if he is able to get a Cyclone onto him. He's in a line of sight. Corky taking a lot of damage, jumping into bear form, trying to tank it out, rooting Blizzo behind the pillar. And I don't think Blizzo is playing a gnome. This should play in a human. A bit, uh, a bit surprised maybe to see him playing that, but it, it enables him to wear two damage trinkets, I suppose. They just want to maximize his damage pressure, but Roots will definitely be annoying for him to deal with. Big pressure incoming from Swapsy. He gets cloned on it, but Corky is still just dead. He's dying to Blizzo right now. He panics. He typhoons him away. Blizzo leaps right back into his face, but he fakes his pummel and gets the clone with that precognition and that fake from Corky. One of the only reasons he's alive right there in that moment in time. It's such a stressful situation where it becomes just a mind game between you and the melee DPS. It's kind of a 1v1 with Trent and Swapsy. How many times can he fake his interrupt and Corky and Blizzo? How many times can he fake his? But they're on to Blizzo. They're trying to swap back, but Corky is just taking a beating. Looks like he gets cloned low by Swapsy on his bark skin, denying the defense of the darkness as well. That was a really high value low clone. Uh, and they're just keeping the pressure off the back of it. Numbless is trying to heal him through the damage of Soothing Mist, but look at his mana bars draining it so fast. And he's in this position where Swapsy can annoy him with Typhoons uh, and, and cycle on him at the same time. So mana's even, but I do think Next will need to drink on the Druid at some point to make sure that his team can secure victory. Yeah, I think he's going to have to try to look for those drinks, and I think we're going to have to see Corky trying to chase after him and stop him from getting them. I don't really think the trend's going to be able to keep him uh, up all on his own, so we'll see You know, if either of these Moonkins are going to be able to push on the healer. Numbless has been the one taking more damage in the middle of the map, but Corky getting low, already in the bear, pops the heart of the wild here. The life cocoon comes out as well, so quite a few defensives, and they're just going to clone him on the cocoon, and now swapping it over. Swapsy in some trouble here. He's going to be caught in a double leg sweep there alongside Blizzo, as there's an in-cap into a fear onto Nex. He's going to have to trick it out as he knows Knows his team is getting low he's trying to top them back off and will be able to do so uh, but next can potentially look for a drink here now if his dps can kind of just ward them away keep them in the center map next now sitting down was looking for the drink is going to be popped up there by tren but tren being put into the bash won't be able to actually get the cyclone on him after it but Corky getting low, Blizzo on the back of him, and Corky in some trouble here as Numbless is in the center of the map and is trying to spam out these Soothing Mists, trying to keep him topped off. Blizzo now going to be thrown into a full clone there, and they're turning around again onto Swapsy. They're just punishing Swapsy every time he goes forward. 
They're trying to make him a big target, trying to get him involved. I think they need to get Next involved as much as they can as well. Get those dots rolling on multiple targets. Try to really drain this Druid's mana because Next is going to start sitting down and looking for these drinks over and over and over as we're getting later into the game. And I think it's going to be a struggle for Anumla's if they ever let him get that drink. Corky now in some trouble. The Stormbolt was there, and he's going to be dipping pretty low into Bear as he's kiting away with Numbliss, trying to peel off Blizzard. Uh -oh. but he can't get away, and he might be chopped down here, down about 5% HP. The executes were coming through. The Life Cocoon just barely comes off cooldown, and he will stabilize, but that was a close call. Oh, Blizzard cloned low. They're trying to turn it around. They stay alive in that moment. They should. They're should should be counting their blessings with that situation to be alive. But now it's presented an opportunity. Swapsy's interrupted. Next is cloned. They switch their damage to Blizzo as well, cleaving him down with dots. So Swapsy's still on the back foot. He gets stunned up. Trend needs to avoid these Cyclones as long as possible. Will he be able to avoid them? Swapsy's forced into Bear. This is one way to stop the clones. Force the Druid into Bear. Double stun with that Chaos Nova. Cloning Swapsy low. Switching pressure to Blizzo. Swapping off the Iron Bark and swapping off the Big Hots. And Blizzo leaps, but doesn't leap too far and actually gets rooted out of range now. Trying to go for a rebound. Spell Reflect. Corky fakes it. He's trying to keep his pressure going, but here's Fury of Illumin from Swapsy. Big Star Surge is incoming in the next couple of seconds. Corky needs to get behind the pillar right now. It's huge damage onto him. Numbless is just healing him through it. They cyclone him low. Corky trinkets the clone to try and stay offensive, but next is drinking amidst all the chaos in the middle of the map. He got a tiny bit of mana, but a tiny is more than what Numbless has at this moment. Corky is stunned up. Can Numbless keep healing him? He paralyzes next. They're trying to go for the win. Next trinkets out into a full fear. Trend clutches out the fear, and they get the kill onto Swapsy, taking game one. Even despite how close that one moment was, they played it out. Yeah, really nicely played by Trend there in those final moments. Gets the trinket, lands the fear anyway, and they're able to burst the Moonkin down. Really good job by Nice Beam in game number one here, taking that. So the, the kind of swap up here from Admirals Esports doesn't end up working out. You know, they go towards the Fury Warrior. I think they were anticipating this would be the composition because Nice Beam just used it earlier, uh, did beat the Wizard Cleave comp that they were actually playing against Echo. So I feel like this is kind of the, the matchup that they potentially wanted. Uh, did not end up working out for them. You know, we saw some cool tech choices. Uh, Blizzo, as you said, was actually playing Rebound, which you know, not only just give you the double uh, Spell Reflect Charge, but also is 50% return damage. But like, look at that. That was Corky at what, 1%? Like yep. he he was <laughs> he was like hovering at like one to five percent there for a good two three seconds before he actually got that life cocoon. So it was ridiculously close to actually getting that kill. But you know, in those final moments, it was this CC that they're able to land on next that really uh, helped them to seal the deal. You can see leg sweep there over on a swapsy. Uh, they have the in cap on the next. Next goes for that trinket, but he can't actually get out of that fear glyph that's on the ground there from Tran. He's able to land it on his trinket, just really nicely done to finish off the kill. You know, the one thing, Admirals Esports, they've been fighting a couple of Demon Hunter Boomkins in the past, but it's been alts for the most, like double alt, like alt Moonkin and alt Demon Hunter most of the time. This is like main Demon Hunter, main Moonkin. Uh, and I think you can see the difference, like their damage overall is much more substantial um, in this matchup. They've just got more of the nuance and the min-max down uh, on their classes. So Admirals Esports may have to reconsider their previous answers for this composition given that nice beam are going to play at a, at a different level now of course that game was incredibly close uh, getting him down to one percent <laughs> but that's also the drawback of the warrior is that you, you can kite it as a moon can pretty easily it's one of the easier melee at least uh to be able to kite and if they're not in melee range they're doing zero damage so yeah. it, it's a really big downside whereas the demon hunter can get there really quickly still has a lot of ranged options if he does get kited at certain moments um which is going to be a bit more of an edge we're going to empyrean domain so admirals esports may want to try and run some type of wizard comp i wonder if nice beam also will just blind switch to a wizard comp themselves honestly wouldn't mind seeing demo boomy from them on this map yeah i guess it's just like do they want to are they looking to do a wizard mirror i mean i think this is this comp that they're running you know the moonkin dh that they are going to lock in was their answer to wizards right like that's what they used in their previous series to actually take down uh the dh uh, ellie i believe it was so We'll see, you know, what Admiral Seasports wants to run in. Of course, it's their map pick. They now know exactly what the composition is going to be. Uh, they can try to, you know, really kind of like kite it out. And I do think when you're playing with a Rester Druid on a big map like this, it's a lot easier to get drinks. It's a lot easier to put uh, that DH in difficult spots. But we saw how good the uptime was for Trend. I think he did about 16 million to Blizzo's 10. Uh, and a lot of that is just about Blizzo getting kited out. It's not necessarily that DH are doing that much more damage when they're actually like both on the target, but it's way easier, I think, for DH to actually stick to that target. So uh, we have to wait for that answer here from Admirals Esports. If they want another crack at Echo, they're going to have to take down Nice Beam first. Yep.
They're going to reconsider their options here. Also, Numbless on Mistweaver might be a different um, pick as well because he brings the disarm that no other healers bring. And a Fury Warrior getting disarmed and losing their it's stacks really or annoying. disarmed on their cooldowns, it just completely neuters their pressure. So uh, I don't think that this answer for Admiral's Esports is likely going to be the most consistent. It seemed like, again, they got close, but there's probably better options um, that they've got available to them. I'm thinking they want to bring Jamie in on, on a map like this. They want to play their LE Demo um on the large map nice beam kind of snuck away with their kill um in their previous series against the agents and they killed asgarath kind of out of nowhere in that surprise mm. fashion but i think on the big map admiral's esports comp is definitely going to be in a good position they're taking their full length though um of the roster here or the lock-in time did you catch if corky was actually playing moonkin disarm was he playing fairy swarm um the the add-on here should be able to add-on show that don't shows that he wasn't so i guess he wasn't. i don't think you would you because you, you would have to lose fast clone lose high winds yeah. or lose moon can aura it's actually yeah, so a it's big probably deal not, to run not really disarm. worth it yeah yeah i know i know some people have used it in awc over the last couple of weeks um it is something that you like run into if you're playing you know like warrior against like moon can uh, monk on ladder and stuff sometimes people will do it and it's just like really a nightmare uh because mm -hmm. you're getting chained to arm by both but not going to be the case. So it is going to be, in fact, that composition that they actually beat earlier. Um, obviously, it was a different team. Uh, this is a big map, so I think it's going to be tougher for an Ice Beam. But if this is the answer for Admiral's Esports going forward, they're going to have to, you know, kind of show us that they can really do better than uh, than the agents who played this exact same composition and already lost to this this very comp that Nice Beam and this very team that Nice Beam is running. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it on the big map. I wouldn't like it so much if they blind locked it on a small one. Yeah. Um, for the series based on the evidence that we've seen so far, but maybe they can play at a different level. Um, Jamie was definitely stepping up uh, even in that series against Echo, so they're performing phenomenally on the composition. They're also really warmed up on it after playing that last series. Maybe they also want to keep warm on the composition and get through the series and be ready for Echo because this seems to be the only thing that they're getting close to beating them with. Yeah. Um, and so if it can beat Nice Beam, they just get to get more reps on more practice and move into that series um, and be kind of like at the edge of their game here. But if it doesn't work and they end up following down the same path that the agents did, that means Nice Beam just knocks them out, gets a good opportunity. I don't think that there's no threat in the standings, right? Um, for Nice, like what, what happens if Nice Beam wins the tournament? Okay, so there's no like, crazy standings adjustments that could possibly no, happen top three i think is already locked for eu so it would just be maybe affecting some of the the gauntlet playthings so every everything's actually locked all the way so no, nothing can change as far as placements now for eu but obviously you do win prize money and you kind of build some confidence that you can actually take down these teams uh potentially if you meet them in grand finals so it will be interesting it is going to be empyrean domain and uh, we will have admirals esports playing this wizard cleave we'll see if they can take down nice beam and their DH Moonkin on this big map. If this answer doesn't work here, then it gets really concerning, I think, for Admiral's Esports. So Nice Beam going to try to look to take that 2-0 lead. We'll see if they can do it. His trend is going to run straight out into the middle of the map here. Corky getting those dots out, looking for clones here early on, but it's a very quick lightning lasso coming down from Jamie, just trying to deny him from setting up that damage, setting up that pressure. And next is just jumping right back towards that pillar. I, I expect, you know, we're going to see Trend just constantly chasing after them, and we're going to see next just repositioning across the map changing pillars over and over and over and Swapsy's already used that gate here early on and Nex has already changed sides but a nice dash in there from Trend it's going to be a swap over onto Nex who's under some pressure has already used Barkson and Iron Skin very early on here as he was really respecting that early go all right, he survives the exchange. Swaps now on the back foot. Massive damage onto him. Being a Demonology Warlock against Incarn and a Demon Hunter is going to be very scary. Swapsy ports away, but Corky procs a full moon right onto Swapsy. Trends reconnect, and he's still on the back foot. Iron Bark likely has faded at this point. They stun Corky, trying to keep him at bay. They're going to switch targets, go after Jamie rather than moving into the middle of the map. Then they cycle on Jamie to safely move forward and try and get back onto Swapsy. Next, trying to jump into the engagement, gets a stun onto Trend, trying to bait him into trinketing here. Trend's not falling for the bait. Corky is now stunned. Doesn't look like they have any disruption. They cross the Hex with a lasso. That could be a deadly combo actually in the future. Hex numb Liz and then lightning lasso the boom can and get a ton of pressure while the monk can't heal. That's like a main win condition situation actually for Admiral's Esports. They're just trying to keep their dots up, move around on the outside of the map, try it. It's a game of keep away. As long as they can keep Tren as far away as possible, they're going to be in a winning position. Corky gets blasted. Tren can't move. He got frost shock there for a moment. He's swapping to next, trying to make something happen here, but Corky is just struggling to stay alive at the moment. Next, jumping over to Swapsy, trying to reposition away, keep his distance from the Demon Hunter, keep the 
the threat contained. Swaps to get Solar Beam done cast. Adaptive Swarm out for next. Scenarian Ward as well. Extends those with the Swift Mend. Getting big hots onto his target. So Jamie, they're going to switch off that and immediately go into Jamie instead, which is a really wise move. Corky's pushing on to next. He's line of sight in the clone. Trent is charging in with Corky now, trying to get two players on one against next. Corky's right next to him, but if he doesn't have Bash, I don't think there's any way he's getting a clone on him on the pillar. They're just doing damage. They're just killing Swaps with pressure. They force next to use Iron Bark, Nature Swiftness, and his Mana Bar, but here comes that Hex Lasso combo, forcing Corky to Trinket and Dispel. So the next time they get a Stun Lasso Hex, it's going to be likely Numbless's Man. Trinket, and then possibly the game. I actually love the way that Nice Beam is playing this, though. They've been pressuring Nexo heavily. Now he's trying to sit down for that drink. He's going to get maybe a tiny bit of mana, but wouldn't have been more than a tick or two, really. Uh, he's been pressured very heavily, and Trent is just going to actually pop the hunt there. He's going in on Swapsy, and Swapsy's down dangerously low, and he's just going to die straight up through his cooldowns. Next, even triggered it, but he gets cloned on it. The uh, shield wall was even popped there by Swapsy, but he just gets sent by the hunt from Trent. The damage coming in from Corky, I believe, uh, a huge hit came through from Corky at the end. But geez, that was actually a really surprising end of the game. I thought this one was going to go deep into dampening, but nice being find the opportunity. I thought they were playing it out incredibly well. And, you know, constantly pressuring Next, getting him involved. I like that they weren't just trying to stop him for drinks. They're actually looking for swaps and stuns, you know, going towards him constantly. And, you know, just couldn't actually ever kind of i guess reset or, or, or kind of get into a position where admirals esports could constantly like slow down the game and, and pull back and create mana advantages um because their their drip is constantly being pressured and yeah i mean just a really nice kill on a swapsy i would yeah, love to see that death log because it's got to be some <laughs> some fat hits insane pressure from nice beam and honestly admirals esports you're probably questioning yourself right like you just came the closest anyone has come to beating echo and i can't imagine they were maybe really considering nice beam to be a serious threat th at least not this much to where they're actually on match point without a single game and they just get crushed bashed on his trinket and not able to connect any heals could swap to maybe have walled at a higher health we're jumping way back into the replay he definitely he definitely could have walled higher but it's it's also like hard to blame you when it's this early on you don't just want to press it randomly and if your druid's gonna trinket you're probably thinking you're chilling right so it's like it's it's tough like those those that's one of the things that a comp like this can really have is they can grind you out they can play that long game but also you have to respect the fact that they can just 100 to zero you too like there is a tremendous amount of damage that can actually come out uh from these moonkin dh teams yeah the, we finally got a main he did wall actually he died through it yeah <laughs> he actually he just walled. straight up died through it he would have he would have had to wall like full health basically right like he just got sent um i, I mean trent and corky are just doing so much damage like this is that's not winnable if they're sustaining that much of a lead on damage that's not winnable I don't think they can play this comp. I mean, Nice Beam are looking even better now. We got a new challenger looking to try and make it to the grand finals to get another rematch at Echo and possibly outdo them. They really want this, want to show why they're a serious team, why they're a serious threat here um, moving forward for the gauntlet and for the finals after that. So, yeah, this is an impressive showing for Nice Beam to be able to take that game so confidently. Um, almost effortlessly, honestly, in that position, as soon as they yeah. had control of it, they were just running them down and keeping them in combat and chasing them. And just I got really don't think by Incarn. <laughs> I don't think Admirals Esports were expecting that to end early or to be that challenging. So now they're going to have to consider comps moving forward. They're going the opposite direction. They're going a small map, which makes me think that they have something entirely different planned here for game three. But like what, right? Because uh, you. you like if they hadn't lost in game number one like if they had won that one it'd be like oh they're going back to their warrior comp and they're going to play on a small map but it didn't it didn't work <laughs> out right nice beam are just going to play the same thing until admirals show that they can't um because they already beat you know a couple of their comps obviously admiral esports is super flexible they can play a tremendous amount of different stuff they've played a lot of different comps you know throughout awc but i'm just not really sure um based on what they've shown us recently what they should bring out to try to actually answer nice beams comp because it does seem like they're playing it incredibly well uh it does seem like a strong answer to wizards it obviously worked fine against the fury warrior earlier so it's gonna be tough i mean if they can dampen you and they can also one shot you with incar and hunt then it's pretty scary right you have to play a very rock solid game to be able to beat them on mana yeah i wonder if next is gonna change healers at all maybe uh, maybe pick something more offensive than a druid 
Um, it, it might be an option for them, some type of evoker boomkin combination uh, between okay. the three of them. I can't see them wanting to do the other comps they've played in the past, are like Moonkin Ellie, but that doesn't make any sense for this map. I also don't think it's good in the Mistweaver. It's got to be, yeah, okay, Blizzo coming in again, Swapsy coming in, but next is Stain on the Resto Druid. Um, even despite the small map, Monk is also going to be able to portal in this map. Um, it's super effective on this map, so I'm not. I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of it um, from the side of Admiral's Esports. I think there might have been better options than this. Um, but given that they want to kill Corky, maybe that won't have too much of an impact. Uh, maybe Blizzo changes his build. He was running a human a warrior. Maybe he goes gnome instead. He's getting rooted a yeah. lot, getting crowd controlled. Pick something that gets him more mobile in the map. Uh, run normal trinket so he can trinket a disarm if he needs to on an aggressive moment. If he gets denied on an execute or something, uh, might be options for them. Um, but this is tough. You're locking in the comp that lost already yeah. this is what you're switching back to and i don't know uh, that smaller map really helps them much right like both teams have a melee i don't i don't see any like big inherent advantage if anything i feel like because you yeah. have the rest of your druid you want a bigger map where you can it's easier to drink but i will say black or cold there's some pretty easy places to sneak away to to drink right like you can go back into the rooms and that can sometimes be difficult to actually stop um but yeah, it's it's gonna be tough, right? Like I, I think so much of it is is can they actually enable Blizzo to stick to a target? So I agree with you. Like I, I would be down to see a gnome. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I also think it's one of those situations where it's like when when Corky gets away from swap from uh, from Blizzo, Swapsy needs to clone Corky, right? It needs to be one of those situations where you're using your CC to get your warrior back to their target. Uh, because I don't think that Blizzo is gonna be able to stick by himself. I think he's gonna need a lot of help. We saw in map number one, Trend did 16 million damage to Blizzo's 10 million or so, and Blizzo was just really struggling with the CC. So I think they have to use their CC offensively to be able to get him back on his target, right? You know, if if there's a bash thrown on Blizzo, you got to bash Corky. You have to just continually like trade CCs, I think, in that way and try to keep Blizzo locked on target and worry less, I think, about CCing the healer as much in the early stages at, at the very least. Uh, because I do think Resto Druids can win on mana if you can keep your warrior on his target the whole game. All right, let's see if they can enable Blizzo to run down his target. They're relying on Blizzo to reverse sweep here. They need to win three games in a row. Who would have guessed that Nice Beam? All of our predictions would be wrong if Nice Beam actually makes it to the grand. Imagine they win. Oh my God, and nobody could see that coming. That that's like that would be an impossibility <laughs> in terms of a thought moving forward today. But Nice Beam have been on a tirade. They've been destroying everybody in the lower bracket. Corky, as this team substitute, has been so pivotal in their team's success so far. They're just one game away from getting a second chance against Echo in the grand finals. Will they be the first team to take them out if they make it to that point? They've only got one game left to get there, and it's in a matchup that they've already won previously in the series. Lizzo on his mount, getting ready, looking like he's going to connect to Trend with a Storm Bolt right away, actually going on to the Demon Hunter trying to pressure him maybe bait him to use a cooldown but they don't manage to bait him to use blur they immediate leap and shockwave corky and a swap shutting down that incarn but there's that disarm and since he's playing human he's just smacking away with his fist he can't get any pressure out with his cooldowns now finally the disarm is over big damage on a corky life cocoon is going to come from numb liz i think it's more than a fair trade it's better to just trade one for one with incarn if you can't avoid it than try to play games with that cooldown it's very scary and look at swapsy struggling at the moment next gets iron bark up to restabilize him into the fight but admiral esports you don't want to match point to be this uncomfy yeah it's definitely feeling a bit scary already here as corky just gonna be pushing in trying to keep that damage rolling trend will be cloned off but blizzo sticking onto the back of corky here trying to keep that pressure rolling trying to get those stacks up onto him and just gets that pummel now down onto him you can see he's gonna be looking for the clones it's gonna be about the fakes here can he actually fake those interrupts and get those clones down onto Blizzo? Uh, there's a clone now finally landing onto Blizzo as he actually did land a Storm Bolt on the pre previous one. But Corky going to be able to create a lot of space. And Tren is just glued to the back of Swapsy here. Going to be able to just dip around the pillar. LOS, that clone is, was coming out. Now that Numbless is standing in on top of him, he gets the spear hand strike onto Swapsy's clone. So as Tren swaps away, the Monk is there to actually prevent Swapsy from getting out any CC. Now he's trying to get it, but still cannot do it as this... DH has just been so mobile, and Trend gets back to him, interrupts him again. Swapsy has tried to cast four or five clones, not been able to get out any of them whatsoever until finally he's able to land one now onto Numbliz. There's Next in some trouble, though. They're going to be swapping over onto him with Trend. He's into the bear form. He's pulling back. Corky at the same time is getting rocked right now by Swapsy and Blizzo. He's stuck on the back of him. They're going to drop the life cocoon here very early on preemptively expecting that beam to come down, potentially expecting that CC to come down onto Numbless, oh. but Numbless gets pummeled, and Numbless could be in a lot 
lot of trouble here. He's already low. He's already used that cocoon, and he's going to have to kite back behind the pillar. He's going to get Typhooned out there. Can Blizzo get back to him? Blizzo cannot, as he's going to be cloned off by Corky. But there's that offensive CC I was talking about, trying to actually CC up Numbless to buy Blizzo some time to reconnect to his target. In comes the Stormbolt. There's a stun, though, from Tren, peeling him off, and Blizzo could be in some trouble as Swapsy and Corky trading clones. Now Tren going to be put into a full clone himself. He's going to have to try to reconnect as they've been swapping around on these targets. It is giving Swapsy quite a lot of time to land his CC, and he has been very annoying with it. Yeah, Corky on the back foot. Incarn's up on both sides. Star Surge is incoming. Can they take down Corky here? There's no life cocoon. They used it earlier. Numbless is bashed on his trinket. They're trying to push for the kill, but Blizzo can't connect. Swapsy now on the back foot. Trend getting up time. I think Trend should just go back to training Swapsy and use all that disruption, yeah. try and stop the clones. Spending time on the Warriors is not getting anything done here. So he's getting back on Swapsy. Blizzo in a leg sweep. I, they're swapping to Blizzo again. I really don't like I guess he doesn't want to attack into Barkskin and Scenarian Ward, I suppose. Uh, they want to min-max the damage. Did they send the hunt onto him, too? He's just going to enrage Reed. Gen, he's going to tank that. He's going to be able to stay on target. He doesn't have to worry about getting rooted when he's getting attacked either. Now they're going to swap off the Enrage regen back on a swap. But they're switching on to Numbless. Another healer swap from Admiral's Esports. They're so close to the kill. Diffuse Magic might not stop the kill. Life Cocoon has to come out as well. Another close call for Nice Beam, but close is not close enough. And Numbless will stay alive. Now they're getting aggressive. Maybe they should actually switch to next on the side of Nice Beam, as the same as Admiral's Esports are doing. Yeah, I would love to see them try to get him involved. You know, this is this is a map where they haven't been able to do that just yet. Trend had been doing that more in those previous maps, but uh, this time not able to do it. Does land a fear on an X. That's going to force the trigger out as Blizzard was in some trouble. Didn't have the enrage regen, but he pops the avatar. He's going offensive onto Corky, who's taking a lot of damage here. And Numbless has some work to do to try to catch up. There's a bash over on a Swapsy, trying to slow down the pressure. And Swapsy is getting sent right now. He's going to have to pop the barks, and he's incredibly low. He might just go down through everything into the bear, into the enrage regen is going to be able to survive but that's a lot of mana that just got drained from next and now the mana has equalized next has no trinket so he could potentially be a target he's trying to get back into that entrance to look for a drink but trend was hot in pursuit he does get a bash on him full clone on the trend and next is going to try to reposition across the map he's going to be looking for drinks very likely here so they're going to have to try to keep pushing on him but corky can't do it because corky's in a lot of trouble himself and numbless is in a clone Corky is sitting in bear, trying to sustain as much as he can from this position, but it's a nice fake from Swapsy, looking for even more CC to come out. We'll see if he can find it, because he is just piling in onto Corky Blizzard, though. Finally going to get cloned off, but this is exactly what I was talking about. Swapsy just clones up Corky as soon as he lands a clone onto Blizzo, and now he's not going to be able to get away. There's a stun over on an X. They're looking just to use it for CC, as Corky got incredibly low, but does get top back off. And now it's Swapsy again under pressure here. He's going to get interrupted by Trend, and they're getting stacked up. They're getting cleaved down here. Swapsy in a lot of trouble, and Nex has got to stay safe. He's going to be put into the clone, though. His team could be getting pretty low. We'll see if there's any sort of follow-up CC as both healers right now are CC. The Enrage regen comes out from Blizzard, but will it even be enough? He's still sitting incredibly low, still just kind of dipping down about half HP. The Life Cocoon onto Corky is going to be cloned up there by Swapsy, but now he's going to eat a clone himself. He trinkets out. Nex is into a fear. Blizzard's into a clone. It's just a battle of CC back and forth, back and forth between these two teams. Oh, Swapsy caught in a solar beam, caught into a stun, going for the kill, Numbless in rage for touch of death as Swapsy gets low, he charges over, but now he's caught and is interrupted on a clone, knocked away, trying to deal damage here and get some pressure going, mana is almost tapped for both sides, I think Numbless is about to run out of mana first, he's running out of cooldowns, Corky's on the back foot, if Blizzo gets uptime, I think it could be over for Corky, but Swapsy gets cloned by Corky, denying his pressure, slowing down the game a bit, Blizzo getting an avatar up here, he's going to be doing a lot more damage, Numbless, can he keep him alive here with the limited mana that he's got, he's trying to play efficiently, but now now they're switching to him, trying to catch him in a stun. He pre-dampened pre harms, so they're going to cycle on the dampened harm with him at low health. They're swapping to Blizzo again. I don't know if I'm a big fan. I feel like if they swapped to Next instead of Blizzo, they'd actually be in a way better position. They imprison Next. They have the Sigil of Fear to chain. Doesn't look like it, so an imprison is not going to be nearly long enough. Trends in a clone, no trinket. Corky has to bark skin. Blizzo is getting those stacks of Rampage going onto Corky. After that bark skin falls, he's going to be in trouble. Trend is actually rotting. They could swap to him in a Storm Ball. He's got no trinket. Numbless has to pour it out of the fight. He's got zero mana. Admiral's Esports are so close to putting a point on a bo on the board right now. Restoral for Numbless. Dispelling those dots, trying to stay ahead of the damage. Heal his team back to full. Port's back in the room. Swapsy's chasing him down to try and potentially look for some crowd control, but not able to find it just yet. Blizzo is not able to connect to anyone. Corky's just line of siding, avoiding Incarn buying time as Incarn though. comes up. If Corky can live two more seconds to his Incarn, Swapsy doesn't have a lot of options. Up There's now, a window here. It. 
He's going to try to go offensive. This could be the Enrage Timer. Swapsy doesn't have his for a couple more seconds. Corky trying to finish off the game. We'll see if he can do it as Blizzo thrown into the clone. But Swapsy now has his Incarn available. And you have to think he's going to be popping it. And this could be it as Numbless is completely tapped. But both teams under a lot of pressure. And it's Swapsy still on the defensive here. But he's going to pop his Incarn. Try to get some work done. He's going to get pummeled though. And Swapsy is in so much trouble here. He's rotting incredibly low. Will get hit by that spear hand strike. Next does a good job topping him off. The Iron Bark though is going to be expiring here soon. And Swapsy now trying to get those clones he's gonna land it onto trend trying to keep blizzo offensive here as much as he possibly can but now corky into the clone trend gonna be cloned up as well it was a reflected clone there from blizzo so both of them were actually cc'd up and now numbless is in trouble here he's gonna need some peels from the rest of his team but they're trying to keep this pressure rolling on a swapsy the bash comes in onto him and he's in a lot of pressure here next was put into a paralyzed he's got no trinket there's the life cocoon coming out on corky and corky's trying to push in for some cc on the next we'll see if he's gonna be able to find it swapsy trying to defend does get a clone of his own but it's triple dr he's gonna have to swap it over onto trent but that one's dr as well so they've really messed up their drs now there's gonna be no cc coming up for quite some time so swapsy will have to throw out the bash trying to use that defensively onto trend but it's next sitting down for a drink and trend knows it he's gonna have to get in there and he does stop that but now he's into the root he's got nothing and numbers is not there to dispel so he's actually fully cc'd back in the pillar he can't get there now he's gonna use the hunt to reconnect onto onto swapsy as corky's getting incredibly low he's popped the heart of the wild he's barks in up and Numbless just sustaining on fumes, trying to keep the team running here, trying to give them an opportunity to get a kill, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It looks like Corky is sure to fall here as in comes the damage. He's dipping down to 1% HP. Corky will finally fall, and Admirals Esports will take their first kill in this series. It's not going to be a sweep. All right, Admirals Esports, they want that rematch. They're battling back to take a game, but it was still close. I mean, Mana is completely oom um on both sides. Those final moments of the game, if they could have enabled Trend a little bit more, he had to stop the drink, but nobody was there to help him once he got baited and rooted inside of the room. So it became really tough for them to keep their momentum going. And also, is this a composition that will work in all scenarios for Admirals Esports? Because, I mean, Nice Beam have other options too. They have Aerotross. Um, if they wanted to bring in a Caster Cleave on a big map versus Blizzo, I feel like that wouldn't be terrible, um, given that Admirals Esports have really never even used Warrior Moonkin into Echo. I don't think it's probably a good matchup for them. So Nice Beam could set, set up that kind of counterplay if they choose to. Um, the small map actually ended up looking like Numbless needs to drink almost as much as Next needs yeah. to. Uh, and he was like way more involved in the map and you could swap to him. So maybe a big map is actually maybe better for the Mistweaver. Um, you know, the Druid's going to get to drink, but so does the Monk. And maybe the Monk's output and dampening is just better if both healers have mana. Yeah, I could see that. It's interesting. I'm curious what your thoughts are, are, are on it too, because I felt like in the first two games, one of the things that Nice Beam did that I really liked was they were actually doing swaps on Next. And I feel like that was really missing on this map and i'm not sure exactly why i don't know if uh they were actually getting shut down more or if swapsy was doing more of what i was talking about which is just like cc'ing the cc when you know blizzo gets cc'd up he locks down his target but like trend had been pushing onto next a lot more in the previous two maps and when he would go over to harass him to stop a drink he would just stun him up and they would actually just start a swap you know corky would throw some damage on him trend would continue the damage on him and all of a sudden you know he would have to full hot himself and then they just immediately swap back off and he's just like dropped, you know, 10%, 15% mana or whatever, just trying to actually keep himself sustained. Uh, so I did feel like that was really missing in this one. Yeah, I, d I don't like going warrior. I just feel like warrior is wasted damage almost. It's just if he victory rush and then, you know, heals up with bloodthirst, it, it, like if you swap to him, you have to kill him in the swap because he's just going to heal himself to full uh, after you get off of him. I, I just feel like it's almost wasted damage to attack the warrior in this matchup. Um, unless you absolutely have to. So, yeah, switching to next, I think, would be way better. And I'm honestly yeah. surprised. They, it didn't look like they ever targeted him in that game. And nope. they won every other game targeting him a significant amount. So maybe they just got lulled into, like, a safe strat where they didn't want to take any risk. It was just like, oh, the hot yeah. up on Swapsy, so we'll just hit Blizzo instead. And they didn't want to overextend. And they could thought they thought they could just oom the Druid playing safe or something. Um, but didn't work so i think getting next involved and attacking him is definitely going to be better usually with the rest of druid you want to attack the healer um, and then the dps to to force the hot swaps because usually you've got your hots on both the dps uh admirals esports they've got a big decision here do they think the warrior moon can can beat everything that nice beam have available i think they have to with the small map there's not really any other choice um, and nice being picking a small map makes me think they're not going to change anything either um, and likely the only thing that will change is their strategy and which targets they decide to go after 
Yeah, absolutely. I also kind of look at, I don't know how you, how you see Fury Warriors, but I kind of look at them similar to um, to Warlocks in a way where it's like they're not a great target early, but they could be a really good target late um, because they rely a lot on self heal, right? So dampening can really kind of like double dip on some of these targets, just like with uh, with Warlocks, how they have a lot of self healing. Fury Warriors can be similar in that they can be a really good target late in the game, but definitely early on, I, I don't think that you know, you're doing that much to them oftentimes unless it is 100 zero like you're saying so we'll see I, I would love for them to just run the same comp get next way more involved um because you know if, if they can keep everything else the same that that was in that that previous match and just get next a little bit more involved like next would have been um i think a lot faster you know every time you're hitting him i think he's going to be you know spending a lot more mana so uh at the end of that last game next was tapped anyway so i think you know if a couple more swaps on him uh he could have actually just been um you know, 30 seconds, a minute faster, and then they could have potentially won on mana. So going to be excited to see what they do here. It is going to be another of the same matchup. <laughs> I don't think either people are going to be changing up really anything as far as talents and stuff are, are concerned. You know, you mentioned Blizzard maybe going to be going gnome, but since he went human back to back, I don't think it's going to happen in this one. Did he change? I wonder if Blizzo changed his talents at all from the first game that they played. So I, I want to look at right now. Was he oh, yeah, running any check. secret tech? So he switched to Blood Rage instead of rebound so he dropped the double spell reflect to get a 20 second cooldown root break which probably gave him a lot more uptime right it's basically like gnome racial you know on a third yeah. of the cooldown um so that makes a lot more sense for blizzo that talent change might actually be what tipped that matchup over the edge he was able and to maybe get why they uptime. felt they had to train him right maybe they're feeling like hey he's gonna be too free if we're not hitting him yeah I think it's a trap. Even if he gets out too. of roots, I, I think it's too. still a trap. Yeah, I, I almost would too. rather they bring Blizzo into a corner and then use Ring of Peace and lock him in the corner and then run <laughs> and then push on top of next. You could do it on this the map. baby cage. Yeah, yeah, you could do it really easily in this map. You just run into any corner that's really close by, put Ring of Peace on that corner, and then just wild charge and run straight at next while Blizzo is stuck in the corner. Um, could be a really good way to get him off and get pressure and get isolate the healer. Um, but they got to deal with that now ability for Blizzo to break out of roots. He's shockwaving the first clone, moving over to Numbliz. I think he may want to try and fear him. He's popping the Dragon's Roar. He's going for a lot of damage early on onto Corky. They're going to stun Blizzo. Blizzo immediately trinketing that. Blizzo's build is just all about damage. It's not about anything else. He's just trinketing the first CC that hits him, trying to make sure that he's maximizing his uptime and his pressure and stopping as many clones as he can. Solar Beam down to this one right off of a Storm Bolt. Keeps shutting down the clones. Keep maintaining your uptime, but he's disarmed and he can't avoid that. So his pressure is going to start to subside. We see a paralyze on next, likely into a sweep. Numbless not able to get there, and looks like he might have missed his leg sweep actually, uh, as it is on cooldown, which is really unfortunate. That's a really important crowd control chain for their team, so you're going to lose out on that advantage. Solar Beam here on a swap seat, trying to deny his clones for a moment. Corky falling behind, trying to get away, but he just can't. They're stacked up. A big mistake by Corky and Numbless here. Stacked up, and they get double shock waved, and now Corky has to deal with interrupts. He's not able to get through them. He gets storm bolted. He's trying to get a cyclone. Is he finally going to get it? He gets a cyclone onto Blizzo. Corky needs to get some distance here. And this is what I mean. If he just pulled back into the corner right here and then yeah. pinned Blizzo with Ring of Peace and run in, I feel like that would be a clean way for them to get to their target. Yeah, I agree. I think it could really work out. And it, it does feel like they're just kind of uh, panicking a little bit because Blizzo is, is being so difficult to peel. But they're going to go for a swap on a Blizzo. They do have a bash over onto him. They're going to get the Enrage regen as the hunt was sent there by Tren. But Corky still sitting low. is pummeled again. And Corky going to be the one taking most of the pressure here. Next on the other side of the map could try to go and uh, look for a drink. But Tren is already over there anticipating it. He was into the cat form, but he's actually going to get cc'd up on that clone coming out and trend now will be able to get at the root he's going to be eye beaming over on the next so now they're finally getting involved just kind of like we wanted but it is quirky on the other side of the map this life cocoon has to come out he actually has his clone reflected onto him and he's gonna have to trinket as a result so really nice plays there from blizzard with swapsy getting low trend getting low numb is getting low numb has a lot of work to do to pick his team back up and swapsy now was cloned there relatively low himself next trying to reposition through the middle of the map but we'll see if they can actually get him involved trend sitting onto swapsy for now does land a pummel there on the clone but now Swapsy going to be able to land one onto Tren right back Blizzo not getting peeled off here very well whatsoever and Corky has just been in so much trouble it feels like this entire game he's getting ridden start to finish here by Blizzo has not been able to escape and as they group up to try to peel it is just a bit of a bait he's going to be th thrown into the shockwave alongside Tren they throw a clone over on a Blizzo and they waste the I-beam into it so it feels like a little bit of miscommunication on exactly how they want to play this out they're struggling to deal with Blizzo's pressure. And Numbas may just get burst down here. He's knocked up into the air. He's going to have to pop those shield oh. walls into the storm bolt, though it may not be enough. He's holding onto that trinket. Is going to be able to pour it out to safety as Nex can't quite finish him off. He's going to get the burst healing in and stabilize here. But Tren 
trying to make something happen. They're going to be going on a Swapsy. There's a stun over onto him. They use the beam as well. The hunt's going to get sent on a Swapsy. He's in a bear form immediately. Popsy and Rage Regen will be cutting back, but Tren going to be bashed up. The clone trying to come out here, not able to land it just yet. As Corky has a great clone there on a Swapsy. Fake the, oh, the double. It. But again, the double shockwave comes through. They have got to stop stacking for Blizzo because he's punishing them every single time. They have to pull Blizzo into the corner. They're just not able to get him off, and he's doing so much with this uptime. The only thing going in their favor is maybe they're slightly ahead on mana at this point, uh, and maybe they could win with that advantage, but they're just they're ignoring Next. I can't believe how much they're ignoring him, not even looking at him at all. Um, they're just trying to stay on Swapsy here. Can they power him down? Looks like he's recovered, even without having to use Iron Bar. Corky's on the back foot again. He's just dead. Look at the pressure. They need a Life Cocoon right now. Life Cocoon comes out at 5%, but now he's just switching to Numbless. He's cracking him down to 50%. He's like, all right, you're here. I'll just hit you instead. And he's just dead. Blizzo is just killing the whole team by himself. Cyclone over onto Blizzo finally stops the damage. Finally, they can stop the bleeding. Numbless can get the team back to full health. But Trends in the clone, he can't get up time. He's charging back, trying to switch to Blizzo. Gets cloned again and can't get the swap. And honestly, the Fury Warrior is not a kill target. He would have to be you know, a huge blunder for him to go down in this matchup, I feel like. Enrage regen here. No way he's dying through that cooldown. They're going to try and swap back onto Swap C. And uh, Numb lives into a Storm Bolt, trying to prevent him from healing up. Here's big damage from Trent. He's got a Demon proc. This is a big moment. They need to try and get pressure for Barkskin or Iron Bark, but they're actually just switching to Blizzo again, trying to kill the Fury Warrior. I'm not a believer of it. I, I don't think this comp has enough damage to power down a Fury Warrior, and the more they switch to him, they stack up for more Shockwaves, and that just puts them even further behind. Yeah, and I mean, it's just giving him easy access to targets all the time, right? He's always going to have someone to hit next there, though. They do get the trinket off next. So is there an opportunity now to try to get something rolling? Blizzo, put into the clone. That will buy them a bit of time. But Numbless is actually going to get cloned up. So obviously, though, put into a fear. There's a stun over on a Blizzo as Tren realizes he is in trouble and is going to have to use those abilities very defensively. You know, there may be a chance they could try to look for something onto next because he is missing a lot of those defensive cooldowns. He's actually going to Tranquility oh. here. Swapsy down incredibly low. He's getting burst. He might just go down. Swapsy down 5%. He's down to 1%. And Swapsy out of nowhere just gets obliterated. That was through Iron Bark. That was through a lot of healing coming out there from next. But next had no trinket. They land the CC onto him. Nice beam just crushed through Swapsy. was looking like Admiral's Esports. We're winning this one almost the entire time. And out of nowhere, Swapsy just gets crushed. Beautiful setup there by Nice Beam, and they've actually done it. They've they've beaten what is that? Two of the three top dogs for the region now. There's only one left. It's only Echo uh sitting at the top. I cannot it's believe it with this deep Reaper run. Knocking on the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving over in the lower bracket. First team out inter international feeding. Next team out my way. Next team out the agents. Next team out Admirals Esports. And Echo is waiting for them into the grand finals now. Is Nice Beam actually going to be the team to do it? Is Trend, the team substitute, gonna be the X factor for their team to actually win cup four? end the win streak like echo if they win this it's four cups in a row they didn't drop a single series in cup play if they Insane. win this so uh, nice beam man if they can do it it's going to be impressive yeah, yeah it really man. will i mean they they, they lost to echo in, in round one though so you know echo has already has already played against them so you know they have had that matchup but uh they are obviously on fire i mean three won the agents three won admirals it's not even like these were series that went all the way. You know, they also took out my way. So they've been beating so many of these top teams in the region and really do seem to be on fire. I mean, the scariest thing about this comp to me is that they can beat you in dampening, but they can also just randomly one shot you, right? Like it is it is actually really difficult to deal with. There's not a lot of comps right now that I think that can kind of do both. Uh, there's some comps that have a ton of upfront damage, but they struggle in dampening. But this comp seems to be able to kind of do a little bit of both, you know, like when Incarn's up, when, uh, you know, Demon Form and Hunt and some of these major cooldowns are up, they can just kill you through your defensive sometimes. I was going to say, they're, they're kind of like collecting Infinity Stones here. There's only one <laughs> left, but I mean, this is... This is really the dream team. Nice beam. They kind of came out of nowhere having this incredible Sunday so far. Here's also a look real quick at the, the final moments here of Admiral's Esports in this final game. So what happened that did he die through Iron Bark or did he Iron Bark a different target? That's what I want to see because like they're winning this game outright. They're just in full control. Corky and Trent are just dead. They're getting double stuns. They're running them down. Blizzard's getting so much uptime. And then suddenly out of nowhere, they kill Swapsy. So Iron Bark is up. I don't think it's on him. Did I don't he see Bark it on the himself? buffs. I, I, 
I mean, we would hope he doesn't, but I don't think Ironbark is on swap well, no one else was he... getting hit though, right? So there would be no reason he would Ironbark Blizzo. It's like either it was a pre Ironbark on on Swapsy or it was an accidental Ironbark on himself. I mean, he he does get hit like a little bit here, I think, as they were kind of pushing in on him, and maybe that triggered Ironbark's him to think... right here on Blizzo, maybe because he's hat below half. Let's see. Yeah, it, it was on Blizzo. It was on Blizzo. Yeah, he he Ironbark's Blizzo. He tranks uh, to to like try to reset cooldowns, but into the in cap. He was three seconds off NS, so he was trying to he was trying to trank to get his NS back. I think is what he was trying to do at the end there, um, but just couldn't actually get the cooldowns back. And Swapsy just kind of gets crushed. So at the end of the day, you know, being able to actually get some of that damage rolling on Blizzo did pay dividends, right? Like I was not a believer in it whatsoever, but you know, you get those cooldowns out. That was the Iron Bark. You can see that little animation, little kind of like roots animation that's around him. Um, and Swapsy just dies through bear form. He's in bear form. He has the enrage regen up. You can see um, commanding shout, everything came out. So they did use quite a bit there to try to keep him alive, but he just dies through it. Ooh, wow. I, I mean, it makes you wonder what would have happened to Nice Beam had they, you know, where they would be in the standings, had they brought Trent onto the roster early on for, mm. for cup number one, because just I, what an incredible way to sort of round things off i'm excited to see what they can do in the gauntlet because unfortunately they aren't going to be able to make it to that top three but they're definitely playing like a top three team so now all of us unfortunately are wrong with our predictions here we all predicted admirals esports to get second place this weekend um echo getting first you can just see just aee -E, 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 -E all down the board uh but it's going to be at least uh, nice beam or echo in that spot. So mm -hmm. we are going to be heading into the grand finals of EU up next. It's echo versus nice beam. I'm not even sure how many times these teams have played against each other. I'm not sure what exactly could be happening as in this series. Yeah, I don't know exactly how many times they've played, uh, but they did play in uh, the first round of, of this cup in an off broadcast, uh, and Echo was able to take them down. So will be a, a rematch within this cup, uh, just not one that I actually got to see. So will be pretty interesting. But honestly, I I'm happy that we were all wrong. Like I'm happy to be wrong and have upsets because I think it is really exciting when teams kind of uh, upset the meta or upset you know the the expected finishes for these these squads because it had been that kind of routine of admirals okay they go to the upper bracket they lose to echo okay they go to the lower bracket they beat everyone and then they fight echo again in the finals right so it's exciting <laughs> yeah. to see something coming out that is a bit different and nice beam are really showcasing what has looked like a really powerful comp um we did see echo against bamboozle lost one game i want to say to it it was dh comp i believe that took one game off yeah, them the Demon uh, when they Shatter played Bruce. against yeah so it was demon hunter shadow priest so like hey maybe demon hunter is is the future against echo i don't know maybe trend can show us a thing or two uh could be exciting yeah maybe trend holding it down for the demon hunters uh pretty much the only one representing that class in the awc so we are gonna find out how far exactly it can go up next after this break also just as a reminder stick around after the european grand finals we will have that tiebreaker for eighth you can see it down there right below the highlighted series right now the fiends versus caster meta so before we get to either of those we will be heading to a quick break we have got echo versus nice beam in the fourth and final european grand finals up next
Hey everybody, welcome back. We are about to see the fourth and final championship Sunday, European Grand Finals. It's Echo versus Nice Beam. Every single one of us predicted this incorrectly. We thought it'd be Admirals Esports. They almost made it, but then it was Nice Beam that is going to be up against Echo today. Yeah, and I'm happy to be wrong. Uh, I feel like seeing a team like Nice Beam kind of step it up, make it into the Grand Finals, potentially even challenge Echo here is going to be quite something. I mean, I got a chance to spectate some of the games before the finals. Even the series between Admiral Esports and Echo was a really interesting one. I mean, Admiral Esports seems like they really stepped up in a big way, but they were eliminated by a nice beam. So it really shows you the caliber of this team. And I think this is going to be interesting because this is uh, maybe a test that Echo hasn't had just yet. Nice beam bringing on trend has been uh, it's been really solid for them so far. Most definitely, yeah. Here, you know, here's kind of a look at the the stat the stats for Nice Beam right now, and uh, you know, they just made that switch. They just brought on Trend, and it's kind of like they're a whole new team. You know, it's not like they were bad before, but it's like they've been fully unlocked. Zico, we get to see the full potential of this team. Yeah, I mean, it's been awesome to see how Trend. I mean, this is just what Trend does, though. I feel like he always just kind of sneaks in, you know. Uh, comes in, finds a team, and and makes it work. And he's found himself a, a great roster. You know, everybody on this team playing phenomenally. I feel like it's a great meta for these guys as well. Uh, you know, Moonkins are strong. Corky has always been a strong Moonkin in Europe. You got Tren on the Demon Hunter doing some work. And Numbless has been such a well-rounded healer. He plays all of the healers at such a high level. And I really feel like he's uh, he's working well with the rest of the team. Uh, but we are getting into game number one. We're wasting no time here with the blind picks. And already we're seeing both teams kind of lead with their strongest foot forward. And already a lot of pressure here onto Waz, actually. Mez, meh, sitting through a uh, root solar beam there in the start. Yeah, definitely. Trent's going to be moving forward here, trying to get some damage rolling. Already receiving the life cocoon from Numbliz, trying to shut down that early pressure and incarnation from Waz, just trying to slow down that damage and allow his team to build up some momentum. You can see Corky in the back line, just throwing out damage where he can, basically allowing Trend to be the main kind of damage choke for the team and push forward and try to keep Echo at bay in these opening moments. Now you can see Nemo is pushing forward. Big setup here on a meh. And it looks like he will get punished, forced to trade up that Emerald Communion. That's a big win there early on for Nice Beam. Yeah, and uh, they are playing, you know, that Munkin and Warlock once again from Echo. So it is uh, quite interesting to see that Waz not opting to go for a rogue when he presumably could guess that they are going to be going against Tren here on the Demon Hunter. So I feel like if you're a nice beam, this is something that you're probably pretty happy about. And uh, this is game number one, you know, it's a best of seven. So they're really going to need to try to capitalize on this on the side of nice beam. They got momentum heading in from the lower bracket as well. So really got everything working in their favor. Can they do it? Waz versus Corky here on the Moonkins. Uh, having some Moonkin on Moonkin action. Full Cyclone connects onto Numbless. Corky going to duck behind the pillar. Get the Frenzied region. Look for the Cyclone onto Waz. Waz actually getting a precog right before that Cyclone lands. And Corky is not going to be too happy about that. Finally connects with the Cyclone onto Waz. He trinkets out. And uh, that will be his trinket. Now here comes the damage from Tren actually getting interrupted there uh, on his I-beam by Meh. Nicely done there. You want to make sure that you interrupt those I-beams as much as possible. Really limiting the Demon Hunter's uptime and damage. And uh, Tren right now uh, going back in open field. Once again, Chaos Nova connects onto Chanimal. Big healing coming out. There's a full bash onto Tren. He could be in trouble. They don't have the Life Cocoon just yet. There it is. Numbers will trinket to be able to get that Life Cocoon out in the nick of time. And Corky now getting swapped to. Numbers having to heal two no! targets. Corky almost getting destroyed right there by the incarnation there of Waz. I mean, that was insane. Corky goes down to 5% health, and that ability is just absolutely lethal. Beautiful Cyclones coming in from Waz. Now a big setup here onto Chanimal. He's forced to portal win. This is just such a back-and-forth game. Incarnation time here for Corky, and these Moonkins are really getting it done. They're getting crazy. Waz moving forward, landed the Solar Beam here onto Corky, looking for a Cyclone. Can he find it? He does. Full Cyclone on Anubla's, and Trent and Corky are under fire. They're taking some pressure here. Full Cyclone now onto Waz as Corky is just trying to get control of the match, but Met is getting aggressive, goes in for the deep breath onto Tren, getting a double stun out on both Tren and Corky, but seems like they're able to shrug off the attack. Uh, mana for both these healers relatively even at this point of the game, so in the late stages, I really don't know who has an edge. 
Yeah, we'll see here. Uh, right now, Meh has a slight mana advantage, and that usually is the name of the game when he's playing that Dragon Evoker right now. Corky Ducky Mana Pillar trying to self-sustain himself, but he takes a big fire oh breath right there goodness. and gets destroyed around the corner. What was that? Was that just... Was it that was coming meh. in there at the end? I feel like no. that was mostly Meh just killing him. That was Meh. Oh, we got to see the death log. Pull up the death log. We got to see it. <laughs> meh going crazy fire for breath. Echo. It was a fire, I think it was a living flame into fire breath into living flame, and it, it just did all his health. Like, not only does it remove, you know, the heal over time effects that you have, like if you have an enveloping mist, a renewing mist, those are going to get purged. But let's just take a look at exactly how that happened. And that's what makes this team so deadly is all three members of Echo are just playmakers. Like, Matt could just go in and literally close out the game by himself, like we just saw. He's the <laughs> only one in position to really get damage out on a Corky. And he's able to just drop him. So this is just a few moments before. We had a decent setup here doing a little damage to Trend. They forced Corky uh, to play a little bit defensive here. And at a certain point, Meta decides he wants to push in. They get crowd control here on Anumla's. And now it is go time. Man moves forward. I think he gets the it's big tip to scales fire breath. So he first of all goes for the sleepwalk. Here's the tip to scales fire breath. Moves in for the living flame and uh, closes it out. So I think Waz might have got like one star surge there. But that kill was it pretty much set up entirely by meh yeah that was uh <laughs> that was something he got the follow-up sleepwalk there as well so uh, the tip of scale fire breath doing a lot and uh, he got the follow-up he got the living flame and i'm pretty sure waz did get a star surge there as well so just a, a nice uh finish there and that's the thing you know we we were talking about it in the middle of the match that meh is so efficient on his mana but also just adding in that extra bit of damage is so crucial because i was looking at the details throughout the match and corky and waz were doing pretty much the same damage corky was slightly ahead and uh, i mean it was like nothing you know like 500k or something and tren was slightly ahead as well over channel in damage but when you have meh adding in an extra you know one and a half million or something on the evoker it really really adds up and uh, it, it makes it a lot harder for numbers to actually keep up because numbers on the mist weaver he's not doing any damage pretty much he's you know he's not a fist weaver he's just sitting back healing with soothing mist so um not really uh, able to to get as much offense out on that uh, mist weaver and as a result echo now uh, gonna be uh up one zero and old veer actually being locked in by nice beam i I wonder why is it just because they want numbless to be able to sit back really far away or uh, i actually don't even know what the game plan is here because trend is going to have a tough time on this map yeah i think it's also worth mentioning like meh his scoreboard damage is impressive for a healer but it's also i feel like the damage from a preservation of is always it's always at the right time too right yeah. like it's not just it's not like pad, pad damage it's just burst at a key moment that can actually close out the game and it's just it's such a momentum swing in a match you have an evoker move in obviously the fire breath is good damage but also the fact that it's just removing all those healing effects you just get the enemy healer even further behind uh it's just a really impressive toolkit and meh utilizes it very well so we'll see what they can get done here it is going to be a large map nice beam selecting tolveron arena uh and it seems like if that is the case because normally it seems like when they're playing this demon hunter moonkin they want small maps to stay on top of their opponents but it seems like echo kind of navigates that situation pretty well such an aggressive team with the way they play this evoker wizard setup that um maybe they don't want the small map maybe they feel like numbers will just be under fire too much it'll be crowd controlled too much and they just want to give them a little bit of room to breathe here uh, in this game yeah and we'll see uh if uh, this map will turn things in their favor or if echo is going to start running away with this but uh, i gotta give nice beam such a big shout out for how they've actually been handling this weekend you know barely making it through to the gauntlet and now beating some of Europe's finest. This is, you know, really going to be nice for them in that gauntlet as well. They're going to be the final boss. And uh, they're really, uh, you know, getting a lot of reps here uh, on trend on the Demon Hunter as well. So getting a lot of work done, getting a lot of momentum heading into that final weekend later on. And uh, we'll see what ends up happening here. We're going to have Waz right now getting targeted by Tren. Beam coming out there for Corky, but meh able to duck away from it and keep healing right now, meh. Pushing in here, looking to get aggressive once again. Waz is going to be trinketing out offensively here. He's got the Incarnation active. He gets the Precog. Goes for a big chunk of damage right there. Tran 
getting some work done. Corky in, in the back line as well, taking a lot of damage. That's going to be the Restore coming out from Numbliz. And Corky is still not out of the woods yet, taking so much damage. Dodges the Fire Breath or the Deep Breath there from Matt. Got, gets the Bash into the full Cyclone here. Both healers in Cyclone. It's a 2v2 situation. Corky dropping to about 50% HP. It looks like Echo is winning that 2v2. Echo's going to be heal or Corky's going to be healing himself back up behind the pillar. And Trend now going to be left in open field here. Going on a solo mission, almost taking down Waz here. Pushing out the revival here, taking a lot of damage still. Waz dropping to half HP, getting cycle on half HP. Can they chain it though? Tren ducks over and gets a kick there onto Matt. It's a triple DR fear there onto Matt. So Matt is going to be completely immune to crowd control now. He's going to be able to keep everybody on Echo nice and topped. Yep, the good crowd control there by Corky and great pressure here by Tren as well. It's really getting active over onto Waz. Matt is able to stabilize and basically hold on to every cooldown also. So. Bit of a panic moment, but Echo does not uh, overreact to the situation, even though Waz is low on health. Still hold on to everything. Double stun, double chaos nova from Tren onto Channel and Waz. So looking to get aggressive here and force Waz in a bit of more of a defensive position. They don't want him to be able to push in on Numbliz and actually get crowd control here. Cyclone onto Channel. Waz gets topped off. Map playing pretty passive. All things considered, now that he has a nullifying strata, likely going to be pushing in, looking for some plays. Living Flames coming in out on the trend. Big Fire Breath, potentially. Is he going to land it? Is he able to get the Sleepwalk as well? And that's the nice thing about having an Evoker on your team. You have another casted threat. So as another person that they have to deal with in terms of interrupts. Big setup Whoa! here on the trend as he gets stunned. And almost one shot. At the same time, Waz taking a lot of damage. He gets gripped away. Darkness drops down. This is a ton of damage from Channel. Yeah, that's going to be the Darkness getting cycloned as well. So really good place coming out here from Echo. But Trend will recover now. Looking to make his way over onto Waz. And look at that, how they're using this map to actually punish it. Trend ha just has to go back here. He can't c continue his push because when he does, he's dragging Numbliz out in midfield. That's allowing Channel to get all of this crowd control over onto Numbliz. And uh, this map is definitely backfiring so far for Nice Beam. Big damage coming in here onto Waz, though. Huge yields coming out from Meh. Still trying to top Waz. Gets the Spirit Bloom there catches a couple of big heals dream breath is going to connect as well trend trinketing out actually he was uh, on dr there for that cyclone and uh, channel now going to be sitting through a cyclone corky gets a full cyclone onto meh and here comes pressure onto waz meh with a bit of mistake they're actually tanking that cyclone i feel like he could have avoided it maybe but meh is sitting through more and more crowd control right now waz full moon connects there onto him and corky looking for the cyclones here looking for the fake cast can he find a cyclone low on Waz? They still have good pressure. Trent is in a bash. Corky gets quelled there by Meh. And Waz will recover. Nice place there from Waz and Meh to stay alive. But now Corky under heavy fire. There's no life cocoon for another 20 seconds here for Nomlis. How is he going to navigate through the situation? Actually, a solar beam connects onto Meh. Onto his spirit bloom there. And uh, good pressure coming out here from Nice Beam right now. Corky sitting through a cyclone and Waz looking to get aggressive. If they can swap the CC over onto Numbliz, they could get some pressure here onto Corky. But once again, it's going to be Corky actually who gets the cyclone onto Waz. Yep, Waz can get cycloned up. Big damage. Here's the Tyrant. Trend is just getting blasted in midfield. Needs to be careful. Just completely eating that Tyrant damage. Going into Metamorphosis, looking for a little leech healing and empowering his damage onto Waz. But Cyclone lands. Waz is going to shut that down for the time being. Echo does have a mana lead at this point. Look at Numbliz. He's trying to sneak away. Whoa. But team, what? All right. A <laughs> big setup there. Numbliz is trying <laughs> to sneak away. And unfortunately, they totally capitalized on that. That was a crazy amount of damage that came in on Corky. Um, and uh, that's just one of those things. I mean, Numbliz was behind on mana. He tried to go for a bit of a greedy drink. He had the life cocoon. There was answers. But he just fell too far behind on healing. He was out of positioning. And Echo really capitalized on that. Yeah, I, I feel like this map just completely backfired. I have no idea why they locked in uh, Tolvir. I mean, we're going to see it every single time. Tren, like, look at him. Raz is just going to continue to drag Tren back. And when he does, Numbers has to leave the pillar. And it forces Tren to uh, drag out Numbers, or it forces Tren to come back because Numbers can't commit. And anytime that happens, I mean, look at what's positioning right now. If Tren wants to chase here, he can't. Like, look at Numbers. Immediately when Waz chases here, Nomalis has to go back uh, or has to go into the middle of the map. And a lot of the time, Chan is going to be between Nomalis and Waz. And that's when he's going to be able to get a lot of crowd control. And in this situation here, they just swapped to Corky and actually just destroyed so him. An axe that, he died so fast, actually. That's crazy. I mean, I, once again, I didn't expect that. It's like these teams are just so capable of just one-shotting each other. Now, I was just looking at Nomalis reposition. So 
As soon as Numbless decides, okay, this is a really good time to drink, it turns out to be the worst moment to pick. <laughs> like, <laughs> it turns out to be the worst moment you could imagine to try to run back, drop combat, Trend's getting aggressive, uh, Lost gets really good Cyclones out here and just shuts it down. And uh, as soon as this happens, I mean, everyone's looking like they're nice and healthy. Numbless runs away. He's trying to drop combat and here you go. <laughs> All right. That was uh, that was crazy. I really wonder what even took him down there because I don't even think that was a demonic tyrant. Yeah, I'm not sure. It just looks like a coordinated assault. Uh, maybe everybody adding in a little bit of damage there at the same time. Uh, I mean, it is it is really just coming down to the to, to the map. I feel like I feel like the map is uh, really really huge, uh, and it's it's a problem because quirky. He's trying to, uh, you know, stay on that pillar, line of sight on that pillar. And Numinous is all the way behind the pillar on the other side trying to drink. And uh, I feel like when you're that split up, that's when situations like that can happen where, you know, Numinous, there's a big reason why he doesn't want to commit there as well, right? Because Trend is cycling in the middle of the map and he thinks, okay, Corky is safe uh, where he is on the opposite side. So the best thing I can do is drink and then have my teammates come back to me. But... Um, when you get stunned, axe tossed, and you don't have bark skin, you just get sent instead. And that's the thing about Echo. Yeah. They're so good at, at finding those moments where somebody is a little bit exposed, where somebody thinks they're a little bit more safe than they are. And all it takes is just a second to blink. And uh, me and Sid were, were talking about it earlier when, when they beat Admiral Esports in uh, like a minute. Uh, it really is a push week for Echo because they are just, uh, know, they're just on a rampage. What do you think about the map? I mean, it's Imperial Domain. This is a map that Nice Beam has selected. So that once again, they're going for a large map. And it definitely backfired in that last one. I mean, even if you're looking for opportunities to drink, you uh, just kind of get in a position where you're not available to actually help out your team. And that was a really fast death. Like that, that was, that was crazy. Echo really capitalized on him trying to get out of combat, but a team like this is going to do that. So you have to be really, really careful when you pick those moments. You have to make sure everyone is in a good position. Nobody is overextended. Nobody's going to get caught with no trinket, no bark skin, um, as obviously things can change really, really fast. Yeah, uh, we'll see. I mean, Empire and Domain, kind of more of the same. I, I just feel like if Echo was picking the map, this is probably what they would pick. I don't think Echo would be picking the small maps uh, necessarily, but uh, then again, we have seen them pick the small maps and be very, very aggressive. But that's usually against the Resto Druid healers with the uh, numbers being on the Mist Weaver. I feel like it would make more sense if numbers was on a Resto Druid and they were picking these maps, because then at least they could be playing for those drinks. But on the Mist Weaver, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they got something cooked up here. We'll see. You can never really count out Nice Beam as well, though. We have seen them, you know, uh, have games where it feels like they're just kind of losing the entire game and then they just randomly one-shot somebody with a big hunt, with a big uh, incarnation from Corky. So definitely still a series on our hand. They could still uh, turn this around, but Echo right now looking like the most dominant team in Europe, uh, up 2-0 to zero here in the Grand Finals. Oh, trend getting aggressive right now and Metamorphosis on top of Waz. Waz gets a bash, so... Gonna completely shut him down into a coil. Can they take down Trend? This is a scary moment. Big deep breath. Beautiful cycle. Oh! Oh, so in the meantime, almost get clotheslined there by Trend, reversing the pressure. What a scary moment. Quirky manages to find the cyclone. If it interrupts here on the mat, can they take down Waz? It looks like he will be able to recover, but geez, nice beam really turned that around quickly. Yeah, Waz still not complete out of the woods yet, man. In the back line, finally manages to pick him back up there. And Waz looking at Quite healthy now, getting those Cyclones onto Trend, getting a little bit of distance here, man. Uh, trying to just get aggressive with a nice landslide onto Trend, and now he can feel confident pushing in, looking for some damage. Uh, actually, uh, shooting some damage over onto Quirky. It looks like they want to go after the Moonkid once again, and Trend now making his way over onto Waz, getting decent pressure here. Waz once again manages to fake us the interrupt there, I believe, getting another Cycle on the hunt. Getting casted by Trend, but not able to find it just yet. There's it. There it is. Huge damage coming in onto Waz there, and he is going to be able to top himself there. Big Emerald Communion coming out for Matt, but uh, this has been a lot more pressure coming out from Nice Beam. I don't know exactly what's changed here, but Waz has been under so much more fire here. Corky just playing at the pillar, doing a good job to staying away from Chan, getting his burst, getting some Cyclones when he needs to, and just getting a lot of uptime with that uh, damage. And meanwhile, Trend just having a field day here so far uh, against this Munkin. Yeah, right now, Waz is under fire. He's spent so much time in bear form. He's just under so much pressure. This is just looking completely different. He's not able to land the same amount of Cyclones on the trend to shut him down. 
Now Trent's getting a little bit overextended. He needs to be careful. He does have his trinket, so not really that big of a deal. And this is one thing that Echo loves to do. They love to just take Trend very far away from the healer, get him in a stun, get him in a coil, send the damage. Trend, oh. how are you going to live this? Looks like he will be able to hold on. Doesn't even have to trinket. Gets a demon proc at the perfect moment to heal himself up and now can continue the damage here onto Waz, making a swap onto Corky, but Numbliz deflects it. Trend now in trouble once again as he's still just sitting in the open and oh. midfield gets knocked out of darkness the and destroyed. Nicely done there by Waz. Darkness, that, when first of all, I mean, when you need darkness at the low of health, it's already risky enough, but Waz just immediately typhoons him out and it's a good night at that point. Yeah, that was a really nice typhoon coming out there, knocking him out of the darkness. You don't even need to play the darkness lottery, just knock him out and take him out. And uh, that was a really, really nice by uh, Echo once again. But there was a couple of close moments here, uh, especially at the start of the game. Waz definitely uh, was a little bit more tested here, but once again, uh, it was uh, the map, I feel like, doing a lot of work. I mean, look at numbers. He has to reposition so far to actually get to Tren here and heal him. He's across the entire map, and Waz just dragging Tren all, all the way through here. And they get the crowd control here onto Meh. They get the Cyclone, and um, uh, it's onto Corky. They get the Life Cocoon onto Corky. And look, I mean, look where Tren is, and look where Numbers is. And I mean, at this point, Darkness, he gets unlucky there with the damage going through it. But even if he didn't, uh, Chanimal is, you know, just having a field day over there with Numbly, spamming out the fears, was knocking him out with the Typhoon as well. And I really feel like these large maps are doing a lot more harm than good uh, because, I mean, look at Numbly. like, uh, just to pick him up, he has to walk into Chan. He has to walk into the fear spam. He has to cross the entire map. And that's just taking time where he could be healing if he already was, you know, positioned uh, a little bit closer to him uh, in terms of Tren. Uh, and then, yeah. Here. I mean, look, Chan just having a perfect positioning between uh, Tren and his healer and just kind of being, the, the, you know, an annoyance between them there. And that's exactly what you want to be doing as a caster. You just want to uh, position yourself so that if the healer wants to heal his teammates, he has to go through you. Yeah, I mean, was putting on a masterclass in terms of positioning, overextending Tren. And this is why I don't like this map because it doesn't really feel like... In my mind, the reason why you would want this map is because it actually gives you an advantage to drink, but we're never getting to the moment where you're out of mana, right? Like it's never actually happened where you're out of mana and they have good pressure in the early game. So the fact that they keep locking in these maps just seems really bad to me. It's like they're literally giving Echo their best map over and over and over. And yeah, like I said, if you go to like a hook point, it seems like to me, at least watching the games that Quirky and Trent are putting out a lot of damage. They're putting out a lot of pressure. They're forcing Waz defensive. And every single time they're losing, it's just because they're 50 million yards away from their healer, right? Like they're 80 yards away from their Mistweaver Monk. They can't get healed and they end up going down. So it is curious to me, but nice meme. They're going to do it once again. Uh, we'll see if they get a different result here on Mother Axis Coliseum or if uh, Echo is just going to clean sweep this grand finals. Yeah, we'll see. Aldraxxus Coliseum, this is a match point now for Echo, uh, looking for the uh, fourth win, what did we call it, a coat rack, uh, looking for the coat rack right now, can they do it, one win away to completely dominate the European region, and I, I really, I'm pretty sure they haven't lost a single series, any of the cups, like, going undefeated, They've lost a couple of games here and there. I mean, even today, they it's lost close two to, games to Admiral Eastport. Yeah, that was really close, actually. Uh, I bet they're kind of happy that Admiral Esports didn't make it at this point, uh, having uh, to go up against Nice Beam, which they already beat as well. But uh, I feel like for Echo, it probably doesn't matter that much. They have been uh, just on a tear. And even against Nice Beam, like, you got to think about that. Like, they have, you know, this comp that they're playing right now, but. If Nice Beam were to beat them, they could just lock in Rogue as well. Like, and, and then you have to play Demon Hunter into Rogue. So it's, it just feels Blues, like yeah. <laughs> Nice Beam is just in a really tough spot here. Yeah, it, it, this is this is definitely interesting. And you did mention it, Echo. I, I actually think they are going to go through all of the cup. If they win this, they're going to go through the entire cup phase, all four cups, without losing a single series against any team in Europe. That is crazy. Like. Not yeah. even going down to the lower bracket and having a recovery, just never losing to anybody. I mean, they also won last season. Uh, I mean, they've won most of the, the the seasons that I can remember, honestly. But I think last season, they also just completely dominated. So Echo really not skipping a beat here, looking absolutely disgusting with Meh on their roster, with Channel on their roster. And 
Uh, this is the best they've ever looked. Right now, they're playing Wizard. They got Raikou on the bench waiting, you know, with his mate, with his Demon Hunter, with his Shadow Priest. And uh, they just got everything that they need. They got the Wizard comes down. They got the Melee Caster healers down. We saw them on Melee Cleaves as well with Waz playing, you know, things like Warrior and Windwalker in the past. They just such a well-rounded team. They got, you know, uh, such a great Evoker on their team as well. Like, it really feels like it's such a big difference when Meh plays Evoker and when anybody else tries to play uh, Evoker to the point where it feels like everyone else is trying to play Resto Druid into him uh, to see if they can out-dampen him with drinks. But uh, because in Evoker matches, he's just always winning the mana war. Uh, so I don't know. Echo just looking kind of unstoppable. But I will say Nice Beam definitely uh, put on a show here. They've beaten all the Titans in Europe. Can they take down the biggest one of them all, though? It would be a, a nice uh, way to start if they could actually take this game right here. We'll see if they can do it. Trend right now, not off to a great start, sitting through a Cyclone. Yep. And he will get controlled quite a bit in this match, and it's going to be all about just overextending Trend and blasting him in a stun, in a bash, in a coil, and an axe toss. And that's what's going to be really, really deadly in this match. So that's what we're going to be looking out for. It's basically going to be Waz dragging Corky and dragging Numbliz to the middle of the map where Chanimal can just fear and Shadow Fury and do what he wants to get that control out. That's when they get the bash on Trend. That's when the Fire Blast is going to land and just look for these rinse repeat setups here onto Trend. He kind of has to chase Waz. I mean, what else can you really do? They could go for like a more of a like a closest wizard strategy where they kind of hit whoever's close. But so far, the pressure on Waz is immense. He pulls back to the pillar, looking for a Cyclone and getting interrupted. Pen knows that he's going to get Cycloned right now, so he's just deciding to get out of there, glimpsing, ruining the pillar. Wants to wait till he has a stun or an interrupt before pushing forward. Yeah, and Corky right now in a lot of trouble here. Coil coming through. We need to be careful. It's match point. Corky does man manage to get picked back up. Restore all going to be available for numbers in about 30 seconds. Still has the life cocoon in his back pocket as well. Tran pushing in, getting aggressive right now. Onto Waz. Kick connects onto Waz. Tran looking for the setup here, but gets forced back. He's going to go after Chanimal instead. There's a root beam, actually just a beam, connecting onto Numbers into a full fear right now. Corky could be in trouble. Tran actually going to be in trouble. Corky triggering out of a Cyclone, gets DR Cyclone. Numbers has a lot of healing ahead of him to catch up on, but manages to pick up Tran, manages to pick up Corky, but that costed him his Barkskin. That costed him his Trinket. It was a really good Solar Beam timing there. And they managed to follow it up with a great chain. And now Cork could be in a lot of trouble here. Got no revival or no restore all uh, for a couple of seconds. Actually has it back now. But Numbly is sitting through a sleepwalk. And Numbly is playing Gnome. So he's not going to be able to use that Will of the Forsaken here. But he will be able to break out of those root solar beams. Numbly is getting Cyclone here as well. Waz just getting so much crowd control here on Numbly's big hit of damage on the Corky. Triple Shadow Fury for Chanimal. Ooh. He's looking to close it out here. Big Fire Breath connects from Meh as well. And Corky is just covering at the pillar right now. Trying to stay alive, but where is the pressure? Numbly's mana is getting burned through very quickly. Yeah, definitely. Now Trend, 50% health. Cyclone in the middle of the map. But it's an absolute nightmare for a Mistweaver to heal through this. He gets interrupted. They're oh. setting him. And that's it. Beautiful setup there by Echo to close it out. 4-0 in the finals. They've won all four cups. Completely dominant. They are the kings of Europe. And they're going to have the championship bracket to uh, prove it uh, in uh, just some time. So... I mean, this is just such a beautiful setup here by Echo at the end. It's the Cyclone from Waz that really sets it up. I was talking about it. It's just such a nightmare as a Mistweaver Monk. You can't channel your Soothing Mist into a Cyclone. It's like really, you have to kind of ramp up your healing. And as soon as he's Soothing Mist out of the Cyclone, it's an instant interrupt by Waz, an insta-Waz. And uh, they just delete him. <laughs> Yeah, Insta Walls gets him, and uh, this is right after actually uh, they sent a solar beam about, uh, about 30 seconds ago onto Numbers. Cheesy ch CC chain uh, continues here onto Corky. He's getting blasted. Triple Shadow Fury coming through for Chanimal. Big damage onto Corky. He ducks around a corner. Fire Breath connects. Corky manages to stabilize a little bit. Trend goes out. And uh, let's see what happens here. Matt goes for the landslide there and uh, actually annoys them. They get the Cyclone onto Trend on low HP. And then as soon as that Cyclone connects, look at that. There it is. The Insta-Waz connects right there onto Numbers. You don't even see the cast into an Axe Toss onto Tren. And that is it. And Echo will be uh, the Cup number four winners once again, winning all of Europe, not losing a single series. And uh, I mean, they are looking it like the, I don't know, man. They're looking so unstoppable right now. I mean, they really are. It's like you mentioned... We talked about it a lot today, like 
For Europe, what was on the line is momentum moving into the finals. I mean, how much more momentum could you possibly need? <laughs> Let's look at the setup once again. Trent in a Cyclone. Waz moves forward into a position where he can solar beam the healer. So you see him right here. As soon as it ends, boom, solar beam. Send the incarnation. Trend's deleted. Goodbye. You're done. And it's just, it happens so fast. That's what I don't like. I don't, I feel like I don't like these maps that Nice Beam selected. But I mean, they're, they're going to have a chance to go back to the drawing board, reassess, you know, what went wrong in this finals. But I'm really curious to see if Echo can just continue this domination. Obviously, I have a new patch coming. Um, for the finals but so far they are looking completely unbeatable nobody can touch these guys oh yeah we got i uh with some tech issues right now but uh yeah ah. I, I do agree with you there van it's just insane to see how how much uh momentum these guys are gonna have but also they, these guys are gonna have a massive target on their back here uh after dominating europe for so much everybody's gonna be preparing if you are in the finals you know you're gonna need to beat echo and you're gonna need to put down probably most of your prep work into working against echo and the figuring something out and, and actually uh, working on it but for now echo winning every single cup winning the entire region and doing it without losing a single series europe look at that europe cup one two three and four champions these guys just don't stop winning absolutely massive congratulations to these guys for uh, just a monster season all right, I'm back. But yeah, you pretty much said everything I was going to say. Uh, Zico, Echo, just monster of a team. I cannot wait to see what they're going to do here in the grand finals. Uh, you know, that's in about a month, especially after all of those changes, and if they can continue uh, their winning streak. So huge victory, huge congratulations to Echo for winning all four of the Cups. And honestly, well done as well, too. Nice beam. They surprised everyone today. They really, really showed, proved themselves as a team, and I cannot wait to see what they are going to be doing in the gauntlet, Ben. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what they can get done, how far they can really take it, and see here exactly how it unfolded. Let's take a look at Echo's journey. So they started off the top eight, um, knocking down a nice beam. Uh, after that, going after Bamboozle. After that, beating Admiral's Esports. And then once again in the final. So these guys just win every single series that they play. For Nice Beam, and we can take a look at their journey as well to the finals. They had to go through, you know, the gauntlet after losing to Echo, uh, playing against International Feeding, then besting My Way, which is very impressive, taking down the Agents, which is another Titan team, then taking down Admiral Esports. So even though a Nice Beam kind of, you know, they didn't have the best finals against Echo, uh, they really made a statement in Europe. I mean, they took down all the other top teams in the region. Um, so uh, I think that really makes a statement for them. Yeah, I think it does as well. So certainly keep an eye on them um, for the finals. And that means that we are all wrapped up for Europe. Unfortunately, we're not going to get a winner's interview because we do have to go right immediately into the tiebreaker. You can see it right here. It's going to be Fiends versus Caster Meta as they are currently tied with 84 points, uh, both in eighth place but this is um how everything is kind of lined up here echo admirals esports and the agents in in that first second and third place and a nice beam just right nestled up in that fourth place so we can take a look at what the gauntlet right now is going to look like casual granddads versus either the fiends or caster meta depending on how this tiebreaker in just a second will go and then it's just kind of up that ladder you know, it's the the winner of the first one goes up to play Vamboozle, the winner of that one in my way, and then winner of that one a Nice Beam. So, you know, depending on how long you make it, you could end up having a very long, long day in the gauntlet. And I just, I think, I think I'm more excited for the gauntlet than the grand finals. It's definitely going to be very, very interesting with all the teams that we've got playing there. So I know we're super excited for this one. We're going to head to a break real quick, and we're going to see who makes it to the gauntlet out of the Fiends or Caster Meta. See you in a sec.
Welcome back, everyone. We just wrapped up the European region for cup number four. Now we do have a tiebreaker for a to figure out which team is going to be heading into the gauntlet. Is it going to be the Fiends or is it going to be Caster Meta Azale? Do you have any predictions or, or hopes of, of which one makes it out alive? Uh, I think it's pretty hard to predict, but it's obviously an incredibly important match, right? Because you know, theoretically, you could still win all of grand finals starting from eighth in the gauntlet. So this could be the difference between you know not even qualifying for the gauntlet and winning the grand finals. So uh, I do think it's going to be really exciting. The Fiends have been a team that I've just really enjoyed watching because they kind of just like mastered their comp and are playing something that feels you know pretty off meta. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see if they bring it out too. This is going to be for sure interesting. We kind of know, you know, the Fiends is that Thug Cleave, Caster, Meta. They've got a couple of more options that they could be playing here. So this is a big game for both of these teams. I mean, Azale already said it. This is the difference between, you know, just this is the end of the first, the you know, the, the first four cups. It ends right here or potentially making it into the grand finals. Who's it going to be? The Fiends versus Caster, Meta. Ooh, this is exciting. Caster Meta bringing in the Turbo Cleave. It's going to be Warrior Enhancement Shaman. And look at Rat. A little bit of a surprise. I don't think we've ever seen Rat play anything but Subtlety oh. Rogue, but he's actually going to be bringing in the Outlaw Rogue, I do believe here. we got the Adrenaline Rush showing, so let's see what he can do. He's going to be a little bit more tanky on the specialization, and that might ruin the plans of Caster Meta to kind of train him down. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. We had only there was only two DPS specs that we were actually missing, and it was Unholy DK and Outlaw. So Outlaw is now no longer missing from that, and Dox is just going to be trained from the start here. Uh, Dox and Axiom look like they want to go for Big Max. They're trying to connect to him, but Big Max doing a good job disengaging away. Zenlin already in the Angel form, healing him back up, and Dox in some trouble uh, is actually getting pretty low there as Nessie was in the kidney shot, but caught a fat heal. It looked like from Axiom, so the off heal coming in from that Enhancement Shaman doing a good job, and now the Doom Winds is going to be popped here. The Lust has already expired. There's a scatter defensively onto Axiom. So Big Mac's doing a good job kiting it out. Has the Diamond Ice Trap, it looks like, over onto Nesty. So did land a little bit of CC onto him as he's just trying to stay away from this kind of three-man melee Zerg from Caster Meta. And Nesty, though, getting sent here, was into the kidney shot, was in a lot of trouble. Is going to be able to stabilize, though. And it's Big Max again, who's getting chunked low, but has done a really good job of kiting it out. And Rat, as you said, going to be harder to actually take down on this outlaw than if he was playing sub. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot more durable. Let's see what he can get done. Kitty shot here on the docks as they continue their pressure and just really mixing it up, bouncing around. The Fiends do this exceptionally well. And uh, uh, right now we're seeing, you know, and uh, ST, sorry, I'm trying to read his name, ST getting swapped to consistently in the match. And we're also seeing a lot of pressure on Big Mix and Rap, but Zenlin's been able to ma maintain his mana quite well, just sitting in the back line keeping them both alive, but Enhancement Shamans have very explosive damage, and this could be it. Here's the Bloodlust. Can they take him down? Big Mix needs to be very careful. Might be the aspect of the turtle, but no, he gets gripped away. Nicely done there by Xenolin. That's going to allow Big Mix to kite just a little bit more, get away from the Enhancement Shaman, and uh, just avoid the fight for a little bit. Yeah, it is going to force out that evasion, though, from Rat, so I uh, do have to keep track of that. He also is playing the physical damage uh, of Cloak of Shadows talent, so he's going to be able to have you know 100% evasion you know during uh, his Cloak of Shadows with Veil of Midnight, so he's going to have a couple tools to try to stay safe. There's Stormbolt over on a Big Max, and he's just going to die! Oh my god, that damage coming through just destroyed him! I don't think they were yeah. expecting that. Like, that was crazy. Doc just popped the avatar. Axiom maybe threw a little bit of damage from range, but it wasn't like it was all their cooldowns connecting at one time. Stormbolt came through. He was at, what, 80, 90% when he got Stormbolt and just insta died. Yeah. I feel like Enhancement Shamans can do some of the craziest bursts in the game. Uh, I feel like it is a little bit proc reliant, but. If you can get, you know, good fortune your way, you can do a tremendous amount of damage on that Shaman. Uh, so it, it, it's scary for the Fiends. You see Big Mix right now, this is where he got gripped away. He was kiting quite a bit. It was very back and forth. Like, I feel like the Fiends, they played it well. They were doing swaps on NST, then putting him, uh, of course, into the trap and just really making it difficult. But you see Big Mix right now, uh, this is going to be that Stormbolt coming up relatively soon where he gets kind of one shot. I kind of wonder where this damage comes from. I feel like it was a proc from Axiom, but... We'll see. There comes the wolves. I'm not sure. All I mean, right. popped Avatar right when he charged in. So he stuns him. Colossus smash. Um, sharpen Avatar MS. Looks like it was a, probably a sharpen MS crit. And then, oh yeah, oh my Axiom, goodness. Axiom just hit him for about 40% of his HP instantaneously. He he wasn't even touching him for the entire Stormbolt until the last, like, what, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds. And then just hit him first global for about 40% of his health as soon as he connected. 
Yeah. I mean, enhancer shamans, they've always been known uh, for that kind of explosive damage, right? Like, that's been their thing, even going Wind back Fury. to, like, the yeah. Burning Crusade. So, and they connect, and the things, the, the procs line up at the right time, they can just delete you off the face of the earth. And it, it's unfortunate for Big Mix because I guess he didn't have a trinket. I was going to say he would have probably trinketed, but he took so much damage. He didn't even have the trinket, so that option wasn't available. But if that damage just was a little bit slower, he's going to get the, you know, his aspect of the turtle off. He's going to be able to get the feigned death off. But that is I mean, just... Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's hard to react crazy. to, right? Like, Zenlin was healing him and had swap. I just don't think that he expected him to instantaneously die there, right? Like, he got stunned up. He threw out a heal or two. And then, like, on that last global from the heal, the Enhancer Shaman arrives and just hits him for 40% of his HP, and he's just dead. So it uh, doesn't live through the stun. It died with just a tiny bit of the stun left on him. So they couldn't get off the turtle. They couldn't get off the swap. Uh, it is going to be a, a quick first win for Caster Meta. You know, you said it. The, sometimes RNG just kind of goes your way. And uh, Caster Meta, with some fat procs there, played out well in that first game. But I, I do did feel like it was going pretty well overall for the Fiends. I don't know how you felt about like the overall state of the game. But um, we had been seeing Big Max kited out what well. The... He was he was leading in damage, but pretty heavily. It seemed like it was fine. Why? Caster Meta like Caster Meta won, and then they change it. So, uh, I don't know if that's wrong or that. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, they're going Shadow Priest. I feel like Shadow Priest uh, maybe not bad in this matchup. Maybe trying to take advantage of the map. Maybe because Blades, it's Blades. Yeah, I, th I feel like they they were too worried about just getting chain knocked off. Mm, as a cleave, yeah, it's yeah. definitely possible. So like they're the going to make just play the edge of the bridge, right? Yeah, and it's true. So. Um, maybe trying to just avoid Nox here. We'll see if this actually works out for Cast and Meta. I'm curious if NST actually mixes it up and he's still going to play, you know, um, that melee monk where he's actually getting in there and doing a lot of damage or if he's mm -hmm. going to offer more of like a range specialization uh, in this matchup. I wonder what will be better. But I feel like, I guess I was going to say you lose some of that defense of the Enhancement Shaman. Like Enhancement Shamans are relatively tanky. You have good, you know, instant off healing. And then, of course, you have that X factor of like being able to just delete someone uh, in the match. But Shadow Priest also has a lot of that. You're also really tanky on the Shadow Priest. You have a lot of good defense for your team, good utility, uh, good burst setup. So I could see Caster Meta winning this one as well. Yeah, totally. And Warriors obviously can leap back up if you get knocked. They have pretty good mobility. Uh, Shadow Priest can grip him back up and kind of play in a way that you know he's not going to be able to actually get knocked off that, that easily. So my guess is they just swapped when they saw Blade's Edge because they didn't want to play Melee Cleave on this and maybe have the Enhancement Shaman just getting chain knocked off and really struggling with it. So... We will see how it's going to work out for them. The Fiends, obviously, tremendous amount of comfort with this uh, with this comp. And they are not going to be swapping to sub or anything, despite the comp. So it is going to be still Outlaw uh, for him. We'll see what he's going to be able to get done here. Can Rat find a good opener? Can he get some sort of a sap? You know, sprint in right off the bat. Um, potentially make something happen for them. The Fiends have been so good with this comp. This is all they ever really run. And it's going to be exciting to see if they can make some magic happen. Hanek going to be already into that sap. There's a blind coming out immediately. Opener onto Docs. There's a trap over on an SD. They set up 3v1. Now mind control looked like potentially coming out there from Zenlin, trying to throw Docs off as they were going on to Hanek, but not going to be able to make it happen. Docs, though, leaping in onto Big Max. The shockwave comes through, and Big Max trying to get out of there. The mind games, though, coming out here from Hanek, trying to get that pressure rolling. He is going to get silenced, though, by Big Max as Zenlin is into that ink app. And now he's going to be ring a piece off the bridge. So Zenlin trying to rush back up as rad is getting really low has some work to do to pick him back up and nesty just in the mix here with the rest of the team trying to go aggressive big max jumping back uses that chain to get right back in on nesty does land a trap the fear there from docs to break things up but it's big max getting incredibly low it does seem like Zenlin's really struggling to actually heal through it. He's going to have to go into the Angel form, just spamming out those heals as fast as he possibly can to top his team back off. But Big Max still is low and now into the Shockwave. And Hanek going to be Psychic Screamed off there by Zenlin. Zenlin trying to get away from him, trying to run away, but he is going to be having that fear come through. It looked like the fear actually got immune potentially there by Zenlin or just straight up whiff. But Zenlin now is going to be in the Psychic core. It does expire, trying to keep Big Max top. But Big Max is just non-stop at 50%. Now he's down to 20%. Oh! Now he's down to 10%. The Life Swap has to come out. And the Trinket from Zenlin as he got silenced. This is a horrible start for the Fiends. Yeah, but Hanek is burning through his cooldowns as well. There's no dispersion. NST might have to trade out the Life Cocoon here to keep him alive. No, it seems like they will be able to stay on target. All three members on top of Big Max right now. And they do get the aspect of the turtle. The things are unraveling here for the Fiends. We'll see if they can hold on and make a push here on Hanek. You never count these guys out. But this match is not looking good. Zenlin is really struggling to keep Big Mix alive. And 
He doesn't have much room on this map to actually kite and get away. He's having to play on top of his opponents, and it just doesn't seem like the fiends are getting good exchanges. Yeah, it's it's been really, really tough. I mean, Big Max has just been getting destroyed the entire game. This team is just all stacked in on top of them. The Void Eruption comes out. There's the Shockwave on Rat and Big Max. They're both incredibly low, and the Paralyze comes through onto Zenlin. I think this is it. Big Max into the DR Stormbolt. The Trap comes out defensively, but it will not be enough. And even on the Fiend's map pick, Caster Meta crushed them. This one felt even more one-sided than the last one. And uh, now they are really going to be up against it. Going to have to kind of go back to the drawing board, figure something out here. I think they want to go to Blade's Edge, try to use the Tier 2 map, you know, be able to knock people down, try to create you know, opportunities with that. But it never happened, right? Like, Big Max just never got any space. He was always in the center of the map, getting pounded by all three members. Zenlin was struggling to heal through it. And anytime they pushed forward at all or got split, then Hanek is just playing in between Zenlin and his team, which makes it incredibly difficult for Zenlin to really do anything. Like, you're always going to be in range of silence, psychic horror, every sort of CC that's going to come out from Hanek is just like a touch of a button. He doesn't have to reposition or do anything. Yeah, I mean, this is just insane. Big Max right now, you can see just forced in position where he's just tanking damage from all three members. Docs is just doing a tremendous amount of damage. Hanek, it's just like you just throw these little crowd controls on Zenelin, right? Like it's just a psychic horror into a paralyzed. Big Max gets storm bolted. NST moves in, gets the touch of death. Like a little swan dive there, <laughs> moving in for that finish. <laughs> Beautiful, picture perfect finish there for Caster Meta, and they are up 2 0. They are looking good to take it in that eighth spot and earn their place in the gauntlet. Right now, the Fiends, they have to battle it back, but it just this is what happens, right? If, so, if, if Everyone knows what the Fiends is going to be running. They tried to come in with a surprise with the Outlaw Rogue. I don't know how much I like it. I mean, it seems like. Rat's doing a good amount of damage, and he's not the one going down, but it just doesn't seem like he has that. It's like, it's good DPS, but I don't know they if don't it's good enough burst to actually close close out a game, you know? Yeah, that's that's how I feel. Is even if it is, like, if, if it should kind of be better, you're putting out more damage, you're less vulnerable, it just doesn't feel like it does anything because they have no real setups. They don't have any real threat. Like, they don't have those big plays that they can go for with Shadowy Duel and with, you know, like, a, a massive Shadow Dance and, and things like that. So, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit concern for them i definitely did not expect the series to be so one-sided like it's been what four minutes of gameplay for a 2-0 so has been incredibly fast in both games and it didn't feel like they were really that close to winning so i i, I would prefer that they go back to sub just try something different because it does not feel like outlaw is working whatsoever and big max is just getting pounded like he is getting absolutely ran into the ground both games so it's gonna be really tough of course caster meta uh, will be going back towards the Shadow Priest. If this is if their read is that it's the tier two maps or two tier maps, I should say, uh, that that they don't want to play melee cleave on, then it makes sense that they would just go towards the Shadow Priest again. Uh, because Mugambala, of course, you can do the exact same thing as a hunter. You can just play on the top and just knock melees down. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. It is looking like it's just going to be outlaw again. So the fiends are just going to run the same comp here once again. This does feel like their answer to it, but we'll have to see if they can play it better and, and make something happen. I just feel like. Zemlin is really struggling to heal through it, and they don't have long enough CC for it to really do anything. Like, they're never CCing Nesty enough that they're really threatened, you know? Yeah, 100%. Mugan Ball, I, I love the map picks here from the Fiends, like, really causing chaos. Like, sometimes when you, you feel like... This is the way I look at it. Sometimes it, it feels to me like if you aren't exactly in a matchup that you should be winning, sometimes you need to cause chaos and, like, throw your opponents off and... Map selection can be one of the things that does it. So they went to Blade's Edge. Unfortunately, it didn't work. But Mugambala could do the trick. Um, it's an interesting one. But I, I feel like the way these games are playing out, Cast the Matter is looking very good. There wasn't any moments in the match where I was like, oh, this next setup from the Fiends could close it out. Like, Cast Meta is going to have yeah. to do something crazy here to live. It's like, no, they're always safe. They always have cooldowns. Things are looking good. And it just feels like it is the Fiends on the back foot. Yeah, totally. And, that, and that's something that I think is kind of missing from when they were playing sub, even when they were playing against comps that were really difficult for them. And they were, you know, battling through some of these cups, you know, this time and, and even uh, last year in, in the series of cups, it's it's like one of those situations where it just feels like when they were playing sub, you always thought, even if they're in a really bad situation, maybe they can get that one perfect go and make something happen. And I don't think that that same feeling is there with, uh, with Outlaw because it is more kind of consistent damage, less setup base. So 
it's going to be tough, but we'll see if they can make something happen here. Uh, for now, they are playing on that lower area, not going to be running straight up the stairs. Rat is going to be going in. We'll see if he can find any sort of a good opener. The sap comes out onto Hanek. No CC just yet on the Nesty. Now cheap shot over onto him as the kidney shot comes in onto the docks. The trap going to be there off of that onto Nesty. And Doc's getting pretty low. Does have to actually pop the dive of the sword. And the commanding shout is going to be leaping in onto Big Max, though. And Big Max is just going to try to pull him out of LOS. He's going to try to pull him into this difficult situation. Zenlin, though, pretty separated from the rest of his team as well as Rat is in incredibly low docs is incredibly low one of them might just go down to start it off there's a life cocoon so it's not going to be docs that's going down hannock trying to burst down rat he's going to get gouged yeah. up but rat's still in so much trouble here has to get back to zenlin who has been sectioned off from the rest of his team docs now in on the back of him there comes the ring of peace preventing rat from actually turning that corner and nesty has connected in comes that leg sweep and rat is getting rocked right now big max gonna go back in does land the trap they're trying to get some pressure rolling onto docs but there's just nothing going for the fiends they are fully on the back foot in comes that dispel with the fame but it's gonna be a fear over onto big max and now that shockwave comes through you can see this kidney shot used over onto docs Trinket's still available for Zenlin and Big Mech, so they are sitting okay for now, uh, but it's definitely not looking good. Yeah, nice disarm there on the docks into a fear. Beautiful. I like that Zenlin's getting a little bit aggressive in the match, actually pushing forward, landing some crowd control, but the restoral coming in from NST is going to be enough. Zenlin will use that Spirit of the Redeemer to just bomb out some heals for the time being, but is it going to be enough? Big Mech and Rat are just dying. Look at Zenlin, just flash heal after flash heal, trying to stay alive and stabilize, but barely able to do so. He's still just pushing forward on the Mistweaver Monk and this Warrior Mistweaver just absolutely causing panic. And it gets cheap shot and it looks like Rat is trying to slow down the game and get some sort of control, some sort of pressure rolling. But Docs goes for the Shockwave, he gets the Disarm, Rat can't get anything going, he's on the run. And once again, the Fiends are just having to play so defensive. A beautiful ring of peace there, keeping all two men, or both DPS stuck in this position where Zenelin is just forced to just trade out heals, but he's caught in crowd control. Hanek's moving forward. He wants to close out this game. Rat is caught in a leg sweep, and he gets crushed. Caster meta does it, and they make it look easy. It will be that eighth spot in the gauntlet. Congratulations to Caster meta. Yeah, they crushed the Fiends. Three quick games, back to back to back. Really made it look effortless here, dominating the competition to get that final spot in the gauntlet, so they will have a shot. That's uh, still making it all the way through, trying to get in towards that grand finals. We'll see if they can do it. And here are some of those final moments from Big Max, you know, from his point of view, uh, was really, really a difficult match. You know, they were kind of winning as far as like damage output was concerned. You know, they're putting out a lot of damage, but it just didn't feel like they ever had threat. Uh, this Fist Weaver monk was just keeping them so incredibly stable. You know, yes, they're landing traps on cooldown. Yes, they're getting some of that done, but it's like, there was never really any real pressure. You know, Docs was sitting very high on health for most of the match, and Big Max was always kind of struggling. He was always having to pull back, and they were creating these opportunities where Big Max finally gets away, but then they can just swap it right back onto Rat, right? And Rat becomes the, this big target that is actually super vulnerable to dying. Yeah, I mean, it's just so... The overall damage doesn't really matter that much against a Fist Weaver. Like, if Fist Weaver has yep. uptime, he's going to be able to heal the spread pressure, no problem whatsoever you know it's not a big deal it's all about that burst you need to create a threat that can actually burst someone down now i don't know if a subtlety rogue is going to be able to do that like if you're playing a subtlety rogue you know there's so much crowd control coming your way there's lots of cooldowns that they can rotate through you're going to be a lot more susceptible to just being trained down you have multiple disarms to dis dis you know disrupt your dance so it, it is really really difficult the mix trying to get away during these moments but you can see Rat, he kind of gets stuck. I think here's the Ring of Peace where they get isolated. Big Mix trying to stay alive, trying to get around this Ring of Peace. Zenelin doing what he can to keep Big Mix alive, but here it is. Like a big setup here. It's a disarm on Zenelin. The double leg sweep comes in. Big Mix immediately trinkets, but guess what? Rat doesn't have a trinket. He's caught all alone and he gets destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Rat was, just, I don't know, a couple seconds, I think, off from having his PvP trinket. So almost had it back, but. Uh, you know, I like that they tried something new. It's kind of fun to see the Outlaw Rogue come out. So we're only missing on Holy DK now uh, throughout, you know, this this AWC series. So uh, maybe we'll get an Unholy DK later on. Maybe Mez will pop one out or something and we can have all specs represented, which would be pretty cool, minus the tanks, but no one cares about you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll see uh, where it goes from there. Oh no, if only Sid was here for that, <laughs> he would have been disappointed. <laughs> but you know, you know, as, a, as an unholy main, I'd love to see that as well. We saw a little bit of, you know, Frost DK, but yeah, it'd be good to kind of round everything off. And here is the final 
format, uh, you know, bracket for, I don't know what you call this. I suppose it is a bracket for the gauntlet and it's, you know, casual granddads, caster meta, that's going to be the first up. And then it's just going to be kind of climb the stairs, climb the ladder there. So potentially casual granddads or caster meta could have a very long day if they're able to pull it off. Cause, uh, you'd have to play one of the, what is that? Five games in a row. So that would be yeah. definitely a, a long day. Then. It's better to have a long day, though, than a short day. Yeah. Like, keep that in mind, right? You, you, if you're in that eight spot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd yeah, much yeah. rather have a long day and go through the uh, game. Nice so quick just... day, got absolutely pounded 3-0. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> <laughs> I think the teams are going to be stoked if they can make it because it is going to be it's going to be a journey. Let's say that. I mean, just imagine, you know, for casual uh, granddads or cast the meta, they have to go through each other, then fight Bamboozle, winner of that, going after my way after that, a nice beam, and that mm. is just like. That's just a warm up because then you're in the finals and you have to play against Echo, Admiral Esports, and the agents. But what a miracle run it would be. Uh, I, I would love to see it, honestly. It would be quite the story if someone actually could make it to the gauntlet um, yeah. and actually win the grand finals. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I mean, it's, it's always possible, right? Like, especially with big changes definitely. coming in. You know, there's new, there's the new uh, spec coming out, there's like some, some massive changes for Holy Pallies and whatnot. If, if I was in the gauntlet, and especially if, if my team was more of a long shot, I would put a tremendous amount of time into trying to figure out some sort of new comp or a new thing uh, that's coming out with the patch that could really give you an advantage, right? Because that, I think, is going to be something you could look towards to be a difference maker. You know, it's, it's unlikely, of course, that you're going to be able to take down those big dogs if you're just playing the same kind of style that you have been this whole time. Yeah, definitely. They're going to have to switch things up. So I'm sure they're all practicing uh, very hard. You know, I've seen a lot of tweets kind of from some of the players in the EU region, sort of glad that they're, you know, this season is over because it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, these players, they all qualify on Wednesday. They've got the offline games, and then you've got the whole weekend, basically. So it's a lot of dedication that all of these teams, all of these players have put into this. And it's not even really over yet with the gauntlet and the grand finals coming up. But that is going to finish off the European region for the four cups that means that we will be now heading into north america i am very excited for this region f tier they're kind of like uh the nice beam of north america if you if you want to call it that they're up against luminosity gaming so this is going to be definitely a huge stress test for them we know that they had an incredible day on Saturday's games, beating some really strong teams, mm -hmm. lost in League Away, Super One Shot Frogs. I don't know if uh, if you have a, a take on this team, Azale, if you've been watching kind of the success that F tier has found themselves in. I mean, I think it's it's such important matches because I think Holy Pallies are going to be way stronger when it comes time for the gauntlet. So if they can kind of pull off this miracle and qualify for the gauntlet, then all of a sudden they could actually do potentially a lot of damage. Um, this first this first lower bracket match is going to have a lot of implications, though. Uh, if Luminosity, you know, Luminosity wins, they can avoid a, tie, a tiebreaker with Super One Shot Frogs and get sole possession of third place. So that would be really, really big. Uh, you know, of course, they could go even further and potentially get more done there. Uh, but that would be really big to get into the AWC finals guaranteed. And for F tier, they need to compete their Miracle LeBron to actually qualify for the gauntlet. So, um, you know, if they're able to win that series, then they could get into the gauntlet. So that would be a really big one for them. Of course, Luminosity will be in the gauntlet or in AWC finals. They're going to be there in some regard. But F tier needs a win to be able to get at least into the gauntlet. Yeah. So it's uh, going to be a difficult task, but, you know, everybody kind of uh, underestimated them in the beginning of Saturday. So who knows what they can pull off today, but time will only tell. We will have to head to a very quick break before we get to that North American lower finals. It's also elimination. So F tier luminosity gaming. We're going to see that after this break. Find out if F tier can continue on their winning streak or if Lum luminosity is going to hold that title and move forward in the lower bracket. So we will see you in just a bit.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It is Championship Sunday. We just finished off the European region. We are heading into North America now. We are starting off with a pretty high stakes, stakes matchup. It is an elimination round as well. It's F tier versus Luminosity Gaming. F tier, they're the team that has so far been well on their way to making a miracle run. We know that they need to win this series, Zico, if they want to make it into the grand final because they can make it happen. They definitely could. I mean, it's been uh, amazing to see F tier playing, you know, Enhanced Shaman, playing Holy Paladin, playing Windwalker. These are specs that were long forgotten a, a while ago, you know, bringing them all back and uh, actually knocking out some of the uh, top dogs here in North America. Uh, yesterday, they sent the Super One Shot Frogs packing. Today, they're up against Luminosity Gaming. And, uh, you know, at the start, it didn't look that real. It didn't look like they were going to be able to make that dream run. But now they are just one game away from actually grabbing that final slot in the gauntlet. And doing so, they can gatekeep some of the competition as well, uh, gunning for that top three position. So there's a lot on the line here. And F tier have kind of been the dark horse in North America, kind of tearing up this bracket and uh, causing a lot of chaos. Even if they don't qualify, the amount of chaos that they've actually been able to do is crazy to see. Yeah, absolutely. They've just been ricocheting themselves through the bracket, causing all kinds of just a big wake behind them here. Luminosity, on the other hand, you know, if they lose here to F tier, they are going to have to go into a tiebreaker against Super One Shot Frogs in hopes to make it to the finals. So a lot on the line for both of these teams. Uh, Luminosity F tier, you can bet that they're going to be just pulling out all the stops, trying their hardest as they head into this series because uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a, just, you know, they, they have all this knowledge, Super Tees. They know what's on the line. And I'm sure that that is uh, going to be, you know, affecting their gameplay out there. Just good or bad. We'll have to see. I think Luminosity Gaming has honestly been struggling um, with the meta adjustments and trying to figure out what their comp is going to be. This week, it seems to be Ret Shadow Priest Shaman is like their main comp. But I don't really think Ret Shadow Priest Shaman is going to do very well into what F tier actually have available. Honestly, Shadow Priest might be pretty weak in this matchup. They're going to bring Drake in on Subtlety Rogue. Now. Subtlety Rogue against a Windwalker Monk seems pretty good. Um, but the Shadow Priest into this comp might be difficult here. So <laughs> Luminosity Gaming, this is by no means a free match. He's playing one dance sub as well. And this is going to be very interesting here. Drake kind of copying Trill's build right now. Kidney shot coming out onto Shaz. They're going after Dorito immediately. Lightning lasso onto Saul. Big damage here onto Dorito. They get the fear onto his trinket. Big hits coming in there. That's going to force out the trinket and the touch of karma now. Dorito and Saul making their way over onto Prev. And this is where it could get scary. Triple leg sweep connect. And Dorito actually going after Drake. Drake's going to use that trinket vanish. And Prev as well. Forced to potentially use his dispersion here. Can they get it? They got the hammer of justice onto Brain. Drake activates the evasion right now prev trying to stay alive the sport cloak does proc for him and he does get a precog and it looks like prev will be able to stay alive drake now uh, could be the target here that next leg sweep he's not gonna have a trinket for it he doesn't have evasion for it he's got no defense already on that sub rogue there's so much on the line in this series. F tier will get into the gauntlet for the North American Finals if they win this series. Luminosity Gaming will lock in their third place position and just have a free ride to the finals. So both teams want this more than ever right now in this series. Saul trinkets and walls on this assault and pauses the damage, but it's not looking like it's going to be enough here. Shaz is trying to sit through a oh. blind. Saul is so low. He has a trinket sap. Lay on hands and big heals come in. Saul is back to full health, but now they need pressure. They need counter aggression. They get a double stun. They knock him out of the earthen wall totem now they're swapping to drake trying to pummel him as he's got no vanish he's got no evasion but kidney shot onto dorito swap over to him maybe a swap back to saul as the cheap shots are connecting this is the shatter dance this is the scary moment this is where we need to see a grapple weapon or something onto the rogue drake is just doing so much damage in this position shaz bubbles but even with bubble is having a hard time getting saul back to full health brain has been uncrowded until this point now they're rolling over to him paralyzed static field trying to get a hodge triple fear in reverse from prev saul gets the terminal totem down breaks his team free to Spells the Hex instantly onto Shaz, breaking up the crowd control for his team quite effectively, but he's going to need to pre-burrow. I think Saul might just get 100-0. Even Dorito might get 100-0 if they're not careful. Dorito's just taking a lot of damage at the moment. They haven't committed the stuns. He's going to pre-dampen harm. Shaz is sitting through crowd control now into a silence. Bops out of that, trying to get Dorito aggressive. Right now, Drake in a leg sweep seems like it would be the best target. He's got no trinket. There's only a 15-second window to do it, though. 
Yeah, that was a really beautiful bop right now. They're going after Drake. He's got no evasion for 15 seconds. No trinket available. Can they connect with the leg sweep? Saul's taking a lot of damage here. Drake gets denied right now. Going for the setup. Looking for a kidney shot here onto Shaz, potentially. There it is. Kidney shot's going to connect. Saul's going to be in trouble. Activates the astral shift. Is it going to be enough? Mind games connect. Drake has the shadowy duel as well here. Remember that in his back pocket. Big damage coming out here from Prev, but it looks like Saul is going to be able to recover. Shaz, once again, this man is working miracles. He's swapping to Zorito. He's going to use the touch of karma. Big damage onto to Drake. Can they take him down here? It's going to be Dorito actually in the back line here on the back foot trying to stay alive and once again they're swapping their pressure over onto Saul. Brain sitting through a crowd control there using his trinket there as well. Disarm onto Saul. Drake dropping dangerously low. Double fear coming out for Prev. He gets tremored though by Saul. Drake still on the la on his last leg here. He's got no defense whatsoever. He's got Shadow Dance coming up in just a second. Drake, how he's going to be able to say I finally connects with Shadow Dance. Get the sheep shot onto Saul but Saul gets blessing of protection and I think Drake might just go down here. He's he just basically not Thing. He might oh. just go down right now. They got the board shift still in their back pocket to stay alive with, and they might need to trade it right now. Prev is he gonna pull the trigger here. He's casting insanity. Finally, going for some flash heals here. Drake staying alive with that shadowy duel, but that was way too close for comfort. Prev now can't really board shift anyone. He's super low here. Can only heal himself with that one. And Brain has no mana left. FTR might just be doing it. Oh! Right now. One percent HP, and the void shift comes through. But they the missed. spirit link is overlapped, and they missed the spirit link. Said. Oh my, there's no way Full Hammer Justice, they need to keep Dorito alive a little bit longer. Can they keep him alive a little bit oh. longer? Shaz is doing everything that he can, trying to power through. Trinkets out of the blind. Dorito just needs to live. They can win the game. He's on 1% behind the pillar. The Shadow Fiend is killing him. He has to heal through the Shadow Fiend by no himself. Way. Shaz needs to get in his line of sight as soon as possible. He's rooted behind the pillar. Vivify after Vivify, trying to recover. They can win the game. They're in the best position they've ever been all game. Just a little bit longer to get to that Serenity. They've got it available. Doomwinds is coming off cooldown. Saul is just going to walk and stay aggressive they can close this match out pre-diffuse but they're cutting through it Dorito's in trouble he needs to karma as soon as possible he's down below half he's trying to hold on to karma immediately here comes the serenity here comes the one shot is Prev ready for the attack it's going to be so much damage he has to disperse it right away they're switching on to Drake he still doesn't have evasion spinning crane kick he cancels the disperse they're killing him through it so no much way. pressure F tier are doing it they take game one perhaps not just cross yet kill. actually cross kill here Shaz comes out of crowd control sacrifice he's he just hit zero mana. They got the kill right when he hit zero mana. Woo! F tier are doing it. They're actually doing it right now. There's no way. Taking a game off Luminosity came and just two more and they will be in the gauntlet. F tier, they are wasting no time right now. These guys came to play. We saw them yesterday putting on such a show. And once again today, such a close call on Dorito. I cannot believe that he stayed alive. That He almost died to the Shadow Fiend and the dot there behind the pillar. Channeling out the Soothing Mist to keep himself alive for just a split second. Look how close this was onto Drake there against the Shadow. We do it right there on the leg sweep. Really well played by him. But uh, it was, I think, at this moment where Dorito almost goes down. This is where they used the Void Shift and the Spirit Link Mist. Misses. He moves the Spirit Link. Prev could walk into that one, but uh, just goes for the Flash Heals. And then at this point, they get the pressure onto Dorito. And look at how much damage he's actually taking here. Drops to 1% HP there. Shaz sitting through a full blind does trink it out has the avenging crusader and look at that here the rupture is taking the dots are taking the soothing mist comes out the vivify just spamming out whatever he can there to stay alive and at this point he's got touch of karma and here i actually thought that he was going to go after drake but they go after prep despite the fact that he has dispersion and then they just kind of kill him through that dispersion uh they space out their cooldowns which is really nice and uh there it is the doom winds connect here onto prev after his dispersion they use the serenity to actually force it and uh it's just a well played game by f tier especially by shaz as well in the end there i mean by all members honestly uh, everybody played their role but shaz once again with his holy pile in play there were so many times where they had nothing and they should just die but chaz with a really early bop uh, just extending it just buying time for his trinket to come back up he had to use bubbles super early and uh, just did a great job keeping his team in the fight and then at the end there that kiting from the wind walker was really nice and uh, just the way they spaced out their offense as well, just playing a really excellent game. And like you mentioned, Sid, this is such a huge game. F tier, they win here, they qualify for the gauntlet, they steal the last spot. And um, Luminosity, if they win here, they avoid having to play a tiebreaker against a super one-shot frog. So this is just uh, probably one of the highest stakes games that we have this whole season.
Yeah, it, it is. And we're going to Ashamane's Fall. Luminosity Gaming, they're staying with the same comp. I'm honestly a bit surprised. I thought they would make some kind of adjustment. I feel like a Shadow Priest in this matchup is just a sitting duck. F tier has been just devouring Shadow Priests left and right. <laughs> and I was really expecting them to make a change uh, onto a different class because F tier, they've brought in this comp, but it seems like, you know, it might be considered F tier overall, but really good into what the comps are being played uh, by the competitive teams. It, like the fact that if they can take this series against RPS, who's left in the tournament? Golden Guardians are left in the tournament. They might play RPS. Maybe they can beat them. Liquid, they're probably going to play Rogue Boomkin, but you know, if they can beat these rogue comps, right? I feel like Salty Rogues have been a very difficult target um, to kill in a lot of cases, and they had so much pressure in that last game that I'm wondering if it's even they could even beat the Moonkin teams as well that remain in this tournament. They've got the first win. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, of course. I'm sure Luminosity Gaming got a lot of information from that game, uh, and they're the type of team where if you beat them, they come back twice as strong. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Luminosity is uh, definitely a, a tough beast, but uh, facing the same matchup that they already won, I mean, that's at least something. And I feel like if you are the Windwalker, you're kind of happy with the, the map selection. I feel like if Luminosity Gaming can have a small map where Drake can get multiple cheap shots and you know get the kidney shot onto Shaz, connect onto Dorito, and where Dorito can't really kite as well and reset, I feel like that's actually good for him. But um, we'll see. I feel like this map is uh, potentially could backfire because uh, for Windwalker, this is definitely you know uh, your playground right here on Ashermans. But we'll see what Luminosity can do here. That was an extremely close match. Could have gone either way. Full sap connects onto Torito. Drake actually getting pulled out right now, looking for those combo points, looking for the kidney shot potentially onto Shaz. Oh! Pillar almost going down instantly. Trinket vanish. There's the kidney shot finally onto Shaz. Drake getting disarmed here. Double fear connecting and already uh, not a great opening here for Luminosity to get the blind there. Ooh. Going after Dorito now. Here comes the pressure. Full sap onto Shaz. Dorito trading his defensive cooldowns there and Shaz does manage to finally break out and activate the Avenging Crusader and try to spam heal his team back up. There's a lot of damage coming in that he needs to deal with. Ring of Peace, knocking them away from each other, trying to separate. Brains in a blind at the moment from Shaz, but Shaz now in a kidney shot. Saul Swan behind Dorito, pre defuse magic, anticipating pressure, paralyzed on Brains heal, pressure onto Prev, trying to take him down to force dispersion. They're switching damage to Drake, they're all over the place. Cleave on two targets, that forces evasion. Swapping back to the Shadow Priest right away, insane pressure, but they're turning it around. Dorito gets low. Is he going to go down through Damp and Harm? He ports back behind the pillar, avoiding the shadowy duel. Shaz reconvenes behind the pillar, and Dorito, what a live lord. Game one to game oh. two, what a miracle moment. Now they're turning it around. Drake is getting smashed. Almost a double kill in that push. Drake has to vanish away. He gets rooted on his vanish. He's going to get pulled out of stealth in a moment. They're keeping pressure on Prev in the meantime. Anybody they touch is just getting erased right now. Drake has to cloak of shadows. They switch back onto Prev. He's dying through Earthen Wall Totem. They go for the Kidney Silence and Lightning Lasso. Triple CC. Counter attack. But Shaz Divine Shields and gets there for the Lay on Hands. Another miracle play to keep Dorito alive a little bit longer. But now, honestly, F tier, they're running out of options to trade. They need to get a kill soon. Maybe they just will. Brains the hammer of justice drake steps away oh, brain triggers out of the full hex prev is still being pressured he's just getting crushed he has to disperse seemingly nothing there's a serenity available drake is still dead if shaz can get out of what? crowd control they might be able to just kill him i mean saul is killing him right now he's caught he's just soloing him saul is literally soloing drake is gonna what? kill him oh my what is this damage drake can't get healed dorito's gonna come over and try and help and they bop the kidney they're going for the win there's the paralyzed drake fakes him out shadow steps back away from prev to prev to avoid their attacks now they're on the prev serenity is popped that's a lot of damage from this windwalker is drake gonna live he shadow steps again to shaz trying to just navigate away from this windwalker threat but they're switching the pressure on to prev they're trying to stay aggressive. They know they lose this game soon if they don't get the kill. Shaz is charging in. Hammer of Justice has connected, and Prev is in trouble. So low here. He needs a Void Shift. Void Shift comes through, I think, and Link. They panic. They overlap. Yeah. They're getting cut down. They're getting mowed down what? by F tier right now. Prev brain. just cannot get healed. Dorito gets popped out of another kidney shot. F tier, they're running out of defensives, but if they can stay on target, I think they're going to take this. Yeah, I don't know, man. Dorito has no defense as well for another 10 seconds. That next kidney shot could be the end of him, but they're going for the kill. They're trying to do it right now. Paralyzed onto Brain. Dorito, though, has to teleport away to safety. He's kiting. Soothing mist. Flashbacks from game number one here. They're swapping to Saul. He's got nothing as well. Saul, how are you going to stay alive right now? He's got the Doom Winds. He needs to get pressure. 
big damage coming out here onto Drake. He's gonna use the burrow here offensively and defensively. Rev with no dispersion for another five seconds. That window to take the kill is Doom wins. very, very slim. The Doom wins get activated. Rev, two seconds left on dispersion. One second left. He activates it immediately when it comes back off cooldown. And Drake actually using that Shadow Dance to peel right now. Gets the cheap shot onto Solid. Gets disarmed by Dorito. Dorito, though, he's gonna have that serenity very soon here. They need to try to take him down on the side of Luminosity Gaming if they want to stay alive here. Brain's not doing too hot right now. Spamming out the heals here. Can he keep him alive? Prev does recover. Gouge onto Shaz. And finally, Dorito is going to go back behind the pillar. Kiting Drake once again. The map is backfiring. Saul now using the Astral Shift here. Trying to stay alive. Trying to keep himself uh, sustained right now. They got the Serenity. They got everything they need. Prev could just be dead right now. Can they stay alive? Drake, what is going on there? Drake just getting melted. He's dead. And there it is. Big damage. The fear. Brain, brain trinkets. And so does Prev. But they paralyze him on the trinket. Pre karma. To take the kill. Beautiful pre karma. But they're cutting through it. Drake trying to one shot Dorito right now. Can he no, do it? No, he's actually with the parry big fear and he's trying to stay alive but it's not gonna be enough dorito will fall but that game could have gone either way that was way too close Whew. f tier versus luminosity this is an absolute banger uh, luminosity tie it up one to one right now can Saul win this 2v3 there's no way right drake's full hp vanishing i mean the, f the pressure Saul had earlier i'm not surprised to see them try but i would, it would be insane. This would be insane for him to kill the two v three, right? Like this is a cheap shot of fear. There's no way. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna put F tier down here in game number two. It's not their map pick, um, but man, they they made this so close. To that is ridiculous. Oh, what, what a game! God. When Prev got that disperse back, it was literally one second away. Uh, when he got it back, that was incredible. And, and at some point when Saul basically deleted Prev from the map, tabbed over and just sent him by himself while his Windwalker wasn't even there. I mean, these guys are doing so much damage. Look at that hex that Saul uh, gets there, forces out the trigger, almost deletes Prev here, uh, just out of thin air, forcing out the disperse. And then here, uh, Drake kiting beautifully here with the shadow steps defensively, doing what he can right now. And uh, at this point, Dorito with a pre-karma, almost died through uh, his next pre-karma, I think a little bit later on. And you can see Brain here. This is so close. This is when they panic and they overlap everything. Spirit Link comes out, Void Shift comes out. And uh, at this point, Saul pre-astral shift he knows he's gonna get tab targeted and just sent he's got nothing to do uh, other than that so he sends it and then drake here almost gets melted and look at prev here taking so much damage but he does he use the trinket into the fear they paralyze brain on his trinket as well and the cheap shot from drake pre-karma on the cheap shot otherwise he would have just died right there and he almost dies through it here the turbo fist coming out there for dorito he teleports behind the pillar and then he does eventually fall and uh luminosity takes it but i mean that honestly just one more crit two more crits <laughs> you know a little bit more going their way and that could have easily been 2-0 for f tier right now okay they tied it up but it's dicey here both these teams have a lot on the line uh we f tier want to get into the gauntlet for a chance to make it to the finals and luminosity want their third place position solidified they're currently tied with the super one shot frog so if they lose this series they're gonna have to play a tiebreaker and then maybe they don't even make it into the top three for the north american finals they want to avoid that scenario we're going to be going to hook point really small map for the cleave ports nearby pillars nearby for the monk to escape as well um and i do wonder if they won't commit as heavily to drake because there was that period where drake was just stepping he stepped away he stepped in stepped away stepped in and they just couldn't connect to him so maybe instead they're going to spend more of their time on prev as opposed to drake here luminosity gaming they're unafraid they are locking in the same comp they're not making any changes they feel this this matchup should go their way uh, in regards to this comp. And F tier, of course, going to be locking in the same uh, with the Windwalker and the Enhancement Shaman. F tier are making some pretty crazy trades and plays to stay alive in these scenarios and getting tons of pressure. They could do it, man. It, this could be the weekend of the biggest upset ever if F tier managed to best Luminosity, get into the gauntlet, and who knows from there. Uh, if they could beat Golden Guardians or Liquid, it would be absolutely astonishing. I feel like the Shaz would have to go down <laughs> in some sort of like World of Fame record book for playing Paladin and doing this <laughs> in, in Cup Number Four at the moment because this is this is really unprecedented. I think everybody has written this healer off as just not it's not it's not worth playing. And if he could beat Brain too, uh, yeah. playing Paladin, like is he gonna make Brain switch at some point? Maybe in this series, if it gets down to that point. Probably not, but it would be epic if it did.
I mean, if he can beat Brain with his own class, that is quite the statement. I mean, he already has, right? But if he can win the whole series, uh, I think Brain might rethink his stance on Holy Paladin, might be bringing it back. He is the GOAT uh, when it comes to that Holy Paladin. But Chaz uh, definitely uh, stepping up here and, and being a worthy challenger uh, on that Holy Paladin. Uh, just uh, playing it super aggressively, knowing that, okay, well, we're going to run out of steam, so we really need to make it count. We need to get that Avenging Crusader. We need to get a lot of pressure with it. Preemptive bop on every single one of these stunts. And and that's the thing, you know, when you have a, a, a sub rogue and you're playing with the Windwalker, it is so difficult to keep your Windwalker alive. We saw it throughout the Touch of Karma uh, how he was getting absolutely destroyed. And uh, that's really all it takes. So uh, if uh, Dorito can, you know, connect with the... With his leg sweep, he's going to be able to really delete Drake. But if Drake can be slippery, it's going to be big. Double. And there it is. Immediate double leg sweep behind the pillar. There's the grappling weapon as well. Blind onto Prev. Big damage connecting here onto Drake. He's going to use that evasion. Actually, he didn't use his evasion. He used one vanish there. And didn't use his trinket as well. So better opener this time around for Luminosity Gaming. Only connecting, uh, only committing the vanish right there versus that Serenity leg sweep combo. Prev so far still holding on to his uh, Desperate Prayer. Actually, as I say that, he uses it. And he still has that uh, dispersion, though. In his back pocket, Brain getting a lot of work done, a lot of heals coming out, a full hex onto Saul. Saul actually running down a little bit to the pressure. Now they're pressuring Chaz as well, and Luminosity looking a Whoa. lot more comfortable here in the match, taking huge hits of damage here onto Chaz. He might just go down here. He needs to be very careful. He's being greedy. Saul in a cheap shot right now, also going to be able to recover, and now they need some pressure on the side of F tier because Luminosity are slowly but surely building up a lead here. Oh, the triple fear from Prev. It's been so deadly throughout this, but the double stun in reverse. They're going to hammer a justice out of the blind here, out of the end cap, maybe into a blinding light. They get the master spell. It looks like they bless the protection of Dorito. They're trying to keep him aggressive here on their push. They need to force dispersion and evasion. They're falling behind in all regards right now. They need to make a big power push right now. Maybe even just clutch out a kill if they still want to win this. They're quite far behind. Saul's in a sitting duck right now with no trinket and no wall, but they're going after Dorito. He's just getting cut down. Has to trade out the karma. They could swap off. He ports away, ports right back into the engagement. Lightning Lasso, they need to stop that Lasso of Fear on the Shaz, they can't stop it, a fully channeled Lasso with a triple Fear from Prem, Saul is falling further behind, Shaz is doing what he can to recover, get Saul back into the fight, they force evasion, they're keeping their chances alive, they sheer brain, they in cap him, they're going for the kill, they force dispersion, Ooh. F tier, they still have a chance. Yeah, FTR doing a lot of work and still have Serenity taken right now, but Dorito caught up in the cheap shot here. Big damage coming out from Drake. He's got the Shadow Blades active right now, giving him some extra combo points and extra Shadow damage. And now, next sweep connects onto Prev. He's got no dispersion. Vampiric Embrace connects. Is that going to be enough defense? He connects with a triple fear. Beautifully done there by Prev. They're going to let it sit there as well. Dorito now coming out of the fear. That means that the cheap shot is going to be off the R here. He needs to do something right now. There's a kidney shot onto Shaz. They're going after Saul. Beautiful grapple weapon there by Dorito. Playing defense using that double blind as well to try to dodge Drake actually in a blind there with Brain, but they sit through it, and so far Prev feeling pretty comfortable. The Blessing of Protection coming out onto Solve gets purged instantly with that double purge that Luminosity Gaming has. Prev dropping dangerously low, still no dispersion for a long time. Earthenwall told him deflect. Brain gets master spell out of the crowd control. Triple Fear coming out once again for Prev, and these Triple Fears have really been shifting the momentum into their favor. Lightning Lasso. Lasso out of the fear, beautifully done there by Brain, and that's going to force out the Divine Shield, but can he actually heal up his team with that Divine Shield? Finally, eventually Crusader connects and that's triple. Gonna be a link randomly and triple kill is happening here. Beautiful leg sweep coming out there, just swapping to brain randomly, and they get the astro shift of brain and still in the game. F tier putting up some work. Uh. It could be too late, Saul. It's not looking too good. Dorito does manage to get some defense out there, but Saul now once again in a triple fear, finding himself in a dicey situation, Sid. Both teams are in shambles. They have nothing left, but there's a paralyze on the brain. They're doing it. Drake needs to help, but he's got oh, nothing. Prevent so low. Disperse comes off cooldown. They could kill Drake at the same time. No cloak for four seconds. They're going for the kill here in game number three. Can they do it? Touch of death gets cheat death by Drake. He immunes the touch of death with that. What a miracle moment what? for Drake to stay alive. Now he's turning it around onto Dorito. Going after Saul. Saul burrows down beneath the ground. Brain is going for a hex. He has to come up to dispel that hex as soon as possible. Prev still has no defenses. They just need to stay on target. Doomwins is coming up in 20 seconds. Can they get the pressure? Double on no trinkets across the board hammer of justice oh, i think it's yeah. lights out evasion and steps away at one percent drake once again what? staying alive by a miracle now saul is falling behind they've got the avenging crusader they're going for the paralyzed can they take out prev that evasion gets so much value they have to kill prev blinding life from Chaz should secure the kill onto prev he's up 10 there's no way he's alive right now he actually survives that scenario brain has spent all of his mana to keep his team alive to this point but they just keep pushing they are going for more a triple fear static field 
they reposition Void Torrent out of range, rocking tons of tentacles onto Saul, but he gets ring a piece into the wall. Dorito going for the kill. They have to kill Prev here and now before the stun yard. They're dead if they don't, and they do it. F tier are moving to match point. Ooh, let's go, F tier, showing up here, taking down another game against Luminosity. Now have them on match point, two to one in the series. Insane plays across the board. Prep, his dispersion comes up when he's on 10% HP. They get the touch of death. It gets blocked by the sheet death. Look at Saul. I mean, Prep did such a fantastic job. Look at these fears. Triple fear after triple fear. They're letting them sit. They're getting the lightning lassos onto the healer after the fears are ended. Brain spamming out his uh, his heals. Really playing his heart out. Look at Prev there, getting his dispersion literally back at the exact same second as he pressed it right there. And then this swap here onto Drake. They get the double sweep. They get Drake so low. And then he shadow steps away with the evasion on 1% HP. Gets the shield. Gets the Crimson Vial. Keeps himself alive. And then here, this static field totem was insane. Prev manages to stay alive. They get the Void Torrent. They get the counter pressure. They get the Hex. They get the damage. They get the Ring of Peace. The Dorito goes back into the fight. He's absolutely fearless here. Getting the damage done. They got the... the they had the doom is just fading right there and they get the damage onto prev they get the, the rising sun kick there and they managed to take him out there that was look at chaz mana look at his cooldowns look at everybody's uh, you know they have nothing left nobody has anything left the, both teams have used all of their cooldowns all of their resources everything that they have in the in, in the spell book and uh, that's what it comes down to i mean just such an incredible amount of burst and uh, really such back and forth trading i mean staying alive as you know an enhance as a windwalker against the sub rogue is definitely not easy but also in drake's credit it's not easy to stay alive as a sub rogue against those classes because one uh, mistake with your cooldowns and you will immediately get erased i wonder if they were expecting touch of death to save him or cheat death to save him no touch way of death. i saw the red icon go up and i'm like <laughs> he should be dead and then i looked and he wasn't i was like well, how is he not dead <laughs> like oh my I, I, well, I would like to know like what they were thinking when that happened like <laughs> Torito punch just presses touch of death and he doesn't die has that really almost ever happened uh this might be the I don't first think I've ever anyone. seen anyone live yeah, exactly. a, a touch of death I've never seen that <laughs> Drake defies the ability that is basically Exodia <laughs> it's supposed to just wipe you out of the game and he doesn't die to it okay so Luminosity Gaming are they going to change comp is it going to be the same comp it's match point if they lose here they're gonna have to play a tiebreaker against the super one-shot frogs and who knows Oof. if they're gonna win i mean super one-shot frogs they've been playing some weird compositions that might run them for a loop in that in that tiebreaker uh they're, they're running the clock they're they're thinking about all their options about how they want to play this out i would imagine but i i can't think of a comp that would be what what would be any better like n there's no way you play a paladin of your own right because then no you what can do a it warrior? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe not. Burst, maybe not. Disarming. Maybe not enough defense for the shadow priest. I feel like maybe you don't think so. Intervene, stormbolt, disarm, double shock waves. Everyone's yeah, but they don't have enough game. offense. You know, like I feel like they can keep the shadow priest alive a decent amount of time. But uh, where's the offense? You know, sub rogue. It's pretty clear cut. You know, you get the kidney, you get the cheap shot, and you can at least delete somebody with a warrior. I feel like eventually, Prev is going to get destroyed um but yeah they're gonna they're gonna lock in the same thing here and uh i, I don't know man it's it, even their win it was dicey like i mean even f tiers both of their wins have also been dicey like let's not yeah. forget you know Dorito tping behind the pillar and almost like being half a second away from just dying to dots and f shadow fiend but i don't know man it's it's an explosive matchup i'm happy that they locked this in because i mean it's entertaining <laughs> at least to see both of these cons kind of just slug it out and Anybody can just die at any moment. All right. This is going to be a chaotic resolution regardless if this ends here or goes to a game five. This is the highest pressure situation I think any team left in the cup stage could possibly be in. F tier wins this game. They're in the gauntlet. They take solo shuffle police's spot. And maybe they even climb further into the gauntlet depending on how well they do. Because beating Luminosity Gaming means that really anything is possible for them. Luminosity Gaming need this series to get their third place solidified so that they're into the finals immediately and they can avoid a tiebreaker situation. A lot of pressure, high intense situation, high intensity gameplay man there's no room for any mistakes in this matchup you could blink and it could be over f tier bringing in a composition that nobody would have ever expected to be able to do well and making it this far coming to championship sunday 
almost clocking out luminosity gaming they just beat the super one shot frogs just one game away right now they're mounted up on their alpacas they're ready to go into the battle drake <laughs> moving in gets a sap on dorito he gets pulled out though by an earth grab totem but prev is there for a double fear for follow-up to compensate kidney shot for cross cc where's the dance where's the cheap shot cloak of shadows offensive from drake he's going all in onto dorito and shaz sees that he's going to trade sacrifice immediately redirect damage and get his team offensive he's chasing down brain he gets the blinding light they need more cc though blinding light is not long enough and it doesn't look like they have it. There's the Hammer of Justice. They're trying to go for the kill. They get the leg sweep. Prev is getting crushed. It's match point. He can't afford mistakes. He immediately disperses. Drake immediately uses evasion. They're respecting the Serenity. But Serenity lasts a little bit longer than dispersion. They're still on top of Prev. They knock him away there. Oh, out of the Earthen Wall totem. But they get double feared. Beautiful fear from Prev. Saul is Saul. getting low. He immediately trinket and burrows underneath. But Shaz is hacked. They're switching to Dorito. Pressure onto two players. Shaz needs to do some work here. But he's stuck in a route. He's stuck in so much crowd control at the moment, trying to make his way back to his team and heal them, but he is struggling. He needs that Avenging Crusader. Comes up in one second, but he's into a blind. Dorito Karmas redirects the damage. It's match point. Drake is getting very low right there. Prev gets swapped to. Desperate Prayer may not be enough. He's getting cut down. Oh my gosh, Shaz is all over him. He's got the Hammer of Justice. No trinket for Brain. They get a triple fear. They're trying to turn it around and recover. Prev manages to stay alive for now, but really, how much longer? They dispel the Hex off to of Shaz. They're going after Dorito, but no one else is crowd controlled. They got the sacrifice dorito should be fine they're getting aggressive they're pushing for the kill brain is no trinket if they get a leg sweep and a paralyze on the healer i think it's over for prev if he's not careful he's only got void shift but it's an explosive amount of damage they knock him out of the earthen wall they get the double leg sweep they're getting flashy with the plays damage is incoming healer is paralyzed and prev what are you gonna do you need to void shift there's no way he's getting away with not void shifting here he fakes the interrupts he's so low he's being so greedy so greedy by prev right now Fear the spear link totem comes in and brain is gonna respect it Try and stagger the damage out. Now Shaz, no trinket, only has Divine Shield. He's trying to keep his team offensive. They're running forward as a unit, and Prev is just trying to get space at this point. Yeah, so far, Luminosity have been trying to go after Saul, but every single time they go after him, they just get disarmed. Dorito's been doing a fantastic job making sure that Saul can get, uh, you know, the survivability that he needs. Double fear coming out there, but there's nothing on, on Chaz. Chaz is actually not even trying to dispel that. He's just kiting Drake here, making it as annoying as possible for him to get the crowd control and get back onto target, really utilizing the space onto this map. Here comes Dwayne the Tiger. Here comes the damage. Power infusion, though. Drake, he, what are you going to do? He's in big trouble here. Finally gets the Cloak of Shadows there. Ch a kidney shot onto Chaz, cheap shot onto Dorito, he gets Blessing of Protection there. Chaz using the Divine Shield here to keep his team in the fight. Hammer of Justice onto your brain. This could just be a double kill right now. Prev on 1% HP. He's going to use the Dispersion. Drake now getting swapped. He's got the Triple. Evasion. Triple Fear coming out for Prev. They're letting it sit, but it breaks onto Dorito. Oh. He makes his way back to the target here. Big cleave damage coming out. Prev, fake ass interrupt. Mind Games connects. They've gets got wind it. Cheered. They might just kill him here in that wind shear. 1% HP. He's not going for the Void Shift. Finally connects with the Void Shift. Dorito though, could just go down. He's going to trink it out. Touch of Karma coming out here. Can he stay alive Drake. for one more push? They're pressuring Drake right now, dropping to 10% HP, almost in touch of death range. Activates the Vanish. Drake will stay alive. And Prev now with nothing left. Brain with nothing left. He has his trinket. He goes for the static field totem. He got the nice connect. Big damage here onto Drake. This might just be the end of the game. They get the silence onto Saul, so he can't tremor. Pre and they get the double fear, and he pre-burrows the setup. Beautifully done there by Saul. And then he comes, comes out of the burrow offensively onto Drake. Really, really nice min-maxing with that damage. They get the full hammer. No Drake is hiding. Big damage coming out. Brain has got no trinket. Drake has got no trinket. Big damage coming out. Cheat death. In HP. Cheat death procs. Can they connect the touch of death? Drake is so incredibly low. They're swapping the pressure. Dorito. Dorito. Dorito might just fall here. Big hits coming out from Prep. He's broken the void chain risk, but Dorito manages to stay alive for one more push. Can they do it, Sid? One push more is oh. all they need to be able to win against Luminosity Gaming and knock them out. They've got Trinket Bop. They've got the game in the bag. They've got all the ingredients. I think that they have done it. Paralyzed, no Trinket. Prev is going to go down. And F tier no are into the gauntlet. Unbelievable performance. Luminosity Gaming, they're going to have to play a tiebreaker against the Super One Shot Frogs. And now at this point, the sky is the limit for F tier if they can beat Luminosity Gaming. The oh my god. God, there's no way that just happened. <laughs> there's no way this just happened, dude. There's no they beat, way. They beat the super one-shot frogs.
They beat Luminosity. They are top three right now. Running Holy Pala, Windwalker, and Hands. F tier making the impossible possible right now. And what a close match once again. Everybody playing so well on both sides. But Luminosity Gaming will fall here. They're going to have to play a tiebreaker for top three against the Super One Shots Frogs. I think the Super One Shots Frogs, they got knocked out by F tier. But today, they might just be the biggest supporters of F tier after this performance because they just got a second lifeline into the top three and into the tournament and luminosity here they would have much rather avoided that situation and just won right here and now but it's gonna be f tier winning this series knocking luminosity out of the the tournament and we're gonna see that matchup i believe at the end of the day uh for f tier so really interesting stuff uh, or sorry for luminosity luminosity versus super one shot frogs should be after the finals uh after the north american finals and uh, for F tier, they're looking just super scary. There's more Shadow Priests in this tournament. There's more, you know, Wizards for them to chop up uh, after our next series. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how far they can actually ride this composition. Do not play a Shadow Priest into this team. I'm saying that right now. <laughs> Do not play a Shadow Priest into this team. It is asking for trouble right now. So Golden Guardians, Liquid, that's the next match in the upper bracket. And... Both of them watching this series probably can't believe it either, but uh, yeah, do not play a Shadow Priest in the F tier. Yeah, definitely not. That was uh, that was very, very scary. Wow, F tier, what an incredible team. This is just insane. I mean, the you know the first time that I saw F tier, just the statistic of the fact that F tier had to get top three this weekend to be able to make it into the gauntlet, I was like, oh, there you know, there's no way. This is a new team. We don't really know what they can do they're so low in the standings but here they are beating luminosity they've done that and they're going to be on their way um into the lower finals they've got a chance to make it all the way into the grand finals for this cup number four <laughs> and i cannot wait to see what this team is fully capable of here are the standings and there is f tier that new shiny eighth place right next to them of 80 points uh used to be tied down there with shuffle police at 72 so and that's not even all the points that they could continue to gain here so we'll have to catch up with them a little bit later on in the day we're moving into the upper finals now it's team liquid versus golden guardian zico yeah, I mean, that's going to be a classic one as well. We've been talking about F tier uh, all day long, but Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid. Team Liquid, as we just saw, as we just see right now here on the standings, 20 points ahead of the Golden Guardians. If the Golden Guardians can finish this tournament 20 points above Liquid, then we're going to have a tiebreaker uh, for third and also a tiebreaker for first place. So uh, there's two potential tiebreakers here happening. And uh, if Team Liquid can win, then all of a sudden Team Liquid are just going to be the best team in North America. Golden Guardians, uh, they have a shot right now to potentially knock Liquid down to the lower bracket, have them face off against uh, F tier. And if F tier you know, wins there and then the Golden Guardian wins the final, then they can just get rid of that altogether. So there's definitely a lot at stake here. And judging by you know how f tier has been playing right now you don't want to be facing them especially if you have a shadow priest on your team which golden guardians do so if you are the golden guardians this is super important you can tie up your points with liquid and also send them down to that shark in that lower bracket and also potentially avoid you know having a, a pretty tough fate down there and just let liquid deal with that instead yeah, definitely. I would uh, be very scared to play against them for sure if I was any of these teams. So we'll find out soon enough who will be facing them down in the lower finals in that elimination bracket round after this break. But coming up here, we have got upper finals team liquid versus golden guardian. Stick around for this one. There's so much on the line as Zico highlighted. And we'll find out in just a bit after this break.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are in the North American Upper Finals. It is a huge match. There's so much on the line here for both of these teams. It's Team Liquid versus Golden Guardians, Azale. Yeah, you're looking pretty aerodynamic over there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Liquid Golden Guardians. I just want to be cool like you guys. Yeah, you just want to fit in. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah. Liquid Golden Guardians is going to be actually a pretty big one here because um, Liquid obviously went into the cup uh, 20 points up on Golden Guardians. So if Golden Guardians finishes one place above them, uh, then they could tie them. So we would have a tiebreaker between these two teams. Uh, and also potentially, I mean, if Golden Guardians beats them and then Liquid loses in the lower bracket, then you could just see Golden Guardians completely pass them. But at the end of the day, if uh, if Liquid do end up you know, beating them and actually finish above them, then they will secure their spot as well. And there won't be that tiebreaker. So going to be an interesting one because it feels like one of the most common matchups we've had in NA uh, over, over the last three, four weeks, right? But it has gone back and forth pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has. And, um, you know, Team Liquid, Golden Guardians, I feel like both of these teams, Super Tees, have made a lot of developments over the last four cups and just honestly in the entire expansion for the amount of compositions they're playing, the different DPS specs that they're adapting. What do you think that we are going to be seeing in the blind pick? Because I feel like it's wide open potentially here. I mean, if this was week two, I'd say Golden Guardians play Shadow Priest Rogue Shaman. Um, but they've seemingly moved away from that composition, and Wizke has been playing Boomkin more and more. So I could see this being a mirror, um, a Shaman Boomkin Rogue mirror between both teams. Yeah, for sure. So, we'll, I mean, we'll have to see. that. It's got to be really scary facing a, a mirror in, in a matchup with so much on the line, such high stakes here. So we'll find out in just a moment as we head into this blind pick it is up for finals so it's double elimination so team liquid golden guardians who's going to face f tier and who's going to get to take it to the grand finals it is going to be that mirror matchup so it should be exciting uh liquid did beat golden guardians last week with this very calm so whiz putting in time on the moon kim we'll see how practiced they are on it and if Trill is going to be playing that one dance, one shot spec, and Peekaboo is playing the two dance spec, so there is variation between these two rogue specs. We'll see exactly what Liquid can get done here. Both rogues are going to be coming out. Uh, we'll see if it just starts off in that 2v2. As both rogues are in stealth, they pass each other briefly, and now they're going to spot each other, so both rogues are going to be opening up. There's a gouge out of stealth onto Peekaboo as they've both been poked out. Sam looking for the clone. is going to get sheared. The beam comes down as well. Now he's into the clone. As Peekaboo is going to be bashed up. Kidney shot now on Sturge. Blind over on Sidu. CC coming out from both sides. Now the cheap shot onto Sam. Another cheap shot there to follow, but the dismantle comes in quickly from Trill as he's on the back of Wizke. Feels like that's going to be the target for both these two teams, but everyone is just fully stacked, and it's madness between Liquid and Golden Guardians here already. Shadow Blade's going to be used on both sides. Trill uses Cloak. He uses Evasion. He's using everything to go aggressive here as Sam's going to be looking for those clones. There's a Kidney on his Sturge, and Wizke's in trouble. He's going to have to be into the bear here, popping the Enrage regen, trying to survive there. Will be able Able to do it as we see that now Sam gonna get kicked and could be in a bit of trouble but does get the clone out and looks like he's gonna be fine for now major differences between the team are gonna be the rogue builds peekaboo running that double dance the standard ro salty rogue and trill is still playing the one dance rogue so it's a battle of strategies and play style which one's gonna come out ahead in this series it could be a battle of egos as well depending on who actually out does the other because it's a mere otherwise it's nothing but skill that is gonna decide this matchup trill gets pre-disarmed on their go here denying a lot of pressure peekaboo gets pre-hexed abster's in a clone whiskey isolated for a moment lasso out of the hex can they finish whiskey and just a two second clone he's getting very low at the moment renewal gonna trade for him tanking damage and bear from him. now they catch trill behind the pillar massive damage incoming from peekaboo look at those shadow strikes so much pressure as trill's just exploding but cedar gets a big heal there nature swiftness trills back to full now he's trying to turn it around dismantle onto peekaboo slowing down his attacks for now just building up combo points getting ready for the next stun dr before they're going to send it here the earthen wall totem is also a pretty big defense they're trying to wait for that to go down cheap shots incoming onto whiskey here as trill pops his dance they force whiskey's bark skin and get one cooldown more out of the way but Sam is uh, quite low with no bar skin. Trill in a bit of trouble here as well. Cedu into a bash. If they can chain this bash, they could ride it into a trinket link, but it doesn't look like they have crowd control to chain. Peekaboo's cloned away. He's not able to keep the damage going. Maybe they do. They get the blind. They force Cedu's trinket. And now the Golden Guardian's in a good position. 
Yeah, they're in a good position. Sidu leading pretty heavily in mana, though. Blind going to be thrown over on a Surge. They're still looking for Wizke here as Pigou is into the clone. Clone also used there onto Trill, but it was overlap with Dismantle. But now they're going to go hard on a Trill. He's got no trick, and he's into that kidney shot. And Sidu's trying to avoid that CC coming out. Surge was looking to actually pull him back behind the pillar. He throws him with a Static Link. And Surge actually has Sidu trapped behind the pillar there. He couldn't kill off the Static Link very quickly as a Resto Shaman. So he got pulled LOS of his team. Has to pop the Ascendants to recover. Will be able to do so. But Sidu now is a good 20-30% ahead in mana. You can see their gouge in clone on Surge. They're trying to get the pressure rolling. Sam taking some damage as well as Sidu sitting in the back looking for the healing wave, but he's going to get step kicked. The clone's there to follow and Sam is sitting low. Wizke sitting low. Dismantle used to peel, but it's going to be Trill oh! immediately popping the cloak and he gets the kill with the offensive trinket. Trill pulls the trigger, trinkets the dismantle, cloaks offensive and finishes off Wizke. They were just, they were literally just sitting in the middle of the map with Incarn up, just pressing Star Surge at each other in melee range. <laughs> just like, they, they, it was do or die for both teams in the final seconds of the game. They just went all in, and Trill's moment of opportunity with the medallion there going to be enough to tilt it over the edge to get the kill onto Wizk. I mean, we saw this matchup earlier on in the tournament, and it was taking a long time. Here's that knockback from Absurge, pulling Sidu behind the pillar and rooting him putting him in a really awkward position because, I mean, as a healer, I almost think you can't even kill Static Field. It would take like two Lava Bursts, maybe yeah. three, to be able to actually kill it. So if he ever does catch somebody with a Static Field, it could be a big win condition. And Absurge seemingly, you know, one of the Shamans who is only doing that offensively. I don't see a lot of other Shamans doing it, but this is where they just incarn in melee range. And they're like, all right, let's, this is a game of chicken right now between the Moonkins. Who's going to chicken out? Star Surge, Star Surge, back and forth. But uh, Trill actually cloaks the Disarm, removing it and just, cr oh my God. Oh my god, what the, what did Trill just hit him for right there? So that's some new tech there with the uh, new honor talent for rogues. You can use Cloak of Shadows, and it removes oh, yeah, all physical debuffs. Cooldown. Yeah, he just cloaked it, you're right. And yeah, that, so Cloak will remove Disarm as well as the other physical effects. So, you know, Peekaboo's thinking, like, I got you. I got to Disarm on Trill. He's not going to do any damage. You're going to survive, WizK. You can stay aggressive. And Trill's like, yeah, no, I'm cloaking off this Disarm, and he globals him. Like, yeah. Playing the Veil of Midnight. I mean, his his burst has been so high. We've seen this time and time again with them running this comp. You know, is that his burst is really crazy. He's playing the one dance spec, um, but can do a ridiculous amount of damage. Sam was getting low at the same time because like everyone's cooldowns are synced, as you said. You know, we're seeing Incarn popped on both sides. You know, both rogues are popping cooldowns offensive, trying to actually look for those kills. Um, it it was a little bit concerning though. Like CD was pretty significantly ahead of mana. Like he was a good 20, 30 percent ahead of mana the whole time. So. You know, if neither team can get a burst kill, then it does feel like Liquid is winning that mana game pretty heavily. I don't know if that's like a gear difference or a spec difference or a Cedar just being more efficient or his team is getting out TPS pretty heavily. I mean, just based off the damage charts, it looks like Troll is doing a lot more damage than Peekaboo, um, but Wizke is doing a, a bit more than Sam as well. So, you know, it shouldn't be like an um, enormous total damage difference, I wouldn't think, but we can look. I mean, Trill so did like 2 million, million more almost. That's crazy. 1 mil. Yeah, and so the it's still, they the still did more. Yeah. Yeah, so Sidu healed more and still had 20 to 30% more mana. So that's actually pretty surprising. I wonder what the difference is um, between their talents and gear and stuff. I mean, that right there was just a kill moment. It was just they didn't yeah. have a way to peel his biggest damage and he connected everything while Absurd just CC'd. Some, sometimes it's not overall efficiency. I think it's just like a setup moment. They just had a better no, of setup. Of course, of course. But I'm just more curious moment. like why he was 20, 30% ahead of mana when, they, when he healed more as well. Could be. What, what else would it really be? They didn't, did they attack him at all? Because I don't no. know if like water Both shield. Both healers were if we completely can, ignored. Do we have details for that to see like mana <sighs> returned? Maybe there's a, like some sort of mana regeneration mechanic they're running on talents. That's yeah, maybe, maybe it was other. dots or something. I, I don't actually, I don't just, actually know, but I'm refreshing just to see what talents, see if there's any like weird janky stuff C2 might be yeah. running. I mean, it, it didn't didn't really end up making a huge difference. Maybe uh, Sturge is purging a lot more or something, right? Could be that too. So um, either way, you know, that game wasn't about mana. So like, I don't want to belabor the point, but it was just it was just surprising to me, like how much of an advantage it seemed like we could have. Um, Trill, though, has just been doing so much damage. Like we have seen him even in, in some of these matchups where he's fighting against like Boomkins and Demo Locks and, and things that are, you know, I think it was a, a series they had against Boomkin Ellie which was like, you know, two of the highest DPS classes in the game, and he out damaged them in one of the games as a sub row, yeah. which is just nuts, right? So uh, he seems to be able to really just kind of maximize his damage. I know when we interviewed them after they won, won their cup, you know, he was talking about the fact that, like, 
how, how did you come up with this build? You know, I know other people had played it in solo shuffle and whatnot. And he said he literally just went and like was looking at top parsing sub rogue specs in PVE and stuff. And then obviously adjusted from there to make it work for PVP. But he was looking at it purely through the standpoint of like, what is going to do the most DPS? What is going to do the most burst? And, you know, kind of utilizing some of his like rating experience uh, to help him figure that out. So it's kind of funny to hear because I think most people would meme on that and think that's like a surefire way to come up with a trash spec. But he is beating a lot of rogue mains yeah. with his one dance spec, right? People who have way more experience than him. Um, and, and I think it's, it's really cool to see how he's kind of adapted this and, and made it work. Yeah, I mean, having that experience from being a, a you know world first raider, MDI competitor, like it's all about min maxing your damage, finding any little edge you can in your build, and it's been a unique way for Liquid to win Cup three, and now they're looking to win Cup four as well. They take game number one over the Golden Guardians, but I'm sure they're not gonna let them off easy here in game number two. Both balancers just grabbing combat, denying the saps, getting the dots up, an instant solar on Wizk. I don't know. Was he even casting there? Solar Beam going to be on cooldown now for Sam, so Whiskey's going to have that as a threat. See you into a blind. Sam pre bears the setup. He's got Bark Skin. He's hoping Bear and Bark will be enough, and I, I think that it should be. He's now going for Cyclones. He gets sheared on that one, goes for another. Is he going to get it? I think it got grounded there for a moment. Now he's going for another clone. Finally gets it, but Sam is still in trouble. He's interrupted on cast and getting destroyed. Trinket Link has to come through from Sidu right there, and Sam is just getting smashed. He's cloned low now at 20%. Sidu's trying to compensate. Oh. Sam Trinket's on top of of that trying to shoot at the incarnation trying to turn this around now whiz gets pulled in the middle of the map but this time around the golden guardians man they are playing lethal here in game two it's an incredible opener. Sam, though, going to get a Bash clone onto Sturge. They're going to try to turn around onto Wizgay. There's the kidney shot, though, onto Sidu, but right on that kidney. Trill actually kidney peekaboo, so he shut him down. The kick is going to land as well onto Wizgay's clone. Now, though, he comes out of that lockout, is going to land another onto Trill. Sam looking for clones himself, going to be caught in that static field totem, pulled away for briefly from Sidu. Gouge there over onto Sturge. Wizgay still the target for, uh, for Liquid as Peekaboo is on the back of Sam I Am, who's trying to actually fake those kicks, looking to try to be able to get those clones out. Now the lasso comes out from Sidu onto Peekaboo, but it's Wizkay incredibly low. Wizkay down about 20% HP. He's going to have to trinket. The link comes out and the trinket on the other side. So Liquid now have evened out the cooldown spent here, and it is getting really dicey. These goes are so scary for both teams. Wizkay's incarn comes up way faster, though. I think that's the win condition. Um, I think it's going to come up before Sam I Am's Trinket, and they just got his bark skin, and they have blind for Sidu. They just need to stay alive to that incarn. 20 more seconds, roughly. Peekaboo and a kidney shot, cheap shots on Wizk, pre blind onto Trill, defensively gouging his Trinket, peeling for Wizk. Absolutely, they have to stop this clone at all costs. The step kick from Peekaboo, but oh, Sidu is there for a full hex. Is Wizk running decurse? He gets kicked, he can't decurse. Absolutely just stuck through that crowd control. Wizk is falling behind. He's got incarn coming up in 10 seconds. He needs to live to that point. He gets cloned up. He's not able to connect any pressure for now. Trill gets pulled back to Absturge into a root, but Trill's like, okay, thanks for pulling me over here. Kidney shot into Gouge. Peekaboo is low. They could maybe even swap to him. Trill gets caught. Kidney shot, no trinket. Incarn, massive damage to Sidu. Ready to protect Trill. Cheat death procs. And Trill, what a miraculous recovery. Sidu gets that nature swiftness off the back of Cheat Death. Keeps Trill alive in that swap, but now Incarn is coming up for Sam in 10 seconds. And Wiz is the one that is going to be in trouble. Absturge has no trinket. Any crowd control onto him, and I think it's lights out for Wiz yeah, we'll see if they can find it. Sam now out of the clone, going to land one onto Peekaboo. He triggers that immediately because he knows they're in trouble. It's a shear on the clone from Wiz. Krill going to be put into a kidney shot there. Cheap shot thrown over on a Sidu, and Wizk looks for a clone on it, out of it, but it's going to be beamed out by Sam. Both these teams disrupting each other's Moonkins as well as they possibly can. The Bash comes in. He's looking for a clone out of that, but he's going to get thunderstormed on it. And now he's going to get sheared again. Wizk just cannot find these clones. He's into the kidney now as a clone is going to land on where onto Surge. There's a lasso on a Peekaboo. It's a 1v3 for Wizk. Wizk in a lot of trouble, but Sam and Trill still sitting relatively low and Trill is going to get cloned off. He still has the dance and the secret technique is coming up, but they're going to look for the kill on Trill right here, right now. See you getting pulled in with the static field. Totem, is he going to be able to get any heals out? The clone comes through at the last second for Sam, peeling Peekaboo off. But Sidu is still stuck in this beam, and now he's into the clone, and Trill Lincoln is not been topped off. He's going to trick it up. He's going to be able to uh, potentially drop that link. The Earthen Walk totem comes down. Defensive Kidney is out onto Peekaboo, so Liquid have survived for now, and Wizke is in a oh. tremendous amount of trouble. Absurd is trying to run, trying to LOS these clones as best as he possibly can from Sam I Am. Sidu pulling back to the rest of his team does top them back off. It's Peekaboo now sitting relatively low. It's the mana lead, though, this time around for Golden Guardians, but Peekaboo still has not been topped back off. They're trying to go for Trill. Trill trying to turn it around now onto Sam and you can see they're trying to actually group back up and get onto Wizke here as there was a blind over on Sidu. the gouge there to follow Peekaboo still sitting low though as Surge is going to get kidneyed on the Spearwalker's Grace he can't get those heals out and his team is in a lot of trouble 
All right, Trill dismantled, Sam and a clone. Golden Guardians pausing the fight. They need to live for nine more seconds. Incarn is coming up in seven more seconds. That's a big power play, but Trill is low. Not a lot of cooldowns. He goes into Vanish, uses his trinket. He gets a kick from Stealth onto Absurge. Can they chain that? They get a bash to chain it together. Peekaboo's in a stun. They knock him away. Solar Beam on Sea-Doo. He's trying to escape it. And they're trying to get the kill onto Wiz K here, trying to keep him defensive on his Incarn. Trill needs to respect the Incarn. He's line of siding. Peekaboo's on his back, though, at any moment. Might make a swap. Sam fakes the kick. Goes for the precog clone. Gets it. Trill's in a cheap shot. Absurge is there. Earthenwall down, trying to stable. Actually, Earthenwall coming in one second to go down if he needs it. Peekaboo dismantled. Trill moving over. Incarn up for Sam. When's he going to pop it? Where's the trigger? When is he going to pull it? They can do so much damage here. Here comes Incarnation. Wiz K pre bears. They need to swap off Wiz K, I think. Go Peekaboo in this instance. If he's in bear form, I think it's unlikely he's going down here. Peekaboo is getting. Cleave taking a lot of collateral damage. Absurge uses his trinket into another clone from Sam, into a third clone from Sam. That forces the link on the beam, almost going down in that push. Liquid striking oh, back heavily field, with that incarn. Sidu gets all three in the static field totem. They're pulled back in, and Sturge has not been able to top them back off. He has no trinket. He's into the kidney shot. Whiskey trying to get that defensive clone out, but he's going to get sheared. Now the static field totem comes out from Sturge, peeling Trill back off, and he's into a root. He's into the clone. Sam's stuck in it. Sidu will be able to keep them back on this team, but Sturge has been bought the time he needed to top him back off. It is a slight mana edge, it looks like, for Liquid, though, as they're piling in. Now the clone over onto Peekaboo. They're trying to set up this go onto him. They have a kidney over on a Sturge, and they're looking to swap it over onto Peekaboo. Dance on a Peekaboo. Oh this is going to be it. Liquid, I think I've got it, and they are going to be able to take down Peekaboo here. The second game goes the way of Liquid. A beautiful setup. The Kidney on to Sturge, setting up for that clone coming through. And then as soon as the clone comes in on to Sturge, the dance cheap shot off the couch on to Peekaboo. Picture perfect setup there with Sturge having no trinket available. Had nothing he could do from that spot. Peekaboo had no trinket either, I do believe and Liquid able to find that kill. They are just looking too good in these mirrors right now. I mean, the opener looks sketchy for Sam, like really sketchy, like they got almost every ability, I think. And I was like, oh my God, it's Liquid falling apart. But then after that, every single Incarn they got was like twice as valuable as Wizk's. I, I feel like Wizk's Incarns after this first one, we're, we're, it wasn't even close. Sam got so much more value, but this was the opener where I thought Liquid yeah. were gonna start unraveling and falling apart. But then after that, Sam, I am just popping off, got so much value on this Incarn in particular, the clone off the cheap shots, then the follow-up clone with the trinket, gets the precog follow-up clone into another clone. He just chained these clones so excellently onto Absturge, keeping that high winds up, stealing his globals away, putting him really far behind. And they just got a way better setup with their Incarns. And look at the devastation of that setup. Like Absurge yeah. is still not recovered. And this is like seconds after it. And they can just, it's just a buffet. They can just pick anybody they want. It's like Peekaboo looks kind of good right now. We can have a little bit of him. We go after Wizk if we want to. <laughs> we could even kill Absurge if you want to in this position. They just kept pushing and pushing. They saw the win condition. It's like, okay, Rogue is no trinket. Wizk has skin. We may as well go Rogue. So they clone him. They prime him up and they, they get him ready for the kill. They cheap shot him out of the clone. They switch the clone over. And honestly, like that, that, that setup here for like the last two minutes, they just got got destroyed by liquid in game number two and it's making me wonder like maybe whiskey needs to go back on the shadow priest and they got to play their main comp again uh because right now other than that early blunder um from liquid like they're they're just not keeping up yeah i mean it's it's really tough right they did get ahead off the opener see who sat the blind which i think just put them a little too too far behind and then forced them to use a bunch of cooldowns all at once um but Liquid are looking really solid. And I have to give a lot of the credit, I think, to Sam. He's been so good with these offensive clones. Uh, the setup and the coordination for that final kill, though, was was like picture perfect, right? It's it's clone on Sidu and then Kidney on Surge. And then the split second he's swapping the clone over onto Surge, it's an instant cheap shot out of that. Like he's already pre-danced, you know, waiting for that cheap shot to be able to instantaneously cheap shot Peekaboo as soon as the clone's off him and on Surge. And they just, you know, just send him uh, full send it. Able to get that kill it was really, really impressive stuff. Uh, the Golden Guardians are going to swap it up. They're not going to go back to the Shadow Priest Rogue because that didn't work for them last week, right? That's the tough thing is they already lost to Liquid pretty pretty decidedly, if I recall, last week. I can't remember the exact score, but I want to say it was like 3 0 right? Something like that. Right. So, um, go ahead. The fact that Trill just forced Peekaboo off Rogue. I just like just the fact of the matter of that is like really impressive right now to me. Like it's not normal in a mirror as well. It's not like a, a counter comp situation. It's like a it's yeah. a mirror situation. Trill just forced Peekaboo off. Jelly Beans is going to come off the bench. Needs to be the hero for the team. 
on the demonology warlock running the shadow play and i think liquid credited golden guardians on twitter i think it was cd he said something like the golden guardian shadow play is like the best shadow play they've ever had to play against so jelly beans is no joke uh, on the demonology warlock but they're going to need to win three games back to back with this setup and, and they're in a corner now yeah i mean that's gonna be really tough right like even if you can take one of the period domain Liquid can send you to a really small map, and if you're not comfortable going to a different comp, that can always be pretty tough for these uh, style of compositions. But it is it is so interesting, right? You would never think that it is Liquid forcing Golden Guardians to actually swap away from the Rogue, right? Um, of course, you know, it is a team game. You know, it may, it's it's not like it's just saying that yeah. it's only Piku's <laughs> fault or anything like that. You know, I don't know how much how much practice Wizkay has on Moonkin, for example. Um, but either way, you know, Liquid are, you know, outclassing them at least thus far in that mirror matchup. I would also be really interested to see how would it look if Pikachu swapped up his spec to actually copy Trill spec, right? Um, you know, even if you want to say it's like, ah, oh, it's like the more noob spec or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's it's like the fact of the matter is he's doing a lot more damage, right? He was doing like two million more damage than Pikachu in both games, and it does feel like it's not just random pad damage. It felt like it was pretty significant um, because there's a lot of times where Surge is falling behind. He's losing on mana in 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 both games by the end of it, so. It does feel like the amount of damage that Trill is putting out is is really, really overwhelming, especially when paired with that Incarn, right? Because during the Incarn, it's like, it is scary. Even pre-dampening, you can die if you don't respect it, if they're getting crits and they're actually you know, maximizing damage. So when Trill is just like dumping a massive amount of damage out on top of the Incarn, they're getting so many cooldowns and they're sometimes just being able to find kills like out of nowhere. Yeah, liquid surprising damage is definitely a main reason for them to and their success um, in last cup and now possibly even this cup. I mean, Golden Guardians are probably shaking a bit here, like winning three games in a yeah. row and liquid are so threatening and liquid could also change if there's a better comp for them in this matchup for shadow play as well. Maybe like C2 Evoker, maybe they need a bit more damage possibly, uh, but I could see them winning with Shaman as well. Um, I think the static field totem pulling jelly beans into a bad spot could be a really good tactic um, for Liquid to be able to win this. But same is true for Golden Guardians. So we'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see how this plays out. It's definitely a favorable map for the Golden Guardians. Yeah. Um, so I would expect them to win this game. Um, as far as the rest of the series, I don't know. But definitely this, this is going to be Golden Guardians' best shot here on Empyrean Domain. Yeah, yeah, we have to see where it goes. Uh, this is, is going to be... You know, they're, they're, as you say, their best shot, right? You know, you're playing on a big map, you have your pick, um, you have counter comp, like it doesn't get better than this, right? Because you you have that advantage from losing the last game. So uh, we'll see what they can get done here if they're going to be able to perform. I mean, the scary thing is always like, I think that the way that you beat the liquid comp as Golden Guardians is dampening them, right? Like you pull, you constantly pull Trill in the middle, whoever's being targeted pulls back, pull the rogue into a bad spot, and the other wizard pushes forward and harasses Sidu and Sam. And like, that's how you want to play it. It's like pretty stock standard um you know app search can push up and try to harass clones as well like and you're just trying to make it so trill is basically a target dummy in the center of the map and whoever's not being focused is just doing max pv damage on them and that's kind of how you win in these wizard matchups the scary thing is though like even if you're winning on mana and you can try to pull it late there's going to be like you're still going to have to live like three plus incarns right and yeah. <laughs> and that is a situation where liquid could one shot you in any in any one of those goes if you mess up or they just like hit the crit lotto you can just die and you have no room to breathe because you're already down to zero. That was a super pressure situation. And Golden Guardians, I mean, they go down to F tier, but that team has just been slaughtering every yeah. top team that they have met so far. So, you know, ideally you would just get through this series and be sitting in the grand finals and send Liquid to try and deal with them. So being down in this situation and have I would I wouldn't want to face F tier. I can't believe I'm saying that about a team. I wouldn't want to face the H Paladin team. In They're the gonna have to change patch. their name, man. It's no longer F tier. They're at least a C or a B or something, you know? <laughs> win the whole thing rename god tier or yeah. shaz tier or something <laughs> like re rename themselves if they win the entire tournament would be insane um but the other thing with golden guardians comp i think that could be an issue is it's it actually doesn't have that many interrupts it's basically just absturge uh, if they're saving axe tosses for rogue to peel um, clone could be a nightmare it, yeah sam just spamming clone and being really aggressive on top of them and saving solar beam for the tyrants and just running the lockdown um, yeah. could be a possibility for liquid yeah no i agree completely and even even wrestler shamans it's like wrestler shamans are very good at defending themselves from cc if you you know if you do it really well but the problem is when there's a sub rogue on the team you're never allowed to defend yourself from cc because you're always cheap shot kidney shot gouged you're always something into the cc right 
so then it's it's all up to your teammates to try to protect you in those situations and try to have you know clutch ca uh, coils or howls or axe tosses or silences or whatever but if you spend too much of that defensive then cdu is not pressured at all and he can just kind of like sit in the back and be really really efficient with like healing waves and whatnot uh since resto shaman casted heals are now really powerful so uh there is give and take with that and golden guardians are gonna have to manage it really really well you, know, you need to make sure you're shutting down uh, those offensive goes from liquid without neglecting the fact that you need to create some pressure and, and some panic on liquid side yourself all right here we go it's empyrean domain it's the last chance for the golden guardians to battle back and avoid f tier in the lower bracket such a deadly dark horse team they're bringing in jelly beans off the bench trying to hope that the shadow play will be enough for them to beat liquid who have just powered up so much in the last cup to this cup they're just an entirely different team just you know outmatching their expectations i think for their own performances the fact that they're winning in rogue mirrors against peekaboo they're smashing every team consistently beating luminosity this is a, an insane team here towards the end of the cup stage jelly beans on the run porting away back behind the pillar trying to escape trill and keep some distance demon bolts flying over onto sam i am trying to still get away from trill they move the earthen wall totem to jelly beans new position to try and bolster his defense but trill He's still holding on to some stun DR. Oh, big damage from WizK. This is the problem. If you leave him open on that Shadow Priest, Trill just struggling to even stay stable through the damage. And WizK is chasing down c into the corner. Gets the fear on the Thunderstorm, but Jellybeans is on the back foot. This is Incarnation. Sam gets stunned on his Trinket. Star Surges are going to be incoming, and they're on top of his port. If Jellybeans ports, he's just porting right into c -Do. Trill is right there to immediately reconnect. Jellybeans is getting no room to breathe right now, and it's match point. Yeah, he's going to have to get grip back to the pillar there by Wiz. Try to keep him safe as he's trying to get those Vile Fiends back out. Resummon the pets up. Finally, now Sturge is out of some CC. He has the Ascended spot, but he's going to be gouged. And now the CCDRs are going to be coming back up onto Jelly Beans. The Coil going to be coming out defensively here onto Trill before he can actually get that Kidney Shot down. And in comes that Static Field Totem. In comes a Double Shadow Fury. There's the Lightning Lasso. They're trying to get the pressure rolling here onto Liquid. As Sidu is pretty separated from his team. Wizk playing in between his team and Sidu in the middle of the map. As Sidu gets going to, is going to get silent and stuff trill put into a fear dispelled out immediately refeared sam getting soloed now by whiz k on the other side Sidu has some work to do to pick him back up as he's still sitting about 30 percent hp Sidu though channeling out the lightning lasso trying to get offensive here despite the fact that sam was the one who was a little bit low jelly gonna get kicked beam. there as they have that double beam coming through yeah you called it they're both rooted up jelly beans gonna try to actually pour it away into the middle of the map uses that gateway but he is separated surge is gonna get cloned in the center we'll see if Sidu can actually find a knock he is gonna thunderstorm him away they're trying to grip him back and pull him back to his team but it's now Sturge into the kidney shot and they are just relentlessly chasing defensive coil does come out I think they're going to be able to eventually stabilize but Jelly Beans is just getting tunneled into the ground and he might just, just dead. void shift link and on any resolve it's match point and they just used every single cooldown that they have every major cooldown I mean if that's not game over, I don't know what else is. They've got Incarn coming up in 20 seconds. Liquid just need to survive to that point. It should be lights out for Jelly Beans. What an insane push. Sam is getting low, though. If Sam goes down now, they're not going to get that opportunity. He bar skins. He's in Barry. He recovers. Stunned onto Trill. They're trying to make a miracle happen, but Liquid know their win condition is just running down the Warlock and trying to stay aggressive. And Wizcade needs to be the gatekeeper. He needs to keep counter pressure going for their side. But here's the smoke bomb. They could cut him down. Incarnation is about to connect. Absters, I think he put a grounding totem behind the pillar. The only reason jelly beans isn't exploding right now he ports back behind this side but a double solar beam it double solar beam back to back whiskey trying to md gets kicked on the md into a full clone abster just trying to sit through this crowd control they haven't connected damage yet but abster's being maybe a bit greedy a full hex oh he gets a clone see who gets sheared on his hex now he's going for the hex again on abster's full hex he triggers but jelly beans is so low on match point abster's is bashed on his trinket jelly beans could go down trill is just doing so much damage to him at the moment double fear from whiskey desperately trying to defy death trying to keep pressure on Sam, can they actually take Sam down? He barkskins at 10%. What a turnaround. Link comes out from Sidu just in time to recover. Golden Guardians keeping themselves in the game. Wow. Yeah, they were almost able to kill off Sam there. WizK just on a solo mission as Jelly Beans is just spending the whole game running for his life, trying to survive. He's going to get step kicked again, though, by Trill, who has done an excellent job locking him down. I don't think Jelly's been able to fake anything this whole game. It feels like I haven't seen Precog on him a single time. He's getting shut down heavily by Liquid, but WizK has been going crazy as a result, trying to pump out that damage as much as he possibly can. Jelly Beans pulling back again, going to be step kicked there by Trill. We'll see if they can get anything rolling. They have a fear there over on a C2. Is there any 
follow-up coming through. Not just yet. So you're going to get the heals rolling again here on a trill. You can see the sentence has been popped by Surge. There's the root beam. It's a kidney shot, though. Unfortunately, overlap. They're going to be popping the dance on a jelly. He's going to get gripped away, but the damage is coming through. The defensive coil comes out. The tyrant trying to turn things around as there's a lasso onto WizK, but this could just be it right here, right now. Surge has been getting CC'd up nonstop. Sam is Sam. trying to push in for the kill, but he's in a lot of trouble himself here. The heals come out from Sidu as the silence was had, had to use defensively. If he had that silence for Sidu, it might have been game, but Sam could have killed off Jelly Beans without it. Trill going to be pushed into that entrance, was feared away. Now into the DR lasso here from Surge as they're in the earthen wall totem trying to stabilize, but they just can't. Jelly Beans pulls back. He's going to be able to pop. Uh, that shield once again he does have the unending resolve back up here but surge is just getting destroyed by the cc it's been so difficult for him to stabilize jelly beans throughout this game uh, i mean trill is almost top of the damage meter right now in a wizard lobby uh, i mean he's just carrying the game with the pressure he's stunned right now though he needs to survive the axe toss is he gonna make it out he gets the cloak here comes the pressure smoke bomb comes down trill's going for the win cheap shot on after jelly beans gets kicked it's match point and jelly beans is getting destroyed fear of one percent will not be enough and liquid have done it they are going to sweep the golden guardians clean down to the lower bracket and now they are looking to be almost as dominant as echo is in eu with their respective region this new build from Trill, the synergy of Sidu and Sam just is so insane. The, the fact they forced every single cooldown on one push in this game is actually crazy. They came so close to killing Sam, though, and turning it around. So I can imagine the Golden Guardians are raring to get back to the Grand Finals for a rematch. Yeah, absolutely. They would love to get a rematch after that, but Liquid dominating in this series. There were close moments for sure, but it's a 3-0 at the end of the day, and Liquid definitely looked to be the better coordinated team. You know, you called out that the kind of cooldown overlap. Yes, it was that really scary moment, but you cannot have a game where it's swap, it's unending resolve, it's trinket link all on the same time, right? Like it just can't happen. You know, you've got to make sure that you're really communicating. And I do think you know, at times you can see sometimes maybe like a little bit of nerves or a little bit less experience on the classes, um, you know, because they are trying to try these different specs and try these different comps that they're swapping around to. Uh, Jelly, I think, had a really a big struggle in this game getting much damage done. I don't think I saw Precog on him once the entire game. Like he was really struggling with uh, with faking very many of the interrupts. And I think as a result, like when you're getting trained as a demo and you're also just getting chain interrupted, there's not a lot of time to get your imps rolling, right? Like you're not getting very many handed gold ands out because you're already getting stunned on cooldown. So if you're also getting kicked and sheared and stuff on cooldown as well, then like your damage just becomes nothing and you're kind of just a target dummy, right? Like you're just getting trained. Yes, you still have your utility, but it's pretty difficult for Wiz to like truly get like a hundred to zero play by himself, right? And those are gonna be few and far between. And I, and I just think that Jelly Beans wasn't able to contribute that much on the damage. Like you look at the damage charts, it's like, look at the damage meters right now. He's doing half of what both the people on Liquid are doing, uh, which is just gonna make it so difficult, I think, for for Golden Guardians to really like kind of hit that critical mass where uh, Sidu can't keep up and they can get a kill. Yeah, I mean, Jelly Beans just never got to stand still and cast. He was just running for his life for yeah. the entirety of this game. It was just six minutes of watching Jelly Beans try and get away from Trill and not able to really maximize his damage aside from this one point, which they actually did almost win the game. Um, but they, were, they weren't able to finish it, and their pressure just was not high enough. So the Golden Guardians, they need to battle F here in the lower bracket. Liquid look insane on this Boomkin Rogue Resto Shaman. I cannot believe how insane, actually. I, I thought for sure the mirror was going to at least, you know, go back and forth uh, for a couple games with the Golden Guardians, but to see them forced off of it in the final round and even with the Demo Warlock not be enough to, to peel Trill away, keep their pressure up and, and end the game. I mean, look how tough this is for Absurge. Like, he wants to kill yeah. Sam, but he has to keep Jelly Beans alive at the same time. It's just so hard to play offensive in that position. The fact that they were able to pass WizK's damage as well at a certain point in this game was basically just the ceiling point. Like, if, if the if wizard that isn't getting attacked can't carry the game, then I don't see this working. Yeah, then there's just not much going for your team, right? And it is really difficult. And I think I think that this is where, like, Sam I am is just being so annoying because he's constantly playing on top of Absturge. And Jelly Beans is trying to run for his life, but you can't really, like, kite that well when you're kiting away from your Resto Shaman. You can't just completely cross the map and abandon them, right? Like, you need to be staying near your Resto Shaman. But if your Resto Shaman's getting pulled off the pillar, then he's getting CC'd even more. Uh, Sam I just playing on his face, constantly just, like, looking for those clones. They're going for... You know like even like lasso clones and gouge clones and kidney clones and all these things on the surge so he's constantly just being put kind of like behind the pace of the game and then it's like you come out of a cc you have all this work to do as, as far as like healing to catch up on and 
it makes it really, really difficult because you're just like feeling like you're always behind, right? You can't really set up offensive goes. Uh, there was a, a moment where they even had to use like the silence defensively on Sam, just like not die. And when those kind of things happen, your goes are just set back further and further and further and further and further, right? And I, I think like, you know, with the Malak Shadow Priest, a lot of it is about just constantly rolling your cooldowns as, as soon as they're up. Every time Tyrant's off CD, you just drop it down. You try to maximize damage and you really just try to like disrupt your opponent's goes and pump DPS until you can oom them. But it just wasn't looking like it was going to happen. Yeah, well, we'll see if, that, uh, if Golden Guardians can take something away from that loss because they're going to be Moving on to another difficult series. If I had to predict anything, we know that F tier has been having an incredible day. They just beat uh, Luminosity Gaming, and you can just see how far they've had this run in the lower bracket right now. Golden Guardians, however, just getting sent down to the golden br to the lower bracket. I wonder if they're going to have uh, just another difficult game here. Super well, What does this mean for the? If, so if Liquid wins, they take Golden Guardian's spot. Uh, is that so right? it, 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 Golden Guardians have to pass have to pass uh, Liquid. So Golden Guardians need to finish one spot above to, for a tiebreaker, two spots above Liquid um, for you know to actually just take their spot. So they cannot okay. finish two spots above because Liquid's already in the grand finals. So Liquid is either you know going to um, get a tiebreaker or going to just take a Golden Guardian spot. Is how I understand it. That's a high intensity finals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, and yeah. also puts even more pressure on Golden Guardians uh, against F tier because they, yeah. they have to just get back to the finals first. Right. Like F tier was looking really, really difficult to deal with. Like I was not expecting them to look so dominant against Luminosity. Like, yeah, Luminosity killed them one game, but they were on the back foot nonstop. And honestly, there was like in, in that series against Luminosity between F tier and them, uh, F tier could have gotten kills so early in a lot of those games. And there were so many moments where you know, Luminosity was like barely hanging on by threads at like 5% HP, 10% HP. So I'm really interested to see what Golden Guardians is even going to bring out. Like, are they going to RPS and play against that, you know, with their with their main comp? Because that did not look good for Luminosity. Or are they going to try something completely different, try to outlast the Holy Pally? Uh, will be kind of interesting. Yep. Yeah, I, there's so, you know, there's so much on the line here for North America. It's been kind of, um, you know, it seems like EU has been mostly set in stone for quite some time. But on the other hand, North America has just flip flopped so many times, so many situations happening even this weekend, uh, you know, as we just exemplified. So this is where we currently stand and we will be moving on to that lower bracket series up next in just a little bit, find out who gets to face off against Team Liquid in the grand finals. And I cannot wait for this one. I cannot wait to see what F tier is capable of. Is Golden Guardians going to make a comeback here? Or are we going to see them get knocked out and finish the day with third? Find out soon after this break. It's Golden Guardians versus F tier.
Hey everybody, we are in the lower finals here for North America in the fourth cup. So only one more match before we get to find out who is facing off against Team Liquid. Could possibly be a rematch versus Golden Guardians. Or if F tier continues here on their winning streak, it could be um, this new this new team. Um, and here's a <laughs> here's the coffee pasta <laughs> that everyone has been spamming. So go ahead and spam it again. I give you full permission. Hopefully Moobot doesn't uh doesn't catch any of you guys, but um, yeah, I don't know. Are you guys a fan of F tier? Are, we, are you one of the? If F tier has a million fans, then I am one of them. If F tier has yeah. ten fans, Neither. then I am one of them. If F tier has one fan, then that is me. <laughs> if F tier has no fans, it means I am no longer on the earth. If F the world's against F tier, then I am against the world. <laughs> don't switch. That's just already <laughs> spamming it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I, I love that. Uh, and I think I saw saw like streaming yesterday. Maybe it was. Maybe it was the day <laughs> the day before. And uh, it's just like. 4,000 viewers or something in there. So yeah, definitely making a huge jump onto the scene here and get winning over a lot of fans. And I believe here's another one yeah, up here. Up. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is dark. This is dark. Wow. Esports. Sheesh. You know, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's in true. Game. In game. In game. It's all You're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is all the teams that they've knocked out. So really, there's only one one team standing between them and the grand finals right now from winning this whole thing and i cannot wait zico to find out if if they can uh, pull this off it would be incredible i mean they have a shadow priest on their team with whiskey on the moonkin i don't know how confident he's feeling after the beating that he just received in that upper bracket final so uh, if he if he starts the the matchup on his moonkin i don't know man maybe it's the best uh, play but at the same time, they have been chopping them up uh, all weekend long. I feel like F tier, they just have the momentum. They have the whole chat right now, uh, kind of rallying behind them. Everybody wants to see this Windwalker and Hands go all the way. So I really, I really can't count them out. I don't know. If I was the Golden Guardians right now, I'd be quaking in my boots, especially considering what's at stake here. We are going to see a completely new Golden Guardians, though. Wiz oh. K on the Moonkin, wow. Jelly Beans on what? the Warlock, and Absturge actually bringing in the Evoker. Oh, this is really interesting. Bringing out the Evoker. I feel like he's just been per on Wrestler Shaman because it's been pretty strong for a while, but going to be mixing it up completely. Let's see what they can get done. How practice are they going to look here? Jelly Beans going to be the target already. Double leg sweep catching both Sturge and oh. Jelly back behind that pillar, and they're just getting chopped up here. Emerald Communion has to come out immediately, and Jelly Beans has to use the coil as well. He is just getting rocked. I don't even think he has a gateway down just yet. He has that portal. Okay, the gateway's on the other side of the pillar. He is kiting away. He's just going to try to cross the map, but Wizkate in a lot of trouble. He's in bear. He's going to have to pop the Frenzy regen. The Bark's in as well, as they are just getting crushed in these early minutes of the game. Yeah, this is a terrible opener for the Golden Guardians. They're already down their Emerald Communion, already down powerful cooldowns on Wizkate. And if they can catch them like that once again, it could be massive. But right now, the Golden Guardians making a setup onto the Rito. Wizkate popping off here a bit with his Incarnation. They get the deep breath. They get the Cyclone onto Shaz. Big damage coming through here. And a nice lift off. And look at this. Saul is setting up uh, for the Leg Sweep here, potentially. Do they have the damage? Though two seconds left on that Leg Sweep. Cool on the Rito. Get the Cyclone just as he gets that cooldown back. That is so unfortunate. They had the setup, but they pulled the trigger a little bit too early but they're still stacked up here on the side of the golden guardians what is going on right now they get the hammer of justice onto absolute jelly beans gonna trink it and teleport away but he's gonna hold on to his uh, unending resolve because he did that so early so that's gonna be nice for him but look at them they're swapping over to whiskey whiskey is just getting chopped up right now he's almost in touch of death range absolute how are you gonna deal with this he needs to get spirit blooms easy as he has oh he got rooted on his uh, rescue right there spirit bloom connects there for absturge but the very dangerous call here whiskey with nothing left jelly beans just randomly getting tab targeted to i I feel like this composition is not working out right now for the Golden Guardians. No. Jellybean's not feeling too confident. I mean, the Serenity's up right now as well. Yaxos comes in, there's Root Beam onto the Paladin. They're trying to turn around onto Dorito, but when he finds his moment here, he has the Serenity ready. Is he going to send it? Shaz into the Bash, Dorito getting low. There's the Serenity now popped up. He's going to try to look to turn it around onto Wizke. Wizke trying to fake these interrupts, isn't able to do it. He's going to have to go back in the bear as he gets connected on by that Spear Hand Strike, and they are just training on the back of him. Surge trying to get involved. Jellybean's trying to spam out those fears. The Shadow Fury comes down, connects on two. There's the Thunderstorm, though, knocking Surge back. He's going to get rebuked now by 
by Shaz. It's a triple stack in on top of him, and Whiskey is running out of cooldowns. Oh. It's a double leg sweep. Abster tried to go in to help him out, but he just exposed himself to the CC. And now Saul is chasing in after Abster. He's going to be able to interrupt the Spirit Bloom with a Thunderstorm. They're going to be right back onto Jelly Beans. Jelly Beans going to have to port out of there immediately as it's now Sturgeon Wiz in the middle of the map. And those wolves are out. Dorito, though, in trouble. You can see the end cap coming out over onto Sturge. There's that. Uh, those cooldowns trying to be popped. You can get the Tyrant out. Jelly Beams has that out now. If it's not going to get CC'd, maybe they can try to turn something around here. But it's Wizkay getting connected on by Saul. It's Cerrito kind of just splitting and shutting things down. And that Tyrant is teeing off, but Wizk is getting crushed right now. He was, oh my god, he almost went down there, but Surge is able to pick him just back up. And it looks like finally Golden Guardians may have stabilized. Golden Guardian stable us, but for how long? F tier right now, just doing so much damage. Swapping to Absturge, he's gonna drop to 50% HP, activates the Obsidian Scales right there, manages to stay alive, rescues Whisk now. That bear just flying through the map, but they stack up for a triple leg sweep. Huge damage coming out. The Fist of Fury gets this stopped by Jelly Beans. Nice done uh, with that axe toss, and they get Cap Totem back here with that static field totem. And now Jelly Beans trying to run away, trying to stay alive. They in cap Absturge on his spirit bloom. Good pressure coming out here, but finally they separate. They get the blinding light on the Absturge. More crowd control following up, though, onto Saul by Whiskey. And now they're going to swap over to Whiskey. He's going to immediately gateway out of there. He's going for more Cyclones. He gets Cyclone on the Serenity, but it's just a one second Cyclone. The reader now going to have free reign onto Whiskey, doing so much damage. Absturge with basically no mana left, by the way, at this point. Jelly Beans in a lot of trouble. He's out of range for Absters. They have the Emerald Communion. They might need to trade it. They teleport. They sit through the chain. They get the Dispel on the Hex there by Wiz But Jelly Beans not out of the woods yet. Finally doesn't feel confident enough. Pulls the trigger on that Unending Resolve. They're just going to swap over to Absters once again. Taxing his mana. Taxing his uh, HP on his resources. Everybody on the Golden Guardians. Every single second just failing to stay alive here. Having to trade so much because the pressure is just immense. But Chaz is slowly going oom right now. He's got basically maybe one or two more Avenging Crusaders left in the tank, and then the Golden Guardians might take it, and that is the light at the end of this tunnel. Yeah, we'll see if they're going to be able to hold on. It's Wizkay, and it's tremendous amount of trouble, Whoa. and this could just be the end of the game. The defensive Quill comes out. A clone going to land on Dorito as well, but there's the rebuke on the clone. Follow-up by Shaz. Nicely done by him. They're trying to push in now onto Jelly Beans, who doesn't have his port for a small amount of time. Absurge in the center of the map is exposed to CC. Doesn't have Shroud available. Going to go in for the rescue, and the clone does come out onto Saul. Dorito is the target. He has that karma up. He has the Zwen up, but he's just dying through it. He's going to have to port back to his uh, to his own hard. port. Back behind the pillar here, trying to stay alive, but Shaz is maybe going to die in the middle of the map. He's completely tapped, and it looks like F tier may have run out of time. This could be their final push. Can they make anything happen? Surge is going to trade out the communion immediately, not messing around, knowing that they are very far ahead right now. But Wizke still getting crushed. There's an in-cap on a Surge. He's got no trigger. He triggered it into no that, way. and Wizke might no just way. go down. He doesn't have anything left. He's staying in the oh. bear. He's trying to survive, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. He shifts out, goes for the clone. Going to be back in the bear, gates away to safety. Surge now into that Hodge, but it is DR. The static field totem pulls Wizke back into the middle of the map. There's the root beam onto Shaz. Could this be the moment the Golden Guardians finally get a kill? Try to pull themselves back into it. The beam is still there. Has been doing a lot of disruption in the center of the map. But Wizke is not out of the woods just yet. Surge is going to get sheared on his heel. And Wizke is in so much trouble. There's not much healing left for Absurge. And there's the full in-cap. Wizke just trying to tank it up in fair. Trying to survive. Jelly Bean spamming out those fears. Trying to stabilize his team as now the rescue comes through. And this might be that opportunity to try to turn things around. Yeah, Dorito, he's going to have a leg sweep up, and there it is. Big damage connecting here. They got the Doom Winds. They can't just close it out right now. Chaz thinks not for a drink in the meantime. Chaz getting Cyclone right now on his Doom Winds. They are going to subside now. Dorito still trying to pull the trigger here and land the kill. And Whisk, he can thank Jelly Beans for the fact that he's even alive at this point. He was in touch of death range, and Dorito almost took him down, but he might just still get sent right now. Three Karma on the Axos Dorito with nothing left. Chaz gets a proc for the Avenging Crusader. Manages to stabilize Dorito, but he teleports out of there. Uses the Divine shield. It seems going all in. He teleports back into the middle of the map. They're going after Saul. Big damage onto him. He's behind the pillar. Manages to stay alive, but Whiskey still not feeling too confident. Absurd's got no mana left right now. If they can just get some damage onto Whiskey, they might be able to take him down. Dorito's going for a solo mission. Lands the spear hand strike. Goes for the kill. Can he get it, though? He gets denied there by Jelly Beans. Sacrifice trades out, but I don't think Dorito is going to be able to stay alive. The axe toss around the corner, and he will explode. Golden Guardians take game number one, but F tier made them work for it. Yeah, that was incredibly close. You know, the early moments of that game, it looked like F tier might just completely run them over. It was 30 seconds in, and they had forced out so much and almost been able to get that first kill down on the Golden Guardians, but Jelly Beans.
did a really good job in the later moments of that game, getting so many peels down, harassing them as they're trying to chase after WizK. You know, it seemed like the final minute or two, the call had been made by F tier that we can't keep swapping around. We have to just hard commit to WizK. And Jelly Beans is being so disruptive on this Emo Warlock, you know, one of their greatest strengths, spamming out the Fears, the Shadow Furies, the Axe Tosses, the Coils, buying time for WizK to get top back off by Absturge. So good job by Golden Guardian surviving the pressure, but this one was ridiculously close. I mean, you can see it's 620 in, Sturge is completely tapped, Shaz is completely tapped. You know, if F tier could have stabilized one more time, got one more go, maybe they could have closed it out. So uh, it is a really, really close match here. Yeah, it, it really doesn't get closer than this. I mean, there was one moment where WizK literally was in touch of death range for such a long time, and Dorito just kept getting spam feared over and over and over, and he couldn't connect there. If he just could connect, it would have been lights out for the Golden Guardian. So this is definitely a serious for us, but I do like seeing Absturge tagged in here on the Dragon. I feel like if he was on the Shaman, uh, this game would have ended a long time ago. Just having that extra mobility of the Evoker, having the extra stuns, just having uh, those extra cooldowns and the mana efficiency of the Evoker is just really good in the current meta. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it was a heads-up play of Sturge to actually jump on that healer, showing uh, some of his flexibility right there. And uh, we're going to see what they decide to do here in the next game. But uh, this was definitely anybody's game here in game number one. And I think yeah. for F tier, we can pretty much expect what we're going to see here. But the Golden Guardians... Are they going to stick with this, uh, especially if we go to a small map? That's the question. We're going like hook point or something for sure, right? So, yeah, that, that's that's going to be the big question is Golden Guardians are going to know it's going to be a small map. And then they have to decide, can we actually win this on a, on a small map when it was this close on a big one? Um, and I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's, it's definitely possible, but it would be incredibly difficult. And I do think that F tier showed a lot of mastery of this composition, you know, a good understanding of how to actually set up these kills, a good understanding of, of like, you know, when to, to make things happen. Um, I really like how Saul was using Static Field Totem. They would go for leg sweeps and then it, they would leg sweep Jelly Beans. And as a Warlock, you want to play on basically on the edge of your port range, right? You want to play on the very edge of it so you can get max range ports and sprint port and create distance from melee cleaves. But what was happening is he's getting leg swept and then he's getting Static Field Totem out of range of his port which is making it really, really difficult because then you come out of that stun and you're slowed up and you're getting pounded and you have to waddle like 20 yards or whatever to even get back to yeah. your port to even use it. So it's like, I think that is really, really smart usage of the static field totem um, and kind of like abusing the fact that Warlocks have to play on that on that distance, right? So it's really smart stuff. Um, maybe Jelly could play closer to his port, but then if you do that, you're not even going to get any value from it usually. So it's like, I don't think there's like an easy answer for a Warlock uh, to a team that's doing this. Yeah, no, I completely agree. The, the Static Field Totem, Totemic Projection Combo, uh, some of the new tech that we have here in Dragonflight. And uh, I mean, both both Absturge actually, well, now he's not uh, on the Shaman, but Absturge in general has been using it really, really well offensively. And I really mm -hmm. like those combos as well that, that Saul's been doing to deny that Warlock mobility, but also to stack up the teams, right? Because a lot of the time, everybody will be kind of split up and two people will be in range just enough for that Static Field Totem. And that's enough for them. They don't need all three people to be stacked up they can get yeah. two people stack them up get the double leg sweep and then they can in cap the healer or shaz can push in a lot of the time and get the hammer of justice on the third guy and uh they can get their setups out of that and we are absolutely going to hook point we are wasting no time everybody's already locked in we're already getting loaded up here for the next game and uh i don't know man this is uh, gonna be a chaotic one for sure <laughs> some good old fashions arena just get right in there you lose just send it again you know get back queue in. up <laughs> yeah don't need to talk just queue up don't can't can't be sitting around stewing on the loss so i respect <laughs> it man if you're not going to change your comp you know just get back in there so f tier know exactly what they want to get done golden guardians clearly know what their game plan is going to be they have to survive and outlast this holy pally uh shaz making it a lot harder than i think people would have thought to do that because, you know, Holy Pals have not been very strong. You don't see many of them doing well anymore. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, it's like it's very easy. You just outlast their early cooldowns and then they're toast. But uh, F tier is making it incredibly difficult for all their opponents and showcasing, you know, some unique ways to actually really make this, this class work. Obviously, it is a very specific comp. It has very, very, it's very aggressive. Um, you know, a fair bit of utility from the, uh, from the Shaman as well as the Monk that I think are helping to enable Shaz. So it's been cool to see them bring this out and have some success against some of the best teams yeah no absolutely and i mean you think about it brain the holy paladin king the guy who never swaps off holy paladin uh, almost ever and 
he got knocked out by Shaz on the holy pad, and and now his uh, his faith is just up in the air, you know, uh, in terms of what's gonna happen because he's gonna have to play that tiebreaker later on against the super one shots frogs for that third place, and it's all at the back here of that holy pad. And Chaz been doing an absolutely phenomenal job here, keeping his team in the fight, rotating through his cooldowns, and honestly keeping his mana for a really long time as well. It's really hard to do, mm -hmm. uh, tying his mana with these evokers, but now the gates have open, and we're already in the next game here. We have no time to waste already. Whiskey forced to use his bark skin, forced to use that uh, frenzied regen, and he's still taking a lot of damage. Very dangerous moment here to be switching out of form, but he actually manages to fake us kick, gets a pre cog, but he does get spear hand strike, uh, by a Dorito, more damage to follow up right now with the Avenging Crusader coming through. But Whiskey looks like he's going to be stabilized for now. There's going to be a Hammer of Justice on the app stage. Whiskey actually taking a lot of damage. Soul Rip coming through there for Jelly Beans, providing a little bit of assistance here for Whiskey as he sits it uh, in there and tanks it out. But he's got Incarnation. He's got Heart of the Wild active. He still wants to get aggressive with that Incarnation, but he's just forced to sit in bear form. Activating that big Heart of the Wild cooldown could cost him later on. Yeah, we'll see if they're going to be able to punish that later on. He's going to get kicked once again as he shifts out, tries to look for that clone. There's the leg sweep coming through. It connects on Sturge and WizK, and they're trying to get the damage rolling Whoa. on Sturge. He's already used one charge Whoa. to Obsidian Scales. He gets sheared. It's a DR Hodge. It's another DR Stun coming no in. Sturge might just go down. He's got to press the communion. I think he's got to send it, but he's holding on to it. He does get that second charge of the Obsidian Scales out, but he throws again. the Spirit Bloom. Are you kidding me? He's kicked again. Sturge is playing this so incredibly risky. Liz going to be able to barely survive there, but that was incredibly close to him just going down without using those major cooldowns. Now the Dream Projection comes out. He's going to stabilize the team. He has held on to the Emerald Communion, so that will pay dividends later on. But Whiskey already forced to use the Barks, and he's on the run again, looking for the clone, trying to fake the kicks. We'll see if he can do it. Goes for another fake, not quite able to get them to bite just yet. They're holding on to these interrupts very well, not going for those interrupts until just the last second. And there, the Sheer comes through. Whiskey now back into the bear. Can't really get anything rolling. Is going to land a full clone, though, as Dorito's going to be feared off. The clone's on Assault. Can they turn things around? Try to get this pressure rolling potentially onto Dorito. That's the main target that they're looking for. Dorito, though, is getting relatively low. They're looking for Surge. There comes that big leg sweep onto Surge. Uh -oh. They're going to try to look for the one shot. The Emerald Communion going to get sent. He's lucky he has it this time did hold on to it last time just barely but he's gonna get blinded up off that was looking for the dream breath couldn't get it whiskey though spamming out these clones jelly beans is fine as well and Saul is the one in a lot of trouble as the clone is landed on Shaz it's all gonna be back behind the pillar will stabilize but Dorito now is getting crushed there's the karma there's the Zwen they're trying to turn things back around once more on to whiskey but he has the bark skin available we'll see if he can find a good opportunity to use it as he's trying to fake these kicks now going to be interrupted once again here by the monk they're just not fighting on these fakes and it's making it difficult for Wizgay. Yeah, and Absurd right now is going to have his Trinket back up, so Absurd will have more defense for that next setup if they decide to go after him. Whiskey, though, is taking a lot of damage. Doesn't have Heart of the Wild. He's being greedy with his Bark Skin. Finally does have to use it here, and now are they going to go after Absurd? He's stunned him on his Trinket. He pops the Obsidian Scale. Shadow's actually taking a little bit of damage here as well, but now Absurd is in that checkmate situation. He's got no cooldowns left whatsoever. Whiskey's got no defense as well, and F tier has them on the ropes. Can they just ride this momentum right now? Big damage coming through here onto Whiskey. Whiskey just sitting in bare for being a tank right now and he will be able to survive for now absurd does manage to top him up but the next time they get this setup it's going to be lights out they need offense absurd dives in with the deep breath and they are going to be able to force dorito and Saul behind the pillar shadow's actually sitting through a root solar beam combo but he does have the avenger crusader he's healing on the path dorito now teleporting back into midfield salt is there here comes the bloodlust here's the doom wins big damage connect can they get anything on the absurd though he's just free healing with the dream breath he's got powerful healing of the time effect goes for the nullifying shroud he's trying to deny it but Wiz K dropping so low, Serenity connects as well. Huge damage coming out upstairs there with the rescue, and that was their window where they could have actually taken somebody down. They went after Wiz K, but Wiz K is able to deflect it, but still not out of the woods yet. Still more crowd control available here to Sturge. Another minute before he's going to have that trinket, but Whiskey has the bark skin. He might need to pop it right now. He's feeling so uncomfortable, and he will use it. They overlap it with the rewind, though, and Absturge's mana not doing good. Chaz's mana not doing good. This game could end at any time here. Saul taking huge hits of damage. Going to go back behind the pillar as that Demonic Tyrant is out for Jelly Beans, and he manages to stabilize his team for now with that offense. And Jelly Beans, in general, has been a key player so far to watch, but right now, Absturge could just get absolutely blown up. I think that's just it. It's getting spammy by Whiskey. Whiskey with the regrowth save in the back line and the Golden Guardians stay alive. Unbelievable.
Yeah, that might have been their last chance, but the Zwen is back up. Saul gonna get coiled off. The Zwen is out onto Wizk, and Wizk is getting crushed right now. He doesn't have Barksand available for a little while. Uh, we can see that he's trying to get healed back up, but he's gonna get knocked LOS. I don't know if the Dream Breath actually connected there or not. He was trying to jump back to him, and now he's gonna go through the gateway. Sturge into that in cap, and they're right back on to Wizk as there's a sheer landing onto Jelly Beans. He's trying to break up that CC that's coming out from him. Wizk, though, able to fake an interrupt on the clone. Shadow Fury comes through, and he's gonna get rescued across the map, and now Saul and Dorito are in the firing line trying to cross through mid map but they are getting punished as they do so the bark's gonna is back and whiz is just gonna send it he knows this game does not have much time left in it app search has the emerald communion back so he has a big save available and Shaz is completely tapped on mana f tier have to go and they have to go right now the hodge is gonna be thrown onto app search there's an end cap onto jelly beans they have the 3v1 but it's dorito who's taking more damage thus far he's gonna pop the fist of fury trying to finish off whiz whiz jumping back but the deep breath comes through the touch karma's out whiz in a ton of trouble here the emerald communion will get traded it's going to be able to stabilize him a bit but he's still at 30 percent hp he's at 20 percent hp he might just go down here through the emerald communion no way, the heart of the wild is trying to keep him alive he's trying as best as he possibly can to stabilize surge is looking for the casted trout he's going to be able to get that off so he's going to be immune to cc for now but he's getting punished on the other side as well saul was splitting damage over on ab surge and whiskey is still down incredibly low and f here have pulled it off they train him into the ground it looked like Golden Guardians had been able to get enough done to live through the pressure to make something happen, but it was not enough. F tier found such a good swap on Absturge, forced a lot of his cooldowns out to be used on himself, and then he just didn't really have anything left to ever actually stabilize Wizke, it felt like. I mean, the damage was just ramping up so high. That, like It was a full communion, and, and Wizke was still low. F tier really putting on a show here in the lower bracket. Absolutely unbelievable performance from these guys. And again, they get the Avenging Crusader Pro. Look at Chaz. He's got no mana left whatsoever. They get so much uh, disruption onto Dorito. Every single time he's in touch of death range, Dorito's getting spam feared. He's getting spam rooted. He's just trying to annoy him as much as possible. Jellybean's really doing a great job here on the Warlock, but uh, it is going to be Jellybean's uh, going down here and. Uh, we saw it. I mean, it was such a hard-fought victory here for F tier. We really made it happen. And uh, the fact that they're able to stay alive with basically zero mana for that long, you know, just uh, relying on Avenging Crusader procs, just relying on their self-healing, relying on just having good offense is just insane. We're going to see it here potentially on the replay where Wiz K is actually so low. He's in touch of death range. And look what's happening to Dorito here. Right here, uh, Emerald Community comes through. Wiz K is going to drop low after this from the touch of Karma. And look what happens to Dorito right now. Like Right there, he's in touch of death range, but he just gets feared. He gets dispelled. Yeah. He gets feared again. He gets feared again. He gets rooted. The triple DR fear comes out. And he's just trying to connect, but now he's no longer in touch of death range. And that's something that Jellybean's been doing the whole game, just trying to buy Wiz a couple of more seconds. But finally, they do connect. Heart of the Wild is there, but it's just not enough for Wiz, and they managed to take him down. And uh, at this point, you know, they're gonna play out the 2v2. They still had Demonic Tyrant, they still had, you know, some more cooldowns to work with. But F tier on their best map, I may add, but still, this was a really hard fought victory. And I feel like this is what a lot of people underestimate with this team is okay, people are used to uh, well, the damage can be very explosive and surprising, but this caliber of players are used to what cooldowns to track. They know the Doom wins, they know the yeah. Bloodlust, they know it's about the Serenity, they know you need to survive these cooldowns and what to trade, and they have really good defensive rotations. But what really impresses me about F tier is the fact that they have so much long longevity. Because usually mm -hmm. you do a couple of setups and then you run out of steam and you lose. But these guys continue to stay in the fight and they continue to do damage and they continue to have more opportunities to grab the win. And especially against, you know, Warlocks and, and Moonkins and things with a lot of self healing in dampening those things become a lot weaker and that's yep. when f tier can just get their their pressure without using the doom wins without using the serenity and then they use those to finish the game yep absolutely and i mean as you're saying it's like you are really reliant on your self healing so it's it's like dampening is kind of double dipping in, in a way against some of these classes right their self healing is less their main healer's healing is less so um they struggle to to really be able to catch up and you can get put in this spot and we kind of saw it at the end of that game where emerald communion comes out it's whiz case still low after that heart of the wild is there it's just not enough to stabilize and they kind of hit this critical mass where you just can't heal through the damage anymore and when you're on the back foot so heavily then you stop doing damage and that allows f tier to survive with no mana 
right? Um, and I think that is the difficulty. It's like all Jelly Beans feels like he can do is just spam fear. And all Whizcake can do is sit and bear and try to run around and survive, right? So uh, as your damage starts to really kind of like tail off, it becomes very, very difficult. I mean, you can see Golden Guardians, like look at the last minute or, or so of that game. Like look at the damage throughout their game, like where it was, you know, there's all these big spikes and their, their damage was completely trailing off uh, as FTRs yeah. was really, really ramping up, right? Because they're so on the back foot that all they can do is try to peel and you kind of get stuck in this never ending cycle. Like if you never go offensive in those moments, you get stuck in this never ending cycle. And I'm sure you've had it too, where it's just like, as a warlock, all you're doing is pressing fear or as a, as a mage, all you're doing is pressing sheep. But the damage never ends because you're never getting any counter pressure, right? So it's like, in a weird way, sometimes it's actually wrong to like be spending so much time peeling, even, you know, and you just need to like send a go and try to make them like the best peel is to make them run away. And I think that's a weird thing that if you've played a lot of Wizard Cleave, you do sometimes learn is that sometimes the best peel is not peeling. The best peel is actually just max DPS. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, the best defense is offense and and that's the thing right especially when you have things like the demonic tyrant if you can save yep. those for when f tier are making their push that's when you're going to get the highest value because your win condition is running shadows out of mana staying alive uh, surviving and dragging out the game and you're going to be able to do that if you know doom winds are being connected or uh, being committed and you can get a demonic tyrant out at the same time it's really hard to actually stay in when those cooldowns are out if incarnation is being popped during those moments that's when it's really hard but at the same time if wiz is the target it's really hard for him to actually get good value on his incarn and i think uh, yeah. that's why they're going after the moonkin and that's what actually is paying off for them a lot uh, just getting onto on top of the moonkin and forcing him to just sit in bear form uh, even with incarn up we saw it at the start of the game we saw it at multiple points in the game where with incarn aren't getting the highest value uh, because he's just forced to just camp it out and bear and yep. uh, spam uh, frenzied region and, and FTR are doing a really good job with the interrupts, right? Like, this is not a solo shuffle melee cleave where your first yeah. cake gets you, first uh, fake gas gets you precog for the rest of the game, right? <laughs> like, you know, you're just perma precog. I'm seeing, like, Wizgay oh. is trying. He is faking a lot, and, and he's going three, four, five clones and not being able to actually get a fake kick. And then at that point, you're like, okay, well, what do I do? I guess I just send it. And then they're kicking him on the very end of it, right? And if you have three melee stacked on top of you, the pally has a rebuke as well like there's so many interrupts and there's grounding so it becomes really really difficult and you can kind of again get stuck behind where you're just non-stop um you know in this in this like peel mode uh which can be really really difficult so uh we will see uh, exactly what they can get done here it is a bigger map again golden guardians pick yeah and, and to add to your point when you're sitting there fake casting kicks you're just tanking three people's damage as well so uh it's uh really uh tough for wiz uh to actually get that crowd control out but he's gonna need to he's got he's got a great map to do it on at least f tier right now trying to win the swing match here and knock out the golden guardians and if you're team liquid you are just cheering for f tier right now if if f tier wins this then that means gold uh, liquid will finish uh, in north america as the number one seed so if you are a fan of the golden guardians well this is a very important game for them to win jellybeans right now getting swapped to getting tested here on the warlock already using his dwarf racial teleporting behind the pillar here and he will be able to stay alive with that but uh actually uh, will be getting some shadow bolts there and uh, looking to get aggressive onto uh, potentially the monk but it looks like saul is going to be getting cyclone with finally getting some of those fake casts out abster sitting through a double blind with jelly beans hex coming uh, coming out there onto abster he gets dispelled but he's going to be getting swapped to right now hammer of justice abster's being greedy again is going to pay off though it looks like it actually will he didn't use emerald communion and he didn't use his trinket so really good greed right there but still a lot of pressure coming out onto Wiz. Yeah, absolutely. He judged the damage right. No obsidian scales, no rewind, no nothing coming out. So sometimes greed is good and Surge is proving it as they're going to try to turn the pressure around. But Wiz K is getting crushed here in this leg sweep. They're getting put incredibly Whoa. low here. Down about 10% HP. Does survive with the Heart of the Wild and the Frenzied Regen as well as I, I believe use their Renewal. Um, no, excuse me. He still does have that available. Going to get sheared though on the clone as the damage is still just running. Now he's going to get spear hand struck on that clone again. Jellybean's trying to get some damage rolling. That's a third straight interrupt on those clones. Whiskey is just on the back foot here. Cannot seem to get any of the CC out until finally now gets a clone down onto Shaz. Surge though in trouble. Going to have to pop the Obsidian scales. He used the rewind in the midst of that as well. Salt is going to be cloned off, but they're looking 
to try to get some damage rolling here from the Golden Guardian side. And when are they going to be able to get something down? It's 50 seconds until the Tyrant is up, and it feels like without that Tyrant, Jellybeans just doesn't have the pressure that they need. Surge going to be able to pull back towards that pillar, but as soon as he retreats, they're right back onto Wizk. In comes the rescue, though, from Surge, pulling his Moonkin to safety, trying to buy a little bit of space. Shaz now pulling back towards that pillar, maybe looking for a little bit of a reset, but instead, they're just going to continue pushing forward. As soon as Surge is in the middle map, they're swapping over onto him, but it's a leg sweep now onto WizK, and he's the one taking a lot of punishment right back into bear form. Doesn't use that Barkson just yet. Comes out of form, looks for a clone, going to get sheared. Now going to get interrupted once again, right back into bear. Trying to do his best to tank up with this damage, but that's three oh. trade interrupts, and it might oh. be WizK just going down, down about 5% HP. Didn't even have to use the skin. Still holding onto it. This is really risky. Now the Emerald Communion is going to come out. We'll be able to stabilize him for now, but the end cap is there, and WizK was being very precious with those cooldowns. At the end of the day, does have to use that bark skin and he is just running through those defensives very quickly but Chaz is going to be pushed back by the incar and Wizke getting some pressure finally yeah, and Shadow's actually going to have to use his trinket right there in that exchange, but he's holding on to his Divine Shield for now, Saul, trading out the Astral Shift there as well. Honestly, Wiz is lucky to be alive right now. That was way too close for comfort. Double Blinding Lights coming out onto Absturge and Jellybeans. Wiz in a leg sweep. Who is going to trade? It's going to be Wiz K trinketing and Jellybeans trinketing. Full Hex onto Sturge. Wiz coming out with the D-Curse here in the midfield, using that gateway as well to kite, but they reconnect once again onto Wiz. All three members all over him. They dispel the fear instantly. Wiz is almost in touch of Death Rage. So close here. Can they take him down? Is the question. Absolutely, there's no heals right now. Spear Bloom is not gonna connect. Wiz will fall. F tier takes the swing match on Asha Mains and are up two to one against the Golden Guardians. What a game from F tier. They just straight up ran him over in this one. This one did not really feel close. It never felt like Golden Guardians had much of a real push. You know, they got uh, they got Shaz down a little bit low at one point, but. That was about it. Like, it felt like it was all F tier all the time. Their interrupts were being cycled so well. And WizK is basically like, into bear, coming out for a clone, interrupted. Into bear, coming out for a clone, interrupted. Into bear, coming out for a clone, interrupted. <laughs> that felt like that was like the <laughs> whole game, man. Um, it was crazy. He was just getting interrupted, interrupted, interrupted. They're doing a really good job rotating through them. Uh, Absurge did a good job pinching his defensives early when they went for that first go on him. He, he used nothing. But then they had to spend so much on WizK again. Um, you know, shortly thereafter. So, you know, really doing a nice job. And when those tyrants come out, uh, they're good at actually interrupting it. You can see, you know, right here, the tyrant came out, Shaz runs over, they blind it, they're landing shears on it, they're incapping it sometimes. So uh, they're really good at throwing off CC onto that tyrant because that feels like that's the only time that Jellybean gets anything rolling. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the pressure is just immense. Like, I feel like Absters maybe at the end here was a little bit greedy with his trinket as well. Uh, maybe miscalculated uh, the situation a little bit, but Wiz didn't have skin. He had renewal, actually. Why didn't he use that uh, at the end there? Oh, maybe it just came back up at the end there. Um, right after he died. I'm not actually sure, but it looked like he had renewal. So, no, he has uh, it. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, Wiz was uh, maybe being a little bit greedy here. Like there, what? Why isn't he Barks getting here? I feel like Wiz is very greedy with his cooldowns here, man. They're like trinketing, yeah. getting offensive, going all in. He's almost in touch of death range. And he's like, ah, I could probably save skin here. <laughs> uh, I feel like he's being a, a, little, a little too greedy right there. But uh, good pressure from F tier. And, and that's the thing, right, as well, when you're, when you're swapping class like this, He's obviously going to be a lot more comfortable on something like a Shadow Priest compared to the Moonkin. And that's, that's where some say. of these mistakes uh, are happening. You know, when, yeah. when you're free casting and, and they're going on your team, like they're going on Peekaboo or, uh, and you're playing Rogue Moonkin, you're chilling. Like, you you know, anybody can play a new class free casting. But when you're the target and you're being tested to your limit, the hardest thing to do is to stay alive and still be effective in the match. And he definitely has renewal here. He's just not using it. And yeah, it's a, it's a tough situation there for Wiz because now they yeah. lost their swing match. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And I, I don't think he was being greedy. I think realistically, he just didn't realize he had it, right? Or just didn't yeah. think about it in that moment. And and that is really, really true. Like when you are under ton of pressure, as you're saying, it's so much harder to remember everything and do everything perfectly, right? Because um, you know, when you're just free casting, it's super easy. You just kind of like PV out the rotation. Everyone can figure that out. Like top players like this can figure out the maximum damage when you're not interrupted within like 
a couple games. Like it's not really that hard, right? Yeah. Um, but when you're getting interrupted and when the situations get weird and trying to prioritize, okay, should I be doing damage here? Should I be trying to CC here? Should I kite? Should I, you know, like, should I heal? Like, what do I do when there's like 20 different options and the decision tree gets really complex? That's where it gets really, really hard. And um, and that's where you can lose track of little things like, you know, the earlier time where it's, you were saying he's holding on Barksing for a long time, probably just didn't realize that it'd come right up uh, off cooldown at that moment. Same thing, um, you know, you know, with that, that heal that he could have popped at the final moments. So is is tough when you're swapping things around. I expect Golden Guardians are going to change up their comp. I feel like if you lose on a big map like that, you're pretty doomed at some point when FTR do um, get the map picked back. So I think they're going to change things up and there they are is. in fact going to do that. So it's going to be Moonkin Rogue and we'll see, you know, if Peekaboo can help to kind of right the ship, so to speak, and try to get Golden Guardians back in this one because they are now on match point F tier against all the odds, man, looking to push us <laughs> all the way to the grand finals. Like no one would have even thought this team would have made it to broadcast, I feel like. And if they take down Golden Guardians, that is crazy. Like, who's to say they couldn't win the whole thing? Honestly, they could. I mean, they're beating all of the comps right now that are in the meta. You know, they've already beaten down most of the top dogs as well. Like, think about it. They've beaten down the super one shots, bro. They've beaten Luminosity. If they beat yep. the Golden Guardians, then it's just Liquid left. And they have literally collected every run infinity stone in na they have, they have <laughs> actually completed the, the run here and they snap so, their fingers and, and they win the grand finals just like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it's it's tough right now they're bringing in pika but one of the good things though is when you are playing that munkin and a big reason why munkin rogue is so good is that cheap shot right you have the the, the shadow yeah. dance you have the stuns and uh, having peekaboo there to protect wiz a lot more is definitely going to help him out if they're training Wiz. The problem is now you have Pika as well, which is a target. Uh, so that can definitely be dicey. We saw how it looked for Drake earlier um, in a similar matchup where they played the Rogue Shadow Priest. He was not having a great time trying to stay alive against this team. And uh, now Peekaboo is going to have to be very slippery on that Rogue and, and stay ahead of the uh, of the setups because one mistake and he's just going to get erased and the Golden Guardians will be yeah. eliminated. And that means Liquid will be first in north america on the standings as well yep you have a lot of uh, a lot of big stakes for this one i also something i really want to see from golden guardians is i don't want them to wait on their first go i feel like in these kind of matchups the team that gets their go first actually has a tremendous advantage because both these teams want to be cycling offensive cooldowns want to be putting the other on the back foot so if you can get that instant setup that's one of the advantages that a rogue can get you you know get that sap throw out the blind send everything first 10 seconds of the game and try to really put f tier on the back foot and i'd love to see them do that because i think if you let f tier get that first setup going it's gonna be whiz really on the back foot and they're gonna have trouble getting their go so we'll see if they can find it there's a sap on dorito they're gonna throw the blind onto shaz so i think they are gonna send it everything coming out on dorito will the cooldowns be responded there's a cheap shot off the blind shaz still holding on it is gonna be dorito getting relatively low rolling out to safety here uh, gonna be getting the leg sweep down on ab surge they want to try to go for the resto shaman ab surge is in a lot Whoa. of trouble already here he is just getting pounded by both of these melee it's all connected on top of whiskey able to peel them off when they're going to be going on their healer it means whiskey is free for those cyclones so the first cyclone does land now he's going to get interrupted another clone does come out to follow this one's going to be on dorito as he did use the touch karma this one is out there's a double stun coming out from Saul. kidney shot over onto shaz can they land the hex no it looked like the hex went off into the clone unfortunately a little bit of an overlap there potentially but dorito's in so much trouble he has no karma and the root beam comes down on shaz is he going to have to use more to get out of it now a clone following up there there's a kidney shot over onto Saul. the cross dc from golden guardians oh. has been immaculate yeah and it looks like they're not on the same page right, right there it looks like Saul actually wants to go after Abster, but Dorito wants to go after Wiz on the Moonkin and I feel like they actually should have went after Abster right there could have been an insane setup but they get the double leg sweep here onto Whiskey and and Peekaboo they're going after Peekaboo he needs to be careful here and he will be able to stay alive he gets the gouge there onto Shaz and Peekaboo now in a disarm uh, just kind of going back around the pillar Chief Shot comes out onto Dorito but no setup to follow it up they're looking for the Cyclone can they find it he gets interrupted Saul now stuck in a kidney shot they're going after the Enhancement Shaman a little bit there and he's going to get bopped out of that one actually i feel like maybe a little bit preemptively there on that bop maybe just trying to keep him offensive peekaboo forced to trade out the vanish here in the exchange and he's going to be staying in stealth here looking for that next kidney shot but whiskey right now playing a 2v1 against these melees without the help of peekaboo finally cheap shot connects kidney shot onto chaz can they find the cyclone they're going after dorito but i don't think they're gonna have enough damage here potentially big hits coming out there from whiskey but dorito is gonna duck around the corner here big gouge onto chaz but what in the world was that that was lay on hands coming out there for chaz huge 
Heal coming in, and now they pull everybody back with the Static Field Totem. Fist of Fury coming through, and they need to get back onto Whiskey. They need to get a good setup here offensively. The F tier definitely falling behind right now in this game. Full Kidney Shot coming through there onto uh, Shaz, but Whiskey fakes the interrupt, gets the pre call, gets the Cyclone with the swap into Peekaboo, and they get his Cloak of Shadows in that swap. Now swapping to Dorito. He's got Serenity up, doing a lot of work here with the Touch of Karma, trying to redirect damage back onto Whiskey. Absters with the Lightning Lasso onto Saul, trying to slow him down. Saul, if he can connect, he's going to have Doom Wins in 10 seconds onto Wiz. Potentially could be a KO moment. Peekaboo forced to use another Vanish. He's got nothing left, and they could be taking this one 3-1 to one on the side of F tier if they can keep up this offense. Peekaboo's at 50% HP, looking to launch the next setup. There's the Bash onto Chaz. They're going after Chaz. Whiskey looking for the Cyclone, though. He Cyclones Chaz. They're going after Dorito. They might just KO him, but the preemptive sacrifice from Chaz blocks the kill, and F tier stay alive. Yeah, great job there by Shaz. There's the Hodge now over on a Surge. They're going to try to keep this pressure rolling on a Wiz K. But honestly, anyone on Golden Guardians could be a target for now. They do all have their trinkets, and it's a nice static field totem coming out from Surge, buying Peekaboo some time because Peekaboo wants to get that re stealth and looks like he will be able to do it. So Peekaboo now back into the stealth, but he's going to get popped out by Saul. A great Earth Grab totem pulls him out of stealth, and Wiz K's in trouble. Peekaboo can't even get there. Now comes in the step for the kidney shot, trying to peel off Dorito as there was that lightning lasso coming out from Surge over on a Saul, roofing down on a Shaz has the clone there to follow it up. What can they get rolling with this? Not too much. It looks like it's the double leg sweep comes in on Whiskey and Peekaboo, and Whiskey's forced to both bark in and trick it to try to get away from there. But there's a gouge over on a Shaz trying to shut him down as Peekaboo as Dorito was sitting relatively low. Peekaboo buying them some time has great CC over on the pally right now, but Whiskey was not able to connect his damage during that same moment. Good fake from Surge trying to actually get out the healing Surge. We'll see if he can do it. Spear hand strike will connect onto Whiskey, but it's Peekaboo oh, getting whoa. solo down. He's going to have to pop the evasion. Surge is actually sitting through the Hodge doesn't want to use the trinket. The cloak is still available here. The blind is available as well. Can they get the setup now on the side of the Golden Guardians? They've got to find their go. The cologne comes down onto Shaz. The defensive totem is coming down. You can see that the static field totem is going to try to peel them off of Whiskey. Whiskey trying to create some distance, but Shaz is charging in. He's going to look for the blind, potentially the Hodge. Peekaboo is actually still in a lot of trouble here. The evasion has expired. And now he had to use the cloak. He's still holding onto that blind. They're waiting for their moment to try to look for the go, but I don't know if they're going to find it here as Peekaboo now uh -oh. into that leg sweep has the trinket, has to get out of there. The blind is over on Surge. He's sitting through, does not want to trade out his trinket as well as the dance cheap shots coming out defensively here from Peekaboo, but they're just so far on the back foot, and I don't know if it's going to be enough. Surge is trying to top him back off with the Ascendants and looking for that healing Surge, trying to fake, can't quite do it. Saul's going to go into the burrow, but it looks like he's using it offensively there as a blind had to come out, but it was on Dorito of all people. Golden Guardians are completely on the run. Yeah, Golden Guardians in shambles right now. They got no defense left on Peekaboo. If they can continue this assault on the side of F tier, they might knock them out. Saul, though, in a lot of trouble here. Full kidney shot, no trinket available. Shaz blocks the kill once again with the sacrifice. Now they're getting offensive onto Whiskey. He fake casts a kick, gets a cyclone onto Saul. Whiskey trying to stay alive, trying to carry the team. Peekaboo staying away here. He doesn't want to stack up right now for a potential leg sweep. Three seconds left for that cooldown for Dorito. If they can stack them up, it's going to be Abster's rest to block the kill with that spirit link potentially. There it is. Leg sweep. Peekaboo evade. Eva eva it or actually evades it by just outranging it really nicely done there by peekaboo very crucial moment to avoid that leg sweep he had nothing for that one if they can just connect with a stun on the peekaboo that would be lights out so the fact that he actually stays alive there is huge and now they're turning on the pressure onto Saul. cheap shots coming out big damage blessing of protection blocks the kill he gets cycloned instantly on the the blessing of protection the golden guardians are not done yet full hex onto dorito can they find something on the shaz right now they need to get crowd control he's got divine shield though he's got answers and he might need to use them with k getting trained down right now taking huge damage full paralyzed onto abster do they have a stun to follow it up do they have a blinding light they have the blinding light do they have a hammer of justice as well it doesn't look like it Chaz already having used that cooldown earlier they're trying to get aggressive here with the serenity whisk trying to kite with that static field toad and peekable finally feeling a bit more confident immediately trading that evasion he's got cloak of shadows and he's got his vanish so peekable feeling a little bit more confident to play in the match right now he's just been kiting for such a long time finally gets to go aggressive forcing out the trinket and the astral shift of Saul kidney shot coming out there onto Chaz but Peekaboo gets caused in the leg sweep because this could be trouble Peekaboo in so much trouble actually he's gonna trade out the Cloak of Shadows absolutely sitting through the Paralyzed sitting through the Hammer of Justice as well but they could swap to Peekaboo full blind onto Chaz and Saul could be in a lot of danger here to have anything out they have the gouge there to follow it up but Saul's doing a good job kiting Dorito playing defense here for his team as well finally they connect onto Saul blessing and protection connects they might just be able to take him down huge damage Coming out from Whiskey, he's got Incarnation up. Burrow comes through in the nick of time. Does Chaz have any heals though? He's got no mana left. He's got Avenging Crusader. And he manages to pick Saul oh. back up. Potentially one last time. Whiskey, super dangerous time here for Wiz. Dampening is ramping up and things are getting unstable.
But yeah, and they have this one out. They just used the Doom Wind, so they were able to survive through that. Precog has popped for Wizkiz. He tries to cut away. Peekaboo peeling them off. There was a clone on Dorito, but they're going to look for Peekaboo now. The lasso used to peel there onto Dorito. Saul trying to push forward. So comes uh, Dorito as well. Into the leg sweep goes Wizkiz, and he's not pre bear for this. And this could be the end of the game as the Hodge is on App Search. He's going to have to trinket, and he's going to have to link immediately. So F tier, do not get the kill just yet. There's the root beam out of the cheap shot. Wizkiz looking for a clone. It's going to get sheared. There comes an in cap, and Saul now into the kidney as Golden Guardians pushing forward, and they're pushing forward. For the win we'll see if they can find it right here right now so has got nothing left and i think they've done it golden guardian's gonna send us the game number five not gonna go down without a fight peekaboo swaps in and the golden guardians will take down f tier by the skin of their teeth peekaboo man what other rogues survives like this he had no cooldowns for like a minute and a half and this guy is just kiting outranging the leg sweeps just running circles using his cheap shots using his dance just such fancy moves such great mechanics trying to uh, just make sure that absurd doesn't have to ever trade his trinket spirit links until they have literally nothing and it comes through there at the end saving the day beautiful thunderstorm right there by Saul interrupting that hex and this is one of those moments where Saul was going down to that incarnation and they managed to pick him back up such great defense between Saul and Chaz and here is their final push Trinket Spirit Link immediately absolutely respects it. He's been saving it for this moment. They get the root beam onto Chaz. They get the Cyclone. Wiz actually uh, gets interrupted on the Cyclone, but finally it does connect. And this is so unfortunate for Chaz. He's got Avenging Crusader up, and look at his trinket. Two, one, and then he trinkets in the Cyclone. But uh, it's such unfortunate timing. If that Cyclone uh, you know, got interrupted and then landed two seconds later, he would have been able to instantly trinket it and keep his team in the fight. Uh, but because his trinket came up in the middle of the Cyclone, it wasn't enough. He didn't get enough globals to actually yeah. keep uh, his team going. So uh, nice timing there by WizK, really finding the, the very, very end of that window to land the kill. And they managed to do it. Golden Guardians, bring in Peekaboo, take it to game number five. But now it's F tier who has the advantage, right? They can pick their comp. They can pick yeah. their map. They can really set themselves Runs up here. on, baby. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think, uh, so I, think I can smell it smell it coming <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be tough man uh, it's gonna be tough to actually take them down so we'll we'll see if they can do it you know on runes this was an incredible match really close back and forth and you know i know there's always going to be like when there's when there's different people playing the same class in very different ways there's going to be so much discussion about like oh who's better you know which way is better you know trill with the one dance peekaboo with the two dance you know trill kind of like pving damage peekaboo going for more of a peel style but i will say that's one of the things that i love about wow is that two people that can be at the absolute highest level can play the game and can play the same class same spec in such a different way and both have success yep. right and to me that speaks to the level of depth that arena has and the level of mastery that you can have is that it's like two players can have completely different opinions on how you should be playing this out, right? And both are having success in their own right. And I think that's so cool. Like both Peekaboo and Trill have won an AWC Cup, right? And, and they're playing completely yep. differently. Um, so I think that is so fun to watch. And, you know, Peekaboo, yeah, he's not doing as much damage as Trill, but like the control he has is so different. So these two guys have completely different strengths, completely different approaches for the game, which I think makes it, you know, so much fun to watch. And um, and Peekaboo, you know, really is stylish on the road. Like you cannot deny that. He looks yeah. so good when he pulls <laughs> off like the perfect setups and when he gets the plays that he's looking for, no one does it better. And I think that's that's one of the things that people love to watch, you know, with this stream and also uh, love to watch about, you know, Golden Guardians, the move in, uh, in PvP and AWC as well. So. It's definitely been a been a treat to see uh, you know these guys go head to head. If uh, if F tier can actually take them down, that's a massive upset. That's really hype for the grand finals. And if Golden Guardians win, I also think that's incredibly hype because we get a rematch between these two behemoths that have been going back and forth in AWC in NA all series long, like all season long. It has been you know so back and forth between Golden Guardians and Liquid. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it's uh, it's so true. Peekaboo uh, on the rogue, just uh, so mechanically gifted. Such a such a flashy player to watch. You know, he's so fast with it. He's really adapting to every situation like that. And if we do get a Golden Guardians versus Team Liquid, honestly, I think we're all just lucky to be here. Uh, F tier have really put on a show. They just came out of nowhere, the dark horse of the tournament. Really managing to snag that last spot for the uh for the gauntlet and we've been talking about this you know how the cutoff is kind of low for top eight a team mm -hmm. could 
technically come in at the third cup and go for a deep run. It could happen. It's unlikely, but it could happen. But the fact that it actually did happen is just insane. F tier uh, just uh, looking super solid right now. And the fact that they're doing it with this composition, you know, with classes that a lot of people have written off and uh, doing it against the top competition as well. No one can say they got lucky with the bracket or they got lucky only facing Shadow Priests or something like that. They are really putting in the work here, bringing down some of these brick compositions that people they got so lucky. They only to had to beat table. every top team, you know? Like, well, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it had to be like 16s in a row. It's, it's pure luck, man. What can you do? Yeah, no, for <laughs> real. I, I mean, I. I I feel like this has been uh, this has been a really insane lower bracket final, and no matter who wins, uh, uh, I couldn't be more happy to just watch these games because F tier, if they win and they can go all the way, that's that's incredible in of itself. But also yeah. the Golden Guardians, if they can get that rematch uh, and uh, really uh, show us that they had a little bit more to give against Team Liquid. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. But now game number five is live. Peekaboo once again tagged in on the road. We're going to Black Rook hold, and already the opener is being launched here as well. Yeah, absolutely. No matter who wins, it's a W for the fans. That thing is much for sure. Uh, Whiskey, though, going to be interrupted already on the clone, trying to peel away here as Sturge is in the Hodge. Great Thunderstorm. As actually Whiskey kited back through Sturge so he can knock those melee away. Really good thinking there. And now the Ring of Peace is going to come out, trying to peel Peekaboo off of Saul. They're trying to connect onto Whiskey, but now the Static Field Totem comes out. Sturge doing a good job peeling them off of Whiskey. Now a clone going to be able to land there onto Shaz. And it's Saul in a lot of trouble. It's Saul incredibly low. It's Saul oh. maybe just goes down. He is going to get that layer on hands but that is a massive cooldown already expended here by f tier the blind though connecting onto peekaboo and sturge can they get the damage rolling because these early moments have really been all about the golden guardians yeah but whiskey finally taking a little bit of damage Dorito trying to make something happen here he's got a little bit of uh, damage to work with Saul actually getting caught up in another setup here Dorito stuck in a cyclone they're switching the cyclone onto Chaz whiskey really putting on a carry performance right now landing the cyclone super clutch can he get another one though this is the question they did force out Saul's trinket they forced out Chaz's trinket actually the salt still dropping very very low they get another cyclone onto Chaz they might just take him out Saul gets blasted and the golden guardians managed to pull it off in just that minute right now the golden guardians they tag in peekaboo they make it look easy and uh unfortunately for f tier they're not going to the grand finals but they made them work for it and uh that was a great game whiz k we gave him a little bit of criticism earlier you know on how he played the moonkin but i think in this game he definitely popped off extremely hard yeah playing it really well you're up against it it's match point you're down a game you swap in peekaboo win back to back and win that game five in only a minute that is the move for the golden guardians <laughs> able to make it happen here the start was so good for them they got so much pressure on us all they forced out an early bro immediately after the bro they forced out the lay on hands so they really had them on the back foot and i think you know f tier uh, just weren't able to really set up their goes in the way that they wanted. I think Golden Guardians did some really intelligent stuff. Uh, they played it out very, very well. You know, even in, in the first like 10 seconds of the game, something I really enjoyed was the fact that when Surge actually gets hodged up, Wizk kited both the melee through him so he could thunderstorm them away. And then the, ho the hodge expires. They use their gap closes to get right back to him. And he immediately static field totems them back away off of Wizk. So it was like, even while CC'd, he's able to double peel. Uh, for Wizke and and you know it's things like that that can put the melee cleave really behind when you start to run out of those gap closers when you can't get your setup until a little bit later on you know it's the other team kind of gets their momentum rolling and it felt like that's what happened in this one yeah absolutely and uh uh, just a great great show of defense and just landing these cyclones is so key for Wiz here and you can see how he's just dragging them back he pops uh, that stampeding roar he gets a cyclone onto the Rito. they got a kidney shot onto Chaz they get the cyclone onto Chaz he trinkets out Wiz K is there look at Abster as well he's just lobbing out lava burst adding extra damage Wiz K gets mm -hmm. uh, interrupted actually on both of his cyclones but then he finally does find a DR cyclone onto Chaz and then Saul does go down in that moment and if you're Chaz it feels so bad to bubble a half clone after you just trinket it. So I can't really blame yeah. him uh, for not using the bubble there. You want to try to at least be a little bit greedy there, but it really comes down to what happened earlier as well. They used the lay on hands and the sacrifice at the same time. And ideally, the burrow. Yeah, and the burrow too. Like, like ideally, you just want to use one of those things, right? Uh, and uh, having to use multiple cooldowns in one setup and then they're continuously getting those clean setups, that's, uh, that's what, you know, that's what allows the move to just uh, stomp like this.
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it is tough, right? And I don't know how much I'm not that familiar with these players. I don't know if you are. So I don't know how much uh, tournament experience F tier has. Uh, and everything was kind of working in their favor. Like if you look at their lower bracket run, 3-0, 3-1, 3-1, they never were actually up against it in match point, right? And I thought that they played yeah. incredibly clean. But you know, you know it as well as I, when you get into the final game of a series, especially if it was a series where you had a lead and all of a sudden it's tied, you start sweating yeah. a little bit. It is way more nerve wracking and you're much more likely to, in the heat of the moment, make a mistake or maybe, you know, maybe Shaz is thinking, oh, he's going to burrow here and you didn't actually didn't click in your head that he already used it or he's going to wall here yeah. or he doesn't have it. You know, things like that are so much easier to have happen in a really high pressure game. And I think when you hit match point, like the lights feel a little bit brighter, it feels a little bit more intense and, <laughs> and maybe uh, maybe that got the best of F tier. Yeah, it's definitely possible. F tier, they have a lot of experience as a team. They've been together for a really long time, but we haven't really seen them in the AWC that much. We have seen Laros, uh, their their bench player, a lot uh, on uh, on the AWC, making a couple of top eights. But uh, this is a, a, you know the first time I think we see them on broadcast. So it definitely could be a little bit of nerves. Also going up against such a experienced roster, you know, like the Golden Guardians. Uh, definitely not an easy thing to do, and uh, I'm happy with their performance. I think they should be happy and hold their heads high. They, at the end of the day, you know, winning the whole cup would be nice, but they qualified for the gauntlet, and that in of itself is huge for them. They're gonna have you know huge changes coming to their classes as well. I feel like mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially Holy Paladin and Windwalker are gonna get some pretty nasty buffs. So they're gonna come through the gauntlet. They played on hard mode to get there, and now. It's going to be really scary to see them in that gauntlet. And we can see yeah. here uh, who our gauntlet teams actually are. F tier versus No Answer, Lost in Ligue versus whoever wins, versus Dukamified. And then whoever wins there will go up against uh, Super One Shot Frogs or Luminosity. Uh, that will be determined later after the grand finals mm -hmm. uh, with a tiebreaker match between them. Uh, but yeah, next up is going to be the grand finals, of course. And we might even yeah. have d a double tiebreaker, right? Because if, if Golden Guardians yeah. actually beats Liquid, that would force another tiebreaker. So they would play three times potentially today <laughs> on broadcast. Oh boy, yeah. That Which could, is uh, crazy. Yeah, definitely crazy. So we'll, we'll have to see if we end up having those tiebreakers. But I mean, we do for sure have the Super One Shot Frogs versus Luminosity Gaming one after this upcoming grand finals which is up next we are finally here the last grand finals of the season of season two here in awc it's all coming to a head right now a lot on the line team liquid versus golden guardians coming up in just a moment do we want to make predictions before we head into this i'm gonna be mean make you guys do predictions oh my prediction is gonna I be Okay, you go first, Zell. Like <laughs> <here. laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm gonna be honest. I think I think it's it's Liquid, right? Liquid have been beating them in, in uh, the Moonkin Rogue Mirrors, and it feels like that's the answer that that Golden Guardians have been coming out with. Um, they just seem more comfortable with it, so I, I definitely think it's gonna be Liquid. All right, here you go. Yeah, I. I Kind of mm -hmm. go with the same logic. I, I feel like Liquid has been looking super clean. I think the thing is, Trill versus Peekaboo. Difference in styles there for sure. Sidu and, and Absturge, I feel like, you know, it's kind of the same. They're both just goats. But I think that Sam I Am especially has been so clean on the Moonkin. Uh, this yeah. guy's won BlitzCon on Moonkin. This guy has been, honestly, really what makes um, Liquid look so good this entire season, I feel like. He's been stepping up on the Shadow Priest. He's been stepping up on all of these different casters. And I feel like on Moonkin specifically, he's been one of the best Moonkins, period. Getting so much control, getting so much damage, always having high value on his Incarns, uh, good at surviving. He just has the whole package. So I, I really feel like Sam, uh, he's uh, going to step up and uh, just do what he does. All right, well, we'll see what they're made of. We are going to head to a break. When we come back, it is the North American Grand Finals. It is Team Liquid versus Golden Guardians in just a bit.
Welcome back, everyone. It is the North American Grand Finals here on Championship Sunday. It's Team Liquid facing off against Golden Guardians. Here's a quick overview as well over Golden Guardians stats. This is a big one here. If GG wins um, this Grand Finals, they have a potential or they, they do have a potential to force a tiebreaker for the standings between Team Liquid and themselves. So quite a bit on the line here, Super Tease. I mean, quite a bit. You you want to be that top seed, have the best advantage moving into the tournament uh, for the finals. Also, just like, what is it, like ego? Like you can say <laughs> with the number one Bragging team. Bragging rights. Um, yeah. Going into it as opposed to like number two. If you're not first, you're last, right? The, the rules of Ricky Bobby here. So Liquid and Golden Guardians are fighting for that spot. Liquid will hold it if they win this series. Otherwise, rematch, best of five after this after the other best of five between luminosity <laughs> and super one shot frog so it's so evenly matched in north america uh, in terms of the top four and even the gauntlet teams i mean f tier taking golden guardians to a game five was completely unexpected so there's a lot of dark horses in the tournament we got a patch coming out next week that could mix up a lot teams might have to prepare different compositions for the finals and paladins are looking strong so you know brain is going to be a really big threat likely on that maybe shaz makes a deep run um in that patch off the back of the gauntlet which would be crazy there's a lot of exciting things as far as the future liquid have been having an insane season um i, I think they've you know, beaten all of their own personal expectations. Um, mm. And it's it's mostly off of Trill. I feel like if Trill was playing the normal build of Rogue that everybody else is playing, that they would not be winning um, the way that they are. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, playing that new dance build is, um, or the one dance build has been incredible for him. So a Team Liquid Golden Guardians here. I mean, what's your take on this series event? Are you leaning more one way or the other? Mm, I mean, it's interesting to me that even in a straight up kind of rogue Moonkin Resto Shaman mirror match, Golden Guardians, like they weren't feeling confident. They ended up opting in to bring in Jelly Beans instead, try to go for more of like a counter comping option. I feel like what I would like to see for this series is both teams just go in, you play the rogue Moonkin Shaman, you go in all the way. Like it's Peekaboo versus Trill, it's WizK versus Sam I Am, Absurge versus Seedoo. These are all very capable players. And hopefully Golden Guardians learned some lessons. Um, obviously, they just brought in that composition to win their last series and make it to the final. So I would just like to see confidence from both teams and a straight up mirror for, you know, as many games as it takes. Yeah. No, I think uh, I think it would definitely be an interesting way to end it. You know, you get these two teams that have been uh, both of them, I feel like, are having the best season that they have had in quite some time. It's all coming to a head here in the fourth and final grand finals. And then to have it play out potentially in a mirror match, Super Tees would be I think a, a bit of a treat to see. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a mirror match that, I mean, Liquid have been brutalizing the Golden Guardians, though, so I don't know how confident they'll be to lock themselves into that position right now. It seems like a really frustrating one, too, as well, um, for the balance druids in particular. Like, if you're just the Boomkin that's getting kicked more, your team is going to lose. You, you, mm -hmm. you just don't get to clone the other team. You can't shut them down. You can't get your high winds going. You can't get time to cast. You're stuck in bear at that point, and it just snowballs out of control. So if it comes down to a mirror, it's really all just about lockdown. And yeah, they're not going to go into the mirror. They're bringing Jelly Bean straight off the rip in game number one to run their shadow play. Absolutely. Let's go, Jelly Beans. I was just going to say real quick, GG is uh, two to two versus Team Liquid this season. So they're kind of neck and neck in terms of uh, just their historical record between each other, Ben. Yeah, very close, evenly matched. I mean, these two teams have been kind of, you know, they've had, been at each other's throats for quite some time now between the seasons. Both these are kind of veteran rosters, and they've been back and forth for a really long time. Trill coming in on the Rogue, and they're going to actually force Jelly Beans to come in on the Warlock. That Demonology Warlock, he's been putting a lot of practice into it. We did mention that Liquid did shout them out as potentially one of the best shadow plays in North America. So Jelly Beans normally playing that Hunter, coming in on the Warlock, getting a lot done early on. Trill's already traded out his trinket. Big setup here. Who are they going after? This is a Shadow Blade. It's massive damage on Jelly Beans. He needs to be very careful. He's just getting one shot here by Trill. Absurge manages to rip out some big heals to keep him alive. DPS? Trill peaked. Is that the highest DPS in a singular moment we've seen in the AWC? 100k DPS from one player? Oh my god. God, if that connects again, man, I can't believe that Jelly Beans is alive after that hit. Sam, I am on the back foot. They've got through his bark skin. Can they finish him? But here comes a smoke bomb. 
Big push on the jelly beans. Sidu jumps into the bomb to lasso Whiskey and avoid being interrupted with the bomb. Now a clone onto Absurge. Jelly Beans is isolated. Look at this crowd control from Liquid. Nobody can play at the moment. Jelly Beans cowering behind the pillar, praying that Absurge can get there, but he gets cloned again. He's going to have that High Winds debuff. Healing's going to be quite difficult. He does recover with the Dark Pact. Static Field pulling Sam and Trill away, trying to get some distance for Jelly Beans to get some damage out right now because he's just not able to keep up. Counter pressure on Sam, fear on Trill, good control by the Golden Guardians, but Sam's already recovered. He's going to be back in the fight and looking for clones pretty soon here. And if he gets a fake on a sheer kidney shot into clone, Jelly Beans could just be dead even through his, his through his unending resolve at this point. Rupee him on Absurd, he escapes it. Trill not able to connect the gouge I think he was going for. Sam gets stunned. He can't clone. He's trying to fake through the interrupts and get a precognition. He's not faking Absurd's wind shear here just yet. I think that he just did, though. And now he's going to get that clone of Whiskey. Immediately swap it over to Absturge. Master Spell from Whiskey removes that Cyclone just in time. But Sam gets another Cyclone. Lasso on Whiskey for Cross CC. A third Cyclone, just keeping Jelly Beans on the back foot, trying to hammer forward and finish him. Cutting through the Dark Pact. A full Hexman. The crowd control from Liquid is insane right now. But Sidu juggling all that crowd control is starting to fall behind on healing as Sam has to bark skin and bear and try desperately to recover. Just so remarkable. How is Trill just doing more damage than a Demo Warlock, a Moonkin, everything? Sam, I am just might get deleted, though. In the meantime, big heals coming in from CD. That's going to be the Spirit Link Totem, as well as the Ascendance. But he is just dying through. Sam, I am in so much trouble behind the pillar, but it gets dropped. Golden Guardians coming out oh. strong here in this first game. I mean, they were on the back foot for the start. But after that, I mean, they had so much pressure. Sam, I am was on the back foot. They're able to just take him down. That was a great offensive push by Whiskan Jelly. Well, liquid choke. They just let a side beat sit there, full duration, and Sidu tried to heal through it and he couldn't, and then they had to use everything and then they died through it. It, it literally was just a side beam. It, it's kind of off camera, it's hard to see. Uh, I thought it was just a void tendril at first, and then I looked and it was like, that dude, that's a side beam. They just didn't kill a side beam, um, for like the entire duration of that push. Before that point, they were getting insane. I think right around some, is this the end of the game? I think this is near the end of the game. You'll start seeing a purple laser beam going into Sam, and it's either a Void Tendril or a Siphine, and I think in this instance it was a Siphine. So right here... Right yeah, so Sam's not killing the Siphine. No one's killing the Siphine. That reduces really healing can. by a lot. I mean, did he, try? he didn't even try and kill it there. I think he starts searching. He's trying. He's try is he trying? It's still alive. He killed it. What do you mean he's throwing He had the link, though. It. Look at this. He yeah. had the link because of it, and then he's dead because the Tyrant is free casting. I, I I would I would say in my in my opinion the the Siphine was more of a good job by Wiz K. Like at this particular moment, CD and Trill were both out of the fight. They were just gone, right? And it was just Sam by himself. The Siphine dropped when he went in bear form. And I think as soon as he realized it, he tried to turn around and actually take it down. So look, if CD and a fear into a silence, Sam I am right now. Here comes the Siphine. He's already in bear form, trying to run away. He gets taken back, goes for a cyclone, and then now you can see he's attacking it, right? Yeah, there it is. On star surge couple moon fire star surge trill's not there he's getting caught into stun so i think that was just a really good moment where whiskey dropped that that liquid didn't really have too many options to deal with it okay this means liquid going down in the first game could be important for the golden guardians overall if they want to get that tie uh, and go to a tiebreaker series uh, due to the fact that the shadow play composition is going to be favoring certain maps in a matchup like this so Jellybean's getting a point on the board. I still feel like it's disrespect. Tyrant's coming off cooldown. Maybe it was just a miscommunication. Like, why is Trill behind the pillar when he's got Cloak and Trinket? And then, like, why is Sam alone in the middle of the map at this point in the game, I guess? Maybe Trill knew Tyrant was coming up and wanted to pre-run or something. I'm not sure. Um, because it just seems like they left Sam randomly. It was just like, it didn't seem like there was a really big, a big reason for them to leave the fight at that moment in time. And then he was just stuck there with the side fiend. You ever just see those moments in the match that happened at the end? There's just like 20 little spirit ghosts coming out from WizK and like eight <laughs> different laser beams channeling. <laughs> and then on top of that, you have all the demons coming in, like all the imps and stuff from Jelly Beans. It's such a chaotic composition to play against. It really is crazy. But I'm interested. Do you think if we go into, like, we're going to hook point, right? Do you think that Liquid is going to opt to bring in the Evoker? Because I kind of feel like that's what's going to happen. They could if they want more throughput and more um, damage. I don't really. What what is the advantage of the shaman in this matchup? Oh, they're just gonna mirror though. Golden Guardians like we're not playing shadow play. Uh, I don't think they map. want to fight the Evoker. Is what it is. I, mean, I would just wouldn't want to play a Wizard Cleave against Trill on this map. I don't think. <laughs> I, I think it's a higher likelihood that they can win a mirror, and, and if they can win a swing match for for Liquid, I mean that could just be the end of the series. So. 
um, forcing a mirror is definitely going to be higher odds, I think, than getting counter comped in this position. So I'm imagining Liquid are going to do the same here um, with the Moon can subtlety Rogue and Restoration Shaman. Jelly Beans, he's done the, the important part. He won the blind pick. He's got his team the swing match advantage for the rest of the series. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be really important. And keep in mind, I think the way this plays out is if Golden Guardians can win this series, then they kind of contest Liquid for that first seed right so and then we're going to go into a second series between these two teams the tiebreaker series so a lot on the line here for the golden guardians if they can win this one as well for liquid they want to win so they can just shut it down they're going to be that first seed taking their time here with their uh their pick so i wonder what they're going to be going with here probably a mirror i feel like they've been pretty confident in the mirror so far i'd be surprised to see if they didn't lock, just lock that in I, I mean i feel like they'd be trolling right like what else what else would they play <laughs> There's no way to bring in Mez, right? Like, I mean, maybe we'll next match on Tuesday. I mean, maybe they got inspired by Dorito. I don't know. Like, Dorito's team was doing some work. I mean, maybe. I don't, I'm don't. really doubting it. I doubt Trello's probably even played a game of Windwalker on the ladder in, like, the I mean, last Dorito just four lost weeks. to Peekaboo Sub Rogue, too, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> so, uh, maybe they just want to talk a strat. I'm not sure. Maybe a talent change um, for the mirror. Maybe just they, they're still talking even about the last matchup because they'll probably have to play that out again on a big map. Um, about what went wrong and how their communication needs to be different for that to not happen um, moving forward. Hopefully they're not tilted from that because that definitely just seemed like a weird miscommunication. They weren't on the same wavelength. You know, Trill wants to run away, but Sam's still in the middle and gets left behind. So they just got to sync up again um, because their offense was really good. It was really just their positioning at the end that was bad. Their offense was insane. It was like clone, swap, clone, swap, hex out of clone instantly, no gap. <laughs> And just running down uh, jelly beans. So if they can keep their offense and their communication as far as defense in sync, then uh, there's no reason they shouldn't still be able to take the series. I think. Yeah, I mean, definitely, Liquid's going to have to shrug off that first loss. But for the Golden Guardians, they picked up a little momentum. Maybe they're kind of feeling themselves now. You know, like they they just won that first game. If they win this matchup, then I feel like that put, puts Liquid in kind of an awkward situation, right? This is like they they kind of need to win this. Like they need to be winning on their 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 map picks, and if they're not, it's just going to put them even further behind in this series. And if Golden Guardians can actually go toe to toe in the mirror, and they're actually picking up wins, then I feel like this this series just goes slowly in favor of the Golden Guardians. So really important that Liquid wins this game number two on hook point. But Golden Guardians, you just look at the roster. I mean, <laughs> it's a solid team. You have Peekaboo on Rogue. You have Absurd on Shaman. You have Wizk on the Druid. They're all extremely good. So. This really could go either way. All right, who's gonna take it? Is this Peekaboo's Revenge coming back in on the Rogue in the mirror, looking to try and style on Liquid, pull a 2-0 advantage in the grand finals, tie up their placing, bring it to a tiebreaker series for the finals of North America and establish and solidify their position as the number one team. Will they be able to do it? Jellybean's looking good. Amazing punish by Wizkay on the Shadow Priest in game one, getting their team a victory, uh, but now it's a completely different comp completely different strats, completely different play style. So are they ready to make the switch here just in game two? They get combat, there's gonna be no saps. Moonkin's out of stealth, is immediately starting. Solar Beam on Sam onto nature, trying to put him behind. He can't Barkskin when he's locked on nature either, trying to rush him down in the start of the game. Barkskin's a bit late, is he gonna die through it at this point as a result of that kick? He gets into Bear Farm, Frenzy Regens, line of siding, should be good in a moment here. Peekaboo is dismantled, can't keep up the attacks. Trill has still not pulled the trigger, he has Shadow Dance ready to go. Where is he gonna send it? Peekaboo has no trinket. Wait, Peekaboo has no trinket. Is Trill just going to kill him in a second here is what I'm really wondering. I mean, Apps are just going to have to be there for the Spirit Link. We'll see. Right now, Peekaboo getting destroyed. They're actually just turning their attention on the Wizkay. getting deleted. Huge damage here from Sam, but Peekaboo tries to turn around the pressure with a cheap shot onto Sam. Peekaboo's getting low, though. He could go down. Big heals coming in from Apps. What a scary moment. I don't know what just healed him, but... He is going to be alive, and they can continue this push here onto Sam and Trill. CD's trying to play catch up right now. He drops the healing tie totem, going for a hex, lands the full hex here onto Peekaboo. Lightning lasso onto Peekaboo. CD doing a great job denying him in this match. We have a full cyclone here on Absurge. He does have his trinket. He's got the spirit link, but it looks like Wizk is going to be able to hang out in bear form, toss out the renewal, and that should be enough to survive. All right, they survive for now. Sam, Barkskins, see you doing a cheap shot. Can they follow it? Doesn't look like it. Sam, I am should survive. 
Trill's resetting that Shadow Dance, getting ready to go in a second here. No Trinket, no Skin for WizK. They Kidney Shot Peekaboo. They set up Sam for the clone. Trill's moving over to gouge Absurge into a Cheap Shot or something, I would imagine. But Absurge is kiting Trill like an expert right now, rooting Trill behind the pillar while WizK clones Sam. And Trill's wasting so much time. Absurge is outplaying Trill so well here. Roots him again behind the pillar and avoids his crowd control that whole time. Wincher comes in, though. Sam is low. Is Sidhu going to be able to deal with it? He's caught into a clone on DR. He's going to get that high winds on his ascendants. Not a lot of healing. They interrupt Wizke on his cast. Biku is in a stun into another stun. Huge damage onto Wizke. Barkskins right away. Make sure that he can respect that pressure. Gets a clone over onto Trill. Denying his reconnect. Peekaboo gets cloned up. Both Boomkins just cloning the rogues. Trying to slow down the game. Sam switches the clone to Wizke. Trying to maximize that. Sidhu into a blind. Big opportunity to get Sidhu's trinket here. Can they get more CC on Sidhu? Blind in the gouge. They're not even forcing Sam's Barkskins. Because Sidhu pre-Iron or pre-Earthen Wall totemed. Even with the Earthen Wall totem, Sam just suddenly dying. Has to pop Renewal and Bark Skin. Trill could get swapped too. He's dying to dots. And this is the Golden Guardian's potential comeback in this position with the Incarn of Wizk. The Cyclone Trill, and they're pushing for that Link or the kill in this position. Whoa. Sidhu ready. He gets bashed on DR. No trinket. He, oh, that Link squeezed in right so before close. the gouge. That was almost nighty night for Sam. But now Sam has Incarn available. And he could ship that at any moment. Wizk with no skin for. 10 seconds could be a great target, but Sam's in a kidney. Clone on Nasidu. They're still not ahead. He drops the healing tide, moves it away, and actually gets hexed on his trinket. Trying to reposition cheap shots onto Wizk. Here comes the incarnation of Sam. Gets whoa, the interrupt whoa, out of the whoa, way. Whoa. And insane damage. Liquid just come back firing faster than ever. Sam I am on a rampage, man. I just I feel like his incarns get insane value in these mirrors. I don't know what he's doing, but I mean, he's the one that ultimately put Wiz K to bed there at the end. <laughs> he's doing huge damage. Uh, I don't even think there was crowd control on App I feel like he, he just killed him so fast. I need to see something in the replay here because Sidhu's running some secret tech. He's running secret tech. He's running Tranquil Air Totem. So when you get kicked, it's 50% reduced. Now, in the past, Moonkins had a talent that when they had this active, if they got kicked while it was active, it just didn't register the kick and they got precog for free. So I don't know if that mechanic, I think they corrected that mechanic, but I want to see because did Sam get kicked at the end of the game? Because I think I saw Tranquil and the kick was really short on like the last clone and he got a precog at the same time. It's possible he just missed the kick. So I'm like, really? I don't know if we could slow mo Sam I am at that point, but that's really, that totem is insane. 50% less on a kick just means you can tank a kick and then cast. Um, one second winch here <laughs> yeah it's, there's there's no reason you can just get through it and if it gives you precog like the mechanic did for me so watch he cast a clone some point in here did he already that one he got kicked and got precog right am i dumb uh can we see it again or did they overlap kicks I whereas uh Absurd doesn't have a shear did he not even get kicked i swear he, cast I, a clone he, and got he, kicked. he got kicked but i don't think he got precog from what i could see see but is... the kick lasted like one second <laughs> Like a 1.5 second kick. Let's take a look. So he's solar beam there, and I don't see precog. So I don't. Right there, I don't think he landed his kick. I think he missed it. Peekaboo. That is right now. It's it's a kick from Peekaboo though, right? I'm yeah, pretty the sure. End, yeah, we'll see it. Just look at Sam's buffs. I'm looking buffs at his character. Game. If it lights up with that that white looking circle that Peekaboo or Whiskey just got right there, if it lights up like that or not when he gets kicked. Or I think it's like any second now. He cast clone. Right here, kicked. Yeah, there's no precog. Oh, no precog. It's just that it reduces the kick. I mean, it's pretty nice. I'm um, Cy cyclone is uh, it's a it's a pretty strong ability. So even if you're tanking kicks, like what is a rogue kick now? Three seconds. Rogue kicks three seconds. Wind shears one, uh, two seconds. It so makes it if you, <laughs> it makes it literally, it it's like it's less than a global you get interrupted for. <laughs> uh as the shaman so i mean that that's that's huge because it is cyclone that closes out the game right it's like cyclones that win the game look at that mountain of damage from the golden guardians it's just crazy you know when these cooldowns are up these classes are just peaking high that was a really kind of unexpected kill there onto whiz k at the end and it really feels like liquid is just they're so well practiced in this mirror they know all the win conditions uh they're able to hold on till those moments and uh really close it out all right, this is tied one to one, uh, but we're likely going to go to a large map here. I think they're going to be relying on Jelly Beans for this series. Peekaboo is going to be tagged in on the small maps, and they're going to hope they can get a win with that. But if they can't, it's going to be Jelly Beans who has to be carrying the weight here. And I mean, honestly, he's been riding the bench for a while, right? So now he's got to come and clutch for his team. It's really important. They've been preparing his mm -hmm. Warlock. They've got Ashamane's Fall. This is the situation that they want to get. 
um, to utilize Jelly Beans in this position. And this means that all four players of the Golden Guardians are going to be really important uh, in this series. If they want to take it, they want to tie for that first place and take it to a second tiebreaker series. And yeah, Jelly Beans is coming off the bench once again, got his team to win. But if Liquid don't disrespect the cooldowns, the Tyrants and the Siphons, I'm just... Uh, Golden Guardians might lose it. And if they lose their swing match, it makes this series, they have to win a mirror at that point, I think. Yeah, I, I had a, I was actually hanging out in Jelly Beans' stream last night. He was uh, playing, uh, it was either this morning or last night. Um, doesn't matter, that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is I was talking to him a little bit about kind of his thought process. And he said he's just not even, before he would put a lot of his time and effort into just like maintaining being the best hunter, right? Like trying to be that hunter asset for his team. And he said now during tournament season, he just doesn't play hunter. He just practices other things. So taking, you know, his role of playing Warlock very seriously for this roster, uh, likely going to be the one that also plays Augmentation Evoker uh, when that <laughs> does become available. So is there Augment Evoker comp, sub rogue Augment? <laughs> you never know. I mean, maybe Augmentation Evoker Shadow Priest is good. There's no I'm way. not sure. There's no Who way. knows? That's that's like the worst augmentation evoker comp imaginable. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, Whiskey also Whiskey also plays on Holy DK. He's played it for a long time, so he's very DK excited about that. Evoker. Oh man, yeah. it's it's like the devastation version, but updated. The new model. It's, it's just a better version. Yeah, it's just a better. <laughs> you don't just win in one shots. You just win the whole game. Like so, it'll it'll be interesting. I mean. This AWC in general has been uh, really, really nice because we've seen all the different healer specializations used. I think as I was saying, every single DPS spec has also been played. Except they haven't all won, but they've <laughs> all been played and tried to utilize by their teams, uh, except one. And the only one that hasn't been played is Unholy Death Knight. And luckily for them, they're getting a big rework in 10.15. So it'll be interesting to see um, who's going to be able to utilize that. Like, are we going to see Mez tagged in? You know, he's been playing his Elemental Shaman, but I, I think it does excite everybody to see you know liquid going back to potentially like a wind walker death knight something like that would be cool to see but that's uh for a later date for now we got the finals north america liquid versus golden guardians cup number four these two titan teams going head to head let's see who comes out ahead in this one there's going to be golden guardians comp as well as map pick let's see if they can get that win all right jelly beans a really important player for the team here, but it's so tough to survive the damage that Trill can do in these burst windows. You got to be careful. That moment Trill peaked at 100,000 DPS. Like, if he's not ready for that, it's just 99, you're out of here. You're going to be losing your swing match advantage. And they're just stealthing in right away, getting a sap, a clean start. Cheap shot onto WizK. Going for a clone, gets shut down by Jelly Beans. Stun onto Trill, stun on Sam. Great peels from Jelly Beans into a double Shadow Fury. They go for a blind. Now they're swapping onto Jelly Beans. And he's already got Earth Shield. Absurge knew he would be the main target. He didn't switch his shield to Wizkate, despite them kind of baiting that they were going to him. He keeps that Earth Shield up. Trill getting moved into the middle of the map, trying to get him into a good position for potentially a Tyrant or a Siphon, maybe. Uh, as we see Wizkate kind of targeting him down at the moment. Sam, I am coiled out in the middle of the map. Jelly Beans kicked. Now with Kick out of the way, he's going to use the Life Crypt of Wizkate to get to the opposite side of the map. Trill gets knocked. Shadow steps over to Jelly Beans. He's probably going to use the gateway, I would imagine, but he's smoke bombed. He's kind of in a rough position. At least Absurge is right there next to him, be able to pick him up with the Ascendance, but now he's cloned. That clone is putting him so far behind. Look at the damage. This is getting destroyed at the moment. Now Jelly Beans gets cloned low. Absurge into a full hex. And I don't think they have crowd control out of that hex, so he's likely to recover in the next couple of seconds, unless they have an insane amount of damage. Jelly Beans gets another double stun here with that Shadow Fury, but he gets cloned again at low health. Absurd's trying to reposition, doesn't have a shear, so Sam can kind of go clone crazy for the next couple seconds if he wants to clone WizK now. I don't think there's really much to stand in his way. He gets a clone, it's on Absurd's. They cut through Dark Pack, Master Spell into another clone from Sam. Jelly Beans ports back behind the pillar. Trill shadow steps over to Seed, who gets pulled back by Absurd's, trying to use that static field totem to keep Trill off of his Warlock, but Trill is just a menace. They can't keep him off for much longer. He goes for a lightning lasso. He gets sheared by Sidu and oh, immediately shut down. Goodness. And Sam is just faking kicks, taking control of the game. Hex onto Absurd's clone swaps over to WizK. Kidney shot onto Jelly Beans. They stun Sam to try and slow down the fight. But now there's a lasso onto Absurd's. They're going to fear that. WizK getting a double, trying to get his team into a better position in terms of offense because he got decent damage here with that Siphon. Those Siphons, that's the win condition. Every time that Siphon comes down, we see Sam really struggling. Now the Void Torrent connecting with it as well. Silence onto Sidu. As that subsides, he's going to look to pick his team back up through that bar skin, and they've got to be ready at any moment to be killing those Siphons. That That is the main threat from the Golden Guardians. Yeah, definitely. Sam, I'm going to be taking a little damage. See to get a nice hex here onto Wizkase. He's really trying to set up the team. Absurd gets interrupted. Sam, I am destroying so many clones, but this is the Tyrant. 
Right now, Liquid has to be careful. Axtos comes in. Beautiful fear here by WizK. Sidu has no way out. This is a great shift in momentum here for the Golden Guardians. But Sam Maya manages to land a Cyclone. He needs to be very careful. Sidu trading out a big heal. That is enough for Sam to survive. But he's just getting absolutely blasted here in the middle of the map. Going for a lot of Cyclones, but also getting pressured quite heavily here by Jellybeans and WizK. Trill trying to set him up with a Cheap Shot or a Gouge onto Absurge. Can he get the follow-up Cyclone? Looking for it. Cheap Shot into a Cyclone. WizK's in trouble and might just get dropped. Trades up the Spirit Link Totem. Absurge is forced to trade out his Trinket. What? That's everything. He's almost dead through it. Ancestral Guidance comes up. He gets a big heal. They stun Sam. They're trying to keep Sam on the back foot. Jellybeans has been free casting, though, while they go on to WizK. He's starting to get a little bit of momentum going for himself there, forcing the bark skin of Sam, but now he's cloned up. He's going to lose that. WizK gates away with Absturge. Sam is trying to chase him down, and he's interrupted on Shadow. Are they going to try and one-shot him on the interrupt? They just force Dispersion, jump over for a cheap shot, likely into a Cyclone. Jellybeans is trying to get there. He can't get there in time. Sam gets coiled. He trying to get the coil into a full fear, but he forces Trill just forces Void Shift by himself. Trill's top damage in a wizard law. <laughs> what? The Trill's like top damage in a wizard game. I cannot believe the numbers that I'm seeing from Trill in this matchup. He's still got Cloak of Shadows, but needs to be careful. If he gets stunned right now, he has no trinket. Sam with no bark skins, playing at the pillar, cloning up the pet, trying to stay ahead of the damage here. When does Whiskey have that Siphon? Uh, is really it's up right now, but who is it on? I think it's on Sam. He's, he needs to run out of line of sight as soon as possible. Trill is starting to rot down as well. Anytime that Siphon comes down, it looks like really they get pressured hard. We see a stun on Sidu. He's finally free. Ascendance brings the whole team back into the fight. And now I feel like going after Jelly Beans is probably going to be the move moving forward with that with no medallion as opposed to Whiskey, who just got his dispersion back. Ooh, Tyrant. Did he get the Tyrant off? He's caught in a kitty shot. Jelly Beans could be in some trouble. Chains out the unending resolve. Are they going to be able to kill him through it? It's a lot of pressure coming in from Trill. There's no way. He popped it at such high health. Absurge gets out of the crowd control, giving some big heals here to Jelly Beans, but it might not be enough. They might just outright kill him through it once again. Interrupt onto Absurge into a full hex. Beautiful plays here, but an axe toss onto Sam I am. Jelly Beans ports away. He's trying to do what he can to survive, but the crowd control is endless here on Absurge. They might have bought enough time. Jelly Beans doing a great job kiting. He gets behind the pillars on the line of sight. Needs to be so careful. Absurge wants to oh heal him. God. Jelly Beans, look out. <laughs> danger, danger. Cyclone lands onto Absurge, and There's Jelly no Beans way. is likely going to fall. That was insane. I feel like Jellybeans, uh, I don't know. We're going to have to see the replay, but I feel like Jellybeans did such a good job kiting, but ended up just staying out of Absurge's line of sight for too long. He just couldn't heal him. All right, we're gonna, we'll catch it in the replay, and this is important for Liquid here, taking the swing match away from the Golden Guardians because this is supposed to be the most threatening situation is the shadow play on a big map with a lot of distance, pulling them into good positions for them to be able to take them out. And without that swing match advantage, it means they're going to have to win a mirror at some point in this series, maybe the entire series, uh, on the small maps because Liquid are obviously going to take it there every time it's their map pick. So this is a big win. Liquid taking this there. If they win this series, they'll just be number one seed, number one team in North America definitively without needing that tiebreaker. So they, they want it, man. Their, their crowd control is on point. Their damage is on point. And this push was just so lethal. The bash and a clone, the smoke bomb on Jelly Beans, forcing him to wall. Instant MD from WizK doesn't even matter. Jelly Beans fakes the kick, but Abster just can't heal the damage. He goes for a casted heal here. He gets beamed on it by Sam. That beam was so critical. Jelly Beans coils, trill, stuns Sam. He's doing everything he can. Ports back behind the pillar, but Absurd goes into a DR cheap shot. Sidu's on one side. Stormkeeper loaded up, ready to shoot a lightning bolt straight between his eyes. Lightning bolts from Sidu. Star surges, and like, what Like, what are you going to do? Absurd doesn't have length. There's no void shift. Like, you're going to stand yeah. there for a riptide? I don't even know. Like, yeah, I think it's way better for him to be here trying to drain life almost. It's just you didn't have any cooldowns right. at that point. Yeah, there's really nothing. I feel like there's nothing left he could do there. It's just endless crowd control on Absturge. Let's like take a look at the setup once again. It is a blind on Absurge into a bash, into a Cyclone. Out of this, what happens? I think it's the interrupt that really just makes yeah, things... Yeah, the beam. Yeah, the beam right here on this cast. Unfortunately, Absurge gets just... locked out. Cedar goes for a full hex. I mean, there's just no cooldowns. Like, how do, how do you can't you just can't Did he get purged? Because normally that gives you aura mastery, doesn't it? Are we going to watch the replay a third time? Because I... He specked into it. When you Spirit Walker's Grace, you get immunity to interrupt. So he did Sidu purge him? Or did, is it like the, the end of it? I think it's only for five I think seconds. The run, the run cast, I think the run cast lasts longer. Then, yeah, than, so it might have been longer than that. Yeah. But I'm just wondering, because maybe Sidu got an instant purge or something, because I think you can purge the interrupt immunity portion of it. Um, you can too. So abstract. I want to see when he uses Spirit Walker's Grace. Has he used it at this point? It's tough. Yeah, so the... the 
The immunity to silence only lasts five seconds, but the run cast lasts 15 seconds. So he, he activates it here, right? Or you know, he still had it up, I think. Maybe he just forgot that he didn't have the Ore Master with it there. I'm not sure. Um, because then he goes into the full hex. He breaks himself out of the hex, which is smart by running into that laser. Um, so the AoE damage from the Fury Balloon breaks it, but Trill's just there, and even Shadowy Shadow Duel. Dueled. So there's yeah. no way it didn't matter where he was. He was <laughs> he was just dead. Um, they they did smoke bomb into Shadowy Duel in one push and just killed him with that. So they're they're breaking all of the tricks out. I feel like a lot of rogues don't run bomb anymore. I feel like it's so good though. Like if they didn't have bomb. I mean, he's but blinded, but um, I think it's a little bit more mobility, isn't it? Isn't it the sprint gives you immune to snare, I think? Uh, they got Thieves Bargain. Or maybe... Pull down on Shadow Blades, Vanish, and Faint is reduced. You uh, have to run Thieves Bargain. And you, I think, you for the most part, you run Veiled and... I guess you wouldn't run Veiled. Maybe you would run Veiled and Shadows. I don't think you'd run that, it he was he, he was playing Smoke Bomb and Shadow Duel that game. So Smoke Bomb, du Duel, and Thieves, and Thieves bargain. bargain. Yeah. Okay. And he plays Dismantle against the Rogues. Yeah. And Veil of Midnight, I think. So he doesn't play Bomb or Duel in that matchup. But it seems really good for Warlocks, because normally they're really tough to get a cooldown from. But if they're far away from their port, you drop the Bomb and they have to do something to be able to get out of it. So you're most of the time going to force some significant cooldown with it. So I, I like those choices from Liquid. Golden Guardians, they're sticking with the Shadow play. Um, they're going to go to a big map. They're going to try and get as many wins as they can on a big map. And then when this could come down to a game seven is when they're going to have to win in a mirror. Um, and I, I mean, I could see that happening. I could also see Liquid just taking this 4-1 um, with how good their offense is. Like that chain was crazy at the end, actually. Watching it with the replay in slow-mo to see all the little <laughs> details of it. Like they made it impossible for Abstrich to do anything. CD was there for damage to add to the team while Trill went for the duel. Like... Like liquid, this is you know this is former glory liquid. You know this is BlizzCon champions liquid coming back uh, to me. Samai, right I'm now. on the moonkin. I feel like Samai, I'm on the moonkin. That's what he was playing when he won BlizzCon, and it's looking like <laughs> you know could be a repeat situation here. He's looking really good on the balance druid. Just super good at rotating through those DRs. You know, getting the clones not only on the DPS, um, like getting a cyclone on Jelly Beans, pausing his health, then Trill can help him get the you know a cyclone onto Absturge, and then Absturge is in a cyclone just. Way he's rotating through his diminishing returns i feel like he's really enabled in this matchup by c2 and trill kind of backing him up but just together you can tell liquid has been putting in a lot of work i know uh yesterday c2 tweeted out he normally streams every night but he's like yeah we're not streaming tonight it's just all war games where we want we really want to win this so they've been putting in a lot of practice a lot of work and uh it's definitely been paying off for them so far yeah i mean <laughs> the work is there the the proof is there the evidence is there i mean you're beating peekaboo on rogue you're winning mirrors so uh, yeah. i mean the, the evidence is there the effort is there the the ability is there and now it's uh, just basically a display for us to enjoy and for the golden guardians to feel the mercy of basically um hopefully they're gonna be able to turn this around keep this close at least because liquid could run away here having one ashamane's fall um against them and they've got to be ready for the the smoke bomb tricks they gotta be ready for the shadowy duels um that swap to whiskey earlier well i was somewhat questioning it. i was like why are they going on the shadow priest so he just says disperse but that swap i think got them at least void shift if not also link i think mm. so if they had just kept tunneling jelly beans i don't know if they would have got those cooldowns so the swap caught them off guard and they got a lot of cooldowns with it and then they just swapped back um and we're able to finish the game even through Jelly Beans' unending resolve. So Liquid able to turn on a dime here in the series, take advantage of any opportunities presented to them. Gates are about to open. Liquid look to try and take this and move to match point. Yeah, they are looking good. Game number four between these two Titan teams, Tolveron Arena. Gates are now open. Let's see what they can get done. Sam, I am, Trill, and Sidu have been on fire. They're on an absolute rampage, but... Golden Guardians battling it back here, bringing the Jelly Beans on the Warlock. He immediately pre-ports the setup. So we have a Sap on Absurge. Jelly Beans just going to try to get out of there. We have a Silence on Sea-Doo, who's going for a Hex. Lightning Lasso now onto Trill. And uh, this is not a bad start here for the Golden Guardians. I feel like Jelly Beans did a really good job avoiding that initial setup, but now finally being pressured here. All right, Sam. 50% bark skin available, being greedy, pushing forward, just doing damage. Bash on the Absurge, but he's falling behind. Finally has to respect. Trade out the bark skin. Solar Beam, trying to put them behind even further. Absurge pulls them away with the static field into an Earth Grab Totem, trying to get Jelly Bean some space, but with that space, he just gets cloned by Sam. And Sam is getting dots loaded out onto everything. He's going to have great astral power generation. 
Trying to get towards getting another two star, star surges. Here comes a smoke bomb. Asterisk gets rooted out of it into a clone. He gets mass dispelled, though, by Whiskey. Good mass dispels. Whiskey is going to be a key player here in the series. And it looks like they killed the Tremor Totem before going for the fear. So Whiskey playing out of his mind right now for his team defensively and offensively. Trying to get them in a good spot. Goes for a silence on CD, but he gets a kidney shot by Chill. He can't do any damage. And that means that Sam should be a okay here as he's in the earthen wall. Jelly Bean sniping a double Shadow Fury, but his Tyrant is cycloned at the moment. And not really connecting too much. Maybe he gets one bolt here, one bolt onto Sam, but he's already in bear. Frenzied regen behind the pillar. Should recover. Oh, he's running into this Tyrant again. Okay, Tyrant has faded now. Now Trill and Sam, they're just going to play so aggressive. There's no Siphon. There's no Tyrant. It's time to do some damage. Gouge into Bash, likely into Clone. c is stunned. There's the Clone. It connects. Trill Trinkets to go for the kill. Is Jellybean's going to be able to survive? Whiskey's interrupted on Shadow. Jellybean's is falling behind. On any resolve, may not even be enough for him to stand here as he gets cloned up at low health on his defenses. He gets Master oh. Spell, but into another clone from sam sam is just going clone crazy right now now swapping it over to whiz k absurge into a gouge gonna kill him through the earthen wall totem he's sitting in absurge's <laughs> earthen and he's still not completely top finally jelly beans back to full health portals back behind the pillar chill gets knocked away on his kidney shot he's just going to switch to whiz k instead and just send some damage into whiz k maybe bait some cooldowns cheap shot after cheap shot trying to put him behind now chasing them they get pulled away with the static field into earth grab trying to get some distance trill taking some hits here as he should be able to line of sight in a moment. Siphine is available. They need to be careful of that when they're pushing in on the Warlock, but they don't just completely ignore. Here's the Siphine. That's a lot of pressure onto Sam. Are they ready for it? Trill kills off the Siphine. Sam drips, dips critically low, but Cedo gets a huge heal. Trill caught in the lasso. Absolute out of line of sight. They can't stop it. They just have to heal through it. And we can see Cedo. He's getting aggressive. He's got that Stormkeeper. He can shoot two big lightning bolts. And I think it's got Jelly Beans' name on it here as Cedo's moving in. Maybe it's Whiskey instead. Just out of nowhere, he's down at half. Bash on an but Sam can't clone. Sidu gets a hex instead. If Sam gets out of the sphere and can actually get a clone, it could be awesome for his team. They interrupt him on Shadow. They're just incarning while he's kicked, trying to KO the Shadow Priest. They Typhoon the Tyrant. They step over the Gouge him, but now they don't have a Gouge or a Beam for the Tyrant. They're going to clone it. That immediate Oh, he MD'd the Tyrant out of Cyclone, but they're all behind the pillar, and, and the Tyrant has snared, I think, there by an Earth. Yeah, it's not even moving. Oh. Tyrant's out of the game. Feels bad. Look at it. Feels bad, Tyrant, right here. It's just waddling around. It can't do anything. And now it's gone. Bye. All right. That's unfortunate. Jellybean's trying to load up a bunch of damage there. He gets the power infusion and Trill and Sam. I am CD say, you're not having it fun. Goodbye. They get a swap here onto Wiz K. Kitty shot into a cheap shot, but no crowd control on Jelly or Absurge. I think he's going to be able to shrug that one off. Big double fear here coming in from Wiz K. Nicely set up. A big setup here on Trill. Finally, he has a trinket into a coil, though. Needs to be careful. Will trinket vanish? to escape just deciding to open up right away really unafraid in the match getting aggressive here on the jelly beans jelly beans has a good portal position though might be able to get out of midfield but so far not feeling threatened just blasting sam here need to be very careful jelly beans getting a significant amount of damage all right kidney shot on whiz k liquid trying to find their footing here and which target they want to go after they still have an opening there's still no unending resolve for jelly beans they set it up with a gouge likely into a kidney into a clone they've got whiz k in the middle Maybe a miscommunication. They hexed him in. They beamed him. And now they're attacking him. They're just trying to run him down. Oh, my God. That was an insane crit. Trill cloaks. Is he just going to die? What is this damage? Whiskey has to disperse. And, and now Incarnation is available in, like, 15 seconds. They don't have that safety net. Mana is even at this point. So they're not. They're winning maybe slightly on mana at this point. Pressure on the Jelly Beans. They could switch to him in a Shadowy Duel. Maybe just send a 100. Oh, he's just dying at the moment. Trill's pressure is so insane on this subtlety rogue, clearing 10 million damage, almost keeping up with Sam. I am nobody does as much damage as Trill does in this game. Yeah, I mean, it really is true. He's just proven it time and time again, no matter what class he's playing. Now getting aggressive here onto App Search. Kidney shot into a Cyclone. Sam, I am going clone crazy once again. Trying to get the pressure rolling here onto Wiz K, but this large map has made it difficult for Trill to connect. But now get to the cheap shot. That's going to be a Spirit Link totem. App Search is forced to trade out. Big pressure here by Liquid, and it's every single time that incarnation is available for Sam. It is a absolute panic. Solar Beam on Wiz K, but... Sam um, gets shut down a little bit there, and I see done by Jelly Beans. You can see the Tyrant actually is tagged in and helping, getting some casts off. Trill goes over, kicks it into a gouge, and that will shut down the Tyrant for the time being. Trill confidently pushing forward right now. Kitty shot on Wiz K, but getting spam fear. Jelly Beans taking control of the match, really trying to just slow down Liquid and get some pressure rolling, but it is Wiz K once again who might get dropped. There's no dispersion. Oh he could easily go down. He's got to be careful. Makes the void shift, changes health with Jelly Beans. And stays alive. Jelly Beans was smart here. He dark packed before Void Shift because it gives you a lesser shield. So he pre dark packed. 
he gets the big shield and his HP isn't as low. So it was a really nice read by Jelly Beans, knowing that WizK would have to swap his health over to him. Smoke Bomb comes down onto WizK. He's trinketing out of that. He's running. He's in Earthen Wall. Earthen Wall should be enough, right? Trill trinkets out of the Lightning Lasso to get aggressive still in this position. They got Incarnate 40. They're killing him even without it. WizK fakes the interrupts. He's got precognition. He's trying to load out some dots. Void eruption. WizK trying to turn it around for his team. Coil onto Sam. Can they do it here? Cedar dispelling dots, falling behind and really struggling to heal Sam at the moment. But here comes Fury of Illumin and Whiskey immediately has to disperse. They're going to switch to Jelly Beans into Cheap Shot. He dark packs right away. Full respect, but he's still just dying through it. They have to gate across the map, try and get some distance. Mana is still even between the teams. Incarn is a ticking time bomb, though. 15 seconds away for Sam. I am. There's really not much for Whiskey in terms of defense. There's no Spirit Link either. If they crowd control Absurge, I think it's over for Whiskey here. And Liquid on match point already at that point. Like, there's no chance they can come back, I think. Double Fear, they're trying to keep it alive. Trill is isolated, but he vanishes. I don't think they have a way to detect where he is, unfortunately. So he's right next to Absurd. He's waiting, but Sam out of nowhere. Golden Guardians kill him before the ticking time bomb can go off and tie it two to two. They're all tied up in this one. And what's it's just so it's such an interesting series because Golden Guardians have the capability of just going to the mirror match. And I do think it's something that they can win. So it just all depends on the map. If Liquid goes small, we're going into a mirror match. If not, Golden Guardians. Actually, I think Golden Guardians is kind of forced um, to lock in the Shaman Mirror match. Um, and I think there is a reason for that. The main reason is um, if Golden Guardians decides to play uh, this composition, Seed is going to play the Evoker, which I think they don't want to deal with. So they'd rather just play the Mirror match up instead. Um, so, yeah, Golden Guardians, so definitely bringing, bringing the heat in this one. There was a few close calls. Jellybean had some nice defensive plays. I feel like the more they went on Wiz K in this one, more confident I was in favor of Golden Guardians. I feel like Jellybean does a really good job getting out fears, getting out stuns, building up his damage. And uh, I, I feel like the less time they're able to actually be on Jellybeans, the matchup just gets better and better for the Golden Guardians. Yeah, for Jellybeans free casting, it's just such an important engine and it's way tougher for him to deal with it. But they got so close to killing it at the same time that I don't really blame them. <laughs> like he almost died right there um, on that push. And then could they have done anything to survive is what I'm wondering. Was it just one of those moments where they pushed into Siphine when they didn't have trinkets? And that's why they ended up losing. Uh, because if they live here or at least buy time for Sidu to get his link, they've got link. So they get a double fear and it fears him into the middle of the map. I'm pretty sure he's Siphine's here. There's no way, right? Axe toss, Siphine, and Trill is not there to kill it. He's just a Siphine on him. Absurd is stunning him, yeah. It knocks Sidu away from the link. Absurd was, was insane at the end. This, this camera point of view was way better for seeing what happened at the end of the game. Uh, like, Sidu or Absurd just completely owned them in that position um, with that stun and with that knock, knocking him away from the link. So that was an insane play from Absurd right at the last second man because like if they didn't kill them there I'm pretty sure they were dead Incarn coming up with no trinkets on their side so that was an insane play from Absurd and when we caught it the first time around it looked like Absurd was the victim he's getting gouged and stuff but he, no <laughs> it was Trill stuck with Absurd in that instance they just caught Sam that fear pathing the double fear out of position set him up stun knock him down tyrants out this is a perfect storm situation right now and absurd watch the thunderstorm Boop. <laughs> no link for you yeah. <laughs> well i mean if you're absurd i feel like you've played so first of all you probably played against cdu so many times and also just you know exactly what the shaman wants to do right he's in his hex he's in a hex his teammates dying like what do you think his global is gonna be so absurd being able to deny that with that knock is just really impressive to see and it's so fun getting to watch these two like shaman gods go head to head in a matchup like this. I feel like both of them are so good at navigating defense and offense. Uh, it is Absurd that ends up getting the better of the situation near the end of this one and uh, really helping carry his team to a win with some really nice offensive plays. Really clean. This is the best setup ever for their comp. This is literally best case scenario. You know, they get a hex, they, they get off the fear, they get the knock, they get full control. Like. That, that last 20 seconds was just absolutely insane for the Golden Guardians to pull off the win right there, right when they needed it. Now we're going into a mirror because right, I doubt that they want to play Shadow Play onto a small map <laughs> if it's already getting this close on a big map. So if Peekaboo can dust off, just I feel like it's just maybe it's two games now because they lost that one swing match or would it swing back in their favor? I'm trying to do the math on this. I think Peekaboo has to win two mirrors in this series to win the, win the, win the tournament, right? Well, this is liquids map pick yeah so then, if golden guardians wins this it's back in their favor right yeah so peekaboo has to win two mirrors to win i'm pretty sure 
Jelly Beans did what he could. He got some yep. points on the board, but I, I'm 99% sure now Peekaboo has to win the mirror for two games if they want to win uh, this and get the tie and move into the tiebreaker series. So what, what I was kind of trying to explain earlier, I feel like I didn't do a good job, is Liquid can't play Evoker here. And I think what, how it's kind of evolved is as a wrestler shaman, you cannot be root beamed. You have a talent to just get out of the root solar beam. I think it's, what what, what is it called? Spirit Walkers? Yeah, Spirit Walk. It's yeah, Spirit an, Walks. It was formerly Enhancement only. <laughs> And yeah, so they got some it. enhancement shaman tech to just break out of roots even when they're silenced. Um, but evokers, they don't have that. So I think the matchup literally comes down to if you play an evoker in this match, you get root beamed and the shaman doesn't, which is a massive disadvantage. Yeah, evoker is the only healer that can get root beamed now because you can't be a no <laughs> and you don't have your own way to get out. What about like, paladins? No, uh, paladin can pre freedom, pre orb. I guess they don't have a get out of it free card because they can't be gnome yet. Wait, All can right. they be gnome in the? When are they introducing paladin? <laughs> oh gnomes? no, when the is gnome that happening? Because I bet it's happening. There's no way it's not. Oh, it's going to happen. There's there's light forge Dranite warlocks. So I mean, <laughs> gnome paladin is not that <laughs> obscure. I don't think. Uh, what about undead paladin. We'll have to see. I mean, if light forge can be warlocks, I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's only fair that it's wide open be, at this point. <laughs> undead can be paladins. I mean, you can come up with something, some potion you take, some holy damage doesn't do hurt you anymore or something i don't know there's something you could stuff in there to make it make sense i'm sure um when gnome paladins happen i'm retiring my boom cannon <laughs> every healer could be a gnome okay all right just never getting a solar beam again it's fine wait till so wait till evokers can be a gnome too <laughs> i mean you know what's interesting about evoker is their visage form is supposed to let them take on whatever they want right like Abyssians, mm -hmm. like a Torin, and like you'll see other. So why are they forced to be Blood Elves? Why can't you be anything Evoker and like get that racial on top of it? <laughs> you get like an extra racial. You can pick whatever you want. Of my pay grade, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have the answer to that. God mode, it's not going to happen. We're, we're rambling here. The teams are taking their time <laughs> uh, to lock in, but I think they're ready to go at any moment here. It's going to be Dalaran Sewers. It's going to be a small map. It's going to be a brutal mirror. Peekaboo has to. Get the upper hand here. Wizk has got to get the upper hand on Boomkin as well. Um, and Absurd has got to keep doing what he's doing here to try and create opportunities for his team because they have to win. I, I'm pretty sure now it's got to be two mirrors. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what they can do. Golden Guardians, they have to win this match up here. Uh, Peekaboo's really got to step up. But I, I do think Golden Guardians are playing a good game. Liquid is just a little bit better at this matchup. It seems like their offense is a little bit better coordinated, but... We'll see. I think the Golden Guardians have the potential to step up, but this is still anyone's series at this point, and they are playing for a lot. It's potentially first place uh, in terms of seeding on the line. Obviously, both teams really do want it, so we'll see who can come out ahead. Sam, I am in WizK going to be exchanging blows. Peekaboo decides to open up first. He gets countered cheap shot into a gouge here by Trill, just trying to slow down the rogue. The full cyclone does land. Nicely done there by Trill, and now I do feel like this is a better opener for Liquid. All right, let's see if they can ride the momentum here. Just take it to match point. Whisk is pinned in bear, trying to go for a clone, gets sheared, trying to go for another clone. Does he get grounded? It doesn't look like he's been able to connect the clone just yet. Now he's cloned by Sam. Trill is dismantled. Unable to connect too much here. Sam's trying to fake interrupts. He does get cheap shot. He's not going to connect that. Peekaboo gets pulled out of the fight, tries to shadow step back over, uses the cloak of shadows to immune the static field, which means he can't cloak a dismantle. So using that cloak there in that instance could cost Peekaboo in the future. And now he's getting swat. They're punishing Peekaboo for that cloak. Insane damage onto him. He vanishes away and manages to get back to his team, back onto Sam, but he actually gets faked, I think, on his kick. Sam gets a precog, clones Whiskey at low health, and that Cloak of Shadows step out of the static field could potentially put the Golden Guardians in a really unrecover unrecoverable position. Peekaboo dismantled on his cheap shot, not able to connect anything. Sam just healing back behind the pillar in bear form. Roots Peekaboo behind the pillar, out of line of sight. Abster just trying to get back there. And it looks like they got a dismantle on the trail, so he's not able to get any damage out at the moment. Surprisingly, nobody has used their medallion at any point in this game. Kidney shot on Peekaboo. Whiskey fakes an interrupt, gets a precognition, clones trail with it. Sam gets caught in a cheap shot, out of pair form. Big damage incoming. Is Barskin going to be enough as he ducks in the bear? Spore cloak procs, and he goes uses the renewal. He's back in the fight. He's getting aggressive, trying to get his way through the interrupts, trying to find a clone here. Is he going to get through them? Goes for the clone. I think Absturge was able to deny it here. Gets wind sheared. Goes for the clone again. Gets kicked by Peekaboo. 
Sam's through all of the interrupts at this point. He can start casting some clones. Is he going to be able to get it? Bash onto Absturge. Lasso onto Peekaboo. Kidney on Wizkate. All players in crowd control. Clone for follow-up. Wizkate ducks into Bear. Is it going to be enough? Now they're trying to turn it around on Peekaboo in a swap as he's getting critically low. Trill is all over the place right now, just absolutely decimating them. Dismantle onto Peekaboo. No cloak for three to remove it. Wizkate is still low from the damage earlier. Absturge grounding totems down, trying to prevent the clones. Wizkate goes for it. Trill trinkets offensively. So this offensive trinket from Trill, I mean, if it nets the kill, it's just going to be over. But he could be punished for this in the future. Yeah, definitely. There are openings here for Liquid. Can they take down Whisk? He's in a lot of trouble. Absurge pops the Ascendance, empowering his healing, trying to play catch up just a little bit. But the damage here is unrelenting. Peekaboo charging forward, trying to keep some pressure up onto Trill, potentially swap on him. But it is going to be Absurge in a Cyclone once again. Kidney shot on Peekaboo. Whisk under fire. Big damage incoming. Gouge on the Peekaboo. So much crowd control from both of these teams. Once the dust settles, we'll have to see who does come out ahead. We have a full kitty shot now on Trill. He's getting just absolutely one shot. Peekaboo's going for it, but it's not enough damage. Trill survives. Good healing tide totem there by Sidu. Both these teams just so evenly matched. This is very back and forth. Yeah, but no spirit link for Absturge. That's a big safety net that sidu has got in his pocket, and Absturge doesn't, which means it's going to be tough to play with confidence, not knowing that you've got a parachute, basically, to pull at some point. sidu has got a parachute, and Absturge doesn't. Is he going to hit the floor before his team can get a win? Kidney shot onto Sidu, trying to set up a kill here on Trill, but they're not finding enough damage to close it out just yet. Here comes Fury of a Loon from Sam. He's blasting down WizK, 50%, ducks into Bear. It's kidney shot into Peekaboo, Hex onto Absturge. It looks like it did break, fortunately, for him to some dot damage there. So he's going to be able to get the heals at the Ascendance. Trill is pushing in. Sam used his trinket on that push. So now no trinket on Sam, no trinket on Trill. Those are openings. But Abster has no trinket for the full blind. At any, I mean, Trill could just blind here and Whiskey is dead, I'm pretty sure. As soon as he comes out of this clone, they could just go for it and end the game. Cedar's in the cycle at the same time. They can't make the push. Sam's on the back foot. Is Bark's going to be enough for him to survive in this position? Cheap shots out into a gouge from Peekaboo. Peekaboo is stepping back over to peel Trill off Whiskey at the same moment in time. And they're still keeping pressure on Sam. Cedar is going for a lightning lasso on Peekaboo. He, he's got to heal Sam here pretty soon. He's falling behind. Peekaboo evasions, but he's cloned on his evasion. This is, gonna, this is so tough for Absurd. How do you heal? One target's cloned, immune to heals at 20%. Whiskey's getting swapped, swapped to. He's at 50%. Everybody's in dead time. on your team. Ascendance comes up for him at least. He's got some AoE healing. Blind into cheap shot and Sidu, trying to make something happen onto Sam, but it's just there's not enough damage. Sam is sitting so comfortably. Whiskey interrupted on clone, put back behind from Sam. Peekaboo's dismantled. Sam's trying to fake interrupts. They pull Sam away with that static field. Whiskey's getting run down. Trill is literally running him down right now. They have to knock him away. Absurd gets a knock, gets a little bit of distance for Whiskey. Sam jumps in, knocks them back to the wall. Clone onto Sam from Wiz. Trill the target it would appear for now, but with this trinket, I can't imagine they want to stay to him. They're going to clone him and swap everybody in crowd control. Beautiful setup from the Golden Guardians. They swap the clone over. They force the bark skin. They need to kill him through it. Can they do it? Bear form renewal. Big boost of heal. Swap the Trill on the lightning lasso, but Sidu is there with a massive nature swiftness, getting his team right back to full. SMIM has incarnation and he uses it. Who are they going after? Absurge could be in trouble. Away. Cheap shot in the cheap shot. He gets deleted. The Thanos snap there by Liquid. They find the perfect moment to go after the Shaman, and that is just always a threat in this matchup. You don't have a trinket. You're already kind of pre-dotted and rotted down to 50% health. Samam has his incarnation. I, I feel like Liquid really capitalized on that situation perfectly. Okay, well, that was, that was a, a way to end the game. I wasn't even considering the Shamans as an option here in this match, and they just bulldoze Absturge in the, in the final seconds of that game. Just absolutely hit him with the trill train uh in that moment in time and we got Sidu's position is this towards the end of the game it looks like it was when they're near the wall so he's just keeping his team aggressive he sees the cheap kidney he seems the cheap he sees the clone everyone's in cc swaps the clone over Sidu pov is probably not the most exciting when they're destroying absturge but the fact that he recovers then he gets that big ns look at that with the with the ancestral guidance when you time that ns with the primordial wave it's just full top for your whole team now his team is comfortable and it's like all right let's do some damage lasso on wiz stop the clones and dude he just got <laughs> global in just a second there on that swap and and with the coordination Sidu able to bounce from defense to offense like on a dime right there he's got the confidence to keep, know, keep his team knowing that they're comfortable and they can keep pushing for these and just run them over so we're on match point um this does mean the golden guardians wait the golden guards can use jelly beans again because they can do it yeah. right now right yeah okay so they've got one more shot with jelly beans that they need to win which is gonna get peekaboo one more shot in the mirror 
Yep. If they had won this match, then they were really sitting pretty because Jelly Beans would have two opportunities to basically close it out. But yeah, it's just that was just such a good setup. But this was, I feel like this was in a bad match here for the Golden Guardians. So just it's just little things that are adding up in a big way. I, I just feel like the setups from Liquid are cleaner. It's their offense. Their offense is just better in this matchup. I feel like Golden Guardians, they do a really good job um, kind of deflecting the offense. You know, they play good defense at moments, but it's just, I feel like the actual like lethal setups are just, they're so much more convincing from Liquid. Kind of pick their moment at a perfect time to close out the game. I think they recognize the win conditions a little bit better, and uh, that's what's putting them ahead in these games. Really good coordination. They saw an opportunity, they took it, they capitalized on it, they didn't let the pressure push them back, and they're trying their best here, man, but just they can't win the mirror. What what is that now? Have they won a mirror yet? I don't think so. Not this. Not for today at least. So it's like, do you just do the Golden Guardians classic and play RPS, even though maybe it's just terrible just in the in the if if it gets to that point, I mean it could be over now. I mean, Jelly Beans, man, every time every time they lose the mirror, Jelly Beans like, oh God, I have to get in there now. <laughs> like he's gonna try and make something work here. Um, they got Maldraxxus Coliseum, I think, left um, for large maps. So I'm expecting to go there for the side of the for the Golden Guardians. And then when it gets to a game seven, if you want that tiebreaker, if you, you have to beat them again, though. <laughs> you have to beat them again in, a series, in another series. Oh, my God, dude. That's Oh, my, this is such a tall order right now for the Golden Guardians. And it just seems like the mirror is just going more and more in favor of Liquid every time that we see it. Just not getting yeah. they're not getting enough intel to, to even be able to get a win just yet and it's just looking rough so yeah maldrax is called see him they want to get jelly beans bring in the beans bring out the beans well i will say jelly beans effort on warlock has been worth it because if he didn't have a warlock oh, yeah. they'd probably just be 4-0 <laughs> right now so you know his warlock is getting them wins here it's a very important component overall for keeping their chances alive in the series uh, Liquid, they're not going to change their comp. Why would they? They're, they're on fire with this. They're they're absolutely owning. So here comes Jelly Beans. There's no way they'd lock a mirror. I think I think that would be unwise for them to do their best chance. Um, and they've just got to get that miracle set up. They've, they've just got to hope that they can have that X factor where they can get Sam in the middle of the map, get a Tyrant out with a Fiend, um, and just blast them down. That's, that's going to be their best chance. They're going for it. Golden Guardian's going to be tagging in Jelly Beans, and they need to win this. If Liquid wins this, then Liquid walks away with that first place position. If Golden Guardians can somehow win two in a row, we go into a tiebreaker series once again. So it's going to be a second series between these two teams, a best of five. So we'll see how it does play out. Liquid has a chance to just shut it down right now on Maldraxxus Coliseum. Golden Guardians bringing in Jelly Beans once again to try to keep the dream alive on that Warlock. And I do think he's been doing a good job. Um, we saw how it played out on Tolveron. It was eventually, I believe, Sam I Am that went down. Some really good plays by Absturge getting active with lassos and knocks and hexes uh, to kind of set up his team. But uh, before that, it was a lot of Jelly Beans having to kite and play a really good defensive game. So what I'd like to see from Liquid here is just good pressure on Jelly Beans to try to stay on target. Obviously, easier said than done, but it feels like the more time they spend off Jelly Beans, uh, the worse the game gets for them. So. I just want to see as much damage on Jelly Beans and as much pressure and control on Jelly Beans as possible. Otherwise, I think he sets up his team too much. Okay, let's see if Liquid can connect here. Maldrax is calls him a really difficult map to do that. So Golden Guardians have the highest opportunity here, highest likelihood of taking this to a game seven. We could have imagined, you know, the final cup going to a game seven. We had F tier almost upset the entire thing. Like they were one game away from potentially upsetting the whole tournament with their Windwalker Enhancement Holy Pal. And I'm very excited to see what they do uh, in the gauntlet with the changes that are coming forward that I can only imagine are going to benefit them. Uh, they're going to be a crazy team. They got a ton of fans. Golden Guardians, they still beat them. They got here for the rematch. They've been taking games. Jelly Beans has been taking names in this series, trying to get his team here to a game seven they're going to need to mirror and they're going to have to figure out what it is that they can do uh, to be able to win that because on the day liquids undefeated in mirrors are they going to find the answer can they make it there in the first place otherwise they're going out of this in second liquid will be definitively number one seed first place position for north america yeah i mean it, it's crazy liquid i feel like they've been kind of on a journey at this point uh like we kind of mentioned they've been putting in a lot of work they've been putting in a lot of effort to get here um, I think this is this season was their first cup win. Correct me if I'm wrong. In a really long time, right? It was, it was like season 
Did, say, did Trill say BFA when we interviewed him? I think it was Peekaboo that said that, wasn't it? Oh, it was Peekaboo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it feels like it was a long time since Liquid won, too. I mean, it feels a long time since anyone other than Luminosity has won. Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> it's it's probably like, yeah, it was like four years ago we won. Luminosity have just won every single tournament since then, pretty much. Um, so, I mean, both of these teams have yep. had a remarkable, what, what do you want to say, upswing from where they were previously. The it's fact that a... they're beating Luminosity now. Yeah, it's been a bit of a power shift. Yeah, you were you were right. It is Peekaboo that said that, but yeah, it's just it's interesting. Both these teams have kind of leveled up. North America feels like it's wide open. It does feel like over the last few cups, Liquid is kind of ahead of everyone else. Seems like this composition in particular has been working out really good for them. So I'm curious because what's interesting is I feel like Liquid right now is winning in this meta, right? Like they're doing really well in this yeah. meta, but I also feel like in ten one five, they also in theory yeah. should come out ahead right like it, it's really hard good. to say drills like one of the only dps augment or dps evokers in the past i'm sure augmentation isn't you know insanely well different. he's been practicing it all and day he, every he's day been on, he's been on the ptr he, he's been getting ready for it so i mean if liquid can finish strong here in cup number four number one position and the patch is just getting it even better for them man they are going to be on a rampage in the north american finals golden guardians need to stop them before it gets to that point can they do it can jelly bean substituting in here be enough to get his team to game seven everything on the line here they want to be first they don't want to come in second if you're not first you're last especially with the, this caliber of teams they're all aiming to be number one and anything less they will not settle for so the golden guardians have a tall order can they do it they've got a map advantage I wouldn't necessarily say comp advantage, but um, on the map, it's definitely looking a lot better for them. They need to set up that Tyrant, set up that Psy Fiend in a position where it's tough to kill them and tough to line of sight them. And honestly, I feel like it comes down to Sam. He just needs to respect those moments. Like if there's no trinket on him, no trinket on Sidhu, take a second and chill because I, I, I feel like there's no reason to expose yourself. So maybe Liquid need to slow down in those moments. Yeah, here we go. Here's going to be the opener. As Trill moves forward, he gets a kidney shot on Jelly Beans. He will be the main target of the match. Bash onto Absturge as they look to get aggressive here at the early stages of the match. Sam is going to be looking for Cyclones. Can he find it? A full Cyclone lands on Absturge. Jelly Beans already on the run. Good momentum here for Liquid. Do they have the damage to follow it up, though? Or are Jelly Beans just going to shrug off this attack with some good early kiting? He gets an interrupt. Big static field totem. Going to be landing there by Absurge, forcing both Sam I Am and Trill in the open. Smoke Bomb drops, though. Huge damage potential on Jelly Beans. Can they take him down? These Eviscerates are hurting in a big way, but the Death Coil comes in from Jelly Beans. That's going to force Trill uh, defensive just a little bit as the uh, Golden Guardians are looking to stabilize. But Jelly Beans' health is just not getting topped off. No, they root Trill. They stun Trill with the Tyrant out. This is good coordination between Absurge and Jelly Beans. With Sam I am pinned here. They mass dispel the Tyrant out of crowd control, but Trill off. Ki he's a kidney shot on the Tyrant. Oh, man, that Tyrant is not getting any value here. He maybe gets one bolt. No, he's gone. No bolt. Trill even vanished it to make sure, I think, here in this position. He's just cleanly in stealth, waiting for an opener, waiting for that Earthen Wall totem. They move out of the Earthen Wall. They immediately pounce. They gouge Absurge, but they can't follow it up. They go for a bash instead. Trill Shadow steps in. Dark Pack from Jelly Beans. Can they cut him down and finish him here through Dark Pact? Absurge is also taking some damage. They might swap to him after realizing, that, you know, maybe he's... He's a little squishy in that last game. They might be able to go on to him if they rot him down a bit, but Trill is overextending. They catch him in an axe toss, trying to punish him for pushing in this deep onto their team. They relay the demonic gateway, so they've got an escape route if Trill comes back behind the pillar. He's having just a tough time moving his character even back in range at this point in time. Just generating combo points. Shirk and Storm getting ready for the next attack here. I think Jelly Beans might have picked up the Shadow Side Eye. He's actually might be taking 5% more damage, but he's, he pre-ports away. They're forced to go on Wiz K. Sam is still attacking Jelly Beans, though. I, I feel like they should have coordinated there. They could have got Disperse from Wiz K. Uh, right now, Trill taking a lot of pressure, but it is Jelly Beans on the back foot going for the Mortal Coil once again onto Sam I Am. Just needs to slow down the damage, but it is unrelenting. Kidney shot on Jelly Beans. He's just been under fire this entire game, but at the same time, Wiz K is just wreaking havoc here onto Trill and Sam I Am. Sidu now caught into the Lightning Lasso, Absurge, and Wiz K trying to reverse the pressure, but it's Wiz K caught into a Cyclone, and Trill can just continue this push onto Jelly Beans. Jelly Beans did a great job with his portal, with his mobility to escape. Sam I Am is getting blasted in the middle of the map, and Wiz K is really causing havoc, doing a lot of damage on that Shadow Priest. Who is going to fall? Chaotic match. Sam I Am down to 20% health, could go down. Sidhu's going to pull the trigger on that Ascendance to try to keep them alive. He has the Spirit Link Totem, doesn't want to opt to use it just yet. But it looks like finally Jelly Beans has a moment to breathe. But we'll see how long uh, that lasts. 
I mean, if they have a smoke bomb or something, he's got no ending resolve. He may not be specced into it this game, or maybe we don't track it on the UI anymore. I'm not entirely sure at this point, but with no ending resolve, no trinket, he's very susceptible to going down. They've got a blind as well. Sidhu's team is just pulling back complete retreat at this point, it seems, but WizK is just poking them with dots. They can't just retreat forever. Chill's marching in, shadow steps towards WizK. Looking to generate some combo points for a kidney shot, but he's getting pressure. There's a kidney shot. Earthen Wall Totem comes down. Are they going to knock him out or swap off the Earthen? Looks like Trill doesn't want to bother attacking any Earthen. They're swapping back to Jelly Beans outside of the Earthen Wall. They clone Whiskey, but he gets rooted. He can't connect. Bash on Abster. Sam, does he get the clone? They have to stop the Mass Dispel. They beam the Mass Dispel. Beautiful cross, but Jelly Beans already knows he's the target. He's kind of the opposite side of the map, forcing them to go on Whiskey, but that means Jelly Beans is free casting. Sam is falling behind below half health here. Can Jelly Beans do it? Get his team the win. Get his Golden Guardians to a game seven. And we'll have to wait and see. Sam I am is a little bit low on health, but it is Jelly Beans in a kidney shot once again. Either one of them could fall. Good pressure for both sides as dampening is getting higher and higher. Trill moves over, gets a uh, static field totem to weigh there by Absur. Just all three members of the Golden Guardians are looking to reposition, get into the open, and force Trill to overextend. But look at Trill. He's got Cheat Death, Double Vanish. He's got Cloak of Shadows, everything available to play defensive if he needs to. He's just an unrelenting rogue just chasing down Jelly Beans, but a good exhaustion. Jelly Beans, I, I feel like, is doing such a good job kiting on this Warlock. I feel like all that practice on Hunter is really paying dividends here, just making it really difficult for Trill to connect. Uh, that Amplify Exhaustion is definitely getting work. Ooh, double stun. Good coordination between Whiskey and Jelly Beans here. Isolating Sam, but they're not even getting his barks. And here comes Incarn. Oh, no, it's match point. Are they going to be able to survive the wave of damage that Sam has lined up? Instant dispel onto the coal. Jelly Beans gets beamed. He's got nothing here. They need a link. He's gouged. He has to trinket link. Whiskey's not in it. Whiskey gets there, but the link is already dead. They typhoon them away from it, and they're desperately trying to survive this Incarn. It, it, the next 20 seconds is so lethal. Trill vanishing away from the fight. It looks like Absurd has done it. The Spirit Link is enough. Jelly Beans recovers throughout that initial stage of the Incarn. Jelly Beans is cloned now on it. He cannot drink it offensively. There's no way, even despite the fact that it's his tyrant. Looks like a Siphon is out, but they've line of sighted it. Trill deciding to use the medallion. Blind on the Absurge, no trinket. Jelly Beans on the run. Kidney shot connects. He dark packs may not even be enough. He's cheap shot into a hex from C2. Whiskey in position to get a fear. Is he going to be able to get a triple? He doesn't actually have fear off cooldown. He's going to go for a silence, but Jelly Beans in so much trouble. This is the void shift. There's no way. It has to be the void shift. Whiskey gets the void shift, redirecting his health to himself. And now he can disperse if he needs it. He's trying to keep his pressure up onto Sam, but Sidu is there with a massive heal. His team can play so confidently now. They're at 100% health. Nature's Vigil rolling. Massive heals. Kidney shot. No trinket. Whiskey is cloned low. Jelly Beans, I think he's got a wall here, even though he's not stunned. He could just die through it. He trinkets. He ports out a line of sight, but there's still crowd control and Abster. He's caught in a beam for a moment into a hex on DR. He has to use on any resolve, and that is the last cooldown. For the Golden Guardians, they're in the same position they were on Tolveron. They need to win the game with the Siphon right here. But Trill drops a defensive smoke bomb. They move them out of the defensive smoke bomb. Abster with an insane static field right there, trying to net the win. Whiskey has to carry right now. They need to finish this match. Can they finish Sam? I am in time. He's so low right now, down at twenty percent with a fear on Sidu. He's popping the ascendance. It's not healing at all. He needs to link. He's being so greedy right now. Healing waves coming out. I cannot believe he's not linking right now. He's actually holding on to the link to slowly staggering his heels healing surge oh, after no. healing surge pulling his team back up into the fight and now no trinket on your shaman no trinket no wall for your warlock it looks like he pre-gated the kidney possibly um oh in incarnation oh, secret God. technique they're going for it all in just brute forcing a win liquid can they do it jelly beans in the middle of the map right now just getting absolutely blasted that soul rip coming in from Jelly Beans, reducing some of the incoming damage. He might be able to actually survive. Has he weathered the storm? That was all the offensive damage. From Sam is going to be mush pushing forward. Gets the bash here onto Absurge. Can he find the follow-up clone? Jelly Beans in a lot of trouble. Beautiful master spell there by Wiz K, but a full hex lands by Sidu. And Jelly Beans once again just isolated. He portals away. He's behind the pillar. He's trying to kite. Can he survive? Wiz K pressuring Sam I am, but it is Jelly Beans who gets caught. Lightning Lasso coming in from Sidu, knocking Jelly Beans away, but that knock might have been a mistake. I mean, now uh, I don't know if Trill's going to be able to actually connect. They might Sam have is dead. Save Jelly Beans there, and Sam He's actually dead. Fall. What? They can't Whoa. actually do it. There's that Spearling totem paying dividends. Oh my god! And the greed earlier paid off. If Cedar didn't have Link right there, Sam was dead. Whiskey is soloing Sam. I'm Jelly Beans is just running for his life. Like Whiskey, win the game, dude. I'm running away from the rogue. I can't do anything right now. I'm just going to keep running away from Trill. Tyrant. He's trying to get. To oh, he gets knocked into the Shadow Side Eye. He's going to take five percent more damage, but he's got a Tyrant out trying to scare them. They knock him into the middle of the 
the map for the Tyrant. Siphine on Sam. Pressure on to Sam. This is a miracle moment for the Golden Guardians. Can they finish Sam here? Cedar doesn't have a lot of options. He's stunned up. He's got one more Nature Swiftness, but he needs two Globals to do it. There's the Primordial Wave. He needs to connect the NS. He gets it and tops the team. Man, that is an insane combo. Primordial Wave oh. NS. <laughs> Literally lay on hands for the whole team every minute, it looks like. Gets the whole team back to full health. Now Incarn's coming up in 26, but surprisingly... I mean, Jellybeans has not any resolve. Abstract has Link. I mean, this is getting to a point now the Golden Guardians are actually pretty comfortable. Uh, if they can survive this next end card, it's up in 18. Either kill them before it or survive it in the next 15 seconds. And I think the Golden Guardians are going to take this to a game seven. They could. They could go after Abstract, too. There are openings, but Golden Guardians are looking good. They've got the tools to survive. Jellybeans has done a phenomenal job kiting. Like, MVP in this matchup, absolutely no doubt about it. But can he survive much longer? It looks like they're just going to be going after Absurge in a bash. Cheap shot. Can they? 100 Oh, He's got the Spirit Link Totem. Opting not to use it. Just going for the Astral Shift. And that might be enough. And now Jelly Beans, he's finally had a moment to breathe. In the meantime, though, Whiskey is forced into the Spurge. And Sam, I am Trill and Cedar are all just yes. dead. This is the Shadow Play you know and love. Trill drops a defensive smoke bomb. Trying to buy Cedar just a little bit of time. Can Cedar really stabilize here? He's got the Healing Tide Totem down. They might be able to tell us survive and they're just going for it liquid might be able to actually take down whiskey are you kidding me absolute straight up the spirit link totem this is just such a oh. chaotic match tyrant jellybean says tyrant just send it just send the tyrant it's time to win the game he gets bashed he's got no trinket absurd he's got some mana but he's cloned he trinkets out of the clone whiskey's getting pressured sam's getting pressured it could come down to a 2v2 at this point see is sheared sam goes down whiskey could follow trill kidneys absurd he's going for the kill i think we're going to a 2v2 to ah! decide the number one position trill getting spam feared by jelly beans fear after fear after fear after fear into root trying to get them off of whiskey the golden guardians are going for the kill they're going to trade whiskey for c i think at this point he fakes the inner up in Whiskey on 10%. Trill is going to take him down. 2v2 time. Trill gets coiled away. Pets are on to Sea Dew. And Liquid, they're out of mana. There's, there's no way, right? There's no way an Oom um Shaman at 1% wins this game, right? There's no way Sea Dew can win this game in this position. He gets pulled in the middle of the map. Tyrant is out free casting. Sea Dew gets blasted out here at any moment. He's defiantly defying death right now with absolutely nothing left. They just want to close the series out. They're going to play it out, even though it doesn't even make sense that they're alive. He's actually oh, he got his alive. team back to full health. How are they topped off? This is just so insane. But the problem is, I don't know who should come out ahead here. I feel like Trill can make these really crazy offensive pushes, but I have to slightly favor Jellybeans and Absurge. Absurge is going for a resurrection right now. That gets shut down there by Trill, but the longer Trill stays in the open, he's got no cloak, he's got no vanish. Cedu's got no mana. This is looking good for the Golden Guardians. Cedu trying to shut it down here. Beautiful setup. The coil comes in onto Trill with a lightning lasso onto Absurge. Cedu now going for a hex out of the gouge. Jellybeans once again just all alone, potentially looking for a fear here. Cedu gets faked on his interrupt, but is able to ground the follow-up fear trill at the same time though his health is going nowhere but down lightning lasso by absturge wanted to close out this 2v2 and stay zoom. alive in this series but trill vanishes out there's no way he's gonna be able to top him he again 60 percent what he okay. topped him he actually oh my god they're gonna win absturge has no trinket are they just going to kill him through on any resolve? Trill's damage popping off again here. It's unhealable. He ports away. He can't stand there. He's got to get away from Trill. He's got to get some distance. He cannot tank his damage right now. He's got to keep Curse of Exhaustion. He's got to keep Trill off of his back. There's no way he'll survive. Trill connects with a Shadow Step kick. He's going for it. He's got Cloak of Shadows. He gets stunned. Jellybeans is trying to turn it around. He's got Tyrant. He's got Coil. He's trying to peel him. He's got to fake a kick. He goes into a kidney shot. He trinkets it right away. And he's going to use Gateway. Try and get some distance. Instant exhaustion on the dispel there of that exhaustion from Cedu and ah uh, this should be it for oh he shot us behind the pillar Cedu there's no way you top trill again right there's oh. no way you top trill again and there's, there's no way that you top trill again it's not cloak? he kept him alive it's <laughs> there's no way this is happening link and cloak of shadows Pikachu just has to watch his team pull off a 2v2 against Cedu, which is just unkillable you just cannot make him die full fear finally this has to be it right there's no way Cedu pulls his team back from this. NS, he tops his team again. Hex comes through on Absurd. He trinkets it, but Jelly Beans has nothing. It's match point, and Trill and Cedu are about to pull off a 2v3 blind, no trinket. Jelly Beans is trying to kite, ports back behind the pillar. Trill not able to connect. They stun him with the lightning lasso. They're trying to poke him from range. He steps over onto Jelly Beans, and Earthen Wall is down. Is it going to be enough to keep him alive? He gets kicked on fear. He's got Shadow Dance, and that one dance is so. He pre evasions the axe toss. Trill is. Is going in for it. Absurd has nothing. Dampening is too high. And I cannot believe it that.
that they're about to do it. He steps out of the static field. Jelly Beans has nothing. Absurd is totally out of mana at this point, and Trill is all over him. He gets stunned for a moment. Ports at one percent. Absurd. There's no way you're no topping way. Jelly Beans right now. There is no way that you're topping Jelly Beans right now. He's at ten percent. Cedar's going for the kill himself. He's trying to find a hex. Lava bursts are incoming, and Liquid pull off the two v three. Oh my god. What did I just watch? That was absolutely wild. They pull off the 2v3. Liquid somehow, some way, stay alive. Curl just defying death. I don't know what Seed is doing to get those heals, but I need to find, he needs to make a guide or something because <laughs> the amount of healing he's getting out during those moments is absolutely wild. And we can take a look here from Seedu's point of view. This is just such an intense moment. Seedu has no mana whatsoever. He's just waiting to trade out his globals. It's just the Earth Shield, Riptide, Earthen comes down, and this is that last kind of offensive push where there's just nothing left here for Jelly Beans, unfortunately. I mean, I feel like they did a really good job in this 2v2, but Seedu, as well as Trill, they played it cool. They waited for their moment. They survived those really difficult situations, and at this point, it's just too overwhelming to survive. And look at Sidu. He really tries to shut it down. He goes for the Hex. He gets interrupted on the Hex. And then uh, eventually he goes down. Sidu's obviously so excited. That was insane. Wow. <laughs> I love having the replays of the streams. It's so great. You can see just how excited they are. Look at this. <laughs> you can definitely tell what he's saying also. We're not going to repeat it, but... Definitely deserves to be uh, excited. That was a, oof, that was a nail bite. I hate, I I hate having to stand by back for those ones because it just like it's so intense at the end. But um, I mean, what an incredible victory for them! Congratulations to Team Liquid. They are the ch the Cup number four champion Super Tees. Oh my. God. God, man, Sidu's back, dude. After that, that's that is definitely <laughs> former glory. That that was like BlizzCon 2014 vibes. Where he's keeping his t was it Ven? He's keeping Ven alive, I think, in that year at like one percent and like what? There's Something, no yeah, way. There's no way that just happened, dude. They should have been dead like 30 times. Are you joking right now? They actually pull off the 2v3, <laughs> take it. Their first place in North America. They don't got to play no tiebreaker shenanigans. Oh my yeah. god, does not get any closer than that. Yeah, that was great. So, I mean, when that cross kill happened, it sounded like it, you guys were thinking that it was Golden Guardians that was going to get that one. Yeah, I mean, it was ooming at like 10% when it started. Well, it just based on like pure composition ability. alone, would, would they have had the advantage had they had they kind of started uh, with, you know, more mana or something? Or I, I don't know. If it was even like mana full, like a normal 2v2, start of a normal 2v2, I think Rogue maybe is it favored mm -hmm. uh, but the the fact they did it from the position they were in i think is why it was impressive i think so too well goodness gracious i mean either way congratulations to team liquid uh golden guardians they will be finishing today in second as well as the standings in second so i mean with how close that was i i can only hope that they you know, go back to the drawing board for this break that we have before we move into the grand finals because, uh, you know, they're likely going to have to face them again. And uh, I, I just kind of wonder what kind of a match that's going to be then after those changes do come in. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> there's there's so many things that are coming in. Um, it's going to even just to even just the healers being mixed up right like let's just imagine a world where it's just going to be all paladins all of a sudden like what does that do like are we going to see more compositions like maybe things like windwalker fire mage holy paladin are going to be back maybe things like windwalker death knight which we haven't seen for a really long time it is completely possible to see things like warrior death knight be really good or even affliction warlocks affliction warlocks are getting some really positive changes too so i, I don't really know what's going to go on um augmentation i think is going to spice things up as well one thing's for sure is these teams uh when, once this cup is finished these teams need to get back to the drawing board like come tuesday they're gonna have to put in a lot of work to figure it out yeah definitely i'm sure a lot of them are going to be working really hard here um in this this sort of break as you know tgp and uh, mdi starts to happen but uh we do have one more series to get to it is this tiebreaker you can see super one shot frogs versus luminosity 
gaming. Uh, they are fighting for that third place position right now. So this is a this is a big one. I feel like this is a big deal. Like it, it's definitely going to be a lot easier to not have to get sent down to the gauntlet. I mean, there are some some sharks down there. Super tease, you know, especially with with F tier making it in, uh, you know, just some of the talent that we've got in there. I would not want to get sent to oh. that gauntlet, and I'm sure either of these teams don't either, as well. You also don't know if the patch is going to benefit you or not. True. So being out of the gauntlet means at least you're in the you know in the big money area, and you can get a chance to get it. you're guaranteed <laughs> it. So yeah. you don't you don't want to be losing this series because then you're at the potential mercy of the patch. Um, mm -hmm. to your compositions who knows like think about the comps that the other teams in this gauntlet play it's such a wide variety like you got that windwalker comp from f tier you got some like shadow priest hunter stuff and then you've got like moonkin stuff and you got rogue mage stuff like there's a lot of variety here that maybe if any of those are you know the best options that one of those teams end up just clawing their way through and, and taking that spot away from you so this series means a lot for luminosity and, and super one shot frogs yeah it certainly does so definitely stick around there is a lot on the line here it is not just a tiebreaker there is so much going for both of these teams and we're going to head to a break when we come back we're going to find out which team out of these two goes to the grand finals and skips the gauntlet we will be right back after this break
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are almost done with all of the qualifying cups for Grand Finals and the Gauntlet. We just have one more tiebreaker match to finish it up. If you are just now tuning in, Echo won Europe earlier today, and the Team Liquid just won North America. Now we're heading into a tiebreaker. This is going to determine the team that gets sent into the Grand Finals and gets to skip the Gauntlet, Azale, and it is Super One Shot Frogs versus Luminosity Gaming. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy that Luminosity are even in this position where they might not make it straight into the grand finals after years and years of just dominating everyone in NA. Uh, this season, it has really been all about Liquid and Golden Guardians, those two teams that we just watched play in the finals. You know, Golden Guardians won the first couple cups, uh, and Liquid won the, the last couple cups. So uh, those two teams have been kind of going back and forth, back and forth, and it puts Super One Shot Frogs and Luminosity in this position where they have fallen a little bit behind of that leader, and they're going to be battling it out to try to skip the gauntlet of course you know whoever loses will still have a chance to make it to that grand finals they will be that final gauntlet boss but you definitely want to be skipping that make it straight into the grand finals because that is where the big money is earned and that is where the big title is also earned yeah, definitely. And, you know, Sid was kind of saying it a little bit earlier as well. We have no idea what the meta changes are going to do to some of these teams. So if you say, let's say you don't make it into the grand finals and you just, uh, you know, you get knocked out early in that gauntlet, could be could be devastating, could be a huge difference for these teams. So quite a bit on the line. Who's going to go straight to the grand finals? Who is going to get sent to the gauntlet where all those shark sharks are waiting in the water? It is Super One Shot Frogs versus Luminosity Gaming in this tiebreaker. Oh, I mean, this is going to be an interesting one. Luminosity Gaming has really been favoring the Shadow for Shaman, Super One-Shot Frogs. What are they going to run? They've been known to play lots of different stuff. I could easily see this being like a Demonology Warlock. Like, bring in Flop on the Resto Druid, Cubsy on the Demo Warlock, and then uh, bring in the Elemental, Elemental Shaman of Wealthy Man um, and kind of just go with that approach. And it looks like that will be it. But Drake! Oh my goodness! Drake! He's bringing in something new. We've seen him on the Rat. We've seen him on the Warrior. We've seen him on the Rogue. We've seen him on the Windwalk. Monk. This is the first time we are seeing him on the Demon Hunter, I do believe. So, okay. uh, really just expanding this yeah, is, their compositions. This is like what Bamboozle played um, and took a game off of Echo earlier today in EU, right? They played that Shadow Priest DH. So, trying to take a page uh, maybe out of their book, going towards this composition that is supposed to be really strong against Wizards, and we'll see if it's going to work out for them here. Cubsy is uh, trying to get that Tyrant out early, does get sheared on it. Drake taking a lot of damage, though, and if that Tyrant comes out, it could spell trouble. Cubsy going to trick it, does get the Tyrant out now. So, Drake is going to have to get out of the center of the map, but has that fear down for it. So the Tyrant will be feared up immediately, and they're trying to keep this pressure rolling onto Cubsy. It seems like the plan is just to stick to the back of Cubsy for now, but now they'll swap it over onto Wealthy Man as there's a Howl of Terror coming out from Cubsy. One of the only Warlocks playing that does throw it down onto Prev. Prev now uh, trying to just stack up on top of their healer, trying to get in on Flop and see if they can actually set something up as Drake's going to swap over onto him now with that big Chaos Nova. Uh, but a cross heal comes through from Wealthy Man, topping Flop back up, and Flop is going to take this time to just reposition across the map. Does not want to be playing on top of this Shadow Priest. Yeah, definitely not. Flop taking a lot of pressure right now, and Prev is playing very aggressively. Drake as well, just pushing in. This is exactly how you want to play this composition. Keep Wealthy Man, Cubsy, and Flop kind of grouped up and on the back foot. They're really pushing the pace here. Lightning Lasso on Drake, though. Full Hex Lens onto Brain. Nicely done there by Wealthy Man. Really trying to set up the team. Huge Howl of Terror from Cubsy as well. Been really utilizing that talent to his advantage. So we can get that instant crowd control onto Brain, and he doesn't really realize it for the tremor totem so I, I like that adaptation coming in wealthy man now getting absolutely smoked though huge damage from drake as well as prev but prev getting swapped to big healing coming in from brain very back and forth is this series so far but i feel like luminosity gaming i'm um, giving them a slight edge in terms of pressure there's been moments where drake is under fire but I do feel like their damage overall has been better. Yeah, I agree. And they are having a slight mana lead. And Druids, you know, generally need to be able to get a drink to be able to actually recover at some point in the match. It can be difficult to do that against DHs who have tremendous mobility, can suddenly stick to the back of you. But Prev is just getting teed off on by Wealthy Man. And Flop is running to the corner. He's looking for that reset for a drink. Drake, though, in hot pursuit. But he's going to get Axe Tossed. And that's going to buy a lot of time for Flop. He's going to stand up with full mana, almost guaranteed. We'll see when he shifts out of bear form just how much he has. And he's back to about 80, 90% into the second core, though. They're actually just going to use this opportunity to swap over onto him because he has no pre-hots. He was drinking, and he does pop that bark stand immediately into the bear. Does get silenced up. Is going to be able to survive for now. Uh, but it's the dark pack cost as well from Cubsy. They're going to try to get back over onto this Warlock, looking to shut him down as much as possible as Flop has gotten away, is pulled back to that pillar. 
Cubsy, though, taking a ton of damage in the middle of the map, as is Prev. Wealthy Man has just kind of had his pick of the choice, a uh, pick of the targets, you know, in the middle of the map this entire game, as it's been free firing on this Ellie Shaman, and could be a problem for them. Yeah, definitely right now, Prev in the middle of the map, Cubsy there, health funneling. So Prev is actually attacking the pet quite a bit here in this matchup. That's going to pressure Flop's mana even more. So not only is he going to have to heal the pet, he's going to have to heal Cubsy, Wealthy Man, and Flop also. A lot of pressure on Prev as he does trade out his fade, and that's going to make him immune to some damage. Now going for a big Mind Flay Insanity here. Drake's getting crazy onto Cubsy. Fear on the Tyrant immediately into a root. So great crowd control there on that Tyrant, really limiting its damage. It gets cap stunned out of that. Now it's feared, and Luminosity handles that situation expertly, really denying any kind of burst that Cubsy can put out. Yeah, I mean, DHS can shut it down so well, you know, between those AoE stuns and the fears and everything. So they're doing a great job shutting that down. You can see that Ursul's Vortex coming down onto Drake is going to pull him back. He's sitting pretty low here. Brain may have to trade out some cooldowns to top him back off, but for now, they're feeling okay. Flop has the Innervate back up as it's rotated off a cooldown. He's going to use it immediately to try to keep that mana high. And I know this game could be going long, even though the health is spiking back and forth. These two teams have been trading their cooldowns out incredibly well. Wealthy Man now into the burrow as he was silenced, and there was a Psychic Horror over on Flop. Wealthy Man pops up out of that burrow, but there's a fear over onto Drake. And Drake now going to be able to reconnect, but it's Brain getting pushed back. He's down to half HP as Wealthy Man was teeing off. And Cubsy now trying to find some damage out onto this team, you know, pushing forward. As soon as they're swapped to Wealthy Man, Cubsy is going to push forward. And as soon as they're on Cubsy, Wealthy Man has got to push forward as well, you know, and kind of be that free wizard who's going to be getting the damage done, who's going to be pushing back your opponents. Cubsy going to throw down that Soulburn Gateway, just gates right back towards Flop. And Flop trying to do his best to just stabilize his mana as much as possible because Drake and Prev are topping damage right now. You know, he's, they're way ahead of what Cubsy is doing, so it's going to be extremely draining for Flop. But Brain is the one who's actually behind on mana for now because of that earlier drink that Flop got. Yeah, Wealthy Man in the middle of the map right now, getting Psychic Horde. Decent pressure coming in. Big hunt here from Drake as he's looking to get aggressive, but Luminosity Gaming, they're not feeling too stable. Prev's really low and just sitting in the middle of the map is maybe going to backfire here. He goes for the Desperate Prayer. That should be enough to survive. Brain as well, trading out some cooldowns, the nature swiftness, but the pressure coming in from Cubsy and Wealthy Man is immense. Prev is just caught in the middle of nowhere, forced to trade out the dispersion, and maybe this composition isn't working so well. We're going to have to see a big all-in here from Drake and Prev. Flop goes for a drink, but it gets shut down. Nicely done there, but I am afraid for Prev in this situation. Now finally playing a little bit more defensive, going to be sitting by the pillar. Good setup here on a Wealthy Man. He's in a Lightning Lasso, Imprisonment onto Flop. Great setup here by Luminosity Gaming. Can they capitalize and actually close out the game? Doesn't look like it just yet, but they do get some of those cooldowns out of the way. Yeah, they get a couple cooldowns, and Cubsy actually getting really low. Got kicked there, and now the uh, shield wall is going to have to come out a little bit late because he had been locked out on Shadow. Couldn't get it out earlier. Flop now really starting to hurt on mana. Last time we checked in, Brain was actually the one behind, but Flop is now almost entirely tapped. He doesn't have meld either, so there's no easy way to get out of combat and grab that drink. He's going to have to probably find some time to do it, but it can't be right now because Wealthy Man's in trouble, sitting down about half HP. Great double Shadow Fury, though, coming out from Cubsy. He's going to get kicked on the fear by Drake, but Drake is the one under the most pressure right now. Is going to get topped back off by Brain as the Tranquility rotates back up for Flop. He's just going to use it immediately, trying to get those cooldowns back as fast as possible. His NS is almost back. It's going to get that Innervate up that much sooner as well, uh, which is going to be massive for him, but right now, Flop is completely tapped on mana. He's got to get back. He's got to look for that drink. They know he's going for it, and Drake is in hot pursuit. Going to be able to pop him out of that immediately. I doubt he got really much of anything, and Wealthy Man's going to be in a lot of trouble, but the Axos comes in on brain he's got no trinket for it can they burst him down doesn't look like it is wealthy man burrowed there i'm not sure if that was intentional or not because he was like full health and brain was in some trouble and maybe he just wanted to avoid damage at all costs to so just give flop a moment to just sit in stealth but cubs he's getting absolutely destroyed that's going to be the nature swiftness they bought enough time for the innervate so super one shot frog should be able to recover here maybe they can get the damage rolling onto drake both drake and prev are low brain doesn't have much to trade healing tide totem is finally rotating back up is he just going to drop it he does right away dropping that healing tide totem try to keep his team in the fight as they are looking to ride this momentum dampening is high and they are pushing forward they smell blood in the water they want to take down cubs he's got no defensive cooldowns flop has no man he's got no healing he's got nothing and i think cubs will go down this composition Working out great here for Luminosity Gaming in game number one as they take a lead in this best of five. Nicely done by Luminosity. 
Gonna be able to take that first game off Super One Shot Frogs. It was pretty back and forth. Like there was a lot of spiky uh, kind of instances of damage on both sides. But at the end of the day, Prev and Drake are both topping the damage. Cubsy is getting shut down pretty hard. You can see he's way behind what everyone else is doing. And Prev almost doubled his damage and has a lot of utility on that Shadow Priest. And it's gonna be incredibly hard for Flop to really maintain any sort of mana, even on a big map when you're just getting out TPS that much. Because sure, he can sit down for a drink, but it never really felt like they were stable. You know, I don't know if it was just me, but it always felt like Cubsy or Wealthy Man was kind of at half. So there wasn't really those those big windows of opportunity where Flop would normally go for a drink, right? Where you you top everyone off, you have them pre hot, and then you're like, okay, everything's chill. We're going to go for a drink. And the Tyrant never got any pressure either because um, DH just always, always going to stun it and imprison it, do like, you know, the AoE fear. Um, down on it with their like AoE fear rune you have psychic screen coming out on it like they're just throwing all these interrupts on the tyrant so cubsy just couldn't get any pressure the whole game yeah it's just really really tough i mean i'm just excited to see drake expand you know his skill set even more this guy i remember the first tournament this guy came into and i was talking him up on the windwalker monk i was like no guys like trust me drake's really good at windwalker monk like he he's you know, up there with like Chun Li and stuff, and everyone was like, "No, I don't believe that." I remember Zico telling me, and it's just like it's so crazy to see how much he's evolved from that point. Like, obviously, on the monk, he was absolutely unbelievably good, but he's just showcased that he can play all of these different roles so well. And uh, they really like this comp. Like the Shadow Priest Shaman <laughs> seems to be something that they really enjoy, and whatever Drake can play to give them an advantage uh, is definitely going to be working out for them here. We've seen him on the Rep Paladin, we're seeing him on the Demon Hunter. Uh, maybe we'll see him on Windwalker again. Come ten one five, like who really knows? But mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder what's going to happen. I, I kind of feel like super one shot frogs. They're not too sad with how this. Well, I kind of feel like they're not too sad with how the matchup played, and they're just going to go to a bigger map. Like they super one shot frogs, they will always go. I will be willing to, you know, we can handshake wager. I, like I, they're going to uh, Imperium Domain. There's a one hundred percent chance of that. Sure. If I'm wrong, I'll be completely blown away. It's like it's always their map pick. So that's where I think we're going. I think they're going to walk in the same comp and try to just take that map advantage. Uh, after that, though, I mean, they're going to have to do something different on the small maps. Yeah, I mean, the Grand is like is not as big as Imperial Domain. There's more space to actually kite, obviously. But I don't really feel like it, it feels that different than the Grand. You know, generally, uh, you have a little bit more space to work with, I guess. But it's kind of similar in that you want to be kiting from pillar to pillar, just swapping sides every time. You know, every time they push in on US Rester Dude, you just swap sides. You're kind of doing the same thing on Imperial Domain that you were on the Grand. Um, I don't know. I mean, predictable. I, I would every be, time. <laughs> I would be a little bit nervous running back same comp. It was close, to be fair, but they're getting out damaged so hard. I don't know how you're supposed to get much value out of your tyrant against this comp though if the dh plays it properly your tyrant just never does anything and that's the only yeah. window you actually scare them and to me the the reason that this comp has always functioned so well for super one shot frogs is because they use tyrant to get drinks they use tyrant to put pressure and then your opponents can't stay in the middle of the map because tyrant's going to rock you if it free casts it's so much damage but if you have an easy shutdown that's just repeatable 10 times out of 10 which kind of feels like this comp does then I don't know if they're ever really going to buy that time for flop. So we'll, we'll have to see if they can do that in a different way. You know, if wealthy man can just kind of create enough space on his on his Ellie that they're not really worried about the tyrant getting shut down. But I would be so interested to see details and actually see how much he did. So this does not surprise me because if I was playing demo against this, I would want to just like not play it ever again, man. That just looked miserable. When your damage is that low, you know, you got zero tyrant value the whole game. I love Cubs, the arcane mage. Yep. Yeah, I, I just, I'd love to see it. I, I'm I'm I I am a little curious. Like if there's, can a demon hunter stay on an arcane mage? I feel like nothing can stay on nothing an arcane, can stay on arcane mage. Like the whole time, nothing. with the, with with the, with the way they play it, especially on this map, like Cubsy doesn't care what wealthy man's doing. Like yep. basically, like Cubsy just runs around. He's just like this annoying little thing that runs around and just attacks anything that's in his line of sight. Yep. When they get ahead, maybe he'll push in. But for the most part. He's just like this turret that cannot be attacked. You know, it's just this little nuisance on the map. And I, I feel like Drake knows what's exactly what's going to happen here. So they're going to have to find pressure on the wealthy man. But at the same time, it's difficult because if you leave Cubsy just free casting, then 
You uh, he's going to be able to get a lot done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really really scary because if you ignore him, he's just smoking your team, and if you chase him, <laughs> good luck. So it's uh, it's pretty difficult no matter what you do. And it is interesting because I know we've shown their win rate in different comps before, and Cubsy's win rate on Arcane Mage is insane. But but to be fair. It's not a comp they ever blind, right? They only bring it out on big maps and in matches Counters, that they actually yeah. like it as. But it has to be one of the highest win rate of any team's comp in NA, right? Like they're so good with this. When they bring it out in their situation, when it's on a big map and they're choosing the map and they're choosing the, the matchup, they almost never lose it. So it is going to be a, a big test, I think, for Luminosity to see if they can actually kind of crack this. Um, because if they win against this, then I don't really know what they're going to be able to do. Uh, there it is, you know, 70% win rate uh, with that Arcane Mage was a little bit higher, I think, the last time I saw it. So maybe they picked up some losses. Uh, but still, 70% win rate, obviously really, really impressive. 40% with the Warlock. But again, they are doing that blind a lot of the time. So it's that's, I think, one of the biggest differences. Um, but I do like it a lot more, you know, against this style of composition. I just think that comps that can consistently shut down your your Tyrant without having to LOS are so hard to deal with. Maybe that's the the record I was thinking of, is the Rogue uh, Druid mage where they're they're seven and two with that so 78 percent win rate uh which is obviously really impressive yeah but it is like you mentioned this is a composition they never ever blind lock yep. it's always just a counter pick it's it's always picked in these matchups where they can overextend the melee and that melee can't really do much like they're not ever going to play this composition really in like wizard matchups where the arcane mage is actually you know susceptible to taking damage because that's like if you if you can't kite it then you arcane is going to take a Exactly. If you can't kite it, Arcane's going to take a ton of damage. But if you can, you're just unstoppable. Like, <laughs> you're just going to be sprinting around the entire map. No one can hit you. Maybe a Demon Hunter? Like, it, uh, maybe, but I, even that is, like, iffy. Like, I'm not I'm not convinced. I feel like I could imagine a world where Luminosity Gaming, just all three of them run in and try to take down Cubsy. But mm. I, I, I don't know. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I think it would be really difficult for them to pull that off. We'll see what they're going to look for here. You know, Wealthy Man can be vulnerable at times. You know, he is playing that assassination row. Maybe swaps to flop could happen, but you definitely want to be bouncing around at least a bit. Prev has obviously put out some incredible damage on the Shadow Priest. It feels like every single time we see him. And we'll see what Drake can get done because we know he really can bring that damage too if he can actually get strapped on the back of someone. But it is going to be difficult here against this Arcane Mage. We'll see what he can get done as Flop is just sitting in stealth for now. They're going to swap it over onto Wealthy Man though as he came out of stealth with that cheap shot onto Brain. Drake was quickly onto the back to him. But just moving back over here, and he's actually just kind of playing at LOS. He doesn't want to allow Cubsy to free cast on him. But I think every time Cubsy pops out, it looks like he's going to be that target. Prev on the other side, though, taking a tremendous amount of damage there from Wealthy Man, who didn't even use a death mark or anything, but had him dipping really low. Flop now under a lot of pressure here as Drake's going to make that swap over onto the back of him. So Drake just seems like he's happy to bounce around between these two targets, try to shut down and disrupt as much as he can. And I think Prev is just going to kind of PVE here in the back with Brain. So I do like the response, the answer coming out so far from from Luminosity. Yeah, really, really solid. And Wealthy Man is just going to turn his attention now onto Drake, come back and get that kidney shot into a full cyclone. Flop is going to be controlling him up, but Prev with a beautiful master spell is going to allow Drake to get aggressive once again, going for a big hunt here, and Flop is forced to trade up the Tranquility. You can see him just kind of rotting down and dying through it. He has a lot of damage on him right now. Drake moves over, looking once again for some more damage. Going to be chasing down Cubsy, but I feel like on this Demon Hunter, he should be able to shrug off some of these Arcane attacks. Maybe not. Kidney Shot lands. Drake has his Trinket. He's not panicking in this situation. He knows that Brain and Prev are there to back him up. And at this point, Flop has not been able to drink. He is really burning through his mana. This is looking good for Luminosity. Yeah, Drake is just doing such a good job. He's never actually over committing to chasing Cubsy. As soon as Cubsy gets away, he's just hitting someone else. He's doing all these little swaps over to Flop because Cubsy tries to pull him back behind the pillar and he says, sure, I'll just hit your Druid. Flop now, though, repositioning across the map. Will he be able to sit down for a drink here? Definitely could use it if he can get it out early. Does the spell off those dots and I think he may look for it now, but Drake is already in hot pursuit. Not going to allow him to do it. Prev, though, getting teed off on by Wealthy Man and Cubsy. You can see Brain, though, even shooting Lava Burst out at Wealthy Man. So he's doing that to pressure the Rogue to pull Flop back towards wealthy man which again gives drake access to that druid so this has been really well played just bouncing around between these targets yes drake is not getting as much uptime as he did in their last game against that warlock but still doing a great job is able to actually reverse magic that polymorph i do believe and now flop trying to sit down for a drink gonna be popped up is gonna be able to sit back down again briefly so at least got some mana back there and is even things out 
Yeah, but a stun here on the Wealthy Man. This fell eruption could pay dividends into a lightning lasso. Good pressure here by Drake. Wealthy Man gets lightning totem behind the pillar on that static field totem. Double fear coming in, though, from Prev onto Flop and Cubsy. Wealthy Man's all alone, but he does have some heals, and he pops his emblem, so he should be more than okay. Flop connected the Iron Bark as well. Now full cyclone on Drake, and this is an opportunity for Flop to actually get uh, defensive. If he wants, but Prev might just get one shot. He needs to be careful. Cubsy getting crazy with the arcane missiles, managing to connect a lot of damage. They might be able to just kill him through it. Brain's still in a cyclone. Prep could easily fall. Darkness comes in, but it might be way too late. That's going to be the void shift there by Prev, swapping his health with Drake to survive. But that is a lot of cooldowns they traded out all in that exchange. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, he got hit by the death mark, but I guess he didn't have his Dwarf Racial act active or didn't actually have it available, didn't want to use it, something, because he didn't trade it out, and they just got melted during that. It forced so many cooldowns back-to-back, -back, so maybe regretting his choices now. Wealthy Man, though, still just getting pulled out into the middle of the map as Flop is pulled back to the opposing pillar here, trying to again pull Drake back trying to get him to pull you know over there where maybe they can cc him up but there comes the silence in onto flop they're trying to get the damage rolling here onto wealthy man drake though stuck in a frost nova out in the center of the map is not really being able to connect to anyone now though going to be able to jump in there's the chaos nova over on a flop and he's swapping it back onto wealthy man but it's prev in the most trouble here the spirit link is going to have to come down brain cannot hold it any longer as prev is just getting trucked by this assassination rogue is doing so much single target damage at this point in the game, but he is going to get feared off. The mind games will connect. There's the imprison over on a flop, trying to follow it up with some more CC, but not going to be able to. It's still Wealthy Man holding onto that cloak, not concerned, and it's flop sitting down, was briefly looking for a drink, but will pop back up to heal his team back off. Now the kidney shot going to be turned on to Drake, and you can see the Ring of Fire coming down. They're trying to you know, add that extra little bit of damage in onto Brain as he's playing around that pillar flop now. I think he's going to potentially look for a drink again. He's just constantly pulling back. You know, anytime Drake wants to go defensive, flop will threaten a drink and that pulls him out in the middle of the map. Just allow Wealthy Man and Cubsy to have that access. Yeah, right now Wealthy Man down to about 50% health. There's no vanish and could be really vulnerable here. Flop still behind on mana. Luminosity Gaming is semi-stabilized here, but there's good pressure out on the prep. Earthen Wall Totem deflects a little bit of this incoming damage here from Cubsy and Wealthy Man. Arcane Surge available very shortly. This is going to be massive damage for Cubsy. A big Arcane Surge. Ring of Frost drops. He's trying to play defense here for Wealthy Man, but he has a lot of damage available. And he's just going for it here on the prep. He interrupts him. It might just drop him. He does. Cubsy being a hero in that moment getting the power infusion that he spell stole and then getting the arcane surge and just with all his cooldowns able to get out that damage right after defending wealthy man with that ring of frost nicely done there by cubsy yeah really good job and the arcane mage gets another win so they were seven and two coming into this with this comp they're now eight and two just kind of dominating on those big maps it's so difficult to deal with them and i thought luminosity was actually doing a really good job especially in the early minutes it felt like drake had a really good balance of how much he was hitting the arcane mage how much he was hitting flop but at a certain point as the evidence started to ramp up it just felt like they were kind of losing the war because prev was constantly sitting low he was really struggling to ever be topped off there by brain and you know as soon as he was kind of like locked low it just felt like okay well if brain and prev can't be winning out on that battle against wealthy man well, you don't really have anything going anymore, right? Because then if Drake fully pulls off and is just hitting the rogue, well, Wealthy Man, uh, you know, Wealthy Man is, is going to be able to be like sustaining through that pretty easily with Flop healing him and Cubsy will be completely free. Flop will be completely free to cast. So I feel like if you can't have Prev kind of winning that duel and pulling the rogue back, then it, it just doesn't work. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where Luminosity takes us. I'm expecting it to be a small map and then we'll have to see the adjustments come through from uh, the frogs. I was so greedy by Prev. Like, he has his dispersion, he just gets locked out, and then, like, uh, it, it didn't even feel like they were in that bad of a spot. If he hadn't gone for, you know, the caster and get locked out and couldn't disperse, I feel like that could have been a completely different game there at the end. But, yeah, Hubsy uh, really punishes that decision, and uh, now the series is all tied up. Remember, this is the best of five. This is for that guaranteed top three. Who is going to be, you know, no one wants to be the final boss of the gauntlet. Everyone wants to be guaranteed, you know, in that top three position. Um, but it's not going to be easy. We're going to hook point and I have to heavily favor Luminosity here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think we're going to see the Arcane Mage comp again, right? Like, like we were talking about, they use it mostly as counter comp. They use it mostly on their really big map picks. So 
Uh, the frogs will still have to figure something out. Game number one looked really good for Luminosity, and game number two, as you say, you know, could have potentially still gone their way had Prev been able to get off the disperse, had things uh, looked a little bit differently just defensively. Also felt like on the earlier death mark, he kind of really disrespected the death mark. Didn't use his dwarf racial. I don't know if it was like a shared cooldown with the PvP trinket, and that doesn't show on the Spectre client or something along those lines, but. Um, it showed his cooldown was up, he didn't use it, and they ended up having used like Disperse and Shaman cooldowns on the same Deathmark, right? So Deathmark damage can definitely not be disrespected. It is like ridiculously high if you don't have some way to just immediately remove it. Yeah, I mean, there really is no doubt about that. So we'll see what Super One Shot Frogs decides to do here. They got about 20 seconds left. They, uh, they obviously did not pick this map. This is Luminosity Gaming's map, which is no surprise. Luminosity Gaming with their Demon Hunter Shadow Free Shaman is always going to want to play small maps. Super One Shot Frogs are going for a double Druid setup. So going for Wealthy Man on the Balanced Druid, Cubsy on the Demon, or sorry, the Demonology Warlock, as well as Flop on that Resto Druid. And I think this is just a snap insta bring in the same comp. Luminosity Gaming, I don't think, really has to worry too much about this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely interesting, right? Um, because it was map number one, they played uh, the Ellie for Wealthy Man, right? So that's that's the difference, is that they're just doing double Druid with the Moonkin instead of Ellie Warlock. Yeah, because map number one, it was Wealthy Man on Ellie, Cubsy Demo, Flop Wrestler Druid, so... Go ahead. I don't know if I like it more, honestly. Yeah, I'm trying to think about Could... it. Yeah. We've seen this before, and Wealthy Man, when he ended up losing on the Moonkin, he uh, swapped off it really, really quickly. So I do wonder... You know, you lose a lot of utility with that Shaman. So not having the uh, Elemental Shaman on your team means you no longer have access to, you know, a reliable Interrupt. So there's no more a reliable Interrupt. There's no Grounding Totem. Um, you do, of course, get Cyclone, but um, you do lose that Tremor Totem. So yep. on the small map where Prev can actually move in, not being able to break flop out of crowd control, I think is going to be really, really tough. Yeah, absolutely. It will be difficult. You know, you said it and it's a hook point, so we'll be able to get access to that druid. Um, you know, it could be difficult for flop. Maybe the thought process is just that I feel like Moonkin has a better chance of just full one shotting someone by themselves. And Cubs got so locked yeah. down on on the previous uh previous match, like when they played on the grand, that maybe they're thinking you bring in a Moonkin, you have the threat of of like you know, massive burst damage, but you also have the threat of just spam clones if he's left alone. So maybe they're thinking, you know, bringing in someone that has actually spammable CC will potentially like draw some pressure on a wealthy man and allow Cubsy to be a little bit more free, get a little bit more damage out. Like maybe that's the thought process uh, because, you know, Good thinking work. back to, to match number one, Cubsy was so locked down and his tyrants did nothing the whole game. So I don't know if this is going to solve a problem, but I'm just trying to think through like maybe, you know, that's, that's something that would be able to help them because drake was absolutely locked to cubsy in that first game and maybe spam clones and roots and stuff can make a difference yeah definitely possible here we'll have to see what they do this is the best of five keep in mind so all tied up at this point but i would give luminosity gaming a little bit of an edge here and they can't win on these small maps and i feel like luminosity gaming they have this one you know kind of in the bag so i wonder if we do end up seeing chun lee um, Chun Li, obviously a phenomenal player. I feel like he hasn't really been well utilized on this roster. I feel like it's just not the meta for him. Playing like Windwalker yeah. Monk and you know the devastation evoker, um, things haven't been so great in that regard. But maybe when the new patch comes out, it is going to be one of those things where Chun Li is going to be like an all-star player for them once again. Potentially playing the augmentation evoker instead of devastation. Uh, maybe playing the Windwalker Monk. I'm excited to see it. Uh, we haven't also seen Seralium in a real... I'm trying to think of the last time we saw Seralium play. It's been quite some time. So he might be another key member uh, for Luminosity Gaming uh, in the future. But for now, these are the compositions that we're going to see. We'll be getting into this game relatively soon here on Hook Point. For Super One Shot Frogs, it's going to be about trying to buy time, trying to find those moments to keep Luminosity Gaming defensive so Flop can actually sneak away and recover his mana. If he cannot do that, it's almost an inevitability that Luminosity Gaming is going to be winning that late game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it it definitely can be difficult if he can't get any drinks. But we also know that, you know, if you can get deep dampening, if you can get some mana back and you kind of hit that enrage timer with the Moonkin, the cooldowns come back up deep and dampening. And sometimes you just can't heal through it at all. So we'll see how this matchup is going to look. And and yeah, maybe if things get desperate, you know, you could see Chun-Li come out. We saw F tier playing some stuff that people would not have considered viable, right? But uh, Windwalker was, uh, was looking pretty good in that. And uh, let's see what is going to happen here. Super One Shot Frogs versus Luminosity. It is tied up game number three here. This is the third place tiebreaker for AWC, trying to make it straight into the grand finals. Both these teams would love to dodge the gauntlet, and we'll see who's going to be able to do it.
Yeah, we definitely will. Big stun coming in from uh, Drake as he's getting aggressive here on a Wealthy Man. Prev right now going for a Void Eruption, really getting aggressive here. But at the same time, Wealthy Man getting his Incarnation rolling very early on in the match. He's keeping Brain on the back foot, Prev on the back foot, getting Cyclones out. Really, you know, playing this game with aggression like he has something to prove here on this Moonkin. But it looks like Luminosity Gaming should be able to survive this. And now it's going to be Wealthy Man on the back foot. Big hunch incoming here from Drake. He gets caught into the axe toss, but Wealthy Man might just die. I mean, he goes down to 10% health. This is through Barkskin and Bear Form. He's still just dead. This is unbelievable. Finally, he's getting topped off, but Bop has to trade it a lot to make it happen. Yeah, that was the Iron Bark. That was the Barkskin. That was the NS. That was so many cooldowns. And now Flop has actually fallen behind, healing himself here a little bit. Is going to be into Bear. Will pop the Frenzy to regen, trying to stay alive. As he's going to be off stun there. Wealthy Man trying to get these clones out. Both Druids will be able to try to spam that out. You know, draw some interrupts, be able to free each other up to do it. Now Flop going to channel out that Tranquility briefly, but has to cancel it as Wealthy Man is just dying. Wealthy Man in a lot of trouble here, but Brain at the same time going to be coiled up. They're going to try to make a swap happen over onto him. The beam going to come down. Double Shadow Free there from Cubsy. Cubsy is really making it happen on the offensive end. The MD going to come out though, removing Brain from that fear. Will keep him safe. You can see on the other side of the map, Flop is being chased after now by Drake, but he's going to get bashed up and likely clone to follow. There comes that clone and now it's Prev in trouble. Going to have to use the Desperate Prayer. Pops the VE as well, trying to get some additional healing out for his team as Brain was struggling there a little bit. Cubsy and Wealthy Man both stacked in on Prev. Well, Drake was getting CC'd up across the map, so things are really going well in that moment for Super One Shot Frogs. But now Wealthy Man in a lot of trouble again. That's the trinket used by Flop, but he's going to be imprisoned off of the Barkskin. Is there for Wealthy Man, but he's going to get pulled back with the Static Field Totem L LOS of Flop. Was in a lot of trouble briefly, but Flop able to pick him back off. But you have to think one more good setup could potentially spell the end for the Frogs. The Barkskin going to be activated very early and the Frenzy regen as Flop goes into Bear. He knew the swap was coming, but they got that so easily that they can just pull off and potentially look to go back him as it's going to expire. And it's going to expire right now. He does have that Dispel for the self-fear on the VE. You can see Prev going to get interrupted by that beam. Flop, though, in so much trouble. He's just getting soloed out by Drake. If Prev could connect as well, it could be the end of it. The hunt is going to get sent onto Wealthy Man. There's the Iron Bark coming up onto him. That should be enough to protect him for now. Prev, though, in a lot of trouble on the other side as Cubsy's trying to get in there. Going to get Psychic screamed away by Prev along with that Felguard. So he's going to buy a little bit of time for Brain to stabilize. But this game has been very back and forth. Oh, it, I mean, it definitely has. Lightning left. So now on to Wealthy Man as they're continuing the pressure. At the same time, though, Drake finally feeling the heat a little bit here on this Demon Hunter. A full cyclone lands on a brain. Who are they going to be going after? It's going to be Prev forced to play defensive. Once again, Cubsy has to portal away. He's taking too much damage. Flop needs just a moment to breathe, but I don't think he's going to get it. Luminosity Gaming, they're just swarming the super one-shot frogs, bouncing around, going after Flop, going after Cubsy, going after Wealthy Man. That was the innervate. Drake immediately wants to shut down the drink. You can see Flop right now trying to get out of combat, trying to recover his mana, but Drake is just not allowing him. Here's the metamorphosis. Here comes the I beam. Big damage available for Drake. He's caught into a bash. Wealthy Man can he find the cyclone? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to. Drake now going over to Cubsy, but he gets caught into the cyclone. It's exactly what you want. Wealthy Man had to shut that down. Uh, well done there, but he's just still just under so much pressure. You leave Prev alone for too long. Your entire team is just going to be dying. Yeah, and there's the imprisonment on the flop, and flop is losing so heavily on mana, has half the mana of brain right now. The pressure is just not stopping, and every time flop tries to step away for a drink, Drake is right on the back of him. Wealthy man now getting pretty low. He does land a clone over onto Prev, but Prev had a psychic scream out on Cubsy, so Cubsy has been kind of put out of the map right now. You can see again Drake just bouncing over onto flop, forcing him to hot himself, and then he says, Great, you waste your mana, I'm gonna get right off you. And now he's looking over towards Cubsy. Cubsy pretty far away from the rest of his team is gonna get put in that psychic core. He gets interrupted as well, trying to get the tyrant out now but he's just getting crushed may have to actually pop that under resolve does sprint port out but it cost him his trinket and flop is basically out of mana and the frogs may be out of time here as well as the shear is going to come in on wealthy man that bark skin is about halfway through drake though taking a lot of damage himself does have to trinket does have to retreat back to the pillar and this may be an opportunity for flop to finally look for some mana he's trying to run away to the entrance they have to stop drake from getting there they need flop to get this drink the roots come through the fear comes through and flop is finally sitting down he's going to be stopped though pretty quickly he maybe got a tick or two so we got about five percent mana back but wealthy man might just die on the other side i think this is going to be it the heart of the wild has been popped but i don't think it'll be enough as drake is right on to the back of him and will chop him down wealthy man falls and luminosity take another one now luminosity looking really good on this small map drake is using that demon hunter mobility quite well 
I mean, it's looking like a natural on that Demon Hunter, flipping around, making sure that he's always pressuring Flop. Basically, anyone that Flop hots, he's getting off of and he's switching. And I mean, later on in dampening, he can kind of ride the momentum a little bit more, but even just scoreboard damage, you can see how far ahead Prev and Drake are. It's just such an absolute nightmare for Flop in this situation. Not only is he having to manage his hots on all three members of his team, uh, but he's also just losing the mana battle. So it's like that really fine line you have to walk of keeping your team alive and constantly be looking for those drinks. But Drake is just always in there. Look at that. Drake just flips in, manages to keep him in combat. Now Flop really can't drink. His entire team is just dying. Drake's in hot pursuit. And every moment that he spends drinking is a moment that he's not healing. And then out yeah. of that, he gets stunned into a silence. So it's just like that. That perfect thing of allowing Flop to crowd control himself a little bit, and then when it's too late, you just use your own crowd control on him, and he's just been out of the game for so long, it's hard to recover. Yeah, I mean, Resto Druids are really bad at recovery, right? Like, they have NS, and that's kind of it. You know, they're really good when everything is stable, the damage isn't that high, they just keep hots rolling on two people, they can step back for drinks, but when damage is really spiky, and, you know, when they're having to swap their hots around a lot, it gets very, very difficult. And like you say, you know, they're, the Glaive delayed him enough that he's not going to get much from this drink at all. Um, and yeah, every time Drake starts hitting him, you have to respect the damage. So you have to at least put a couple hots on yourself or you could just get burst. But it puts him further and further behind. Life Blooms are going to fall off someone else. And yeah, as soon as he comes up, he's just going to get cross CC'd. Really well done there from Luminosity in the final moments to be able to take him out. I just don't think this is going to work. I don't think you can play Demo, uh, you know, the way that they're playing it into it. It just doesn't feel like they have any pressure. Um, but I'm not really sure what that means for them. Like, they're down two now. It's match point. They have to win two in a row. They can go to potentially another big map and play the Arcane Mage and maybe get another win that way. But I just don't know how they're going to win the fifth map because uh, both times they've actually run into this comp with, with Wizards. It has not looked very close to me. Yeah, I mean, even even with the Arcane Mage, uh, there was a lot of moments where Drake had good pressure. I don't think it's a guaranteed win. I mean, Prev had dis he, he got a little greedy and got interrupted yeah. when he had Dispersion up. So it's not a guarantee, even if Cubsy does go in the Arcane Mage, but I think that's probably what they're going to want to do. Um, but it's one of those things where the Demon Hunter, to me, has looked the most convincing, right? Like, yeah. when we saw Drake play the Warrior, absolutely zero chance. There's no hope <laughs> you're going to be able to win this matchup. But... On the Demon Hunter, it looked a lot better. Uh, you can keep up with the Arcane Mage, and if he does drag you too far, you have enough ability to just turn away, go after yep. you know the Rogue once again, go after you know the Druid uh, quite consistently in the match. So, uh, I think there are options here for Luminosity. Yeah, yeah, definitely are. You know, they will have a good shot, but I, I do think either way, you know, we're going to see them go back to Arcane Mage. I, I think almost guaranteed on Maldraxxus. It feels like same situation, right? You know, definitely Luminosity could have won, as you say. You know, Prev still had his disperse, who so got interrupted and did end up dying in that match. But I think they have a, a really good shot with this comp. Um, you know, are able to create some pretty good pressure, and it did feel like the later that game went the more Prev was really in trouble against Wealthy Man. So it will be interesting to see, you know, if Luminosity can pull off a win into this matchup. But even if they can't, you know, if they can't win here on Maldraxxus, they can take us to another small map and the Frogs will have to solve something, right? They'll have to show us that they have some other answer uh, because definitely this Shadow Priest DH has been looking really good against the Wizards thus far. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right about that. But we're going to a big map. We're going with the Arcane Mage. Luminosity Gaming, can they shut it down right here, right now? Keep in mind, there is a lot on the line. The winner of the series will be our third place team. And that does mean they will automatically advance to the finals. Loser, they're going to be that final boss of the gauntlet, which it's a, it's a very uncertain place to be. I mean, I wouldn't count either of these teams out in the gauntlet. Of course, they're phenomenal. But with a new meta coming in, a brand new patch with lots of changes, and just the raw talent that is already in the gauntlet, like you do not want to be facing the team that's beating everybody else at that point. Yeah, absolutely. It can be really, really difficult. So, um, and, and I mean, there's so much prize money in the grand finals, right? Like the prize money is like mostly towards that. You know, there is money for each of these cups, but everyone really wants a piece of that. I think it's three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. You know, that's it's towards the end in that final uh, grand finals for these two regions. So everyone really, really wants to make sure that they can get a piece of it. Try to get to that final spot. So this is an incredibly important matchup for both these teams, and uh, really going to have to be playing their best if they want to be able to take it. Wealthy man, Cubsy and flop out here on the map they're the ones down a game so they're the ones that definitely need a win cubsy just gonna be pulling back drake you know we talked about this before the last matchup he loves to play the star game age in this way he won't always connect on the same target as wealthy man you know he's happy to pull back look for these solo missions before now with drake just stuck in that 
Frost Nova, he is really going nowhere right now. So they're both going to be connecting onto Prev. The early Earthen Wall will be traded out there by Brain. But now the fear going to land from Drake onto Cubsy, and he's going to probably go him out of that, trying to get some damage down. But Wealthy Man going to be put in the Lightning Lasso, buying some time for Prev to get the damage down. But Wealthy Man, uh, you know, is going to get some assistance there from Cubsy as he does blink in and interrupt the Lightning Lasso. Thus far, though, Flop staying pretty far back. They're trying to get him involved now. There's a stun over on a Flop. The hunt comes down onto Cubsy. Silence to follow that up onto Flop. Could they force out a block or something? Doesn't look like it's going to happen. The clone's going to come out defensively. Cubsy will get out of there just fine with the Iron Bark. Yeah, it looks like he will be able to shut it down there. Getting crowd control onto Drake. So when the game gets unstable, Wealthy Man, or sorry, Cubsy is more than willing to just spam out the polymorphs. Now we have a Cyclone. So perhaps a little bit of a different approach here from Super One Shot Frogs. Instead of just attacking Drake, which is the normal thing that Cubsy would do, they're just going for crowd control instead. Spam Polyum, spam Cyclone them, and then Drake really doesn't get enabled too much in the match. So I, I like this kind of adaptation. We'll see if it ends up working out here for Super One Shot Frogs. Prev's still going to be that main target. And now Cubsy actually is just going after Drake, but I don't like this nearly as much. Uh, we'll see if it ends up working out, but it, I just feel like controlling Drake seems like such a good strategy. Yeah, I also feel like Drake could have just gone flop in that stun. He stunned up flop and then tried to get back to Cubsy. He didn't hit him at all during the entire duration of the stun. And flop yeah. had no barks in, no iron bark, and was half health in caster for him. So I feel like he didn't need to try to swap to the mage there, but is going to try to do it anyway. Will get rung up potentially back behind the pillar, but there's the lasso onto Wealthy Man. Static field totem pulling him off of Prev. And here comes Drake back onto Wealthy Man, but a big heal came in there. It was the NS from flop gonna be able to top off wealthy man as they bought some time to get that damage out flop now trying to sit down for a drink but drake is there flop won't be able to get much of anything the mind game's trying to come out they do land that on the wealthy man so potentially gonna be able to get some pressure as Cubsy was feared off there and wealthy man now into the psychic core look at prev just pulling back behind the pillar wealthy man cannot go back there so he's gonna be pulling back to his team try to turn the damage out around onto drake put him into the kidney shot there's the that sheep to follow but they are going to break it and just continue to hit him he was actually casting the hunt didn't end up getting it off but now going to actually let that hunt rip onto cubsy on a solo mission over onto him has him down about half hp and flop going to be stunned up wealthy, wealthy man's man. incredibly low as well he's going to have to trinket he's going to have to cloak they are getting so split here luminosity looking really good yeah they're adapting to the situation quite well but at the same time drake needs to be careful he's in a full kidney shot and cubsy is just free casting good imprisonment right before that by drake shuts down a little bit of the damage as he's going to use glimpse to get back on target alter time traded out here by cubsy as he's looking to create a little bit of space can he purge it off or is he going to be able to just go back to full we'll have to wait and see cubsy just in the open going for arcane blast now back into the middle of the map drake is he going to continue the chase gonna go after cubsy it looks like he will he just wants to pressure down the arcane mage not allow him to free cast but a big kidney shot lands onto drake and interrupt on prev prev just gonna be bombing in flash heals during that moment but now uh, i mean it's just, just both teams are just all over the place here just swapping around as much as they can trying to tax the healers mana trying to uh you know take advantage of people that are out of position but so far both teams have handled it decently well yeah, they did get the trinket there off of flop, though, so that could be a problem. Uh, his man is getting pretty low. The interview just came back up, so he's going to use it immediately to try to just spam out as many heals as possible here. Stabilize his team. Now Drake, though, out of the CC. Brain taking some damage himself here, down to about half HP from that little solo go by Cubsy. He's going to be thrown into the imprison, though. Flop back behind the pillar, potentially could look for a drink. Dispels off those dots, has a Shadow Fiend on him, and Wealthy Man going to get feared off, creating a little space there for Prev, but he's going to get locked out by Cubsy. And I think Flop needs to find some time to drink, but he just doesn't really have it. He has the meld available, but he's a half HP. His rest of his team's a half HP as well. And Prev is just spamming damage out onto Wealthy Man, who has no cloak for now. Wealthy Man is going to have to try to shut him down as much as possible. Brain, though, has that Earthen Wall Totem down on Prev, so he's chilling right here in the middle of the map. Flop had to use his Barkson and his Iron Bark, and now has no Trinket. So I think there's potential to try to push in for a swap and just close this game out onto Flop. But Drake, for now, is just going to stick to the back of Cubsy as Flop is almost completely out of mana. The mind game's trying to come out again. It's going to be interrupted, though, by Cubsy, and the Kidding Shot's there to follow. Ooh, They're trying to get some nice big damage rough. down on Prev. Prev's in trouble. Has the, has the Void Swap, but not going to be able to get it off just yet. Now that big heal comes through with the spirit link the darkness was used as well so he has that void shift still available but that was a close call yeah cubsy though there's no ice block and they are really pushing him on that arcane mage drake finally able to get pressure here and flop has almost no mana left he's caught into the imprisonment at the same time though prev is under fire he's in a kitty shot can cubsy connect any damage he's trying to go for a ring of frost but it gets wind sheared nice back up there by brain as drake is looking to close it out on cubsy once again he's going for the arcane surge he's five percent health and gets dropped luminosity game and they shut it down on the big map drake makes his debut 
on the Demon Hunter, and it looked good. They will be our third finalist. Well, that is huge. Congratulations to Luminosity for being able to take him down three to one. It was not the AWC Cups that they wanted so far. You know, they're so used to just dominating. And it would have been, you know, really disappointing for them to not make it directly in the grand finals. They are able to do it. Uh, I think they did such a good job in this final map, you know, playing on this big map. You know, I was still kind of favoring uh, Super One Shot Frog just based on the, the last big map that we saw. But you were talking about it. It's definitely not guaranteed. And, you know, if they were able to use those defenses well enough, they could kind of live through and, and keep that damage rolling. I think Drake did a really good job on this one. He was keeping his damage very, very high. Uh, Cubsy was the one that was actually way behind in damage on this map. And Flop, I think, had a really difficult time because Wealthy Man was being pulled far away from him and you know, always always had pressure on him. So he needed to be making sure that he was hotting up Wealthy Man. Cubsy is getting trained by Drake, so he needed to have hots on him. And then Drake would occasionally just get over there, actually stun him up and start hitting Flop as well. So then he'd have to pre-hot himself. Like he just really was kind of having his mana drained constantly. Never was able to get a drink. You know, that was a common theme across this entire series is that the Demon Hunter mobility really allowed them to stop flop from ever resetting and without that it just didn't feel like they could ever stabilize yeah definitely i mean prev right now uh, you can see it in the replay he's going to just get blasted down but this is just it was such an important moment that drake was actually able to close. stay on cubsy yeah a lot of close calls beautiful altar time there but it's just this is the impossible situation when you're on a druid you're just so far behind on healing who do you prioritize your globals you're getting swapped to um your mage is almost dead here and got no iron bark you're getting stunned it's just a nightmare situation Cubsy goes for it and kind of desperation but ultimately it is not enough and this new composition is looking good for luminosity gaming the demon hunter is definitely working out quite well we saw it in europe earlier today and uh, we're seeing it work wonders here in north america as well yeah, absolutely. It's it's so cool that, you know, even like obviously we're going to have a big patch coming up, so there's going to be changes from that. But even just within this meta, uh, we did see that kind of constant evolution, you know, even F tier coming in with the Pally and almost going all the way to the grand finals with Pally Windwalker uh, and Enhancement Shaman, which like no one else is really playing. Um, you know, we saw Shadow Priest DH come out in EU today. We see it come out in NA for the tiebreaker. It gets Luminosity through. So people are figuring out, you know, more of these answers. A lot of Wizard Cleave teams have been very, very popular in Europe. So a lot of people were trying to experiment and figure out answers there. It felt like more in NA, this was a, a series of cups that were kind of dominated by rogues. You know, we think about the top two teams, we think about Liquid, and you think about Golden Guardians. It was all about their rogue compositions. You know, RPS winning the first couple of weeks uh, for Golden Guardians, then uh, last couple of weeks has really been just about uh, the Moonkin rogue from Liquid. So, you know, you see these kind of differing metas and the evolutions that come within them. It's always fun um, to see people trying to come up with these answers and problem solve for these comps that have been you know, giving them issues throughout these last couple of weeks. Absolutely. And that is going to round out the season for us. We have our top three for both re regions as well as the gauntlet. And I could not have asked for uh, a better day. I feel like we had so many tremendous games. We uh, can take a look at the, the actual gauntlet series here that we're going to be seeing. This is North America. So we are basically the format is you can see there down at the bottom left. It's going to be no answer versus FD. We're kind of at the bottom here. And then uh, they kind of just go up the staircase kind of until to the grand final. So <laughs> potentially, <laughs> is that a, I don't know, is that a good metaphor? You just kind of hop. No, I think it's, I think it's a there. pretty good metaphor. Yeah, they're trying, to, they're trying to walk their way up the staircase and then you get to yeah. the grand finals and there's liquid golden guardians and luminosity just trying to kick you back down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, king of the hill or something like that. I don't know. They're the, they're the gatekeepers up there. So mm -hmm. yeah, we will be uh, it's watching those for who is going to make it out of both North America and then of course EU. We've got everything rounded out over there nicely as well. We did have that tiebreaker earlier on today. Day, and it was Echo also that won the cup earlier today. So I, I feel like, I don't know, are you guys more excited for the gauntlet or the finals? I both. think the gauntlet is, is really fun. But yeah, both are going to be super exciting, especially because it is a new patch. I mean, Liqu like Liquid and Golden Guardians were so back and forth in this one. Luminosity could come in and you know throw, throw a wrench in the gears in Europe. Echo won four out of four cups. So of course, they're dominating. But I mean, with the patch changes, who knows what's going to happen? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. Ben, do you have a differing opinion? <laughs> no. I mean, he, he, he said it's going to be exciting. He said it's going to be fun. I don't have a different opinion than that. I mean, it's going to be really interesting <laughs> to see how these teams do adapt. I do think as well, 
one of the things that's going to be really important for these teams because it's not like because it's not like cup after cup after cup after cup where teams really have a chance to adapt i feel like knowledge is going to be key and teams like maybe keeping some surprises you know coming up with some unique compositions maybe they don't showcase it as much and then in the finals they kind of bust it out and uh, use that to their advantage i think is also a really interesting thing so I think when there's no when it's like kind of an off tournament season and these teams have an opportunity and a new patch with lots of changes it's their chance to really kind of keep some secrets figure some stuff out try to make it work and uh, use that to their advantage yeah well we'll just have to uh wait and see but in the meantime that is not the end of wow esports it's the end of awc but we do have some pve content coming up don't forget it is the great push happening soon the proving grounds are already going actually so if you want to check in with that you can head over to uh raider io it, it's gonna be it's it's looking like it's gonna be a really great season i mean basically here's the schedule first of all but look at how close these teams are so basically the top 18 teams make it and it's just like a one point differential so i've been told that this is the closest that it's ever been and if you want to follow along with the proving grounds and kind of see what's going on over there you can head over to raider.io but the tgp groups will start in two weeks on july 21st that's gonna be group a and then it's kind of separated into three groups so there's three weeks of competition three weeks of competition and then uh we'll have the awc grand finals there august 11th through the 13th and then after that finals we will be moving into the great push finals which is on august 18th through 20th and you know what i was thinking about what i've been thinking about all day is how the 10.1.5 is coming like next week basically <laughs> like right before <laughs> all of the pve competitions so i kind of wonder like how i don't know how they're feeling about all those changes coming right before the big competition well, luckily yeah. they, they practice oh yeah definitely yeah, those guys definitely put in a lot of work. So either way, definitely tune in for that. It's going to be exciting. We're going to get some uh, new faces up here on the we'll figure out the, the, the imaginative desk for WoW Esports. So thank you so much. That is going to round off uh, everything for us. Does anybody have any, like, I don't know, Ben, uh, Zale, do you want to say goodbye or any final thoughts before we head out? I don't out? want to say goodbye. Long I don't want it to be here. over. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, everyone. We'll be back in a month. We'll see you. Yeah, then. we'll be back <laughs> soon. <laughs> We We're going to miss you, though. That's for sure. Aww. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Also, huge shout out to everyone working behind the scenes. It is definitely not just us, even though you can only see us. There's a lot of people working really hard behind the, the scenes. We've got mods, met legends. We got, we got observers. We've got producers. We've got graphic designers, sound, admins. Everyone is working really really hard to make this show possible for you so thanks everyone for tuning in and we will not see you but uh hopefully you tune into the great push and we will see you in about a month thank you so much